let us start good morning everyone welcome to one of the most disciplined days of your lives which is today we will take breaks on a timely basis we will come back from the breaks on a more timely basis those of you who are sitting at home please adhere to the schedule don't go for a walk don't go for a nap in between you have that luxury we don't right so please please be very attentive so we are going to study economics before that what is today's date what is today's date 7th may when is the exam 5th june do you know do you know how many days are remaining very few days right so please be very attentive please know that your exam is on 5th june no matter how hard you study you have to perform on that day right i hope your other subjects are on track if not economy i hope your other subjects are on track complete it will never be completed but at least you should be on track practicing mcqs practicing past year papers one sure shot way of getting a lot of marks is very easy practice past year papers do you know what is the average cut off these few years please be very uh, please reply my classes are very interactive unless you interact i will just teach what is there in books and i will go home around 90 to 100 but are we targeting 90 to 100 or our target should be more than that because tomorrow if easy paper comes then uh, cut off will shoot okay we have seen cut off still 116 also 118 also we have seen so our target can i say fairly it is 120 do you agree with me everyone can i say it is fairly 120 how many questions do you require net correct to get 120 60 questions net okay which means after reducing your negative marking so not 60 correct and 40 wrong and you will say ki i got 120 net 60 correct okay very quickly in 2 minutes i am going to explain the philosophy between prelims paper prelims paper is divided into five sets of 20 questions okay you can divide any prelims paper into five sets of 20 questions these 20 are the most easy everyone will solve these these 20 are the most difficult everyone will tend to leave these or tend to take a guess which might go wrong right chalo and these are the medium ones theek hai so let us say you took these 40 questions and you managed to get 35 suppose 35 right into 2 70 marks i am not even counting negative marks of five questions huh? just forget that for a while where we have to go 120 what is the journey 50 plus 50 to 55 marks this is your competition this is not your competition this everyone will get did you hear any one of getting 50 marks in prelims everyone will be like 70 80 i hope you know this cut off was 95 80s mein hai or in 70s or 80s or just 90s 92 93 this is your competition this is where you have to shine now do you think that you can solve all these correctly every time do you really think that see because these are these questions also huh? and some of these okay so your competition your focus is on these now how to solve these questions is what is prelims don't think you will read lakshmikan same question will come you will mark the answer you will pass that is this this is not the cut off this is that aim we are targeting if we target this will land somewhere in 110 and all which is a good score considering the current trend but if you see economics questions in 2021 paper they were so easy three questions were repeated verbatim copy paste do you know that copy paste 13 17 19 three papers copy paste same options and upsc does this it has done it with history it has done it with culture geography polity economy every subject theek okay? hai now these 20 would be different for each one of you for me some question might fall in this 20 because i read it just yesterday for some of you that question might be in this 20 because you have never heard of it it is quite possible that everyone will have different sets of these 20 questions your target is you identify these 40 and aim for at least 95% accuracy simple aim for at least 95% accuracy then you will get a head start let us say you solved all 40 correct you got a head start of 10 already na your your gap reduces and this is where uncertainty happens this is where you are confused between two options ha na a or c i know it is a or c but i don't know which one 
that is these 20 questions and forget about some of them they are very tough they nobody can solve them don't worry about them you have to worry about these 70 first if if for example you do not have that accuracy in these 40 questions you get only 45 marks like only 22 correct or 23 correct then your journey to 120 becomes very difficult do you realize this analyze this in such a manner identify these 40 and name for 95 percent accuracy identify these 20 and name for leaving five to six of them if you can because they are very factual or very random some environment questions or something and then this is where the game starts this is where you have to take logical guess educated guess this is where tricks come into picture i hope you know some tricks extreme words always never nothing okay all these are extreme words so you can eliminate and you can solve my personal preference is i like elimination method even in these questions i eliminate the wrong one i arrive at the right answer and i mark upsc does not care if you know the knowledge the history behind it upsc does not care if you know the concept it does not care if you have just wrote learned everything and came here upsc cares you have marked the right question on omr right answer finished understanding nobody is seeing the logic or knowledge behind this okay now coming to economics so this is where your question or this is where your competition is which is 50 marks which is roughly around 25 to 30 questions this is where you will be confused in two options this is where you will you will feel you have read it but you cannot recollect and that is that will happen you know very frequently so just try to perfect these questions don't be too conservative in your approach don't be too careless in your approach try to solve questions which you know half okay i am not saying know the answers to these questions i am saying try to find the answers to these questions in the exam by taking logical guesses by taking some elimination some some you know linking now that can be different for everyone for the same question also one question can be solved by at least five different logic you might know statement one someone might know statement two someone might know that statement three is not there that is okay okay so today's lecture will be a marathon it will be i don't know just eight hours something of a lecture now i want you to tell me uh, what is your level of economics preparation gs wise prelims wise i'm not talking about economics as a subject in general gs prelims upsc gs prelims economics wise what is your level of knowledge what have you read till date have you given previous attempts have you practiced question papers i want to know so that i can adjust my lectures accordingly anyone please please feel free which books have you read something you have read right sriramai i think you mean shankarai's economics huh. any else anyone else sorry vivek singh anyone else different books Okay, some of you, my lectures, my notes, right? Different books, different sources. Do you think this happens on an India basis? Yes. Still, people clear. So it doesn't matter which source you read. All that matters is in economics. Now I'm talking about economics. All that matters is how well you understand the subject because economics is not a memory test. Just two minutes ago, I told you UPSC doesn't care if you know the concept or not. Ah, UPSC doesn't care. Even if you close your eyes and mark B, and if B is the right answer, you will get the marks. But for economics specifically, there is only one thing that you should know that is concept. Our mind is trained to do rote learning right from first standard, senior kg, junior kg. Trained. Okay, I use the word trained. That does not work in economics, unfortunately. Some questions might come factual, there you will require rote learning, that is okay. But many questions are highly conceptual, highly, highly conceptual. So we will try to cover maximum possible concept only targeted towards prelims. Don't expect I will tell you the history, geography, the entire story behind it because we don't have the time for that. And even if I had let's say 50 lectures, I wouldn't have told you that because your exam is in within the month, 5th June goes. So please focus on getting the maximum marks of the concepts. We will see past year questions, 2021 questions also, so easy questions. Okay, few basics, first attempt, Munal sir. Okay, so any sources, it is fine, no problem. Chalo, let us start with a few basic concepts that you should be aware of. Whenever you can't understand a question, please go back to these concepts. They are very, very, very important. You know the concept of demand and supply, right? 
वॉट इज डिमांड एंड सप्लाय डिमांड मीन्स पीपल हु आर डिमांडिंग गुड्स सप्लाई मीन्स पीपल हु आर सप्लाइंग गुड्स वॉट हैपन्स इफ डिमांड एक्सीड सप्लाय वॉट विल हैपन टू द प्राइजेस प्राइजेस विल इंक्रीज इज इट सिंपल आई गो अट फास्टर वॉट हैपन्स इफ सप्लाय इंक्रीजेस कंपेयर टू डिमांड वॉट विल हैपन टू प्राइजेस कैन यू गिव एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ राइजिंग प्राइजेस ड्यू टू लेस सप्लाय और हायर डिमांड सॉरी लेमन चिप्स सेमी कंडक्टर चिप्स करेक्ट चिप शॉर्टेज है कैन यू गिव एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द रिवर सप्लाय इज टू मच एंड डिमांड इज लेस एंड प्राइजेस है फॉल ड्रास्टिकली वेरियस एग्रीकल्चरल गुड्स एट पॉइंट पॉइंट ऑफ डिफरेंट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम ऑइल टू इयर्स अगो डू यू नो इट वॉज इन नेगेटिव फ्यूचर्स ऑफ ऑइल वॉज इन नेगेटिव बिकॉज सप्लाय वॉज वेरी हाई पीपल वर एक्चुअली पेइंग टू सेल द गुड्स ठीक है सो दिस कीप्स ऑन हैपनिंग Everything in economics is based on demand and supply. Literally, each and every single thing is based on demand and supply. Okay, this is all free market economics we are talking about. Who spoke about free market economics? Adam Smith with his invisible hand. Okay, we are a mixed economy. Definitely, social interventions have to be there, right? Now, for if I give you a test today of economics, hundred questions, you will solve. You will see the answer. Some of you might get. 150 some of you might get 50 etc you will compare it with others performance you will gauge ki where do you stand and then you will try to increase your marks theek hai why are you trying to increase your marks because you will score high you will perform better you have a high chance of clearing the exam why are you why do you want to clear the exam you want to serve the country maybe you want to earn money yes you want to make your parents and friends proud yes theek hai same thing a country does a country wants to increase money in the economy a country wants to increase money within the within itself why so that more and more people earn why so that more and more people earn a comfortable life just imagine 10 years ago acs were luxury 10 15 years ago now we have acs literally everywhere even in public transport we have acs now metro bus theek okay? hai standard of living goes on increasing so for increasing standard of living you need to know how much money do you have today for knowing how much money do you have today you have to compare yourself with others how are you doing and for comparing yourself with others you have to calculate what do you have theek okay? hai now what do you have in our example it was marks in a country's example it is total money now let's say you want to earn money what will you do either you will do a business or you will do a salaried job correct ias is also a salaried job right then you will get money billions of people will get money in india and then they will lead to india's money total is it normal is it uh, easy to understand where are you getting money from let's say you are salaried money uh, salaried person where are you getting money from your employer where is your employer getting money from from doing business ultimately everything is business either you do it directly or you do it via your employer okay he gives you some salary he does business what does he do in business in business what does he do he either sells goods or services theek okay? hai so ultimately to calculate money we need to do business we need to sell goods and sell services am i right am i making sense anything theek okay? hai we are not talking about social service here economics uh, one more thing in my lectures you will see some views which are very economics based and less social based see for you to take a balanced approach social or economy they are always at clash social versus economy theek okay? hai for you to take a balanced approach you need to know the extreme social side of it you need to know the extreme economic side of it then you can take a balanced view right so we will go for extreme economics view also sometimes in the lecture okay now how econo how important are economics ncrts economics ncrts i would say for prelims very less important for mains they are uh they are very important especially standard 11th ncert indian economic development very important for mains uh because the way they use the subheadings and all it's beautiful for the static questions theek okay? hai now so we were at goods and services theek okay? hai which are you know in the country now this metric we call it as what do we call it as this metric so let us say we calculated everything that is produced in the country everything that is produced in the country we calculate it okay what do we call it why do we call it as gdp gdp you know questions will come on gdp also sometimes people feel that it is too basic questions don't come but when they come we get confused 
so that is why we are starting from gdp what is gdp gdp is gross one more thing economics is english please remember this economics is english language when you don't understand a term try to break it down into english words you will understand what is it talking about gross domestic product ठीक है ग्रॉस डोमेस्टिक प्रोडक्ट इज द फाइनल वैल्यू द की वर्ड इज फाइनल फाइनल वैल्यू ऑफ ऑल गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस प्रोड्यूस्ड इन द इकोनॉमी ड्यूरिंग अ पर्टिकुलर पीरियड इट माइट बी वन मंथ सिक्स मंथ थ्री मंथ्स वन ईयर टेन ईयर इट कैन बी एनी थिंग वी नॉर्मली डू इट फॉर वन ईयर बेसिस जीडीपी ऑफ दिस ईयर ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू एक्सेट्रा जीडीपी इज ग्रॉस डोमेस्टिक प्रोडक्ट इज final value i am using the word final the key word here is final value and why i am emphasizing on this are you going to write mains definitely you will write mains you will use these words but upsc gives options money value final value etc there has been one question on that final value of all goods and services all goods and services produced in the country or produced in an economy within a particular time period is it okay very simple see first chapter is little bit boring gdp gnp and all when we go to banking and taxation and uh, fiscal policy it gets really interesting theek okay? hai why are we doing this do you know why are we doing this to calculate how much we have how much others have and to you know gauge ki how to increase this this forms a basis of a country's performance this is everything how a country progresses socially economically how a country goes uh where a country goes in terms of growth development this is everything now some of you might say sir development is social also health education and all but you cannot provide health and education without increasing this can you provide free health care to billion of billions of people without increasing this first this is the start where you divert this is a different question you earn 2 lakh rupees in a month now where you spend it that is different whether you invest whether you uh, get yourself a health check up or whether you eat junk food all throughout the month anything that is a different but first you need to earn 2 lakh rupees theek hai why it is called as gross i will tell you first of all let us come at product product means nothing production ka short form is product production now production is also of goods and services final value of all goods and services produced in the economy during a particular time period agree product production ka product domestic domestic means what within india's territory domestic flight international flight domestic flight is what within india you go from india within india theek okay? hai international is you go outside theek okay? hai within the territory of india now iska if i ask a corollary of this opposite means what international you can say right now when you are talking about india are there only indians in india no are there indians outside india yes lots of them right so when we talk about domestic product we are talking about the physical boundary of india irrespective of nationality or citizenship irrespective indian ho he can be american japanese theek okay? hai so when we are talking about gdp we calculate those goods and services produced by everyone who are producing in india that is gdp now if i take the opposite of this i want to know how much indians are progressing or how much indians are producing all over the world all over the world indians only theek okay? hai what will i do i will take indians i will take indians production outside india add it here i will also reduce outside indians production in india do you agree with this theek okay? hai so what i will do domestic say i will add indians ka production outside india i will add and i will reduce i would say foreigners it's not a correct term but for the purpose of this within india do you agree with this so this plus this see please bear in mind do not remember the formulas wherever you have to wrote learn i will tell you please wrote learn this don't go for logic but this is completely logical four options upsc will give you in such a manner you will be confused whether to add this or this or whether to subtract this or this 
you basically will add two more factors here and then it will confuse you please do not go for road learning i am screaming and telling you please go logic wise concept wise we are covering only those concepts which are extremely essential for prelims please bear in mind actual economics for mains is 10 times bigger than what we are going to do and for uh, mains and interview combined and actual economics per se is 1000 times bigger okay but upsc asks you to do only limited stuff so we are going to do limited stuff why because we don't have the luxury it is gs it is not a uh, optional or it is not a phd subject that you have to know each and everything but at least basics very very clear see i always tell if you are able to understand every word written in an economics article in the newspaper you know whatever is required for gs sometimes you know they talk rbi hike repo rate this will be a spiral oh oh they use these words counter cyclical capital buffer so much big words they use okay meaning is very simple we are going to see that okay domestic plus indians production outside india minus we get what do we get national full patriotic feeling that little boy sang na patriotic song in germany for prime minister full national uh, gross national this becomes gross national product did you understand the logic behind gross national product now tell me for a country when will gnp be bigger or gdp will be bigger answer is in match okay if this is bigger what do you think gnp will be bigger or gdp will be bigger gnp because you are adding more because indians are progressing more and more outside india and what do you think this if this is bigger then gdp would be bigger because indians itna nahi hai but domestic mein you have a lot of uh, production right so now you can take a guess a country which is very open to foreign investors what will be bigger gdp or gnp please answer a little loudly gdp because you come here why are we doing ease of doing business why are we doing single window clearance retrospective tax amendments you have learned all this in current right and why are we increasing gdp khane ko chahiye we need food india motherland needs to feed its babies simple some babies take away more money than they require and run away to london that is a different thing okay i always say india is a export hub of scammers we export a lot of scammers we don't export tea wheat rice we export scammers and only one destination london uk cayman islands thoda sa little bit okay we don't import scammers because already we are a billion people how will he come and scam we are only scamming ourselves call center sir please give your cvv number we will give you gift i i gave i i got a call sir please confirm your date of birth we are redeeming your points for you and it was very realistic it was not ki you have won a vacation to singapore or something it was very realistic we are giving you gift voucher worth 50000 rupees of make my trip and all i was like yeah take i uh, they asked me the details i gave all the details cvv i gave wrong so she kept calling me seven times i told her ma'am i'll send you photo of cvv also wohi hai so that cvv was of a card which was deactivated by me two years ago and i, I sent her photo also expiry date i didn't send her so like that scammers we only scam ourselves i like scammers a lot when they call me na i i i'll stop everything and i'll tell yes madam boli tell me theek hai what are you offering what do you want cvv <laughs> One time I asked you one CV, you know, madam. Sachi, what? Tell me. <laughs> okay, and when, even if your money gets deducted, cards are protected by insurance. If you if you intimate the bank immediately, they'll reverse the transaction. So that is also a security safety net. Now, but if you intimate after ten days, one month, then bank will say, what were you doing? Okay, gross national product, gross domestic product. Is it understood? Yes or no? Why domestic? Because it is within the boundaries of India. Why national? Because it is of Indians. now this indians is of nationality or citizenship that's a different question don't get into that that is a bit complicated thing because some books use the word interchangeably citizens of india or national those two are different things no now coming to gross what is the meaning of word gross gross means that you have to reduce something before reducing something it is gross see on a packet if you see there will be gross weight and net weight gross weight on a packet of chips or net weight on a in a on a packet of oil So what is that minus? You reduce something and you get net. Okay. 
my gross salary is 1 lakh rupees after tax my salary is 80000 so my net salary is 80000 are you getting this so why are we calling it as gross because this is very crude this is not a final measure this is very crude now when i give services when i give my uh, production when i do production when i give services the machinery or infrastructure that i use in production of these services does the efficiency remain the same over the years or it reduces over a period of time efficiency will reduce your phone today it is very new 120 hertz screen snapdragon this and that after two years see what happens to that that 120 hertz will become 60 hertz automatically right your efficiency reduces which means a part of your gdp is going to go in replacing those machines yes or no because you have to maintain the production value so you reduce that efficiency loss from gross what do you do reduce the efficiency loss and you tell that now i have arrived at net product net domestic or net national it can be anything now what do you reduce from this that we have a we are, it is an accounting term that is called as depreciation that is called as depreciation accounting definition of it is by the way i am a ca so i know the accounting definition of this you don't have to know all this accounting definition of this is depreciation is a reduction in the value of assets resulting due to physical wear and tear obsolescence lapse of time or general efficiency loss it can be any reason okay you you took a new machine you didn't use it for one year so efficiency loss is going to happen dust will accumulate etc okay so now we we have arrived at gdp we have arrived at gdp can we go to gnp do you know how to go to gnp i am waiting for upsc to give a small sum you know gdp is this much calculate gnp and it can add upsc has done weird things in both papers csat as well as gs who says that it cannot mix up, uh, it cannot uh, uh, make a question on both simple addition right? it will not ask you find the num n number of natural numbers in 1 to 50 it will not ask you to do that it will tell you this is gdp find gnp and it will give you four five different things so you have to know which to add which to reduce and which to ignore can we go at ndp what is the difference between this depreciation can we go at nnp we can go right now this indian production outside india and foreigners production within india we have a sophisticated term for that i will tell you the concept first then i'll tell you the sophisticated term for that this are plus minus this is called as net factor income from abroad uh, sophisticated net factor income from abroad i'll tell you uska logic also why net why factor why income abroad to you know income you know why net why net because plus minus net it can be negative or positive if this is bigger it can be it will be positive if this is bigger it will be negative theek okay? hai so you do gdp plus net factor income from abroad gnp now that plus can be a negative figure or can be a positive figure so in prelims if the question comes net factor income from abroad don't say ki i don't know this it is a mix of this both not only this or only this it is both net factor income from abroad now one thing that you have to rote learn rote learn is national income equal to nnp i will add some more details here don't worry but this you have to rote learn no need to know any logic at this point of time if i was taking foundation batch we would have gone into depth of this also see i i take 108 hours to teach economy foundation from start to end pre mains interview 50 lectures 108 hours so if you think 108 hours worth of content is relevant for prelims absolutely not it is not relevant at all so we are going to do only prelims oriented content so this is our habit na later mains ka we'll see first prelims to ho that is that is that was the attitude that was my attitude also but that proved very costly in mains uh, for me so i got uh, prelims me i got in one exam i got 118 122 138 and then 104 but but uh, that 138 ka reason also i'll tell you that 138 ka reason was 
I was so deep. I had wrote learned NCERT history and uh, culture NCERT and spectrum and geography NCERT. All these NCERTs I had wrote learned and economics to hey. Geography, polity, economics. These three, if you get maximum marks in these three subjects, your chances of clearing prelims are very high. Geography, polity and economics. Because history ka bharosa nahi. History, there is no trust what they'll ask. Unless it's your optional. Environment, we all know. Even easy question seems difficult in environment. Science and tech, same thing. Because they are technical in nature. They are not conceptual or they are not logical. They are technical. So, which spacecraft went, went to which orbit or which planet that is technical. There is no logic behind the names also. Same goes for environment. Unless you have studied from that field, that's a different thing. Me being from commerce background, for me everything is foreign. Even economics was foreign because we study the practical aspect of it, markets, accounting and all. And this is theoretical aspect of it. So for me, even this was foreign. Don't ask how I have learned geography and economics. I have taught myself, but it was a big headache. So how I have taught myself is how I will teach you. That is very simple. Okay, this you have to wrote, learn. national income is NNP. Every year, some of the mock tests, classes mock test, or every year this question is there. What is national income? NNP, NDP, GDP, NNP. Well, there is one more detail here, which is missing, which I will add later. Did you understand this? Are four concepts crystal clear in your mind? GDP, GNP, NDP, NNP. Okay. Now, you have to know that uh, how do we uh, calculate GDP. Before that, for starting a factory, what is required? I told you, you can start a business or you can go for salary. If you go for salary, someone else is starting the business. For starting a business, four key things are required. You require a factory or you require a place. Even if online business be here, so you require place for servers, place for your uh, delivery, place for you to stay and you to work. Okay? First thing that you require for starting a business is land very important second is labor third is capital means what money capital and fourth is and now what is this shark tank entrepreneur means someone to start the business someone with an idea okay have you seen tvf pictures so these are web series wherein they don't show the idea at all because okay, these are collectively called as factors of production. Very big important keyword is factors of production. Now you know why net factor income from abroad, factors of production. Okay, these are called as factors of production. Key term. Factors of production, land, labor, capital, enterprise. Everyone will get something in return. When you produce something, everyone will get something. Don't worry. This is not a lucky draw. Everyone will get something. Land will get rent. Labor will get wages. Capital will get interest. Interest. Dividend is a technically incorrect term. Substance, feelings, I got it, but interest. Because capital can be in terms of loan also and loan gets interest. Entrepreneur will get profits. Have you seen Shark Tank? Yes? No? See it after the exam. Huh? Now don't see. I like Ashneer Grover. He is very good. You are very good. He asked. That one product guy had come and he was selling some product. Aapke bahut peete ho kya, he says. Very funny. I watch a lot of series, but not before the exam. Land, labor, capital, enterprise, rent, wages, interest, profits they get. These are collectively called as factors of production. Now coming back to net factor income from abroad, I hope you know why this term is called as net factor income from abroad because you are ultimately taking how much they are earning. Okay. Now, to establish the link between these two, we learnt about GDP, we learnt about GNP, etc, etc, etc. Now, GDP, how to calculate GDP? We know the definition. It's the final value of all goods and services produced in the economy in a particular time period. But how to calculate it? How to, imagine you are in the economic affairs ministry, department of economic affairs and uh, you are told to calculate GDP of this one small area. 
वन स्मॉल मोहल्ला और एरिया हाउ विल यू कैलकुलेट जी डी पी फाइनल वैल्यू ऑफ ऑल गुड्स एंड सर्विस प्रोड्यूस्ड इन द इकोनॉमी यू नो कि आई हैव टू कैलकुलेट दिस हाउ विल यू डू इट इधर यू विल कॉल ऑल द बिजनेस ओनर्स एंड यू विल टेल हाउ मच हाउ मेनी वर्थ ऑफ गुड्स डिड यू सेल और डिड यू प्रोड्यूस टेल मी दैट वॉट यू विल डू यू विल टेक द क्वान्टिटी यू विल टेक द प्राइज यू विल मल्टीप्लाई एंड यू विल गेट जी डी पी आई होप यू नो दिस करेक्ट और यू कैन डू उल्टा और यू कैन से कि यू विल यू विल कॉल ऑल द बायर्स एंड यू विल आस्क दैम हाउ मेनी वर्थ हाउ मच वर्थ ऑफ गुड्स डिड यू बाय टूडे सेम है ना वॉट एवर विल बी सोल्ड विल बी वॉट एवर विल बी बॉट आर यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग दिस ठीक है और और यू विल कॉल ऑल द फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन एंड यू विल आस्क हाउ मच डिड यू अर्न टूडे थर्ड वाले में कंफ्यूजन ठीक I start a business. I sell one particular, let's say, I make a mobile phone. I sell one mobile phone of fifty thousand rupees. I get the money. For now, please ignore tax and all. Fifty thousand I will get. Who am I? I am the entrepreneur. Can I keep all fifty thousand from someone whom I have taken rent, uh, land on rent? I will have to give him rent. Let's say I give ten thousand as rent from someone whom who is working for me. I'll give twenty thousand to him. I'll give bank interest because I've taken money from it. Whatever remains will be my money. Yes or no? Okay. So now, if in an area, if I call all the landholders, all the labor laborers, all the capital givers, or those who have extended loans, and all the entrepreneurs, and if I will tell them how much did you want, tell me. They will tell, sir, I want rent, I want wages, I want interest, I want profit. Will it not equal to fifty thousand? Yes or no? Same fifty thousand is going from the customer to the uh, seller. That fifty thousand is being distributed in these four parts. So either you ask buyer how much did you buy it for fifty thousand. Either you ask the seller how much did you sell it for fifty thousand. Either you ask all these how much did you earn, sir ten thousand, twenty thousand, etc., etc., fifty thousand. Are you all agreeing with this? That it will tally, it will be same. These are the three methods of GDP calculation. Now fancy terms. Sophisticated terms. First method is called as output method, or production method, or value-added method. Value-added method. I will explain why it is called as value-added method. Second is called as factor income method, or income method, or net income method. third is called as expenditure method third is called as expenditure method the answer is going to come same either you call them call them why three methods because in some uh, sectors they are very scattered okay the enterprises are very scattered so we take buyer data in some they are very organized they have all the data so we take seller data and so on so different sectors use different methodology indian government uses different methods for calculating different sectors uh ka this gdp theek hai why output method production method because sir i manufactured five phones today 5 into 50000 gdp factor income method sir for this month we manufactured five phones we earned this much rent Etc. Etc. Wages and all factor income expenditure. Sir, I bought five phones. Now, when it will not tally is when production हो गया but sale नहीं हुआ. When it is produced but not sold, that time it will not tally. Do you agree? Because buyer will say कि uh, seller will say I produced five phones. Buyer will say I only bought two phones. Three are just lying unsold. So these are some small things which you don't need to worry about. But as a principle, it always tallies. There are some minor exceptions to it. Did you understand all three methods of GDP, GNP? See, these are basic concepts. I am only covering crude ones. One of them, core. Sorry, core ones. Okay, these are the three methods of calculating GDP. Now, let us manufacture a phone. Phone के लिए, let us say we. What we did is phone के लिए we we require uh, screen, mobile phone. We require uh, raw materials we require everything so let us say we took 300 rupees ka raw material we took 300 materials ka uh, 300 rupees raw material laborer charge hai rent hai everything is so many things are there and you added 100 rupees 
फोर हंड्रेड रुपीज इज योर टोटल कॉस्ट यू कैन से फोर हंड्रेड रुपीज इज योर टोटल कॉस्ट नाउ यू गो टू प्रोड्यूस यू गो टू प्रोड्यूस मोबाइल फोन यू स्टार्ट योर फैक्ट्री एंड एवरीथिंग यू कम टू नो कि फॉर स्मॉल ऑन्टरप्रिनर्स लाइक यू गवर्नमेंट इज गिविंग अ सब्सिडी ऑन इलेक्ट्रिसिटी फॉर स्मॉल ऑन्टरप्रिनर्स लाइक यू गवर्नमेंट इज गिविंग अ सब्सिडी ऑन इलेक्ट्रिसिटी ठीक है Your electricity cost is included in this hundred. So, because raw material, everything is there in this hundred. So, what you do is four hundred. Me say, you say how much subsidy I am eligible to get. Government will say, sir, you are eligible to get fifty rupees subsidy. So, will that reduce your cost? Yes or no? It will obviously reduce your cost. Okay. But you saw that as soon as a phone is produced, fresh, live, box packing me. You you said ki load it in the van and send it to your wholesaler and uh, other distributor. On the factory you saw someone. On the factory you saw some person standing. You asked who are you? They say sir we are from government and we are here to collect excise duty. ठीक है excise. What is excise duty? It is a tax on production. Excise duty is a tax on production. Whether it exists now or not, just forget that. As a concept, I am telling you. Excise duty is a tax on production. Excise does not care whether you sell or not. Excise cares whether you produce or not. It is a tax on production. So you ask sir how much? It says you will you will require you will be required to pay an excise duty of twenty rupees. So how much does this tally to three seventy? ठीक है इतना समझा. Now you sell. 370 is your price. Now you sell. Chal. You went for selling. Now you come to know that because this is a affordable phone, government is giving consumers a subsidy, so that everyone will have internet connectivity and all. You know that there is a subsidy on the product also. ये तो electricity subsidy. This is very conceptual. Please pay attention here. This was electricity subsidy. This you come to know that government is giving a 10 rupee subsidy on every phone. So you will reduce. मतलब you wholesaler retailer will reduce. And of course, what is that? Who is that person who stands at every purchase you make? GST. Everything is under GST. GST will be lagega. How much is the total now? 400. Don't say that this tally is. Ah, ये तो I have just taken random figures. ऐसा कोई मैजिक नहीं है ठीक है नाउ यू टेल मी यू ओनली टेल मी वेदर दिस वाज अ टैक्स ऑन प्रोडक्ट और प्रोडक्शन प्रोडक्शन एंड वेदर दिस वाज सॉरी सब्सिडी एंड दिस वाज अ टैक्स सो दीज आर ऑल प्रोडक्शन रिलेटेड थिंग्स डू यू एग्री दिस इज हैपनिंग इनसाइड द फैक्ट्री इज दिस हैपनिंग इन द फैक्ट्री दीज आर प्रोडक्ट रिलेटेड डू यू एग्री सो वी यूज टू वर्ड यर दिस इज production and this is product to for me to understand this concept i'm i'll tell you in 2017 i had wasted so many hours because this clearly it was very rarely available i don't know now whether it is available or not this so this is production and this is on product theek hai what is this subsidy what is this tax what is this subsidy What is this tax? Whether this tax is direct or indirect? Indirect taxes. We'll do in taxation chapter what is direct, indirect. But for now, it is indirect. See, indirect taxes. For two, for one minute, if I tell you, it is a tax on goods and services. GST is in name. Me now, it is very easy to understand. It is a tax on goods and services. They are indirect. Why indirect? Why not direct? Simple question can come. What is the major difference between direct and indirect tax? You cannot give the examples for income tax and GST. That is not a difference. That is an example of both. ठीक है difference is something else. So can I say this is an indirect tax IDT? This is an indirect tax IDT. But this is an indirect tax on production. This is an indirect tax on product. This is a subsidy on production. This is a subsidy on product. ठीक है again, as we saw in net factor income from abroad, what we do we plus something, we minus something. Fancy term is net factor income from abroad. similar thing is happening here you plus something you minus something we will call it as net indirect taxes we will call this also as net indirect taxes theek hai net indirect taxes means 
you add your tax you reduce your subsidy again it can be a positive figure negative figure depending on the quantum of subsidy and tax is everyone following this ya yeah, nahi if you don't understand then please ask because it is very important theek hai sir excise is product or production production excise is always on production see at the stage of production or after completing production whatever is there it will fall here when sale will happen actual consumer or from wholesaler to retailer sale will happen then product taxes will come theek hai net indirect tax net indirect tax so what did i do i took this price can i say this price plus net indirect taxes on production will give me this price this price plus net indirect taxes on product will give me this price is this is this clear to all yes or no everyone is it simple theek hai now let us let us know the names which they call these figure this is called as factor cost this is called as factor cost why it is all your factor cost there is no government intervention in factor cost do you agree government intervention is happening here here and here this is called as see don't say that 400 and 400 is same this is just because we have taken this figure but this will be definitely higher very rarely lower than this Anna, too much of subsidy we gave, na, fifty rupees. That is why this is happening. This is called as market price. Have you heard of these terms, factor cost and market price? What is this? Can anyone tell me? Basic prices. Very good. These are. This is called as basic price. This is the difference between factor cost, market price, and basic prices. Are these concepts clear? yes very important factor cost basic price market price production and product related things now i'll tell you practically how calculation happen factor cost factor cost basic price basic price market price market price. these four can be either market price or factor cost matlab means when i say gdp gdp can be at factor cost gdp can be at market price when i say gnp ndp nnp they can be either at factor cost or market price depending on whatever you have added or reduced now why do we consider my question to you is why do we consider factor cost as more superior to market price because yes because this is in the hands of government this is your real performance hai na upsc if it gives one uh, one question wrong or one question extra marks to everyone that is not your performance this is your performance this is in the hands of government government always tries to focus on this theek okay? hai now reverse logic why is market price more important and this same logic applies in central monetary policy also why is market price more important now because ultimately who is who is suffering or who is who is having to pay this consumers so this is you have to track this which means ki sara game is ka hai your fo government's focus is on this but ultimately consumer is a victim of both this plus this okay how calculations happen is so now we ha so this i told you all the goods and services produced in the economy during a particular period now do you think that all goods ऐसा लिस्ट रहता है और यू गो सेक्टर वाइज यू गो सेक्टर वाइज स्टील हो गया मशीनरी एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा यू गो सेक्टर वाइज नाउ दिस सेक्टर वाइज कैन गिव यू डेटा और यू कैन कैलकुलेट सेक्टर वाइज डेटा डिपेंडिंग ऑन ऑल द डिफरेंट मेथड्स लेट एस से यू गॉट ऑल द डिफरेंट मेथड्स बट यू नो व्हाट प्रैक्टिकली स्पीकिंग मोस्ट ऑफ द डेटा इज अवेलेबल एट दिस प्राइस 
most of the sectoral data sectoral data is available at this price so what we did is what we do is we call that sectoral data at basic price as gva gross value added gross value added and when you sum all gross value added this gva is always almost always at basic price huh? see it can be at other this thing also i am telling practically how it happens gva at basic price is plus total level pay indirect taxes and total level pay subsidies plus you can say production level intervention sorry product level intervention will give you gdp at market price this is how it actually happens you don't need to know in detail itna but a uh, lot of data of sectoral level is available at basic prices so all basic price data you accumulate then total product level pay how much indirect taxes subsidies you are giving you add less and then you get total gdp at market price sectoral gdp is very difficult it is available only in a few sectors this is net indirect taxes on production so this is available on sectoral basis at basic price then total economy may you add production level data and then you get gdp at market price that is how it works actually theek okay? hai now coming to this what should i write here why nnp at factor cost basic price or market price and why national income this you have to write learn theek hai yes renu you are right so we always tell this as factor cost this is national income ultimately what are factors getting national income अच्छा चलो इफ आई टेल यू नेशनल इनकम अच्छा पर कैपिटा यू नो द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ पर कैपिटा यू डिवाइडेड बाय पॉपुलेशन सिंपल पर कैपिटा इज डिवाइडेड बाय पॉपुलेशन लेट अस से इफ आई टेल यू नेशनल इनकम ऑफ इंडिया सपोज इज 1 लाख करोड़ रुपीस सपोज डिवाइडेड बाय सो मेनी पीपल सो नाउ नेशनल इनकम पर कैपिटा यू कम अराउंड 1000 रुपीस एग्जांपल डू यू थिंक यू गेट टू स्पेंड ऑल दैट 1000 रुपीस there are lot of things which are going to catch you there also there is income tax after you earn more government intervention now one level you escaped indirect taxes now direct taxes intervention plus you will get some money you will get some money for not participating in economic activity matlab see this 1000 you earned because you either gave yourself on your, your land on rent or you gave yourself as a laborer or you earned profit or you earned uh, this thing क्या बोलते इंटरेस्ट बट उसमें से भी यू रिड्यूस इनकम टैक्स और यू फाइंड आउट यू अर्न समथिंग फॉर विच यू हैव नॉट वर्कड एग्जांपल पेंशन एग्जांपल स्कॉलरशिप है ना यू हैव नॉट वर्कड फॉर दैट ठीक है यू विल ऐड दैट सेकेंडरी इनकम आई हैव नॉट वर्कड फॉर इट सी इन्वेस्टिंग इज ऑल्सो वर्किंग इफ यू आर गेटिंग इंटरेस्ट एंड डिविडेंड एंड ऑल दैट इज ऑल्सो वर्किंग यू आर इन्वेस्टेड मनी बट यूर स्कॉलरशिप और योर पेंशन गवर्नमेंट इज गिविंग यू right so those are called as transfer payments transfer payments are one way payments by the government uh, another key concept is transfer payments one way payments now my question is are subsidies transfer payments this was a interview question are subsidies transfer payments the answer is depends what kind of subsidy it is if it requires you to change your production method if it requires you to uh, alter your price levels or anything like that see don't get wto in this within india only we are talking about then government is asking something in return na then it is not a transfer payment so it is a you know it's a gray area and that is why it is a up interview question if it was straight forward so it wouldn't have been asked in interview and that was asked because because uh, before the date of interview there was an article on subsidies so usme it had written ki it increases the transfer payment burden of the government but the actual answer is that it depends
ठीक है हाँ सो माई पॉइंट वॉज की वंस यू वन थाउजेंड रुपीज देर लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स विच विल बी एडेड एंड रिड्यूस आफ्टर दैट एंड देन यू विल गेट योर एक्चुअल मनी विच यू कैन स्पेंड एंड दैट इज कॉल्ड एज डिस्पोजेबल पर्सनल इनकम डीपीआई डिस्पोजेबल सी दिस इज वेरी ईजी टू अंडरस्टैंड यू कैन नॉट स्पेंड दिस वंस यू वन दिस सो मेनी थिंग्स आर देर यू इफ यू आर गेटिंग डिविडेंट लेट से यू आर गेटिंग डिविडेंट इसमें you are getting you have invested in some shares you are getting money from that government will cut corporate taxes on that company so your money automatically reduces all that is reduced and added and then you get nnp at factor cost uh, sorry you get uh, disposable personal income theek okay? hai now coming back to definition of gdp what was the word that we saw here final value why final can you tell why final we made a phone one phone worth 50000 rupees what is the gdp 50000 rupees one phone 50000 gdp that phone may we did not produce everything we got raw materials we made screen from outside vendor we got the aluminium body made from outside vendor government asked me data of how many phones did i produce i told 50000 government must have asked that aluminium seller also how much work did you sell He told sir, I sold aluminium worth eight thousand rupees. Government will add eight thousand. Government will add my fifty thousand, and GDP is fifty-eight thousand. Is it correct? Why? Where it is double counting? I mean, which place? See this. Ye three hundred. This is our raw material. Government went to him and asked, how much raw material did you produce and sell? He told sir, I sold three hundred to various customers. One of them is us. We are producing phone. Government came to us. Asked how much phone did you produce? Four hundred. But this three hundred is included in that four hundred. If you add double three hundred plus four hundred, seven hundred GDP. Dikhe. Are you agreeing to this? These goods which are used in the production of final goods are called as intermediate goods. They are intermediate. To avoid double counting, you have to reduce them from your GDP. Sir, how does government do this? They have statutory filings every month. they have to file data production wale they have to file data which means the market price of the 50000 is validated kitna hai sare sector ha but uh, in real life market price wo nahi hai kyunki humne taxes and all so hum kaam kar rahe hain but uh, saying so intermediate goods to come because that is included now when you buy a phone your screen is a part of phone when you buy a alum- phone your aluminum is a part of phone so we are removing because wo double aa gaya because it is double to hum ek hata rahe hum raw materials wale ka land labor capital enterprise bhi count hua government would have gone to that person raw material cost and asked him what is your cost land labor capital enterprise theek hai you are asking land labor capital enterprise mein raw material kahan aayega right because this is wo to 100 rupees hai is that your doubt ha nahi so this is also counted because this is actually your basic starting figure production value and then you go so government will go from this 300 because this is a This is a mix of land, labor, capital, enterprise of raw material seller, is it not? उसने 300 रुपीस का एल्युमिनियम बेचा है. How he would have given land 300, labor 300, hundred rupees or whatever. This is his final product, raw material seller. Government would have gone to him. So how it happens is government goes to him. He says कि sir, I am a raw material maker. Government says okay, I will not count yours. Yours I will take here. And then it will ask us what is your land, labor, capital. And then it will go here. ठीक है टू अवॉइड डबल काउंटिंग फ्रॉम इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट डेटा आल्सो डबल काउंटिंग इज अवॉइडेड यस इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट डेटा आल्सो डबल काउंटिंग इज अवॉइडेड हाँ दैट इज व्हाट आई एम सेइंग कि व्हेन कैलकुलेटिंग द वैल्यू मान लेते हैं वो फोन आपने प्रोड्यूस किया है वो 50000 का है मेरा पॉइंट ये है कि इकोनॉमी में मैं जो 50000 दे रहा हूं और जो हमारे कंटेंट मार्केट प्राइस
नहीं वापस वापस तो वेन एवर वी डू ऑन अ जी डी पी कैलकुलेशन लेवल गवर्नमेंट टू सीज एंटायर इकोनॉमी सो गवर्नमेंट सीज की वॉट इज योर लैंड वॉट इज योर लैंड वॉट इज योर लेबर योर लेबर ठीक है नाउ इफ देर इज डबल काउंटिंग इन वर्ल्ड इट विल रिड्यूस वन एंड देन इट विल कीप ओनली वन ठीक है फाइनल गुड्स इंटरमीडिएट गुड्स फैक्टर कॉस्ट डन बेसिक प्राइस डन मार्केट प्राइस डन नेशनल इनकम डन मेथड्स डन एक्सपेंडिचर प्रोडक्शन आउटपुट वैल्यू एडेड इनकम मेथड फैक्टर इनकम मेथड हाँ लेट इज डू दिस नाउ वन मोर थिंग यू बॉट द फोन और वॉट इज वॉट एवर आर प्रोडक्ट वॉज फॉर फोर हंड्रेड रुपीज ठीक है यू बॉट द फोन फॉर फोर हंड्रेड रुपीज इफ इफ यू वॉन्ट लेटेस्ट इफ नाउ फर्गेट टैक्सेस फॉर अ वेल सिंपल रखते लेटेस्ट से टेन यूनिट्स वर प्रोड्यूस्ड For four hundred rupees, what is the GDP? GDP is four thousand. Correct. This is current year. Next year, if I tell you GDP is eight thousand. Next year, if GDP is eight thousand, how many phones would we have produced? C Saturn. This year, we produced ten phones for four hundred rupees each. GDP is four thousand. Next year GDP. I am giving you the end figure first. GDP is eight thousand rupees. How many phones would we have produced? We can't say. One phone can cost eight thousand rupees. Next year we can't say. Okay. Now this is quantity. This is price. Now very important. We can't say. Right? Because we don't know. It can be anything. It is a multiplication of both things. so now we don't know now tell me is price rise important more important or quantity increasing is more important why why real production increase is more important when production increases see simple logic hai when will production increase when there is dash increase demand increase suppliers will not produce anything which is not demanded you know apple cloth that is an exception apple also released an apple cloth phone saaf karne ke liye cloth there is no demand for that cloth still it was sold out apple that is a different thing i am saying ki supplier will not supply unless there is a demand theek hai now you are a supplier you produce you know demand is 100 rupees 100 units per month You will produce hundred and five. Let's say, thoda extra demand ke liye. You come to know tomorrow demand is one fifty units per month. Will you increase your supply? Yes or no? You will see whether you have the capacity to increase. Possible hai your fact your one machine only produces hundred and five. ठीक है. For making one fifty, you have to buy a new machine. But If you buy that new machine and make only one fifty, fifty units ka capacity will be unutilized. You will see, unless you know that this one fifty will remain for a long time, so you will think, "Yeah, I can produce." So sustainable demand होना चाहिए. There should be a sustainable demand. Now, when there is a sustainable demand, suppliers will try to increase their supply. When suppliers will try to increase their supply, how will they try to increase their supply? One, they will buy new machine. Correct. When they buy new machine. Suppliers of machine का business is increasing, the ones who are making the machine, ठीक है? That machine is also made up of raw materials. When that machine is being sold in higher numbers, that raw material sellers will also increase their business. Do you see the chain effect here? That is one. Second, when I bring a new machine, I will have to bring in new machine operators. I will have to increase my labor because I want to increase my supply, more employment. 
when i increase my labor i want more machines the machine manufacturer will also increase his labor because he has to make new machines now so this is why increasing quantity is most important because if high quantity is demanded high supply will happen and it will result in a very big spiral effect upward spiral effect more income more employment levels and increased basically uh, standard of living you can say if you have more income you have more standard now problem happens when suppliers don't increase supply in consonance with demand then what happens if supply does not rise in uh, you know matching with demand what will happen price rises and one fancy word we have for that inflation okay so why inflation happens partially is because the suppliers cannot increase supply immediately after a point of time no no you are make your capacity is 100 units sub demand is 120 you will not buy a new machine for 200 units ka machine you will not buy that 20 will cause inflation for a short while if you see 120 is there for 2 years then you will think are ha i can maybe think because this will increase after 120 and all right so quantity is more important than price one more reason does this have government intervention it has so much we saw indirect tax production subsidies so many things final value na 400 this has government intervention so for government this is not important for government this is important because that taxes will depend on quantity if it is produced less it will subsidize it you produce more okay that is why this is more important this is the real deal right so if i keep if i keep price as constant let's say 400 if i keep my price as constant but if i increase my units okay if i increase my units to 20 this is one way i can do it or what i can do is i'll keep my quantity constant and price i will double it to 800 which is better this is better because this is real growth this is real growth or 10 into 800 This is not real growth. Ha, but growth hai. The figures speak for themselves, but real nahi hai. Hence, real price nominal. Why nominal? Nominal is ki ha importance is so less. I said you can think, you can make a logic of that. Real and nominal. real shows you actual quantity increase nominal shows you price increase in reality it is effect of both so in reality what will happen your units would be 12 and your price would be 500 both are increasing so what you will do to find real gdp you will take 12 into price you will take constant because i want to eliminate the effect of increase in price i meko i don't want to think about price increase at all So what I will do? I will take 400 only. But production has increased, na? Huh? 10 to 12 production has increased. So two increase hua hai. But I don't want price increase effect. So I will take old price only, and I will do 12 into 400. I will see what is my. That would be my real GDP. If I want to see my nominal GDP, I would just take whatever is the production into whatever is the current price. That is nominal. Is this concept clear? So what is the difference between real and nominal? now if i give you if i give you nominal gdp is 8000 nominal gdp is 8000 real gdp is 6500 kya lagta hai what is the this journey of 1500 this is inflation this is an effect of increase in price correct because real mein you already increase quantity old price pe quantity you have factored in price you have not factored in so this difference is because of price and hence real plus dash is nominal inflation or nominal minus inflation is real whatever you now come in index terms you know what is an index numerator upon denominator is an index into 100 karoge to percentage is basic math if i want to find out how much percentage the gdp has increased or how much percentage currently it is how much percentage of past years gdp what will i do you get in your test 1 you get 80 marks 
in your test 2 you get 90 marks if i want to ask how many times have you increased your performance i am not asking percentage i am asking how many times index what will you do 90 upon 80 1.1 times or 1.2 times aisa hota hai na same thing what will you do is you will take if i ask you ki last year our prize was this much so let's say this was our prize in 2021 and this is our prize in 8000 is our prize in 2022 if i ask you how many times it has increased what will you do 8000 divided by 4000 two times increase do you agree with this statement two times increase this is an index how many times has it increased what did you take in numerator current year price or last year price and what did you take in denominator last year current year upon last year will give you your price rise index you can say price rise or whatever gdp increase index okay now this last year this last year is called as a base year you are basing your performance on that year see you can compare test 4 result with test 3's result test 3's with test 2's test 2's with test 1's result or for government it is not possible to compare every year this much so government will set a fixed year so test 2's result compared to test 1 test 3's result compared to test 1 test 4's result compared to test 1 that test 1 is your base year that can be last year that can be any year which the government choose, chooses samjha that is called as a base year okay now very interesting what what did you do you took current year prices upon base years i am writing base years base years prices if you take all goods and services so you will get one index sabka price lo all goods sabka price lo all goods theek hai this index is called as a gdp deflator This index is called as a GDP deflator. See the keyword is all. Now tell me, is it possible for government to take prices of all goods and services of every year in a quick span of time? What time lagta? It takes around one year to get the prices of all goods and services compared to the prices of la base year. Okay, so GDP deflator comes with a one year lag. Last year ka GDP deflator will come this year. Hence, is it relevant for policy making or not? We are trying to find out the price increase. Huh? Your focus has shifted. We are trying to find out the price increase. It is not relevant. Last year ka def uh, deflator figures we are getting this year. Why it is called as deflator? What do you mean by deflate? To pull the air, so, you know, to deflate. What are we what are we deflating using this? Now think Ulta. If I tell you GDP is 8000, GDP deflator is 2. What will you do? If I tell you nominal GDP is 8000, GDP deflator is 2, which means that it is inflated up to the extent of 2 times. So you will do 8000 divided by 2, 4000. What is 4000? Real GDP. Barabare? So GDP deflator is like that pin where you see nominal GDP ka balloon and GDP deflator you push the pin inside you remove the air whatever remains is your real GDP so how we calculated is we went from real to nominal how how government how it happens is government will get nominal data Barabar, na? one unit 5000 rupees GDP 5000 then government will get GDP deflator data and then government will match both and then government will calculate real GDP did you understand or did you not? Please ask. Government got nominal GDP. Take 8000 rupees. Government wants to find real GDP. Now, what did I tell you? Nominal minus what is real? Inflation. But that inflation is not in terms of an absolute figure, that is in terms of an index. Two times. So, 8000 minus 4000 is 4000, or 8000 divided by 2 is 4000. Then, government will focus on real. Now, tell me this nominal figures government is getting every year gdp deflator figures government is getting after one year there is a mismatch so what government does is ki, thik hai, kaam karte. let us do one 
लेट एस टेक अ सबसेट ऑफ दिस दिस इज ऑल ना ऑल गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज लेट एस टेक अ सबसेट ऑफ दिस वॉट इज अ सबसेट ऑफ दिस लेट एस टेक द मोस्ट वाइडली प्रोड्यूस एंड कंज्यूम गुड सब बास्केट बनाते and unka prices their prices are readily available within one month two months lag and then government calculates the index of only those particular goods and that is called as consumer price index wholesaler's price index producer's price index have you heard these terms cpi wpi ppi why because they are a basket why because you can't do all gdp deflator you can't do so they are also kind of gdp deflators only but a subset of them did you understand real and nominal did you understand market price factor cost basic prices did you understand gdp gnp nnp ndp theek okay. hai did you understand what is national income wo to rote learn hai national income is what nnp at factor cost what is the formula for gdp deflator constant upon current or current upon constant current upon constant latest upon base year ठीक है ऑल गुड यू हैव टेस्ट इकोनॉमिक्स टेस्ट वन टू हंड्रेड मार्क्स में से यू स्कोर्ड फिफ्टी मार्क्स टेस्ट टू वन फिफ्टी मार्क्स सी वॉट एन इंप्रूवमेंट इज इट अ थ्री टाइम्स इंप्रूवमेंट यस ठीक है अच्छा बिफोर टेस्ट वन लेट से यू गेव मेनी अदर टेस्ट योर एवरेज स्कोर वॉज नाइनटी this test mein you were sick and you got 50 you could not concentrate and you did not uh, you were not able to mark the right answer is comparing 150 to 90 correct sorry 50 correct or 90 correct why this is your average real performance no this is just an exception if i compare 150 to 50 how much increase would i get three times 90 to 150 is thoda normal increase correct If I tell and you go tell your friends, I did a three times increase in my score. Is it misleading or not? Yeah, it happens. In government GDP figure, GDP figures, this happens because of an abnormal base. Because of an abnormal base, your performance seems inflated, whereas your actual base should have been this. You took this as base, or you you took this as base, but that year something abnormal happened. and then you showed ki my performance increased drastically or reduced drastically kuch bhi ho sakta hai theek hai because of that uh, abnormality when you see an a sudden spike or drop in your performance in gdp increase in anything like that that is called as a base effect it's a very crucial term for you to know what is base effect this is used in gdp and inflation calculation i mean this term base effect because of your base your performance is so high because of your base your performance is so low one test you scored 180 your average is 90 and then after that you scored 100 110 you will say 180 say i came 110 that is wrong na your average is only 90 100 that is base effect samjha what is base effect it is effect due to an abnormal base what happens in gdp calculations In 2020, our GDP was tanked by minus 23.9 percent for one quarter, minus 7 percent for the whole year, approx. And then you show a growth of 5 percent, and you say 7, 5, and minus 7 ka bhi I recovered, and you show a growth of 12 percent. But you are comparing it with an abnormal base. Compare it with last five years where there was no COVID. ठीक है? Did you understand what is base effect? See, base effect the question has already come. What is base effect? Simple. yes sorry acha okay theek hai i was told to cover the basics very well so that is why i'll go a bit faster so this is base effect did you understand all the terms that that are mentioned here did you understand everything theek hai uh i know an ifs officer ifs officer salary in india is let's say 60000 rupees his posting is to usa now he will be paid in dollars dollar rate is let's say 
ठीक है तो सिक्सटी थाउजेंड इंटू सेवन डिवाइड बाई सेवेंटी फाइव उसका उतना डॉलर विल बी हिज सैलरी देन इज पोस्टेड टू अफ्रीका इन अफ्रीकन साउथ अफ्रीकन ब्रांड वॉट एवर इज द करेंसी हिज सैलरी वुड बी देर डू यू थिंक ही बी एबल टू हैव द सेम लाइफ स्टाइल ही हैज इन इंडिया कंपेयर टू यू एस ए कंपेयर टू अफ्रीका वाई Because the purchasing power is different. What sixty thousand can buy you here in India might not be the same as what equivalent number of dollars can buy you in USA. So his salary will have to increase in USA and decrease in South Africa if South Africa is, let's say, a poor nation comparatively. Okay, this is called as purchasing power parity. Do you know this concept, everyone? Purchasing power parity. It is nothing but you compare a basket of goods. in india compared to basket of goods in usa and you compare them and you say ki theek hai this is my ppp or purchasing power parity right so india in terms of so you can say in terms of same affordability india is third largest economy in ppp terms and in nominal gdp terms india is sixth largest economy theek hai na this is ppp who can tell what is opportunity cost करेक्ट अपॉर्चुनिटी इज द कॉस्ट ऑफ ऑल्टरनेटिव फॉर गॉन है ना यू चोज टू कम यूर टू दिस लेक्चर यू कूड है पॉलिटी सो दैट इज द अपॉर्चुनिटी कॉस्ट ऑफ अटेंडिंग दिस लेक्चर सिंपल दैट इज ऑल्सो इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट अपॉर्चुनिटी कॉस्ट यूपीएससी इकोनॉमिक्स में प्रिलिम्स में इफ यू सी टेन में से टू क्वेश्चन वुड बी डिफिकल्ट एट वुड बी कंसेप्चुअल बेसिक और थोड़ा दिमाग ला के लिटिल बिट ऑफ ब्रेन यू कैन अप्लाई एंड देन यू कैन गो है do you know what is uh, potential gdp what is potential gdp what do you mean by sustainable what is potential gdp india ka potential but in what terms what how this was asked in mains na no? 2 years ago potential gdp is the gdp or the level of production you can go without significant inflation without a significant rise in prices that is potential gdp so your today's gdp is 8000 rupees you can produce up to 9500 without significant inflation this is your potential gdp and 1500 is your output gap gap from your current level of gdp to your potential gdp is known as output gap theek hai na see these are only concepts prelims mein concepts hi puchte what is output gap what is potential gdp these good these questions can come what are demerit goods those who have negative externalities theek hai what are non merit goods non merit goods demerit versus non merit it's neutral neither positive nor negative what are merit goods health education positive effects neutral goods no positive no negative everything is uh, apart from merit and demerit everything is non merit good ठीक है नाउ लेट अस सी व्हाट इज अ ट्रेड साइकिल यू नो व्हाट इज अ ट्रेड साइकिल उतार चढ़ाव अप्स एंड डाउन लाइक आर मूड आर प्रिपरेशन लेवल आर मोटिवेशन लेवल एवरीथिंग गोस थ्रू अप्स एंड डाउन इंडियन इकोनॉमी और अदर वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमी आल्सो गोस थ्रू इट शेयर्स ऑफ अप्स एंड डाउन सो कैन आई से इट इज लाइक दिस दिस इज अप एंड डाउन दिस इज रिसेशनरी फेज दिस इज एक्सपेंशनरी फेज This is the point of depression. ठीक है, these are called as trade cycles, business cycles. Everyone knows that. Now, when economy is going down, what do you think we should do, or what do you think we should try to do? We should try something so that economy goes up. 
ठीक है वी हु आर वी नहीं इट कैन बी एनी वन इट कैन बी अ कंज्यूमर ऑल्सो हैव यू हर्ड द इक्वेशन ये बेसिक इक्वेशन है हैव यू हर्ड दिस इक्वेशन वॉट इज सी आई इन्वेस्टमेंट जी गवर्नमेंट एक्स एक्सपोर्ट माइनस इम्पोर्ट नेट नेट एक्सपोर्ट सो दिस इज योर एग्रीगेट डिमांड ठीक है दिस इज ए डी वाई सो दिस इफ यू हैव टू इंक्रीज यू हैव टू इंक्रीज इधर दिस और दिस और दिस और दिस और लॉट ऑफ दिन इन कोविड वॉट हैपन दिस गॉन दिस गॉन दिस गॉन Entire burden fell on government, and government का share in this entire is seven percent. So how much will government increase? ठीक है? Now, when it goes up, it has to go down. Why it has to go down? See, whenever you are too happy or overconfident, in prelims you will be overconfident and you will you will realize you have made a silly mistake. Or if you are underconfident, you will feel like यार I don't know anything. Whereas the paper is very easy. so you have to pull yourself up or you have to push the economy down what will happen if it goes in this direction tell me what will happen if this happens inflation will happen theek okay? hai why will inflation happen i just told you because supply cannot increase in consonance or uh, commensurate with demand it takes time and the demand has to be sustainable so the moment economy reaches this government or we should try interventions to bring it down the moment it reaches this we have to pull it back up what is the what did the world do in covid times here it was here introduced so many reforms and now we are facing the repercussions of it do you know inflation in the world is at an all time high almost every country is facing very high inflation levels canada is facing highest inflation in 20 30 years many countries are facing highest inflation in decades उनके लिए फाइव परसेंट इन्फ्लेशन इज इन हाईएस्ट इन ट्वेंटी थर्टी इयर्स वी आर फेसिंग हाईएस्ट इन्फ्लेशन सिंस टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू थाउजेंड एटीन वी आर फेसिंग आर इन्फ्लेशन टच सिक्सटीन डब्ल्यू पी आई टच सिक्सटीन परसेंट अभी करंटली आर सी पी आई इज ऑल्सो आउट ऑफ द रेंज रेंज है ना टू टू सिक्स परसेंट इट इज सिक्स पॉइंट नाइन फाइव परसेंट आर इन्फ्लेशन सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव फोर इट इज एक्सपेक्टेड अप्रिल फिगर्स में कि इट विल टच सिक्स पॉइंट नाइन ha huh. so when we talk about this this can influence this this can influence this this can influence this and who is this exactly there are two people involved here one is government second is rbi theek hai there are two people two major in, and they affect all these things ha huh? government and rbi now government will carry this or government will uh, take care of the ups and downs with the use of fiscal policy rbi will do with the use of monetary policy theek okay? hai that brings us to the end of the basics chapter which is gdp and all everything opportunity cost ppp basics ka ant hai we will start next with a fiscal policy and then we will start with monetary policy majority of the questions are concentrated on these two chapters especially monetary policy upsc loves rbi and monetary policy banks banking everything upsc loves these इतना समझा सो क्लियर वेरी गुड ठीक है रिसेशन एंड डिप्रेशन डिफरेंस एनी वन पारस इज आस्किंग रिसेशन एंड डिप्रेशन डिफरेंस रिसेशन इज द फेज वेन यू आर गोइंग डाउन डिप्रेशन इज वेर यू हैव रीच योर लो हाँ टेक्निकली यस सस्टेन्ड रिसेशन रिजल्ट इन अ डिप्रेशन so like our mood also recession means uh, today i am not feeling good today i don't want to study when that happens for one week two weeks you realize are shit 15 days are gone only 15 days remaining for prelims that is depression and then you have to pull you your friends your people have to pull yourself your parents you have to pull yourself back up ulta bhi 15 days i am done books closed i am sleeping this phase then it will result in inflation ठीक है नाउ सी दिस व्हाट इकोनॉमी वी फॉलो इज दैट व्हेन यू गो डाउन वी ट्राई टू पुश इट अप व्हेन वी गो अप वी ट्राई टू पुश इट डाउन एंड वी आर गोइंग अगेंस्ट द साइकिल हेंस इट इज कॉल्ड एज अ काउंटर साइक्लिकल पॉलिसी 
काउंटर साइक्लिकल वाई काउंटर साइक्लिकल बिकॉज वी आर गोइंग अगेंस्ट द साइकिल भार्गव इज आस्किंग सर कुड यू टेल मी टेल द टर्म्स इन एग्रीगेट डिमांड इक्वेशन प्लीज सो आई एम सेइंग दैट दिस इज नथिंग बट योर जी डी पी इज इंक्रीजिंग एंड योर जी डी पी इज रिड्यूसिंग योर जी डी पी इज इंक्रीजिंग जी डी पी इज रिड्यूसिंग हाउ इज योर जी डी पी इंक्रीजिंग बिकॉज यू आर बाइंग गुड्स बिकॉज यूर प्रोड्यूसिंग गुड्स एंड बाइंग गुड्स हु इज बाइंग गुड्स कंज्यूमर इज बाइंग गुड्स इन्वेस्टेबल गुड्स आर देर इन्वेस्टमेंट इज कमिंग न्यू मशीनरीज आर बिंग प्रोड्यूस कैपिटल गुड्स government is also involved in this government is also procuring buying goods or other interventions which help you to buy goods like reduction of taxes which help increase investment in the economy gross capital formation and exports minus import if exports increase imports reduce etc so this is actually fueling your ups and downs majorly government is influencing them see directly government cannot has only 7% share If government tries to influence you, but you don't get influenced, then government cannot do anything to save the economy. And that is what happened in COVID also. Government tried to give so many sops. Think MSMEs, co it was helpful, but still economy did not revive that much because everyone was scared. Now, this up and this down, it is going against the cycle because when we are going up, we are trying to push it down. When we are going down, we are trying to push it up. That is called as a counter cyclical policy suggested by J M Keynes. and we follow this is a key part of keynesian economics so that is the theory part of it theek hai itna samjha clear why things are called as gross net etc we'll see mcqs after we cover the fiscal policy chapter so that wo dono ka sath mein we'll see because many times questions come mix some are from basic some are from fiscal policy chapter theek hai okay so do you want a break now or at 11 o'clock or should i go 12 1 theek hai how many of you are giving the exam for the first time and rest kitna 2 3 4 5 see it's okay sorry 3 2 are option second सेकेंड वन सेकेंड टू थर्ड भी है थर्ड वन दो तीन ठीक वाई डू यू थिंक फर्स्ट टाइम फाइव मिनट ब्रेक सर नाव अच्छा घर वाले नाव बोल रहे हैं एंड यहाँ वाले यू कैन टेक ब्रेक एनी टाइम जस्ट टेक योर फोन विथ यू वेर एवर यू गो गो फॉर वॉक ठीक है फिजिकल पॉलिसी बट आई वॉज सो सरप्राइज कि नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी और एटीन नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम इकोनॉमिक्स एंड ट्वेंटी वन छोड़ दिया इकोनॉमिक्स से फोकस लेफ्ट सो एवरी टू थ्री ईयर्स दिस ट्रेड साइकिल हैपन्स फॉर एवरी सब्जेक्ट हिस्ट्री एट पीक एटीन नाइनटीन डिट यू सी द क्वेश्चन इन हिस्ट्री अभी सुने ही नहीं थे एटलीस्ट आई हेड एंड थर्ड ऑफ देम टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन वॉज पॉलिटी पीक वैन स्पीकर Which question was in 2016? Uh, कोई तो क्वेश्चन था विच वॉज नॉट देर इन लक्ष्मीकांत दैट दैट एडिशन देन दे पोर्ट इन लक्ष्मीकांत एंड देन दे सी आर बुक हैज दिस क्वेश्चन ऐसे ही होता यू नो दिस ना एटलीस्ट दोज आर गिविंग फॉर टू थ्री अटेम्प्ट दे नो दिस क्वेश्चन इज नॉट देर इन द बुक न्यू एडिशन में क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड मटेरियल इज देर एंड देन वी फील वेन वी सीट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम अरे दिस इज देर इन द बुक बट ऐसा नहीं है इट इज एडेड लेटर ऑन Did you see the अच्छा uh, जो लोग टू थ्री टाइम्स दे रहे हैव यू गिवन मेन्स इट्स अ डिफरेंट एक्सपीरियंस ऑल टूगेदर मेन्स तो अब आओ मेन्स में दिस सीम्स वेरी सिंपल इन टर्म्स ऑफ मेन्स बट एक्चुअली दिस इज द मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट क्योंकि हाफ मार्क्स से भी यू आर वन क्वेश्चन एंड यू आर गॉन अच्छा टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन वॉज द लोएस्ट नंबर ऑफ पीपल क्वालिफाइड फॉर मेन्स ना इन एट ईयर्स बिकॉज वैकेंसीज वर ऑल्सो लेस एंड ओवरऑल भी लेस ही होता है सब हाउ स्ट्रॉन्ग इज योर सी सेट कंसिडरिंग ट्रेंड ऑफ लास्ट ईयर सी सेट हैज टू बी थोड़ा आई यूज टू सॉल्व ओनली ऑन रीजनिंग एंड इंग्लिश क्वेश्चन सिंपल माई क्वॉन्ट गॉन आफ्टर टेंथ आई लेफ्ट क्वॉन्ट 
because in CA there is no quant, there is only calculator and add, multiply, divide. I used to solve only on English and reasoning. Simple. Abhi to nahi kar Abhi to I left preparation. Chalo. Kisan city. Fiscal policy. Uh, for those who have not cleared the prelims, please tell me honestly, where do you feel you lag? Specific subject or specific question or uh, concept nahi tha clear or current affairs were weak, anything. At least three, four people tell me it's okay. Wo itna wo, uh, there's no shame in it. Concept, which subject? Economics only or others also? Economics concept. Other? So reading too much. Yes, you have to do a lot of Tukkagiri in the paper. See, do you think those who get 150, unko 75 questions net, aate the? Nahi. 45, 50. Uske baad, but logical guess. Okay, so nahi. A, B, C, D. This is A. This is B. This is C. This is D. School may karne majata because there is no repercussion in school. You can do that. What about you? Kaha lag hua? Environment science. See, you should know your weak area. Simple. History ni wala kisi ne. To history bolta. But that is also the reason that history, sir, CSAT manage kaise kya? Like what you targeted? Keegan is asking. See, CSAT till the time I was giving exam, it was very simple paper. Jao de kya? I always scored more than 130 in CSAT, 130, 140. Basis solely on reasoning and English questions. My English accuracy was 99 percent. My reasoning accuracy was 95 percent. Baki jo easy easy question the maths me, where you can get the answer by fitting it into the equation of the question. Me wo solve karta. I didn't, I didn't solve all 80 questions in CSAT. I used to solve 68, 70 questions because what 10, not that I didn't have time, what 10 ate anything. And that is CSAT, you can't even guess unless you know how to solve the sum. So honestly speaking, English and reasoning have been my strength. So I did not work for CSAT at all. And I have only uh, practiced, I had practiced two, three papers. CSAT, I'll tell you one very honest thing, my personal experience is, Classes papers na, don't do justice to actual UPSC paper. The language, even in GS, somewhere I feel that. Okay? You should always solve classes papers for practice after you see past year's paper. If UPSC, G GS, past year papers, questions should be on the tip of your tongue at least last five years. Are ye 14 mein tha, ye 16 mein tha. Questions are repeated, options are repeated. I'll tell you, in fact, rather than CSAT, I'll tell you. History to padai nita. That is good. Good answer. I'll tell you how I managed to score one more than 120. Honestly, mujhe bhi nahi aata tha. But what I did was my sole preparation was past year paper. Sole preparation. People I have seen, students and my friends also, and it might work for them, but it didn't work for me. They are preparing classes ka jo solved paper hai. Usme they are revising that also. You solve 20 tests into 100 questions, even if you, chalo, 50 questions bhi maan ki kitna questions you will revise. So what I did was, I always used to solve past year papers, even if I know the answer, I dekh leta. Then what I did was, especially in culture and history, huh? history and culture, abhi, culture mein there is a question, there are four options, A, B, C, D, answer, B is the answer, we know that. So I used to read about A, C and D, ki what is that? And many times this happened ki, T pe question man ke next year aaya. Because UPSC has given you a bank now, 10 years questions you can refer, 2013 to 21, kafi hai, hai. Use that bank first, then go for other classes papers. That is the mistake I have seen people make. Even in mains, they don't see mains papers UPSC and then try to solve other questions, write other questions. See how questions are coming. See, so basic questions are coming. Fiscal policy last year, second question. What are the capital and revenue components of budget? Second question, GS3. Basic textbook question. But wo nahi. 
we know everything else but not the basics that is what happens in economy at least i am saying so please try to focus on basics you might feel what i am teaching is very basic exam environment mein na wo basics hi hil jata those basics are very important environment <laughs> i don't have any answer to that environment i write shankar is and current affairs that's it zyada mehnat nahi geography ncert only ncert four ncerts 11th 11th 12th 12th and you know 9th standard ncert is much better than 11th because 11th ncert assumes ki you know so many things bol denge ki ha madagascar se wind comes but why how that is given in 9th ncert very very beautiful ncert i never took my preparation outside the core books never इकोनॉमिक्स के लिए कोर बुक आई रेफर्ड वॉज श्री राम बट अगेन कंसेप्ट एक्सप्लेनिंग के लिए आई टॉट माई सेल्फ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स ठीक है चलो फिजिकल पॉलिसी हु गिव्स फिजिकल पॉलिसी वॉट वॉट एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा छोड़ दो वील डायरेक्टली डाइव डीप इन टू इट फिजिकल पॉलिसी इज नथिंग बट बैंक अकाउंट ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट फ्रॉम वेर द मनी इज कमिंग फ्रॉम वेर और वेर द मनी इज गोइंग सी मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट इज how to use the money that is a that is the whole logic behind fiscal policy theek hai let us directly dive uh, into fiscal policy let us assume ki you uh, today you came to class and today your phone gir gaya and it was damaged you had to buy a new phone you bought a new phone then you were hungry you ate food and then you came to class you studied etc you did two types of expenses today one you bought a new phone second you ate food what is the difference between both what is the difference between both so one expense is your regular or recurring expense one expense is your low amount i am talking about eating food low amount regular expense you are you recur uh, it frequently comes again but buying a phone is rare or occasional and it is of a higher amount theek hai those expenses can you give me your personal life example expenses of this type rare high sorry anything you buy watch expensive watch ah nahi to wo yahan aa jayega low amount 200 rupees watch You can buy two hundred rupees worth every month also. Now, it frequently happens. Appreciate the nature of expense. One nature, same expense can be here also, here also. But, chalo, give me personal life examples, which is rare. You do it not so frequently, which is high in amount. Buying home. Thoda bada socho. <laughs> Buying a house. ठीक है. Buying a car. buying a phone right uh lending huge amount of money to your friend do you do that every day you don't even do it once also hamare paas hi nahi hai we only don't have what will we lend i hope you had to face the uh the process of budget making in your personal life ha yahan aake rehna budgeting and all that is very crucial i used to stay in a room and wahan pe Wi-Fi cost add करता था, newspaper cost add करता था, then I shifted to e-newspaper to save cost. That is very important part of uh, this thing. ठीक है? तो चलो, some expenses we gave examples such as buying a house, giving giving money to your friend, uh, high amount है, ऐसा दस बीस रुपए नहीं, that you can give every day. ठीक है? There are some friends ना उसे कि ten rupees, twenty rupees. In in Maharashtra, I am from Maharashtra, Mumbai, so we have vada pav. So everyone wants money for vada pav. They have money. not they don't have but what about from someone else's money is much more uh, tastier and fulfilling you can say khud ke paise se it feels na are shit kharcha whenever you are saving money i'll give you a tip some people think ki 10 rupees hi hai chhod do but think about what you can buy in those 10 rupees then you will save a lot of money that is what i personally use in my life for example uh, Me and my best friend, we were traveling, and there was no money for us. So I told him that I wanted to eat some food. He said that I will leave the change. So I told him that in 10 rupees you can eat one packet of Lay's or Air, as you call it, or you can take a share rickshaw ride from my home to the railway station, or you can go from local train 
अप टू एट किलोमीटर दैट इज हाउ आई लुक एट इट कि यू कैन एंड देन वेन आर माइंड थिंक अरे इससे ये हो सकता है दैट इज सेव्ड देन वी आर मोर एनकरेज टू सेव वी लाइक फ्री स्टफ फ्री में आई एम वेरी कंजूस आई सेव अ लॉट ऑफ मनी एंड आई एम अ वेरी माइजर पर्सन चलो कमिंग बैक गिव मी मोर एग्जाम्पल्स इन योर पर्सनल लाइफ कुछ है और जो रेयर ओकेजनली एंड हाई अमाउंट का होता है कोचिंग फीस येस यू डोंट गिव कोचिंग फीस एवरी ईयर सम ऑफ यू गिव बट बट दे आर हाई एंड ठीक है एंड दिस दिस इज तो योर रेगुलर एक्सपेंसिस फूड पेट्रोल सब कुछ मोबाइल रिचार्ज पोस्ट पेड एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा ठीक है नाउ पे अटेंशन these two it is very important to differentiate between these two for the government also why because these involves huge amounts of money and these are low amounts and these are recurring very frequently which is more important in this both are important dono chahiye from a, at least from a government angle dono chahiye you need both theek hai so these nature ye jo nature hai these nature of expenses are called as capital expenses capital and these are called as revenue abhi don't get confused with the word revenue because revenue means something which is coming hai na revenue hua but these are this is the nature we are talking about revenue expenses and capital expenses it is very important you know the nature between these two and the most important differentiator between them ठीक है एंड इट इज नॉट नेसेसरी कि सारे क्राइटेरिया फुलफिल करेगा इट इज इट इज बेस्ड ऑन सब्सटेंस द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट नेचर इज दैट दीज एक्सपेंसेस दीज एक्सपेंसेस ठीक है दीज क्रिएट सम एसेट्स फॉर यू दीज क्रिएट सम एसेट्स फॉर यू मोबाइल योर हाउस व्हाट आर एसेट्स बाय द वे एनी वन नोज बेसिक anything not revenue benefit anything which gives you benefit for long time considerably long time now mobile ka benefit kitna milta you only see whether it is 6 months or 6 years these create asset this is the single most important criteria if any expense create is creating asset for you it is a capital expense theek okay? hai now again it can be rare or asset creating it can be high or asset creating or it can be these two it depends these do not create any asset inka benefit do not the benefit of these expenses do not last for a long time it get over within very short time you had food within 4 hours you are hungry okay capital expenses revenue expenses same goes for income can you give me an example of capital income in your life sale of house lottery recovery of loans if you are able to do that from your friend rick or taking loans income matlab see don't think of it as you are earning think of it as inflow of cash and outflow of cash when you take a loan from the bank is it is there an inflow of cash yes do you take loan every day no is it of a low amount not normally it is of a high amount so those are called as so these are called as expenditures those are called as receipts we are not using the word income here we are using the word receipts what is revenue receipt for you salary every month pocket money ha income now jaise capital expenditure results in creating asset do you think capital receipts also result in creation of something soch ke batao asset means what it is going to give you benefit asset means it is your huck your right to claim benefit from it when you buy a house it is your right to claim the benefit of staying in your house when you buy a phone it is your right to claim benefit of vehicle etc etc when you give a uh, loan to your friend it is your right to take interest that is the benefit uh, on loan that is creating your asset similarly when you create or oh, sorry when you have a receipt of a capital nature do you think it creates a liability what is asset your right to get benefit what is liability your obligation to give benefit to someone else when you take a loan do you have to pay interest yes so now we come to the proper terms receipts and 
expenditure receipts can be divided as capital receipt and revenue receipt expenditure can be same capital short me capex bolte capital expenditure and revenue expenditure now these almost always uh, create asset when we go for government accounts when we go for fiscal policy government accounts these might not always create a liability might not always create a liability a division is there in our fiscal policy that it can be a liability creating capital receipt or a non liability creating capital receipt can you give me an example of liability creating capital receipt taking loan can you give me an example of non liability creating capital receipt recovery of loans there is no liability involved theek hai so isko please note the terms very important this is called as debt creating capital receipt debt dbt debt this is called as non debt creating capital receipt what is debt debt means obligation burden theek hai chalo now you know this iske aage you are only going to tell me but did you understand the difference between capital and revenue questions might come which of the following are included in the capital portion of the budget theek hai now tell me investment flowing to india kaha aayega isme se out of 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 which capital receipt debt debt creating whenever we get investments it is our obligation to give them interest on that it is our obligation to give them so many benefits facilities for that it is debt creating क्या क्या एफ डी आई विल नॉट बी अ डेट क्रिएटिंग वाई आर यू सेंग दैट हाँ एफ डी आई विल नॉट बी बट वेन वी टेक लोन्स फ्रॉम देम दैट विल बी अ डेट क्रिएटिंग कैपिटल रिसीट हाँ इन्वेस्टमेंट मतलब आई एम से हमने उठा लिया पैसा आया वैसा सॉरी आई मेट दैट एफ डी आई आर इन्वेस्टमेंट वी आर कमिंग इट इज अ कैपिटल रिसीट but loans you took or another example i will tell chalo world bank gave us grant kahan aayega grant of 2000 crore rupees is it a capital receipt i use the word grant yahan galti hoti it's a grant ठीक है नाउ वी नो द डिफरेंस और वी शुड नो द डिफरेंस बिटवीन ग्रांट वर्सेस लोन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यहां पे गलती होती है ग्रांट वर्सेस लोन व्हाट इज ग्रांट ग्रांट मींस यू रिसीव इट फेयरली फ्रीक्वेंटली ग्रांट्स है एंड उस पर कोई ऑब्लिगेशन अटैच नहीं है कि यू हैव टू यूज इट इन सच अ मैनर उस पर इतना वापस देना है यू डोंट हैव टू रीपे इट इट इज अ ग्रांट इट इज अ ग्रांट गिवन लेट अस स्टार्ट From the start, what is the capital debt creating capital receipt? Ka example, batao. Chalo fast for the government. You know this. That is why I am asking you. Loans taken. Uske alawa, any other debt creating capital receipt that you know? Loans, all money. This loans include everything. Ah, sabse aaga ek saath. This together. Nee. Non debt creating capital receipt का एक ही example you have to remember. Non debt creating capital receipt only one example you have to remember. Disinvestment, disinvestment proceeds, biggest example. What is disinvestment? What is disinvestment? what is strategic disinvestment what is 100% company hai when the company becomes a government company you should know a company becomes a government company when it holds more than 50% of the shares and what what do i mean by government holds central government state government local government or a combination of them anyone so 25 26 state government central government chalega it's a government company so let us say government holds 51% share in one company in another company government holds 100% shares 
right when government wants to increase its holding what will it do it will buy more shares iska holding ho jata hai 60% that is called as investment more investment ulta socho when the government wants to reduce the shares in its company it will be called as disinvestment now tell me ye 100 se disinvestment hua and government brought it to 55% which means 45% was sold and ye 51 se leke 49% hua which means 2% was sold and yahan pe 45% was sold which is strategic in nature first one did you understand it is not selling of 40% 50% shares it is where the control shifts to the new buyer ya jo bhi whoever is purchasing unless it is also an another government that's a different thing so it will not be a strategic one did you understand when the control shifts if i tell you technically so this is one of the criteria कंट्रोल शिफ्ट का क्राइटेरिया दो तीन और होते वी डोंट वांट टू गो इन टू डेट दैट फॉर एग्जांपल गवर्नमेंट विल सेल टू परसेंट एंड गो टू फोर्टी नाइन परसेंट बट गवर्नमेंट विल रिटेन राइट्स विद इट सेल्फ टू अपॉइंट डायरेक्टर्स ऑफ द कंपनी देन कंट्रोल किसके पास ठीक है दैट इज अ सेपरेट थिंग बट जस्ट टू लेट यू नो कि दिस इज वन कॉमन क्राइटेरिया यू कैन से मेन क्राइटेरिया दिस इज स्ट्रैटेजिक इन नेचर दिस इज नॉन स्ट्रैटेजिक इन नेचर आर वी गोइंग फॉर दिस इन्वेस्टमेंट एग्रेसिवली येस और नो तो पॉलिसी है लास्ट टू लास्ट लास्ट इयर्स लास्ट इयर्स बजट करंट बजट नहीं लास्ट बजट में डिस इन्वेस्टमेंट पॉलिसी दिया है कि गवर्नमेंट विल मेंटेन और डिवाइड द इंडस्ट्रीज इनटू कोर एंड नॉन कोर ठीक है नॉन कोर खत्म कोर में सर्टेन स्ट्रेटेजिक ऑटोनॉमी वुड बी मेंटेन बाकी खत्म ठीक है खत्म मीन क्लोज डाउन प्राइवेटाइज मर्ज एक्सेट्रा देर आर फोर पॉइंट इन द इन द डिस इन्वेस्टमेंट पॉलिसी फॉर मेन्स यू शुड बाई हार्ट देम आई वुड सजेस्ट क्योंकि वो इट टेक्स टाइम टू राइट इफ यू डोंट रिमेंबर थिंग्स ठीक है व्हाट इज आर्टिकल वन वन टू इट आल्सो सेज दैट इट आल्सो सेज दैट यस एक्सपेंडिचर शुड बी डिवाइडेड इनटू रेवेन्यू एंड अदर नेचर ये अदर बोला है रेवेन्यू एंड अदर नेचर अदर मींस व्हाट कैपिटल हमने उसको नाम दे दिया कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर रेवेन्यू रिसीट का एग्जाम्पल रेवेन्यू रिसीट let us divide it into tax and non tax example sorry dividends from psus fees penalties fines jo collect karte hai interest interest on loans taken or given 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 when you give loan so when you give loan where it come where it will come Indian government gives loan to Sri Lanka. Loans given will come here. Interest uska will come here. Loans taken would come here. Iska interest? Tax me you know direct tax, indirect tax, different kinds of ये तो छोड़ दो. ठीक है? main is you should know the difference between capital and revenue that is very important questions have been coming regularly 2015 maybe i think there was a question and so easy they come kaise lagta hai book se hi utha hai but hum galat karke aa jate we we you know kaun sa investment capital receipt abhi investment it depends if we have borrowed that thing and if we have uh, usme debt component hai बोरोइंग है तो इसमें आएगा नहीं तो इसमें आएगा हाँ मैं वही बोल रहा हूँ इट डिपेंड्स अगर उनको डिविडेंड देना पड़ेगा तो वो डिविडेंड तो आपका वैसे भी रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर में चला ही जाएगा उसका इन्वेस्टमेंट इज ऑफ टू टाइप्स वन इज आपने एज अ लोन लिया है तो दे हैव इन्वेस्टेड इन दिस या वो खुद अपनी दुकान खोल रही है यहाँ आके ठीक है सो इट डिपेंड्स ऑन दैट इफ इट इज अ लोन और इफ इट इज इन द नेचर ऑफ अ बोरोइंग देन इट विल कम यर very important grants to states kaha aayega central government giving grants to states central government giving loan to state and central government giving grant to state very important grant versus loan grants see grants na the word grant itself says ki you you need money we are giving this we are, we will forget the money After giving, grant मिला है, 
ठीक है लोन इज वी विल नॉट फॉरगेट वी हैव गिवन यू मनी एंड वी विल टेक इट बैक अलॉन्ग विथ इंटरेस्ट और सी सम कंडीशन आर अटैच टू ग्रांट ऑल्सो ऐसा नहीं कि कुछ ऑब्लिगेशन नहीं होता है बट नेचर सब्सटैंडली और सब्सटैंस में नेचर क्या है इट इज ऑफ अ रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर सो ऑलवेज रिमेंबर ग्रांट्स टू लोन्स कम यर टेल मी डिफेंस कहाँ आता है अच्छा सब्सिडी कहाँ आता है इट्स अ रेगुलर एक्सपेंडिचर रोज करते एवरी डे सब्सिडी विल कम यर इंटरेस्ट विल कम यर डिफेंस कहाँ आएगा डिफेंस कहाँ आएगा दैट इज अ क्वेश्चन वाई वाई रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर क्यों हम खरीदते नहीं है वी बाय सबमरी फ्रेंच कंपनी तो चली गई द नेचर ऑफ आर डिफेंस इज सर्च की सेवेंटी परसेंट इज पेंशन एंड सैलरीज सो इफ यू हैव टू क्लासीफाई इट इज ब्रॉडली इन द बजट इट विल कम अंडर रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर ठीक है उसके अंदर कैपिटल कंपोनेंट भी होता है एंड डिफेंस बजट में देन यू हैव कैपिटल एंड रेवेन्यू बट ऑन द फेस ऑफ इट डिफेंस कम्स अंडर रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर वाई नेचर इज पेंशन सैलरी ह्यूज कॉस्ट वी हैव उसका वही तो अभी हमें कम करना है ना सो मेनी कमिटीज हैव सजेस्टेड कि रिड्यूस द टू टू टेल रेशियो एंड आप यू डोंट हैव मनी लेफ्ट फॉर कैपिटल एक्विजिशन आप करते नहीं हो एक पास्ट मुझे बता देना व्हाट डिड वी सी यहाँ पे लेट अस राइट रेवेन्यू रिसीट नहीं एक्सपेंडिचर लिख रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर रेवेन्यू रिसीट कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर कैपिटल रिसीट ठीक है वी नो दिस नाउ टेल मी इफ आई हैव टू फाइंड टोटल डेफिसिट मुझे टोटल डेफिसिट फाइंड करना है क्या करूँ व्हाट विल आई डू इफ आई हैव टू फाइंड टोटल डेफिसिट अच्छा इधर टोटल लिख देता हूँ क्या करूँगा मैं बताओ टोटल एक्सपेंडिचर माइनस टोटल रिसीट वुड गिव मी माय डेफिसिट क्या करूँ उसका मैं आई एम अ गवर्नमेंट I know कि my expenditure is ten thousand crores. I know my receipts are eight thousand crores. Two thousand crores is my deficit. What will I do of that two thousand? Borrow. ठीक है वो borrow कहाँ से होगा? That can be internally, externally. That can be from banks, from individuals like us. That can be from multilateral institution. That can be from anywhere. That is a उसका आगे वाला part है. Right? Now coming to rules of financial management. In your personal life also you should follow this. Always try to satisfy your revenue expenditure from your revenue receipts means don't take loan for and use that money for watching movie or eating food always try to fulfill your revenue expenditure from your revenue receipt only because a regular expenditure it has to match with your regular receipt otherwise problem hoga similarly government faces a dilemma ki गवर्नमेंट का इफ गवर्नमेंट रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर फॉल्स और इट बिकम्स मोर देन रेवेन्यू रिसीट देन वी कॉल इट एज अ रेवेन्यू डेफिसिट वाई आर वी कैलकुलेटिंग डिफरेंट नेचर ऑफ डेफिसिट क्यों कर रहे हैं वाई आर वी कैलकुलेटिंग डिफरेंट डेफिसिट ऑल टूगेदर एनी आइडिया सी सिंपल है कैपिटल ऑलवेज रिमेंबर कैपिटल expenditures and capital receipts are asset creating or liability creating if you take money of capital nature chances are ki it has an obligation with it if it has an obligation with it you should use it to spend in such a manner ki some asset is also created some benefit is also created to hi match hoga if you take loan you are paying interest but if you don't use it to buy something or use it productively then where will you give the interest from So always remember, revenue expenditure has to go from revenue receipt. It has to. So that is why we calculate these deficits separately. The government ka how much is the revenue expenditure, how much is the revenue receipt, and how much is the revenue deficit? Yes or no? ठीक है? ये हो गया. चलो. If I ask you, revenue deficit तो ठीक है. If I ask you कि out of total capital expenditure receipt सब कुछ मिला के, if I ask you कि uh, how much is the 
total borrowing that the government has to make. So you told me total expenditure minus total receipt. Itna borrow karna hai. Is everyone agreeing to this? Ki this is what we have to borrow because this is the shortfall. 10,000 minus 8,000, 2,000 we have to borrow. Abhi but capital ex sorry capital receipts may don't you think there are two types we saw hum kya find kare? what are we trying to find we are trying to find total borrowings we are trying to find how much have we borrowed how much we have to borrow Chalo, you have to buy a new home. You will find ki your entire sources, all income combined, 80 lakhs. Ho hai. Your home is uh, costing you 1 crore. 20 lakhs you will borrow. Barabar? Now, in that 80 lakhs, did you take your revenue receipt? Yes. And did you take your capital receipt? Yes. Hai? But you are trying to find out this. Kitna loan lena hai. Debt creating hoga na wo aapke liye. That will be a debt creating receipt. You are trying to find this. So, this does not exist in your equation now. You have not taken a loan yet. So, what you will do? You will take this. Are you understanding? So, kya hoga? I will take my total kharcha, total expenditure minus I will take my revenue receipts regular plus do you know why non debt creating? Because we are trying to find debt creating capital receipt. Wo nahi hai paas. We don't know that figure. We are trying to find that. How government functions, you know, expenditures are sanctioned when budget is passed. So expenditures are fixed. Collections are targeted and collect hota hai revenue receipts. And bacha hua, what is remaining is borrowed. It is not ki first we borrow and then we spend. It is we know what to spend, we know how much we are earning, and then we find out how much we will borrow. That is the budget making process. We know which scheme requires how much money. We know our revenues are this much and then remaining is your borrowing. So you don't have debt creating receipts now. You are trying to find debt creating receipts by reducing your revenue receipts plus non-debt creating receipts from your total expenditure. And this is nothing but a formula for Fiscal deficit. Formula Ratna nahi hai. You don't have to wrote learn the formula for fiscal deficit. Did you understand the logic behind fiscal deficit? What is fiscal deficit? Answer one word. What is fiscal deficit? Borrowing. When we say fiscal deficit, it is nothing but that much amount the government has to borrow. All these deficits are always at as a percentage of GDP. Okay, so, kitna is your production? 1 lakh crore, 145 lakh crores is your GDP. How much is the fiscal deficit? Let's say 3 percent. So, uska 3 percent is government has to borrow it. Samja? Now, twist in the story. Grants to loans, no, sorry, grants to states. Take this as an example. Ye hai. Central government gives 10,000 crores as grant to Madhya Pradesh. Kaha aega in the central government's budget? Revenue expenditure, right? Pay attention, huh? this is very important. Central government gave grants worth 50,000 crores to Madhya Pradesh government. It came under revenue expenditure. Chalo, very good. Tomorrow you come to know Madhya Pradesh government has used usme se 3,000 crore rupees to construct bridges. What is the nature of the expense that Madhya Pradesh is doing? Capital expense. Central government gets angry. We gave you for revenue purposes. You are utilizing for capital purposes. Okay. Now imagine this is central government, this is state government, and this is your expenditure. Ultimately, bridge bandra. Had 
had central uh, state government not been there central government would have constructed bridges for 3000 crores where would cg had classified it capital expenditure why because it is capital in nature bridge bana rahe when it gave to central government it was a grant uh, state government it was a grant when it actually spent it it became capital in nature central government would have recognized that money as grant in revenue expenditure yes or no ultimate use kya hua uska where did it go as a capital nature central government says i will remove it from my revenue expenditure i will add it to my capital expenditure see state is just a pass through entity money is going from center to state and state to bridge but nature is changing theek hai central government will say it is not my revenue expenditure but my capital expenditure because ultimately in the country capital expenditure ho raha i do state do doesn't matter now if this is reducing hai na isse minus karenge we will minus 3000 crores from revenue expenditure we'll add it to capital expenditure chalo total mein add ho jayega capital mein capital part mein but isme less hoga what do you think will happen to this rd will it increase or reduce expenditure kam ho raha hai na to deficit bhi kam hoga theek hai so this will reduce so what we did is revenue expenditure minus grants to states which resulted in creating capital assets barabar na grants to states for capital assets grants to states which are capital in nature will give me effective revenue deficit effectively net revenue deficit to itna hai because doglapan capital ho gaya effectively my deficit is reducing now because that expenditure which i which i thought ki it is for revenue purposes it has now turned capital in nature पार्टी बदल लिया तो नाउ यूर ऑल्सो आई रिड्यूस आई चेंज द पार्टी कहां पे हाँ हाँ आर डी आर डी आर डी इज इफेक्टिव रेवेन्यू डेफिसिट तो नेट इफेक्टिव रेवेन्यू डेफिसिट शोज की एक्चुअली रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर एंड एक्चुअली रेवेन्यू रिसीट कितना है एंड दैट इज इज रेवेन्यू डेफिसिट गुड और बैड very bad revenue deficit should is very bad in nature because at least day to day kharcha you should be able to generate ha huh. for constructing infrastructure and all it's okay you don't uh, go ahead with that this is the most important obviously of all three 2014 government comes to power bjp you are appointed in ias in ministry of finance and you say ki uh, and government asks you in the first year of the budget government asks you to prepare deficit figures kitne hai hamare you make and you present it to the government and you say ki sir these are our deficits let's say you calculated the, you are new government you calculated fiscal deficit to be suppose 5% government is saying or new government is saying this is too high why try to find the reason now what will be the reason either this is high or this is low or this is low then only deficit would be high we found out इसमें ना टोटल एक्सपेंडिचर में वी फाउंड आउट दैट टोटल एक्सपेंडिचर हैज बोथ कैपिटल एंड रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर करेक्ट वी फाउंड आउट दैट प्रीवियस गवर्नमेंट हैड टेकन अ लॉट ऑफ लोन फ्रॉम वेरियस एजेंसीज इनसाइड आउटसाइड इंडिया सो इफ यू आर टेकिंग अ लॉट ऑफ लोन योर इंटरेस्ट वुड बी हायर और लोअर इंटरेस्ट बर्डन वुड बी हायर और लोअर हायर सो दैट वुड दैट वुड इंक्रीज योर टोटल एक्सपेंडिचर और रिड्यूस योर टोटल एक्सपेंडिचर increase your total expenditure so you found out that these loans are taken by previous government due to which your interest obligation has increased due to which your fiscal deficit has increased correct so you say ki we will present it in another manner we will say ki hamara nahi hai this is not ours we have just come to power this interest obligation is not ours what we will do is we'll reduce that interest from this matlab effectively we'll reduce it from fiscal deficit and then we will call it as a primary deficit so nothing but fiscal deficit minus interest on loans already taken primary deficit because interest burden to hai that is not ours but 
these four deficits are, and I am waiting for a question where UPSC will ask you to find deficit. Figures dega, find deficit. And then we are confused ki primary mein kya hai and fiscal mein. Loan recovered, yes, yes. Loan recovered is definitely non-debt creating capital receipt. Loan recovered ho gaya, capital receipted, no obligation attached to it, non-debt. Did you understand all four deficits? Very important. It's not a fiscal policy. Nothing more to this. Revenue deficit, fiscal deficit, primary deficit, and effective revenue deficit, ERD. Effective revenue deficit. Earlier, we used to track all of them, but now focus is only on dash, fiscal deficit. Change kya FRBM. Mein. Earlier, we used to track others also. Which all these deficits are always as a percentage of what? Always as a percentage of GDP. Did you read the recommendations of 15 Finance Commission? Have you read it? Please read it. Okay, theory hai, it is not conceptual. But a question, one statement if it comes, ki 15 Finance Commission recommended this. Or 14th pe question has already come in prelims. So 15th pe bhi if you read, from where to read, I'll give you the source. Type 15 Finance Commission PRS summary. One page hai, but usme sab kuch cover ho Just read that. Aaj hi kar lo. PRS summary of 15 Finance Commission. PRS summary of 15 Finance Commission. So simple question, you only tell me, what is the difference between gross fiscal deficit and net fiscal deficit? So just think, it is something to think about. The questions like these come in exam and or anyone else also. Gross fiscal deficit is borrowing. Government must have lent some money to others also. Reduce kar do, net fiscal deficit. Gross fiscal deficit minus lending by government to anyone, be it other countries also or anyone else. That is net fiscal deficit. Because on one hand we are borrowing and lend bhi kar rahe hain. Always remember this. Gross net concept is there in everywhere. Is there everywhere. Bank, banking may be to, it's too, uh, too important in banking, gross and net ka. In union government, yes, but if you take union plus states, so overall level. This, this is just a small woe, huh, gross and net pay aagya question. So otherwise, when we speak about FD, it is just normal FD only. Usna wo log differentiate uh, nahi karte. Okay, so can we take a break now or chalao mein? Sir, bas ho gaya, sir, break. Acha, uh, you guys have given two, three times to theek hai, but for pressures, I'm asking. Is it okay? Samaj mein aare? Something? Do teen to hai fresher. Kya hai mein puch? Sir, won't that interest on loan taken already uh, subtracted under NDCR for calculating? Nahi na, interest on loan actually is your revenue expenditure, na? Interest on loan is your revenue expenditure. Bargavi. So, wo revenue expenditure se hata na hai. We have to reduce it from revenue expenditure. What is the formula for primary deficit? Fiscal deficit minus interest on loans. What is effective revenue deficit? Yes, class has started, Suraj. Effective revenue deficit is revenue deficit minus grants for creating capital assets, right? So, this is all about pre May. You will have questions or you can have questions on different types of deficits or you can have uh, questions on uh, what we say what are the classify the components or classify these borrowings or what is borrowings or these components into capital nature revenue nature expenditure receipts as a questions prelims may uh, it might come now from where do government uh, governments get this money ye chalo we decided that 3% fiscal deficit hona chahi, or this would be our 3% would be our target, which comes to let's say 10,000 crores. From where would government get this money? 
गवर्नमेंट कैन बोरो इट गवर्नमेंट कैन बोरो फ्रॉम विद इन इंडिया आउटसाइड इंडिया फ्रॉम एनी वन ठीक है सो फर्स्ट इज तो गवर्नमेंट विल से कि ठीक है हाउ कैन आई ट्राई टू इंक्रीज माई एग्जिस्टिंग रिसीट्स ठीक है गवर्नमेंट विल ट्राई टू इंक्रीज द टैक्स इंक्रीज द अदर थिंग्स फिर भी नहीं हो रहा है इवन इफ दैट इज नॉट हैपनिंग देन गवर्नमेंट विल ट्राई टू बोरो ठीक है नाउ वी कम टू अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कंसेप्ट ठीक एनी मनी इन द इकोनॉमी इन द इकोनॉमी एनी मनी is a pool there is a pool of money there is not unlimited money in the economy theek hai ek limited number hai trillions of rupees hai in the economy which is there now if and yahan pe who is giving money banks are giving money other multilateral institutions all india financial institutions are giving money they are the lenders here who are the borrowers of money people like us businesses governments are also सिंपल लॉजिक क्या है वॉट हैपन्स इफ डिमांड गोज अप एंड सप्लाई डज नॉट कैच अप प्राइस गोज अप सेम थिंग हैपन्स फॉर मनी मनी का सप्लाई इज लिमिटेड इन द इकोनॉमी बैंक बैंकिंग सेक्टर में इकोनॉमी में मनी सप्लाई है वॉट हैपन्स इफ एवरी वन ऑफ अस डिसाइड्स टू बोरो क्या होगा बैंक्स विल राइज रेज द प्राइज ऑफ मनी वॉट इज द प्राइज ऑफ मनी इंटरेस्ट इंटरेस्ट इज द प्राइज ऑफ मनी सिमिलरली वेन गवर्नमेंट हैज अज डेफिसिट गवर्नमेंट गोज टू बोरो huge chunk of the available money what will happen to remaining money remaining money would be sold at a lower interest or higher interest higher interest why because government has already taken away so much so who is left to borrow now businessmen other big institute big institutions and people like us so we will get the money at a higher interest okay now do you think everyone who had plans to borrow will go ahead with the borrowing or some of them will cancel some of them will cancel because interest rate is now too high i wanted to buy a house i was expecting 6% rate of interest but now rate of interest has become 8.5% i cancelled my plan i will see later on theek okay? hai is there is this a bad thing or a good thing for the economy people cancelling their plans to borrow is a good thing or a bad thing why because if they will not remember to catch up with the demand supplier had to install a new machinery supplier had to hire more people to get that new machinery and more people supplier had to take loan from bank now if he cancels his plan to take loan he is not able to increase the supply he is not able to expand demand will be unmet prices would be high inflation would be high at the same time economy will not go to a next level economy will not play at a higher level of output simple so this is very bad so this phenomena when government takes away a very big share of available money takes away means borrows a very big share of money available in the economy due to which others due to which others have uh, others get the money at high rate of interest or others cancel out their plans is called as crowding out it is called as crowding out crowding out who is getting crowded out others because of whose action government's action government's action to borrow what is crowding in government's action which results in increased supply or which results in increased benefits to others is called as crowding in simple government announces to make a bridge government said कि आई विल मेक अ ब्रिज आई विल रिलीज अ टेंडर हु हैज गॉट द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू इंक्रीज देयर बिजनेस आर्किटेक्ट्स डिजाइनर्स सीमेंट मैन्युफैक्चरर्स लेबरर्स सो मेनी पीपल बिकॉज ऑफ गवर्नमेंट एक्शन इंक्रीजिंगली पॉजिटिव इफेक्ट इज सीन इन दैट पर्टिकुलर सेक्टर दैट इज कॉल्ड एज क्राउडिंग इन सो एवरी वन विल कम्पीट कि अच्छा आई विल सर आई विल गिव यू सीमेंट एट लोअर कॉस्ट आई विल मेक एक्स्ट्रा सीमेंट एक्सेट्रा दैट इज क्राउडिंग इन दिस इज क्राउडिंग आउट that is crowding in very important chalo if government is not able to borrow enough from this still fiscal deficit is unmet to to bahar jayega it will go externally and it will borrow from outside what if government is not able to do that also there is one person who can give money to the government rbi it can directly print money and give to the government it can give money to the government as a loan also directly from rbi so earlier this system used to happen very rampantly ki government directly used to go to rbi and say ki give me money गवर्नमेंट इज टू पिक अप द फोन कॉल किया मनी घर पे नाउ वॉट इज द नेगेटिव इफेक्ट ऑफ दिस 
देर इज नो कंट्रोल ऑन गवर्नमेंट बोरोइंग गवर्नमेंट की यहाँ आर बी आई रेडी है प्लस इन्फ्लेशन यू नो वाई प्रिंटिंग ऑफ करेंसी इज इन्फ्लेशनरी राइट वाई इट इज इन्फ्लेशनरी बिकॉज इट इज गिविंग ब्लाइंड परचेजिंग पावर टू द पीपल कि जो खरीदना है खरीदो वॉट एवर यू वॉन्ट टू बाय बाय बट कमेंट्स रेट रियल आउटपुट डज नॉट इंक्रीज विद दैट विच रिजल्ट इन इन्फ्लेशन सो नाउ दिस सिस्टम वॉज स्टॉप्ड इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी सेवन एंड इन टू थाउजेंड सिक्स मॉनिटाइजेशन वॉज स्टॉप्ड ठीक है मॉनिटाइजेशन ऑफ डेफिसिट बोलते हैं उसको इट इज कॉल्ड एज मॉनिटाइज डेफिसिट दैट पार्ट ऑफ डेफिसिट विच इज फाइनेंस्ड बाय आर बी आई इज कॉल्ड एज मॉनिटाइज डेफिसिट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू बोरो हाँ इफ यू वॉन्ट टू टेक मनी फ्रॉम आर बी आई आर बी आई सेज की वी विल मेक एन एग्रीमेंट टू टू थाउजेंड थ्री में एन एग्रीमेंट वॉज मेड बिटवीन आर बी आई एंड गवर्नमेंट एज पर प्री डिसाइडेड अमाउंट ओनली वी विल लेंड यू मनी ऐसा एड हॉक और रैंडम or whatever you want you cannot do theek okay, hai so now monetization of deficit happens on a very planned level on a pre planned level that is one change happened in 2003 second change happened in 2003 was legislative passed a very stringent law on the financial uh, kya bolte to keep a financial check on the government which is frbm act 2003 have you heard of that fiscal responsibility upsc has already milked questions of that act bahut question aake gaye frbm mein four five questions have come fiscal responsibility and budgetary management act 2003 i hope you have read about it what is the main logic behind it it's in the name itself fiscal responsibility to bring fiscal responsibility and budgetary management how does frbm ensure fiscal responsibility it gives targets main main target is of fiscal deficit theek okay? hai so frbm tracks four things FRBM tracks revenue deficit as a percentage of GDP. FRBM tracks fiscal deficit as a percentage of GDP. FRBM tracks tax revenue, tax to GDP ratio basically, tax revenue as a percentage of GDP, and FRBM tracks your outstanding liabilities, debt as a percentage of GDP. Abhi track is done on all these things, but before three years, two years, ha, a 2016 ke pehle. uh frbm was very stringent with respect to the fiscal deficit target fiscal deficit target was set at 3% plus you had an option of exceeding it by 0.5% this is all given in books so i'm not writing it here standard book mein diya hua hai 0.5% what was it called as frbm tracks four things theek hai what does frbm track uh, revenue deficit to gdp fiscal deficit tax to gdp and fourth is outstanding liabilities which means your debt frbm had set a stringent target of earlier revenue deficit was also targeted but then we stopped us pe restriction lagana see tracking is happening but legally restriction is on fiscal deficit which was set at 3% of gdp plus you can go up to 0.5% tak you can go this 0.5% you can go only under extreme situation like failure of agriculture failure of industry or you are in a very uh, growth is negative or you know growth is negative bahut uh, sara there are various conditions three or four main hai that is useful for mains prelims ke liye to itna nahi hai this 0.5% give me the term for this escape clause सिंपल है द टर्म एस्केप क्लॉज इज ऑफन सीन इन न्यूज इन कंटेक्ट ऑफ वॉट फोर ऑप्शन वुड बी गिवन विच विल बी वेरी क्लोज टू इट एफ आर बी एम हो गया एक एक दूसरा कुछ मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी हो जाएगा और समथिंग लाइक दैट दे विल गिव एंड देन दे विल से दिस इज अंडर एफ आर बी एम एस्केप क्लॉज यू कैन एस्केप फ्रॉम द रिस्ट्रिक्शन ऑफ एफ आर बी एम एस्केप क्लॉज एंड यू विल हैव टू वैलिडली जस्टिफाई यू विल हैव टू गवर्नमेंट विल हैव टू जस्टिफाई टू द लेजिस्लेचर कि हाँ इतना है Do you know the four statements which are there under FRBM? वो तो रटना ही है. You have to buy heart it. Question has already come. There are four statements which are laid by the government in the parliament, which are mandated by FRBM Act. First is fiscal policy strategy statement, medium term expenditure framework. इसे चार statements हैं. Please, if you want the names, I can give the names also. But वो थोड़ा macroeconomic framework statement. लिख दो आई विल डिक्टेट चाहिए तो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू राइट माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक फ्रेमवर्क स्टेटमेंट मीडियम टर्म फिजिकल पॉलिसी स्टेटमेंट
फिजिकल पॉलिसी स्टेटमेंट फिजिकल पॉलिसी स्ट्रेटेजी स्टेटमेंट मीडियम टर्म एक्सपेंडिचर फ्रेमवर्क स्टेटमेंट सेक्शन थ्री में है ये ऑल दीज स्टेटमेंट आर मेंशन इन सेक्शन थ्री ऑफ द एफ आर बी एम एक्ट Out of the reasons for escape clause, out of the reasons for availing escape clause, collapse of agriculture, ये वो. There is one reason, one reason which is a bit technical. So there UPSC might confuse you with different data. So that one reason is sharp decline in real output of at least three percent. Decline in real output of at least three percent below average of four quarters. बिलो द एवरेज ऑफ पास्ट फोर क्वार्टर्स मतलब मीन्स की इफ योर आउटपुट हैज डिक्लाइंड सो मच थ्री परसेंट बिलो एवरेज ऑफ लास्ट फोर क्वार्टर्स लास्ट फोर क्वार्टर्स का एवरेज लेके इफ थ्री परसेंट से ज्यादा उसमें इट हैज डिक्लाइंड देन यू कैन ट्रिगर एस्केप क्लॉज एंड यू कैन रिमूव दिस रिस्ट्रिक्शन ऑफ फिजिकल डेफिसिट sharp decline in real output sharp decline in real output of at least 3% of at least 3% below the average of below the average of past or previous four quarters ठीक है विच कमिटी वॉज देयर टू रिव्यू एफ आर बी एम एन के सिंह रिव्यू कमिटी एन के सिंह इज देयर एवरीवेयर फिफ्टीन फाइनेंस कमीशन एन के सिंह रिव्यू कमिटी का सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट रिकमेंडेशन अच्छा रिकमेंडेशन ऑफ एन के सिंह रिव्यू कमिटी कैन ऑल्सो फॉर्म पार्ट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन एन के सिंह रिव्यू कमिटी गेव अ फ्यू रिकमेंडेशन टू two major recommendations was to make debt as a primary target ye jo hai na fourth make debt as a primary target first recommendation was to make debt as a primary target usme bhi target diya hua hai upsc has already asked question on this 2018 mein Target should be 60% of GDP. Debt to GDP ratio should be 60%. 44 center, 24 states. UPSC has asked question on this statement, particular one. Target recommended by N K Singh Review Committee: 60% of GDP. Debt to GDP ratio: 60%. 40 center, 20 states. The theory is there is no concept. Huh? This is there is no concept in this. Itna target hai, hai. What is our current debt to GDP after COVID? 90 plus <laughs> target 60 and second very important recommendation is and that has been recommended by raguram rajan committee other previous committees also is to have an independent fiscal council very important Now, if this statement comes, the Enkasing Review Committee has recommended setting up an independent fiscal council. We don't know, na, if it is true or not, because ये तो हम skip. We normally skip reading these things. So these two are the most important, uh, you can say, recommendations. There is one key word that you have to know. अभी आ सकता है, because glide path. Have you heard of this? What is glide path? What is glide path? तो ग्लाइड पाथ मीन्स ऐसा स्लाइड हो रहा है ना इफ यू कैन इमेजिन दिस 
so what the committee said that ki your uh, this fiscal deficit you have to reduce your fiscal deficit in a slowly slowly staggered manner 0.5% every year asa dheere 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 so you should follow a glide path to reducing fiscal deficit which brings me to two most most important terms that you should know one is fiscal stimulus can you tell me what is fiscal stimulus fiscal stimulus is just just increasing people's or increasing money with the people what is the tool that government has to increase money with the people basically to increase to go for fiscal stimulus what should government do there is only major huh? there is only one major tool that is tax major tool taxes subsidies and all are there but major upar niche it can do with this what is opposite of fiscal stimulus fiscal consolidation why it is called as consolidation because you are bridging the gap between revenue and expenses receipts and expenses you are reducing your fiscal deficit so reduction in fiscal deficit reducing the gap between revenue and expenditure is nothing but fiscal consolidation consolidate kar rahe ho by the way for mains this consolidation word is so important not in economics but for you personally this word a huh, consolidation why because your notes would be in 10 different books 10 different sources for mains you have to consolidate them ye hoga trust me ye hoga then you try to remember me yeah i told you this suraj is saying fiscal slippage what is fiscal slippage ki e na ho pai can't do can't meet the target fiscal slippage means you missed out the target you increased your uh, what you say uh, deficit fiscal deficit increase okay during covid everything was on hold i hope you know this because priority was social expenditure lot of fiscal deficit was uh, to be incurred did we uh, ha- do we have any past instance of such excess fiscal deficit pehle kabhi hua hai apart from covid 2008 global recession ke baad after global recession again we went because we had to shield ourselves from the global effects and we did that beautifully in foundation batch we discussed all of that also but theek hai abhi we'll skip that and after that it was felt ki there is a need ki ha this is okay this was an exception but there is a need to reduce the expenditure in 2013 mein frbm act was uh, 2013 mein frbm act was amended once more 12 mein the statement was added 13 mein amendment amendment was passed so after experiences acts are getting amended abhi bhi amend ho jayega do teen saal mein one more amendment will come after this covid experience and after missing out the target ठीक है फिजिकल एक्सपांशन फिजिकल कंसोलिडेशन फिजिकल स्टिमुलस ऑल ऑफ दीज आर सेम टर्म्स सो प्लीज व्हेन दे कम इन एग्जाम डोंट बी कंफ्यूज्ड नाउ चलो लेट अस से कि 3% टारगेट है एफआरबीएम टारगेट इज 3% एंड गवर्नमेंट सेड कि ठीक है एफआरबीएम टारगेट इज देयर नाउ इफ गवर्नमेंट हैज टू इनकर एन एक्सपेंडिचर ऑन एन ऑयल फील्ड 50000 करोड़ गवर्नमेंट को ऑयल फील्ड पे एक्सपेंडिचर करना है बट गवर्नमेंट नोस दैट 3% i cannot exceed if i incur this expenditure i will cross frbm you know what will government do government will pick up the phone and call ongc you incur that expenditure you borrow money and incur that expenditure now who is the owner of ongc government so government is not borrowing directly but borrowing via its companies so this is called as off budget borrowing or extra budgetary liability off budget off balance sheet extra budget aise sab words are there so off budget borrowing you can say in case in review committee also said that ye kam karo this practice off budget ya extra budgetary lot of state governments do this Yeah, off balance sheet liabilities or so. What are the ill effects of high fiscal deficit? Reducing economic growth because your see your entire money is 
allocated towards serving interest first, which is your revenue expenditure. So where will you incur capital expenditure? When will you incur capital expenditure? Okay. Revenue expenditure is as is good as capital expenditure, but only when that revenue expenditure results in maintenance of capital assets, salaries, regular repairs and maintenance to hospitals and educational institutions. That is revenue expenditure, but good revenue expenditure. Interest on loan taken is a bad revenue expenditure. Okay. Earlier, earlier, when revenue deficit was the target, governments used to aggressively reduce revenue expenditure. Because revenue deficit target meet karna hai. What is the result? Hospital is made, school is made, two years down the line, nobody is there to maintain it. Because there is no expense. So hence, revenue deficit as a target, as a proper target was scrapped. Tracking hota hai, but not as a target on which performance is gauged. Because we realize ki revenue expenditure is also very important. The thing I am trying to say is, uske andar, inside that, interest on loans is a very bad component. If that is big, then the government's Capacity to spend reduces, social obligations obviously government is not able to fulfill and baki, like we saw GDP increase, was a, that is very difficult. Okay? So debt is very, uh, debt is even in personal life and for government also debt is, high debt is very um, bad for the economy. Now tell me, can government in today's time meet all its expenditures with available resources? Yes or no? There is no chance. Q because social obligations plus there are different categories of people earning different levels of income. But you have to give all of them benefits. Okay? So today you can say ideally government can do that, but otherwise government cannot do. So government has to take a loan. Government cannot reduce. What? How did I tell you? What is the flow? Pele expenditure is decided. Then government sees how much revenue I have, and then borrowings remainder is borrowed. So, just because I want to reduce my borrowing, I cannot increase my revenue beyond a point of time. Just because of that, I government cannot reduce its expenses. Wasteful expenses kar sakta I reduce. But whatever is there which is required, if, if new IITs and AIMS are required, it has to be made. They have to be made. So, government cannot reduce its expenditure. Beyond a point of time, government cannot increase its revenue. But borrowing bhi hai. So, borrowing to karna hai. Borrowing has to be done. And this is called as deficit financing. Very important term. Deficit financing. What is deficit financing? Deficit financing is you are financing your expenses by running a deficit. Jan Wutsky. Consciously. You have to take a loan and buy house. In today's times, in, at today's rates, if you want to buy a house at a very early age, you have to take a loan. Huh, you can save and then you may be able to buy a house. I am talking about a normal person, not a person who is earning a lot of money or who has already a lot of money. This is very important concept, deficit financing. And deficit financing, maybe 2015 or 16 or some year may question has come. So whatever whatever terms I am teaching you, they are not just for knowledge, that I do in foundation, but uh, you have to know about these terms. True or false, it is a past year question, so let us take your past year question knowledge. 14th Finance Commission recommended sector specific grants. Past year knowledge, nahi. past year questions knowledge is absolutely essential for any subject, not only economics. You have to know that this question had come, this, this is the answer, this statement is wrong. And it's not difficult. Please do that before you drown yourself in classes, mock tests, and papers. UPSC papers may drown karo sabse pehle. One more suggestion from my side: do not rely, and this is from me as a student, do not rely on one class ka test. Any class. Don't rely on only one. Rely on multiple. Why? Because one class test will have a certain language, a certain style of setting paper. When you go to UPSC, it's a different language, different paper. Then your mind cannot comprehend at that time. Then you panic and for easy questions, you make mistakes. This happened to a friend of mine. All 40 questions from one test series, all 40 papers from one test series, she solved. She went to the exam, UPSC, and she got confused. I did reverse. I drowned myself in UPSC question papers. Others also, CDS, relevant questions only, and uh, CISF and all. 
बट वेरी फ्यू फाइव सिक्स पेपर बट आई न्यू द लैंग्वेज आई नो कि हाउ टू आइडेंटिफाई मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स द राइट आंसर विदाउट नोइंग द राइट आंसर ये वो फिफ्टी मार्क्स का डिफरेंस है दिस इज दैट विच यू नो विच हेल्प यू क्रॉस द माउंटेन सी ग्राफ ऐसा है दिस इज द कट ऑफ बिफोर द कट ऑफ नर लॉट मेनी पीपल यूर यहाँ पे बहुत लोग हैं यू डोंट हैव टू फॉल यूर यू हैव टू जम्प तो टू जम्प यू हैव टू यूज एनी थिंग दैट यू फील कम्फर्टेबल ठीक है ओके सो वेन गवर्नमेंट टेक्स अ लॉट ऑफ डेट गवर्नमेंट इज नॉट एबल टू रीपे वेन द गवर्नमेंट इज नॉट एबल टू रीपे द डेट और वेन द गवर्नमेंट टेक्स अनदर लोन टू रीपे द एग्जिस्टिंग लोन इट इज कॉल्ड एज अ डेट ट्रैप डीबीटी डेट ट्रैप वेन यू आर टेकिंग वन लोन टू फुलफिल अनदर लोन वेन यू आर नॉट एबल टू रीपे योर लोन इट इज कॉल्ड एज अ डेट ट्रैप फार्मर्स आर इन डेट ट्रैप वी हैव हर्ड ऑफ इट गवर्नमेंट ऑल्सो गो इन डेट ट्रैप we are blessed with so many good neighbors india is blessed with so many good neighbors everyone is facing a different problem altogether we have pakistan theek hai i i was seeing a video in wo vion channel hai na w i o n news channel i was seeing a video and there the anchor said that we don't know what do we want a stable pakistan or an unstable pakistan which is good for us soch ke dekho it is very true we don't know whether we want a stable pakistan or an unstable pakistan <laughs> अनस्टेबल है तो ऑल थर्ड पार्टी टेररिस्ट कम देर स्टेबल है तो स्टेट स्पॉन्सर्ड टेररिस्ट कम सो क्या करेंगे एंड वी नो चाइना देन श्रीलंका वी नो इज रीलिंग थ्रू अव मैसेव डेट ट्रैप और कौन है म्यांमार क्या ही बांग्लादेश आई थिंक हाउ वी ट्रीट बांग्लादेश चाइना ट्रीट्स इंडिया ना क्या ही राइट यू शुड नो दैट डेट इज Uh, divided into two parts internal external debt ha huh? and government non government what is non government debt we borrow debt we take loans tata motors taking loan from bank of america in america will be a non government external debt yes or no theek hai ye simple hai in total debts i'm just giving you the highlights all together in total debt highest portion of debt highest portion of external debt is in the nature of external commercial borrowing ecb is to be i think question has come or something external means taken from outside india commercial borrowing means taken from commercial taken by commercial enterprises it is not government debt theek hai speaking about government or speaking about debt in general like i told you debt can be internal debt can be external if debt is internal so Indian rupees. If debt is external, then dollars or other currencies. ठीक है? Debt can be short term. Debt can be long term. ठीक है? Debt can be concessional. Debt can be non-concessional. Concessional means lower rate of interest pay and all of those things. Fortunately, our debt profile is very good. India's debt profile is good. Majority of the debt is long term debt in nature. it is stable majority is dollar denominated not all ah majority is dollar denominated majority of the debt is long term in nature lot of debt is concessional in nature and long term hai concessional hai wo hota hai na 1% per year for 99 years waisa concessional debt ha waisa concessional debt is there so we have a very fairly stable debt profile i'll share my my experience i have worked very closely with rbi when we were auditing rbi and at that time 2013 mein the governor was subara d subara sir and the incoming governor was raghuram rajan sir so that was a transition phase and so we worked with both of them and it was a very nice uh, enriching experience so tabhi we came to know how rbi works from inside and i became a fan of rbi to be very honest ki the way they work the way professionalism is there in rbi at least in the policy making uh, what we say policy making aspect of it not the working condition and all that's different policy making aspect the reason why we were very less affected with 2008 9 crisis was because of rbi like major credit goes to rbi rbi has shielded the economy in such a manner abhi recently you know a surprise move by rbi nobody was expecting what happened recently rbi raised the repo rate and crr also crr with effect from 1st may hai, i think uh, because rbi website was not updated immediately 
रेपो रेट भी इंक्रीज बाय फोर्टी बेसिस पॉइंट फोर टू फोर पॉइंट फोर एंड सी आर आर बाय फिफ्टी बेसिस पॉइंट आई थिंक पॉइंट फाइव से बढ़ा ना सरप्राइज मूव सो आर बी आई विल टेक केयर ऑफ द इकोनॉमी एंड दैट इज वन ऑफ द रीजन वाई इंडियन इकोनॉमी इज वन ऑफ द रेजिलियंट इकोनॉमी फ्रॉम इकोनॉमी परस्पेक्टिव इम्पोर्ट डिपेंडेंसी में ऑयल खा जाता है हमारा वी आर वेरी वर्नरेबल टू दैट बट फ्रॉम एक्सटर्नल शॉक्स परस्पेक्टिव वी आर फेयरली रेजिलियंट आई वुड से वी हैव कितना या सिक्स लार्जेस्ट फॉरेक्स रिजर्व्स ना इन द वर्ल्ड हाउ मच इज द फॉरेक्स रिजर्व थर्ड है क्या अच्छा लेस देन सिक्स हंड्रेड गिर गया थोड़ा फाइव नाइनटी एट और समथिंग इट अराउंड सिक्स हंड्रेड वी हैव रीच सिक्स थर्टी ऑल्सो सिक्स थर्टी सिक्स फोर्टी वी हैव कम डाउन टू बिलो सिक्स हंड्रेड इट इज ह्यूज डेफिजिट एक्स डेफिजिट फाइनेंसिंग हाँ डेफिजिट फाइनेंसिंग एवरी वन इज आस्किंग टू एक्सप्लेन सो आई एक्सप्लेन deficit financing is nothing but you finance your expenses using loans that is deficit financing you run a deficit because you cannot reduce your expenses see government tomorrow can reduce expenses stop nfsa stop manrega and reduce the expenses and government will say i am in a surplus or i don't need lot of loans but government cannot do that government has to do those expenditures and knowingly government borrows the extra money that is deficit financing you are financing your expenses consciously by running a deficit uh is it understood drashti manjot paras pranchu deficit financing is a choice that the government takes ki yes we will run deficit yes we will borrow more money but we will not reduce our expenditure productive expenditure wasteful to obviously we have to reduce but productive expenditure we will not reduce tomorrow it can na stop schemes and khatam we are running a surplus ye ho gaya ye ho gaya four statements nk singh review committee fiscal council fiscal expansion fiscal consolidation crowding out crowding in is done the ye iske sath you have to study this chapter from lakshmikanta the budget chapter consolidated fund of india contingency fund of india 266 one and all article and all All that you have to do it together. Who polity का part है? Public debt. Now some small things which are there. Fiscal इसमें तो two three small things. फिर we'll jump to questions. How much is the escape clause? Of what? It is always of GDP. Fiscal, see, if I ask you, so first, first lecture that we did, basic concepts, wala, usme concepts are very important. Domestic net and all those methods and basic price, uh, market prices, factor cost, real nominals, very important. Isme the single most important thing conceptually that you have to take away is the difference between capital and revenue. that is a very important differentiator that you have to know for the exam if they ask prelims questions baki factual statements if they come to wo to revision pe depend hai if you have read revised then you will know otherwise uh, thoda difficult rehta hai red trap is done ha this is very interesting three concepts i will teach not related to each other now there are different types of uh, studying styles that we have ठीक है लेट से यू मेक अ टू वीक स्टडी प्लान टू वीक्स का यू मेक अ स्टडी प्लान वीक वन वीक टू वीक वन में यू प्लान टू डू यू रिवाइज जोग्राफी एंड कल्चर एंड देन यू सेड कि ठीक है यू सॉ दैट वीक वन में जोग्राफी एंड कल्चर में यू टाइम वॉज शॉर्ट संडे आ गया एंड स्टिल एटी परसेंट वॉज डन एंड ट्वेंटी परसेंट वॉज रिमेनिंग नाउ यू आर मेकिंग अ वीक टू प्लान वीक टू प्लान में यू टूक द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ द पास्ट वीक कि अरे आई एम अनेबल टू स्टडी आफ्टर टेन ओ क्लॉक आई एम या इसमें टाइम जाता है दिस इज अ बिग चैप्टर सो दिस वीक आई विल प्लान अकॉर्डिंगली विच मीन्स वॉट आई विल गिव इंस्टेड ऑफ वन वीक आई विल टेक टेन डेज टू कवर उतना पोर्शन ठीक है दिस इज हाउ बजट ऑल्सो हैपन कि लास्ट ईयर मनरेगा में टेन थाउजेंड एटी थाउजेंड क्रोर्स वी स्पेंड एंड देन दिस ईयर मोर पॉपुलेशन इज एडेड तो एटी थाउजेंड प्लस वट एवर पॉपुलेशन इज एडेड अप्रॉक्सीमेटली वील दिस टाइम इंक्रीज इट टू नाइन्टी टू थाउजेंड क्रोर्स ठीक है इसमें प्रॉब्लम ये है कि लाइक वी और द प्रॉब्लम इन दिस इज लाइक वी सॉ इन दैट बेस इफेक्ट वाला थिंग 
that base was abnormal here also you are taking some base and then you are judging the or you are planning your future based on that base or based on that past experience kitna samjha one week you studied you got experience ki i cannot study after 10 am 10 pm then next week you planned considering ki you cannot study after 10 pm similarly budget mein if i if i talk about in government terms manrega mein we know 80000 crores is required for one year and itna population increase hai this will be required this is a normal normal budgeting process and what happened is america mein peter fair karke ek there was a management rule he introduced a new form of budgeting he said ki don't take past year past year or past period as a base start fresh ab fresh start karo if you want to start a new scheme don't take the experience of manrega 80000 crores hai so similar scheme ko bhi 80000 will be required start fresh take calculations do calculations start fresh don't take any base so that type of budgeting is called as zero base budgeting zbb theek hai simple hai just to cover all the zero base budgeting zbb zero base simple zero base budgeting it is also called by another name so don't get confused if it comes it is called as priority based budgeting it is also called as priority based budgeting ye likh lena this is very important it is nothing zero based budgeting or priority based budgeting you don't take last year so so why i'll tell you the context of this last year you spent 80000 crores this year you have to spend 80 or more than that who said it is possible that if you do a fresh assessment you feel you will come to know ki 60 karna hai only 60 i have to spend so don't take base of last year last year whatever was done was done start a fresh zero base zero base or priority this year the priority might have changed this year you don't want to spend on manrega type scheme but some food security scheme so make that calculation don't say ki 80 hai to let it be 80 so priority change your priority or if priorities have changed so waisa kar ठीक है ना टू मोर इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म्स बिकॉज दे आर गिवन इन बुक्स तो मैं आई एम जस्ट टेलिंग यू डू यू नो बेसिक नॉलेज ऑफ इनकम टैक्स हाउ इनकम टैक्स वर्क बेसिक इनकम टैक्स में ना स्लैब्स रहते हैं सो इफ यू अर्न इनकम लेस देन लेट से टू पॉइंट फाइव लैक्स पर एनम जीरो इनकम टैक्स ठीक है 2.5 पॉइंट फाइव वन और वट एवर से लेके फाइव लैक्स तक एक स्लैब है फाइव लैक्स आई एम जस्ट गिविंग एग्जाम्पल्स फाइव परसेंट है फाइव टू टेन टेन परसेंट रहेगा अबाउट टेन अबाउट टेन लेट से ट्वेंटी परसेंट एक्सेट्रा दिस स्लैब है सो वेन वेन यू वन सेवन पॉइंट फाइव लैक्स यू फॉल इन दिस ब्रैकेट सो उस पर आपको टैक्स लगेगा बेर इन माइंड आई विल क्लैरिफाई इन दिस इन टैक्स चैप्टर ऑल्सो कि फुल सेवन पॉइंट फाइव पे यू डोंट हैव टू पे टेन परसेंट 2.5 पॉइंट फाइव पे तो जीरो ही लगता है वॉट एवर इज द इंक्रीमेंटल तो फाइव लैक्स जो बचेगा उस पर यू हैव टू पे टेन परसेंट ठीक है अभी के लिए जस्ट फर्गेट दिस वॉट हैपन्स वॉट विल गवर्नमेंट डू इफ गवर्नमेंट वॉन्ट्स टू कंट्रोल इन्फ्लेशन विल गवर्नमेंट फॉलो अ फिजिकल स्टिम्यूलस और एक्सपेंशनरी पॉलिसी और अ कंसोलिडेशन पॉलिसी इफ गवर्नमेंट वॉन्ट्स टू रिड्यूस इन्फ्लेशन Will government follow an expansionary policy or a consolidation policy? Will government increase the tax rates or reduce the tax rates? Are you clear on that? This is the question. That is why I am asking. This is the same thing on which questions are asked. Okay. Now government can do this always, but government saw that people are earning more when more people are earning ten lakhs, more than ten lakh rupees. So government made the tax structure in such a way that. the burden is increasing can you see the burden is increasing if you are earning more you have to part with more percentage of your income to the government theek hai is the government doing this every day or ye fairly stable hai this is fairly stable every year little bit changes might come but not every day theek hai this is a structure which is inbuilt now let's say you you are earning salary first year you earn 2.5 lakh rupees you spent all that 2.5 lakh rupees enjoy Next year you earn five lakh rupees, ठीक है? Two point five तो zero है. 
but now government is asking tax of 5%. Next year you want more, government is asking a tax of 10%. So can I say automatically by structure, by design, the government is taking away money from you as your purchasing power increases. And I actively nahi kar rahe na government, it is there. You fit in whatever slab, you pay tax, finished. So this is, this is kind of an automatic stabilizer. This stabilizes the economy automatically. As and when your income increases, your income is increasing, increasing, thoda, 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 stable hota hai. Why? Because government is part, asking you to part away with more and more percentage of your income. Okay? Now tell me, what was your purchasing power here? 100% because government is not taking tax. As and when economy grows, people start earning, factory, people earn more wages, more supply, more demand, etc. That spirals and government starts taking away money from you. So this automatic stabilizer is called as a fiscal drag, DRAG, is called as a fiscal drag. It is dragging your purchasing power down. It is keeping inflation in check automatically. This is called as a fiscal drag. Simple. It is dragging you down because you got, because of growth, because you got that promotion, because you earned more. You are, you are left with less purchasing power. Drag or hai. You are going into another slab, tax slab, and then your purchasing power is automatically reducing. Fiscal drag. One last term that we are going to do in fiscal policy is very easy. You are sitting comfortably at your home. AC chal rahe. You are watching a movie. You are eating popcorn. Suddenly you realize this was all a dream and you wake up on an afternoon with no AC, no movie, small room, books baju mein. Hai na? So it is like you fell off from a mountain. Now must you were flying on the mountain and you fell off. Similarly, government also in COVID times gave a lot of subsidies. In COVID times gave a lot of support, lot of schemes, lot of deductions. So many things. Dire dire, now government will start reducing it. When this happens at a faster pace, achanak, you know, subsidy is stopped or uh, some exemption is not or some exemption is withdrawn. If this happens at a faster pace, what will happen to that person who is enjoying these benefits? Shock lagega na usko. He will be like, Are, what happened? Suddenly, the benefits to him reduce and this concept is called as a fiscal cliff. CLIFF. Matlab aap pahar se, government has thrown you down. Cliff. Fiscal cliff. Sir, please explain fiscal drag again. Okay. So fiscal drag is basically, see, agar a tax nahi hota, if this tax wouldn't have been there, you are increasing your income. If you are increasing your income, means hundreds and crores of people are like you who are increasing their income. You are in, If your income increases, obviously you will spend more. If you will spend more, demand will increase and if supply is not able to catch up with the demand, what will happen? Inflation will happen. So government has introduced some stabilizers to Thoda break marne, to you know to put some breaks on that ki it should not spiral out of hand. So what government did is government introduced these tax slabs. Ki the moment your income increases, the moment your purchasing power is increasing, government does not allow you to spend all of it. Government says ki 5% to I will take. Government says ki 10% to I will take. So this is actually acting like a drag. It is dragging you behind. You are running, you are spending government, uh, economy mein spending is uh, rampant. You are demanding a lot of goods. Supply utna hai there is no supply, prices are increasing. So government is telling I will drag you a little bit every time you will wish to spend more money. That is called as a fiscal drag. Tax uh, slab nature waise hi hota hai ki the moment you are 
increasing your revenue you will not be eligible for this subsidy simple nature wahi hai yes yes so this is a concept ye major example hai but anything that reduces your purchasing power from government side that is that can be called as a fiscal we'll see some questions kuch questions we'll skip because bahut question hai we cannot do all 10 year questions all together फिजिकल पॉलिसी समझा दिस इज फिजिकल पॉलिसी मेजर डिफरेंस मेजर थिंग्स टू नोट इन फिजिकल पॉलिसी इज द नेचर द डेफिजिट्स द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ डेफिसिट्स यू नो इन माई लेक्चर आई मेक पीपल कैलकुलेट द डेफिसिट ऑल्सो वी टेक बजट फिगर लाइव बजट फिगर एंड आई हाइड द नंबर एंड देन आई आज देन की ये देखो ये फिगर है जस्ट कैलकुलेट फिजिकल डेफिसिट रेवेन्यू डेफिसिट एंड ये सब कैलकुलेट करके दिखा So that is how you don't need to remember the formulas any time. The first question that I just time pass के लिए रखा है मैंने. See how different those questions are. It is not from economy. Same, है ना? ऐसा बहुत होता है. Just give me one minute. तो सी वन कॉमन क्वेश्चन वॉज दिस ट्वेल्थ फाइव ईयर प्लान का ऑब्जेक्टिव क्या है वी आर गोइंग टू स्किप दिस क्वेश्चन वन काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन दैट कम इज वॉट एवर न्यू स्कीम्स दैट आर देयर इन द न्यूज बेसिक क्वेश्चन इज उनका ऑब्जेक्टिव क्या है जनधन योजना हैज बीन लॉन्च फॉर वॉट ठीक है दैट वॉज इन टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन बिकॉज लेटेस्ट स्कीम था तो सिमिलर सिमिलर स्कीम्स विच आर लॉन्च दिस ईयर प्लीज मेक अ नॉट ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्टिव सी वॉट आई हैव ऑब्जर्व इज यू पी एस सी इफ इट आस्क यू माइनर डिटेल्स ना एक एक डिटेल तो दैट हैज टू बी ऑफ अ मेजर थिंग और इफ इट इज आस्किंग यू ब्रॉड 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 पूछ रहे ना सो दैट कैन बी ऑफ अ माइनर थिंग ऑल्सो सो यू नीड टू नो मेजर डिटेल्स ऑफ माइनर थिंग्स बट माइनर माइनर माइन्यूट डिटेल्स ऑफ मेजर थिंग्स ठीक है मनरेगा अटल पेंशन योजना जनधन योजना इसका माइनर प्रोविजन भी यू शुड नो इट इज आइडियल गुड टू नो बट सम स्मॉल स्कीम है कोई ट्रेनिंग स्कीम है जस्ट मेजर ऑब्जेक्टिव विच मिनिस्ट्री डन Okay, that is how you can save time. So what we do is we either skip everything or we try to read everything. That does not work. Here, what? Okay. Same similar question. Mudra Yojana's aim, 2016. Okay. Chalo, yes, solve karo. This is general knowledge question now. Which of the following have occurred in India after LPG? Use your tricks. B और C है ना B और C वो 50 क्वेश्चन में ही है 50 मार्क्स सी पहले तो ये आज तक नहीं हुआ है दिस हैज नॉट हैपन टिल डेट वन गॉन वन गॉन टू थ्री यू डोंट हैव टू थिंक अबाउट एट ऑल कॉमन है दिस हाउ यू सेव टाइम डोंट ट्राई टू रीड एवरीथिंग इफ यू आर श्योर वन इज नॉट देयर डोंट रीड टू एंड थ्री वो है दोनों में नाउ द क्वेश्चन बिकम्स ओनली ऑन फोर India's foreign exchange reserves increased enormously. Yes or no? It is yes. One of the few times where UPSC has tricked every one of us. Where enormously word extreme word is right. Two two to three times who are here economics me, and this is one of the instance. Okay, they did. They increased enormously because sab aa gaye. Everyone was waiting, and everyone came in. Do you know Bajaj plan to make a car with bike engine? बजाज तो बिफोर नाइनटी वन रिफॉर्म्स एटीज में आउटसाइड कार मैन्युफैक्चरर्स वो डाइंग टू कम टू इंडिया वाई बिकॉज फॉर देम इट इज अ मार्केट 
it is a booming market but we had strict policies we had a closed sort of closed economy so this meeting happened in planning commission montek singh aluwalia was the chairman in his book i have read this so that time all the indian automotive manufacturers were there and government was telling them ki we are planning to allow fdi in car manufacturing now of course this threatened the indian manufacturers ki sir if they come how will we compete bajaj company said sir we will make engine of car they asked how will you make you don't have experience sir we have experience of bike and scooter this was the answer and then he said ki then after they left government laughed usme theek hai so but yes we did get lot of investment lot of a basic question i am not going to tease this 13 paper if you see see every paper has some themes 13 paper was a textbook paper first year after the syllabus change textbook in see environment if you see environment textbook usme se paper aaya science and tech 14 paper culture and environment two things more than 50 questions culture and environment very tough for me at least but tab tak csat was there so that was i don't know for some it was good for some it was bad 15 i feel was the most balanced paper it was good it was a mix of current static all subjects 16 70 questions current affair and that was easily solvable from by everyone so cut off reach 116 16 theek hai 17 se upsc started fiscal drag hai na ki you are going to come back 17 se cut off 105 then 18 then 19 then we all know where it went down fiscal cliff purai cliff ho gaya what is the what is the answer tough question aise kaise puch sakte ho now everyone will have different tricks can you try some tricks can you tell some tricks to eliminate at least so i personally feel that this is fairly correct we are pushing for non farm also na no? animal husbandry and uh, other avenues extension activities education yes sir i personally would have gone with three so when you go with three the question becomes of four so your question from that last 20 came to middle 20 abhi usko aapko convert karna you have to convert it in a ha ah, but yes if you are confused in three also there this is a chance we are taking we don't know for sure we know ki promotion hai and share has increased if you know if you have read it in the year book or survey that's a different thing i'm just talking from a lay student point of view ki we might not know so three say you can take a safe bet now the growth rate in rural employment decrease now this is true or false that is a tough question kya lagta hai answer is sorry kaha gaye bahut aage pahunch gaye end pahunch gaye end so many questions this was my preparation huh? of all subjects मतलब नॉट एस आई पी टी एंड ऑल वो तो डेट इज फॉर टीचिंग बट दिस वॉज माई प्रेप मटेरियल फर्स्ट ईयर क्वेश्चन बस डेट्स इट बट डू यू एग्री की ऐसे ही लैंग्वेज में टूडे ऑल्सो क्वेश्चन कम द फॉर्मिंग द ऑप्शन एंड ऑल सो बिफोर गोइंग टू अदर पेपर जस्ट इसका आंसर भी है थ्री एंड फोर टफ क्वेश्चन हाँ इंक्रीज इन एप्सल्यूट and per capita real gnp do not connote a higher level of economic development if it is a growth versus development question so ncert me first we read na gdp is not everything hai na amartya sen developmental economics health hdi india's rank in hdi डेवलपमेंट नहीं है इफ दिस ग्रोथ इज देयर डेवलपमेंट इज नॉट देयर वेरी सिंपल एटीन का क्वेश्चन नॉट ओल्ड क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो छोड़ दो इसको वेरी टफ 
मैं जेन्युइनली वेरी टफ ट्राई आधा आधा है ना ये हाफ ऑफ डेफिनेशन दे हैव गिवन आई कंटेस्ट दिस आंसर बट ठीक है सम सम क्वेश्चन यू हैव टू लीव इट एट द मर्सी ऑफ गॉड दैट इज वाई वी एम फॉर नाइन्टी फाइव परसेंट एक्यूरेसी ना क्योंकि ये ऐसे क्वेश्चन दिस दिस इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग आई लाइक दिस क्वेश्चन दिस इज योर बेसिक नॉलेज See, I told you na. Actually, it is a plus d mix. So why they have given d? In fact, this is more vague, na. Money value of produced. Cup produced. Kaha produced? Nobody. Nothing is. ठीक है. The proportion of questions like these increased after seventy, na. Very vague questions and. क्या लगता है एटी वन एनी वन एल्स सी इट इज ओके टू गो रॉन्ग हियर सी दिस वॉट दे आर आस्किंग इज जी डी पी हैज स्टेडिली इंक्रीज जी डी पी एब्सोल्यूट फिगर हंड्रेड लैक रोज वन फोर्टी लैक रोज वन थर्टी लैक रोज इट हैज इंक्रीज ना नेगेटिव ग्रोथ रेट हुआ है अपार्ट फ्रॉम कोविड फिफ्टीन नेगेटिव ग्रोथ रेट नहीं रेट ऑफ ग्रोथ Has steadily increased. Sometimes we increase at ten percent. Sometimes we increase at eight percent. Sometimes seven. Sometimes eleven percent. Now, from where will you get this? This you will not get in books. This is your general newspaper reading. This is your general awareness. So answer is B. ये तो बड़ा है. See, if this is more than zero na, this will obviously increase every year. Na abhi to negative hai. That's a different thing. I mean, in COVID, but. Rate of growth has not steadily, which means that every year we are growing at a higher rate. So, so it's not so policies. Ki zaroor thi, there was no need of such policies. Ha, correct. But I think usme bhi nine me some dip had happened. So, again, kab tak UPSC dekh raha hai? That is a. This is a fairly. Uh, ये स्टैटिक क्वेश्चन है एफ एस डी सी इट इज नॉट एन ऑर्गन ऑफ नीति आयोग सी एफ एस डी सी इज बेसिकली अ मीटिंग पॉइंट ऑफ ऑल हेड रेगुलेटर हेड्स सब आते हैं सेबी आई आर डी ए गवर्नमेंट एंड ऑल सो दे दे मीट दे सी की वॉट इज द कंडीशन ऑफ द इकोनॉमी नाइनटीन क्वेश्चन This is straight out of basic newspaper knowledge, ah, that India is not sixth in terms of PPP. So answer is A. Very good. This guy year eighteen year, I think. ठीक है ये ये छोड़ दो ये छोड़ दो ये देखो. This is the question which I am skipping some questions, ah, because वो time लगेगा नहीं तो. we think we know opportunity cost but see why government is just a transferring agency ha huh? whatever government is giving free food grains to people that is going from taxpayers money so that money could have been used by the taxpayer to buy something else rather than paying tax so opportunity cost is transferred from the consumers to the tax paying public now this question might seem easy you might have seen this but when it appeared first time and in the exam conditions this question seems difficult thoda difficult lagta for those who have given the exam they know ki exam environment mein it is a bit difficult and challenging especially when your paper starts with culture or aapka set जो है इफ इट स्टार्ट्स विद हिस्ट्री और 
तो एवरीवन हर्ट यहाँ बैठ के एसी में डिस्कशन पीसफुली इज वेरी इजी बट कीप दैट इन माइंड दैट ऑल क्वेश्चंस कैन यू हैव टू क्रैक इट विद अ वेरी पॉजिटिव टेम्परामेंट इफ इट इज वेरी इजी डोंट गेट एक्साइटेड मैं बता रहा हूँ नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विल बी डिजास्टर सी यू माइंड गेट पॉलिटी क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट इजी इजी कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल ये वो देन विल देन कल्चर विल कम so that is also bad and starting from culture or environment and going towards polity is also bad so bear in mind ki pura paper you have to give not a part of it theek hai 21 latest basic economics Piyush, I'll explain this. Uh, we'll do the questions first. Let us assume. Let us assume you don't have mac microeconomics. This is a microeconomics question. Okay, I have always taught microeconomics in my first two lectures of full batch because I know UPSC doesn't have more questions in macro. Oh, micro me hi jaane wala hai. Little bit. Anyways, we don't know anything about micro. Chalo. Other things remaining unchanged. Market demand for a good might increase if demand might increase if its price falls. First we know that it is sure. Okay. Four, four, four. One gone. Chalo. Okay. Now there is nothing common between all three. So we have to read again. Price of its substitute increases. Think. Substitute good means you can use one instead of the other. Substitute good. So if price of substitute increases. Do you think demand for your good will increase? Yes or no? Yes. Why? Because its demand will fall because its price has risen. Okay. So people will shift to your good. So one is there. So one is there. Four is there. Now the question becomes about three. The good is an inferior good and income of consumer increases. So inferior good by default means one which doesn't have much prestige or much value in the eyes of the consumer. Inferior good is it. so if your money income increases you will not buy more of inferior good theek hai if you expect ye hum pad ke jayenge and we'll tackle it in the exam that is wrong this question you have to tackle then and there kyunki 100 questions can come from this demand supply concept you can't prepare everyone na theek hai fiscal policy chalo होलसेल में क्वेश्चन है बहुत क्वेश्चन आर होलसेल इन नेचर दोनों साथ में पढ़ लो चाहिए तो यू कैन डू ऐसा रीडिंग ऑल्सो Anyone else? One option they change, right? Both option. See, what we have to do? Deficit come करना है, which means deficit come करना है, which means expenditure come करना है, or Revenue has to increase. Logically, option तो ठीक है. Reducing revenue expenditure, yes. Introducing new welfare schemes, would that result in uh, reduction of deficit? No. Rationalize subsidies. So this is a very positive thing. Rationalize. मतलब correct it. Unnecessary, wasteful, reduce करो and proper rationalize करो and expand. Do you think expanding industries will help in reduction of deficit? No. Answer is one entry. Answer is one entry. Simple. Let us not waste time here. But same repeat next year repeat over. Twenty one. Remember business cycle.
these are 2013 type questions so the single single statement questions if you notice there is no 1 2 and 3 1 and 3 the single statement question is ka answer i hope everyone got b theek hai cut in tax rates accompanied by increase in interest rate increase rate we have interest rate we have not done yet monetary policy ka chapter hai part hai first half is correct cut in tax rates increase in tax rates nahi reduction of expenditure definitely nahi remember i told you c plus i plus g plus x minus m g has the ability to influence others how will g influence others by increasing expenditure on public projects hai na crowding in basically b hai iska kya hai main cause of worry kya hai you buy gold you buy anything we don't care na hamara paisa is reducing fiscal policy question ट्वेंटी वन लेटेस्ट क्वेश्चन कंसेप्ट बेस्ड what is deficit financing what is the answer what do you think a. how many for a how many for c bindas bolo it is okay if you are wrong b wrong here how many for d b what is deficit financing you are financing your expenditure by running a deficit okay why do you do it do you do it for economic development do you do it for redemption of public debt do you do it for adjusting the bio ye to kya hi hai bear in mind deficit financing means you are borrowing for kharcha now for why are you doing that kharcha why are you running this deficit that is the question here answer is why economic development like i gave the example today government can reduce its debt and not borrow schemes ban kar do reduce the schemes increase tax rates to 40% today government will not have any debt but will this happen because of that economic development will not happen government is borrowing to run schemes for economic development theek hai this question also i don't like this is most interpretive interpretation based question वन ऑफ क्वेश्चन आते हैं ऐसे वेर यू डोंट नो क्या है अच्छा अभी तक हाउ मेनी फैक्चुअल क्वेश्चन नॉट इवन वन आई थिंक या एक वो एफ एस डी सी फाइनेंशियल स्टेबिलिटी डेवलप एंड आई हैव नॉट स्किप एनी क्वेश्चन है सिर्फ आई है टू टॉपिक we can speak half an hour over this question till you will not be convinced or i will not be convinced or upsc will not be convinced answer is a answer is a dono logic hai iska because the state the question is incomplete mere hisab se little more data would have been good see this question now they, how they said question questions is a particular frame of mind or a newspaper article now many of that is contextual तो वो उस कंटेक्स्ट में दे है वास्ट बट वॉट कंटेक्स दे है ठीक so, है ए है सर ए कैसे आई डोंट नो सर बी कैसे आई डोंट नो आई आई एम गोइंग फॉर ऑल ऑफ देम डिक्रीज इन टैक्स टू जी डी पी रेशियो ऑफ अ कंट्री इंडिकेट्स विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्लोइंग इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ रेट डू यू एग्री विद दिस ये और नो What is decrease in tax to GDP ratio? What is tax to GDP? Tax upon GDP. Decrease or a ratio, which means what? Either numerator is reducing or denominator is increasing. ठीक है? So if let's say GDP is increasing but people are not paying tax, then also your tax to GDP ratio will reduce. But that does not mean slowing economic growth rate. GDP कम हो रहे तो तो increase होगा ना? Numerator denominator. GDP is reducing. Tax ratio or ratio? ratio numerator 
इट कैन गो बोथ वेज दिस इज ऑल्सो राइट आई एम नॉट सेंग दिस इज रॉन्ग बट आप इस पर एंडलेस डिबेट है ये दिस इज एन एंडलेस डिबेट क्वेश्चन आई स्टार्टेड माई प्रेप सिंस टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन टिल नाउ आई एम डिबेटिंग दिस क्वेश्चन विद पीपल तो ठीक है डेट टू जी डी पी था क्वेश्चन नॉट टैक्स टू जी डी पी सेम स्टेटमेंट वो जी डी पी में था जी डी पी ग्रोथ रेट दिस इज फॉर टैक्स एंड फिजिकल वन यू शुड एलिमिनेट राइट अवे विच सेकेंड वाला ठीक है क्योंकि वी आर ट्राइंग टू रिड्यूस एंड वी डू रिड्यूस वो एफ आर बी एम टू थाउजेंड तब से है वो नॉट टैक्स रेवेन्यू एज अ परसेंटेज ऑफ जी डी पी है स्टडीली इंक्रीज इन द लास्ट डेकेड दिस इज ऑल्सो रॉन्ग स्टेगनेंट है समटाइम्स लिटिल बिट लेस वन टू परसेंट लेस उसके रीजन विल डू इन टैक्सेशन चैप्टर वाई इज टैक्स टू जी डी पी लेस द आंसर इज डी नीदर वन नॉट टू स्टेडिली इंक्रीज नहीं हुआ and again they are talking about tax revenue as a percentage of gdp not tax revenue tax revenue has increased the percentage of gdp please read the questions very carefully yahan pe we lose marks frbm amendment pe tha 2018 mein question Why is this a tough question? Because one, two, and three, and one and three both are the option. This is this is why this is a tough question. ठीक है factual है. Lakshmi Kant काम आएगा इधर. See this. This I you know why this these these questions are to have a basic cut off. कुछ तो होना चाहिए नहीं तो ten हो जाएगा cut off. Basic लगना चाहिए कि हाँ exam. This is to motivate people to give exam and then crush their dreams. ठीक है same. Necessarily आकर अभी ये If this this. was in the option, we would have eliminated this. Necessarily But question question when when will it occur? Capital formation. Why? Because capital goods goods. help help you you produce more goods, help you earn more. earn Same 15 prepare karna, please. Prepare Please 15th on similar lines. This I was asking you. 14th Finance Commission has made sector specific grants. Yes or no? 14th finance commission has not made sector specific grants 15th has made it unka mandate is a sector specific grants rural development health disaster management education sab pe do grant 15th finance commission prs summary one page hai one page sir naya kuch nahi padhna are one page but it's very important same prepare 15th huh? and who read karke samajh jayega there is nothing logical in this मोस्ट ऑफ इंडिया एक्सटर्नल डेट इज ओड बाई गवर्नमेंटल एंटिटीज चलो इसमें एक तो एलिमिनेट कर दो एलिमिनेट वन स्टेटमेंट सेकेंड वाला ऑल ऑफ डेट इज नॉमिनेटेड इन यूएस डॉलर मोस्ट ऑफ इंडिया एक्सटर्नल डेट इज ओड बाई गवर्नमेंटल एंटिटीज इट इज ओड बाय कमर्शियल कॉर्पोरेशन ठीक है अगेन नाइनटीन क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी क्वेश्चन सिंपल बट इफ यू डोंट नो दिस देन सी द ऑप्शन जस्ट फॉर वन सेकेंड एज्यूम नहीं पता आपको सी द ऑप्शन वन वन टू एंड वन वन जीरो वन 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 थ्री देन यू फील इसमें से ही होगा बिकॉज दे आर सो स्पेसिफिक लॉजिक सब आते सम पीपल विल ऑल्सो थिंक इसमें से होगा बिकॉज दिस इज टू जनरल तो हो सकता है एंड देन एटीन ये पढ़ा पढ़ाया नहीं है इट इज येट टू बी टॉट इधर ही खत्म कर देते हैं टीच यू हियर 
you sat in this lecture for let's say eight hours you'll sit in this lecture what is the output that you what is the input that you gave your efforts your mental attention your physical presence your home presence okay you gave it but output kya what is the output this is your investment what is the output if you learned only one chapter from this eight hour lecture you learned only one chapter your output is very poor similarly when businesses produce how much they are investing and what is the output they that is known as a capital output ratio so ek output banane ke liye or to make one output how much capital you have to invest that is seen in the economy so now tell me higher the better or lower the better lower the better why because with minimum effort you are producing output so for one output you require let's say 2 hours for one output you require 4 hours so which is better 2 hours you can convert it in terms of money you can convert it in terms of time anything so despite being a high saving economy capital formation may not result in significant increase in output despite capital being pumped but output will not uh, be significant because the capital output ratio is very high which means you require a lot of capital to produce some output high capital output ratio there are two trends that i have observed upsc is increasingly moving towards one microeconomic second markets reduce bonds fiis fdis markets primary secondary markets rbi direct investment 2021 question lot of uh, upsc is moving from away from macro theory macro to practical application based this is one of the example high capital output ratio theek hai done so that concludes our fiscal policy and the basics wala chapter are you understanding this solve ho raha hai thoda sa little bit theek hai so now do we want to take a break lunch break now or ya to main start karke i'll take yaar so jaao uske baad sir abhi bhi so hi raha hai now break ayushi is saying now break so we'll listen to ayushi and we will take a break now kitna लंच करने में हाउ मच टाइम डू यू टेक फिफ्टीन मिनट्स वन थर्टी वन थर्टी वन थर्टी आज आई टोल्ड यू टूडे इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट डिसिप्लिन डेज ऑफ योर लाइफ थोड़ा ऐसे लगना चाहिए एग्जाम इज विद इन वन मंथ फीलिंग आना चाहिए गो फास्ट कम फास्ट कि आई एम गोइंग टू इट फ्रूट तो मैं इधर ही हूँ आई विल स्टार्ट ठीक है वो क्लासेस एड देते ना वी आर मूविंग टूवर्ड सक्सेस वेन विल यू ज्वाइन अस आई एम मूविंग टूवर्ड्स कंप्लीशन वेन विल यू ज्वाइन मी वन थर्टी वन थर्टी फाइव मैक्स आई कैन गो चलो वन थर्टी विल स्टार्ट विथ टैक्सेशन देन मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी सो वी कवर्ड अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पिलर ऑफ माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी विच इज आर फिजिकल पॉलिसी वन द सेकेंड पिलर और द सेकेंड हैंड विच कंट्रोल्स the ups and downs of the economy which controls the trade cycles which controls expansions and uh, reductions or contractions of the economy is monetary policy who who governs fiscal policy fiscal policy is given by whom government correct and what about monetary policy rbi so monetary policy the word itself says money monetary you know money the word itself says money now two key differentiators between rbi and commercial banks that we have to make what are examples of commercial banks hdfc icici these are all private banks public sector banks bhi hai sbi is there foreign banks are there so many different city bank and also many different types of banks are there these are all commercial banks but rbi is a regulator rbi is a central bank of india before before 1949 there was hilton young commission they said ki are we should have a central bank rbi tha then rbi then the history is given in the books 1949 mein after 47 we got independence in 1949 we nationalized rbi and we separated the commercial functions of the bank from the central banking functions central banking functions were kept with rbi and commercial functions imperial bank of india today we know it as sbi usko diya gaya this is all basic history 
Now you need to know the difference between RBI's primary role and commercial bank's primary role. How does a commercial bank function? Commercial bank, see, I'll tell you in very simple terms, is just an agent. It is just an agent between RBI and us. Okay? Here RBI, commercial banks, and people. People includes individuals, corporates, big business houses, everyone, reliance status of people man. RBI gives money to commercial banks. Okay? Start money. Yellow beta. Open your own business. Commercial banks do business. Money ka. And then they give money to the people. Okay? RBI is sitting at the top. Commercial banks will do their business. And then it will give money. Or they will give money to the people. Once you know this thing that commercial banks are just an intermediary between RBI and people. And that they are doing their business in between or in middle middle stage phase, then you will realize the key difference or then you will realize monetary policy very nicely. Okay. Now, when we talk about aggregate demand, when we talk about C plus I plus G plus X minus M, recession, depression, inflation, growth, everything, what are we talking about here? Demand supply. Okay. demand supply? Who is demanding? Who is supplying? People here, ultimately everyone or everything is related to people only. So whatever inflationary pressures are being faced are faced by people. Whatever increased demand is there is by people. So when we saw this trade cycle, okay, your fiscal policy is also active. Your monetary policy is also active. We have done fiscal policy. The primary tool was tax rate. Now we will do monetary policy. Okay? Now this is also active here. Next, we see that whatever up and ups and downs are happening, these are happening in the lives of people. So, they have to protect the people majorly. C plus, I plus, G plus, X minus, M, G have to um, directly or via influencing others, they have to protect. Pe people pe ho hai. So, whenever, whenever government wants to reduce inflation, what will government do? Government will increase purchasing power or reduce purchasing power? By how? Reduce purchasing power. How? Increasing tax rate. Similarly, whenever RBI wants to reduce purchasing power, RBI will give more money or take away money. Take away money. Whenever RBI feels that economy is going down, RBI will give more money or take away money. Give more money. Going down means what? Prices are, I mean, growth is not happening, demand is not reviving. So, RBI will tell ki take more money. You spend, you spend, you buy. When you buy, supply, suppliers, there will be incentive to suppliers to increase supply. They will employ more people, etc., etc., etc. And the economy will be right back on track. So, can I say, when we are in this phase, RBI will increase the money supply in the economy. Okay? And when we are in this phase, RBI will reduce the money supply in the economy. Okay? Uh, what did we call... Uh, the policy, fiscal policy where government is spending a lot. Fiscal expansion, fiscal stimulus and ULTA, what was the opposite? Fiscal consolidation. Similarly, now we are in monetary policy. Monetary policy may, it is called by different names. Monetary policy may, we can say it is an expansionary monetary policy or a contractionary monetary policy. That is one. Second, very, uh, very normal terms may, it is called as when RBI wants to give more money to the people, when RBI wants people to have more money and spend, go enjoy, that is called as a cheap money policy. Cheap, C-H-E-A-P, cheap money policy. Matlab means uh, value of money for RBI is very less. You enjoy, you take away money, you spend. Cheap money policy versus dear money policy. What is dear money policy? Money becomes money becomes dearer to the Central Bank of India and then RBI will suck away extra liquidity or extra money from the economy. Itna samjha? Now coming to the main function. How do commercial banks function? Commercial bank is just an agent. Commercial banks will give, what will it give people? 
मेन बिजनेस क्या है बैंक का वॉट इज द मेन लोन विल इट अर्न एनी थिंग फ्रॉम लोन इंटरेस्ट टू गिव मनी टू द पीपल वेर इज कमर्शियल बैंक गेटिंग मनी फ्रॉम वन इज आर बी आई प्लस सेकेंड इज डिपॉजिट हु इज गिविंग डिपॉजिट पीपल इज कमर्शियल बैंक पेइंग एनी थिंग टू डिपॉजिट होल्डर इंटरेस्ट इन दोनों का डिफरेंस इज द प्रॉफिट मेड बाय द बैंक सिंपल अ कमर्शियल बैंक gives loans and takes deposits on loans it charges interest on deposits it gives interest what is the difference is the profit made by the bank simple this we'll cover in banking chapter which will start after monetary policy now coming to rbi so yaha pe rbi tries to control this flow of money in the economy rbi ka main function main function is credit control what is the main function of rbi credit control control means it increasing decreasing as per the wishes of the uh, as per the wishes of the bank as per the needs of the economy it will increase or decrease the credit in the economy this is the single most biggest important function of rbi ki it it is a credit controlling organization theek okay? and credit policy is one part of monetary policy monetary policy are other parts also credit control is just one part of मॉनिटरी uh, पॉलिसी राइट द टूल इन देंड्स ऑफ फिजिकल पॉलिसी गवर्नमेंट वॉज टैक्स रेट द टूल इन देंड्स ऑफ मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी इज डैश इंटरेस्ट रेट जैसे टैक्स रेट वॉज इंक्रीजिंग डिक्रीजिंग एज पर द स्टिम्यूलस और कॉन्ट्रेक्शनरी पॉलिसी ऑफ द ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट सिमिलरली आरबीआई के हाथ में वॉट इज द टूल इन देंड्स ऑफ आरबीआई इट इज इंटरेस्ट रेट See this. I'll tell you how. RBI increased interest rate. It becomes expensive for commercial banks to take money from RBI. Hence, it becomes expensive for for people to take money from commercial banks. Consider it as a factory. This is the seller. This is the manufacturer. He if he is buying goods at a costly price, he will sell goods at a costly price. Today, if you see in the news, housing loans interest rates are increased to nine percent, which means banks. Bank's cost is increased. Why? Who is increasing this RBI? So why do you think RBI has increased the loans or the interest rate? RBI is following a expansionary policy or contractionary policy? Contractionary policy. Please make this very clear. Acha, monetary policy is the single most favorite topic of UPSC. Pura wholesale me they ask questions. Huh? Many questions. Three four questions in one year only. So the time we took to complete fiscal policy and uh, basic questions. utna time will take to cover half of monetary policy questions because there are so many questions and banking combined monetary policy and banking combined theek okay? hai so the single most important tool is the interest rate so entire monetary policy entire study of monetary policy is to study the link between this to this and this to this how well actions of rbi at this level translate to people that is monetary policy simple itna you have to know conceptually logically so i can tell you functions of rbi printing currency safe deposit of valuables wo sab hai that's there in the books this is this is what will help you to crack questions which you don't know how to do entire system of rbi to people of how rbi affects people when it sucks away money or when it gives money to the people is the study of monetary policy theek okay? hai what is expansionary monetary policy giving money or taking money rbi wants people to buy more uh, sorry spend more or spend less spend more theek okay? hai rbi is in the eyes of rbi money has become cheap or dear cheap and vice versa so in terms of inflationary conditions what will what policy will rbi follow take away the money or rbi will uh, follow a dash money policy contract dear money policy or contractionary policy theek okay? hai simple 
this is monetary policy now one word which i am going to tell you how well the actions of rbi translate to the people which means rbi reduced or rbi is following a dear money policy which means ki rbi increased the rate of interest but yahan pe you are getting still at a cheap rate theek hai effects of actions of rbi are not being felt directly to the people both ways cheap or dear how well this translates to this how well the action is transmitted from rbi to commercial banks to people ultimately to the people is called as monetary policy transmission so question might come monetary policy transmission is not effective because of following factors or monetary policy transmission is effective because of following factors or which of the following is most effective in contributing towards monetary policy transmission transmission is translation or transmission of actions of rbi to the people why will it not follow here बीच में कौन है दे डू सम फ्यू थिंग्स जिसकी वजह से बिकॉज ऑफ दैट आर बी आई फेल्स और यू कैन से लेस सक्सीड इन इट्स गोल टू ट्रांसमिट द पॉलिसी टू द पीपल वी स्पोक अबाउट इंटरेस्ट रेट ठीक है कमर्शियल बैंक विल टेक मनी फ्रॉम आर बी आई कमर्शियल बैंक विल गिव मनी टू द पीपल इट विल टेक मनी फ्रॉम डिपोजिट होल्डर्स ऑल्सो नो डाउट डेफिनेटली RBI will give money to commercial banks to lend money to the people this all is fine and it will charge interest rate yes or no yes it will charge interest rate now this interest rate is interest rate is a very common term and this interest rate in economics terms we call it as a repo rate have you heard of repo rate what is the meaning of repo repo rate is repurchase obligation there are many different variations of it the most accurate one is repurchase obligation repo rate always remember in monet in uh, monetary policy we are talking about rbi banks theek okay? hai there are two types of markets in india one is stock market that is capital markets and one is money market money market mein rbi and commercial banks function in money market the requirement of funds in, is almost always of a short term nature two days overnight one month two months six months when i say short term i say less than one year when i say long term it is more than one year theek okay? hai so in money markets rbi commercial banks these funds are almost always taken on a short term basis i am using the word almost always because some long term things are also there which i will explain repurchase obligation why it is called as a repo rate because commercial banks have need of money for two days let's say so one is it can borrow money from other banks axis bank requires money it can borrow from hdfc bank correct it can do that if hdfc bank is also not giving money then where it will go it will go to rbi right rbi is known as a lender of last resort suna hai have you heard about it lender of lender of last resort which means when nobody is giving you money i will give you money who is giving money to whom RBI is giving to is RBI giving to government as a lender of last resort no as a lender of last resort nahi RBI gives to government but not as a lender of last resort lender of last resort is only from RBI to banks is very important question hai 2021 on this very what do you mean by lender of last resort and four options government borrowing from RBI so option hai usme it is only banks ठीक है दिस इज कॉल्ड एज रेपो रेट आई टेल यू वाई रेपो रेट सो एक्सिस बैंक कॉल्स एच डी एफ सी नहीं फोन नहीं है एक्सिस बैंक कॉल्स आर बी आई सर वी नीड मनी आर बी आई सेज ओके यू नीड मनी बट आई विल नॉट गिव इट टू यू फॉर फ्री आई विल चार्ज यू इंटरेस्ट येस सर इंटरेस्ट बट आई विल नॉट गिव यू एस आई वॉट इफ यू रन अवे वॉट इफ यू आर ऑल्सो स्कैमर एंड यू गेट एक्सपोर्टेड टू लंडन देन आई विल टेक सम कोलेट्रल फॉर टू डेज गिव द कोलेट्रल टू मी आफ्टर टू डेज रीपर्चेज इट बैक रीपर्चेज ऑब्लिगेशन give the collateral take the money come back take the collateral again give me the money repay the money who says to whom rbi tells commercial bank hence it is called as repo rate repurchase obligation repo rate so whenever we are talking about policy rate or interest rate 99.9% we are referring to repo rate there are various other kinds of rates also acha repo rate is also of different kinds huh? repo rate ke bhi alag alag there are variations of that but we don't go that deep in when we are doing for prelims one is repo rate so when after two days axis bank will come and 
uh, give the security uh, sorry give the money take the security and so whenever we are talking about repo rate it is the rate at which dash gives money to dash rbi gives to commercial banks okay repo rate now if rbi wants banks to have more money what will it do with the rate increase rate or reduce rate reduce rate okay commercial banks have lot of money now they are looking for investors or dip, uh, borrowers they are looking for borrowers ki who will borrow my money rbi says ki you can keep it with me i will give you interest this repo is also charging matlab ye yeah, interest rate hai yeah. rbi says keep money with me i will give you interest right i will give you interest at a rate which we call it as reverse repo rate reverse repo rate is the rate at which dash keeps money with dash our reverse repo rate is the rate at which dash borrows money from dash if rbi is following an expansionary policy reverse repo rate will be dash ठीक है एक्सपांशनरी चलो लेट एस राइट रिवर्स रेपो रेट इस पे फाइव क्वेश्चन है रिवर्स रेपो रेट इफ आरबीआई इज फॉलोइंग एन एक्सपांशनरी पॉलिसी रेपो रेट विल डैश रिड्यूस बिकॉज इजी फॉर बैंक टू बोरो इफ आरबीआई फॉलोज एन एक्सपांशनरी पॉलिसी रेपो रेट वुड रिड्यूस एंड रिवर्स रेपो रेट वुड डैश इंक्रीज एनी this will also reduce so opposite nahi hai it's not opposite why reverse repo rate will reduce it makes it less attractive for banks to keep money with rbi so banks will say i will get 1% with rbi might as well i will lend it to someone else who gives me 2% chalo at least 1% profit i'll make right so this is how rbi increases the money supply or reduces the money supply with the banking system one is repo rate if you it if it wants to increase it will reduce the rates lower the rates if it wants to suck away the money from the economy it will increase the rates theek okay? hai we talked about crowding out we talked about a pool being here hai na crowding out tha there was a pool of money so if rbi wants to suck out excess liquidity from the economy what will rbi do rbi will increase the rates sab kuch mehanga ho jayega for you to take loan it will become costlier you will defer your plan to take loan you will defer your plan to consume you will defer your plan to spend and that is how money is sucked out from the economy demand will reduce because you have reduced you have not uh, taken loan you are not purchasing demand reduces supply will also reduce prices will come did you understand so inflationary may do we follow a contractionary policy or expansionary policy in inflation conditions what kind of policy do we follow cheap money or dear money dear money policy see don't get confused in these things this is what is monetary policy theek okay? hai now a related concept monetary policy committee or monetary policy was under the exclusive purview of governor earlier earlier governor used to decide how much to, to what to do and there are so many metrics which monetary policy affects one is growth level how because more money more growth one is stability less money more stable na normally because if more money it is very volatile inflation might happen might not happen employment levels are also affected by monetary policy because if you give a cheap money policy people will increase supply increase employment so many things are affected what to focus on monetary policy ka target what is the target to increase growth to increase stability or what theek hai so what we did was in 2014 urjit patel committee gave a recommendation very important committee urjit patel committee gave a recommendation there are four recommendations and four are linked with each other so no one name फर्स्ट रिकमेंडेशन इज कि गवर्नर के बदले गवर्नर शुड बी देयर बट बट देयर शुड बी अ मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी कमिटी टू टेक द डिसीजन फर्स्ट इज दैट उर्जित पटेल वॉज द देन 
deputy governor in 2014 there should be a monetary policy committee with governor as the head oh theek hai that is okay but instead of one person please keep a monetary policy committee theek hai second there should be a target inflation target there should be a or you should target inflation which kind of inflation usme bhi there is more cpi combined what is cpi combined we'll talk about in inflation but please remember this ha huh? there should be a monetary policy committee headed by the rbi governor to target inflation and inflation which inflation to target which inflation to target that also they said inflation is of various types inflation is of various uh, i would say flavors and they said that you should target cpi m inflation theek hai iska range diya hua hai the range is what 4 plus minus 2% do you know this it was initially till 2022 then extended till 2027 also 4 plus minus 2% and of course fourth recommendation is to reduce the fiscal deficit thoda kam karo please fiscal deficit should be reduced these recommendations should be by hearted these are the four recommendations of urjit patel committee 2014 में रिकमेंडेशन वर गिवन 2016 में एग्रीमेंट वॉज साइंड बिटवीन गवर्नमेंट एंड आरबीआई मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी कमिटी वॉज फॉर्म विद सिक्स मेंबर्स थ्री फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट साइड थ्री फ्रॉम आरबीआई साइड ठीक है दे विल टेक अ रिव्यू एवरी सिक्स मंथ्स दे विल मीट एवरी टू मंथ्स एंड गिव द पॉलिसी बाय मंथली मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी दिस इज ऑल देर इन द बुक्स ठीक है दिस इज नॉट कंसेप्चुअल दिस इज फैक्चुअल इन्फॉर्मेशन सो वी ब्रॉड एन इन्फ्लेशन टारगेटिंग मैकेनिज्म इन इंडिया we brought an inflation targeting mechanism in india with price stability and growth aisa likha hai so question might come ki rbi's monetary policy targets what only inflation nahi inflation targeting but secondary objective is price stability and growth if you open rbi's website you will come to know ye likha hai the preamble of uh, the main objective says ki it is uh, inflation targeting with uh, stability and growth theek hai Now tell me one question. Who are people? You, me, and big business houses. Who needs lots of money regularly? Big corporates. Okay. Would they want RBI to follow a cheap money policy or a dear money policy? Cheap money. Why? Because they need money to grow. They are profit-making entities. They need money to grow. They will grow faster. they want rbi to follow a cheap money policy rbi would say ki nahi nahi my inflation should be in control otherwise you will to sell but the uh, economy will spiral out of control whenever rbi signals ki ha we might cut rates soch sakte we might think of cutting rates cutting rates you understand right reducing the rates whenever rbi signals to corporates or to the economy ki yes we might think of cutting the rates yes we might think of reducing the rates as per your wish that is called as an accommodative policy accommodative stance these words might come in question papers and then fir wo problem ho jata hai these are there in newspapers but we don't pay attention normally accommodative stance or we can say accommodative policy or etc opposite so this is an indication of reduction of rates ha huh? when rbi says we will follow an accommodative monetary policy it is an indication of reduction of rates ulta kya hai just one minute i'll open the chat opposite is tightening of policy or tight monetary policy tight he we are signaling that rbi will follow a tight monetary policy tight and when rbi does not sing, signal anything 
no indication so why why is rbi giving indications because rbi is telling businesses to prepare yourself if we are following an accommodative policy if we are going to reduce rates prepare your uh, supply side factors prepare yourself that you are you will be able to borrow at a much lower price so prepare kar do theek hai rbi is also preparing to preparing for the influx of extra money in the economy so wo indications hote actual rate cuts might happen might not happen that is a different thing most of the times indications ke hisab se or according to the indications only rbi does uh, rbi operates the policy so these are the types of policies ठीक है नाउ वेन एवर मनी इज टेकन एट रेपो रेट फ्रॉम कमर्शियल बैंक्स बाय कमर्शियल बैंक्स फ्रॉम आर बी आई कमर्शियल बैंक विल कॉल अप आर बी आई आर बी आई विल उस पर आई वी आर होता है प्रेस वन फॉर दिस प्रेस टू फॉर दिस प्रेस वन इफ यू हैव ओवर नाइट लिक्विडिटी रिक्वायरमेंट सो यू प्रेस वन एंड देन आर बी आई टेल्स की हेलो दिस इज ओवर नाइट लिक्विडिटी डिपार्टमेंट सो दर इज अर डिफरेंट विंडोज मतलब एक्चुअल में नहीं है जस्ट इमेजिन दर आर डिफरेंट विंडोज where you where commercial banks can get different kinds of fund requirement for different kinds of uh, what you say different amounts and different kinds of durations so if you need overnight there is a window which is called as lap liquidity adjustment facility so this is first window that we should know about is lap liquidity adjustment facility see the name in itself says that liquidity adjustment facility it is for adjusting the liquidity Overnight, one two days, such a requirement. So you go for lap. Okay, liquidity adjustment facility. Now, obviously, will money be free uh, for commercial banks under lap? Free me milega? Do you think? No, it is definitely at repo rate. Interest rate hoga. Is collateral required? Yes, collateral is required. See, physically collateral they don't keep. They just execute a online agreement and it gets done within second. For one day also, if you go physically and keeping security and all, so wo nahi. It doesn't work. This laugh was introduced in the year 2000. Not that important. This is liquidity adjustment facility. Earlier it was not um, allowed for regional rural banks. Now RBI has selectively allowed regional rural banks also to participate in laugh. Why? Covid. Due to COVID, RBI has allowed RRBs also to tap funds under laugh window. ऐसा लिखते हैं. To tap funds under laugh window. sorry how there are some criteria rrb is fulfilling certain criteria if they are already in losses and all then rbi will say we will not give you money what is reverse repo rate rbi borrowing or commercial banks depositing their money with rbi reverse repo rate repo and reverse repo both are also called as ready forward contract so ye terms i am telling you meaning same hai So the terms are such that repo and reverse repo are also called as ready forward contract. Aaj ka today only you are contracting to buy two days later repurchase karna. So ready forward contract. So bolte ready forward. Whenever you are reading economy, I would suggest keep your focus more on markets chapter because since two years I have been seeing markets questions more appear, appearing more. capital markets money markets basics basics not in advance but basic terms you should know what is ipo fpo and currently we are last year to we witnessed history startups ka ipo was last year the biggest year so a question one two questions on ipo fpo or preference shares equity shares plus shark tank is also there so in sab pe one easy question might come and we we'll lose marks if we have not studied that had this been 5 years ago i would have told you can ignore that because theek hai and most of us do ignore those small chapters but please read them important hai theek hai now let us say under laf window let us say every bank has different eligibility limits most of don't go into that depth some banks let us say they require more money over and above laf rbi says press 2 if you have already exhausted laf limit press 2 okay second window is msf window marginal standing facility marginal standing facility Wh who can explain the meaning of the word marginal economics means a very important word marginal what is marginal what do you mean by marginal next unit ka increase 
so you have given 10 tests 11 tests mein what was your score increase to marginal increase of 2 next marginal means increase of 1 unit so marginal standing facility which means over and above lab extra if you require any funds please press 2 Software boom happened around the year 98 to 99 in India. Software boom, IT exports, what could we exported a lot, right? Banks required a lot of money for a lot of growth and expansion. So if you see the years of growth between 2000 to 2008, we have grown massively. 8% plus growth rate. Hai. In the year 98, 99, there was software boom. Banks needed money to give out as loans. LAF was introduced formally. Okay. Around the same year, government also started recklessly spending because we were growing. FRBM was introduced in 2003. 1997, May, ad hoc monetization of deficit by RBI was also stopped. Okay? So these are all to be seen in the context. Do you know polity and economy are very closely linked with each other? One of the key conditions of 1991 bailout package, IMF, ne, we, we took loan from IMF was that you devolve more power to the third tier of your government and hence we brought in 73rd, 74th amendment. Okay? Formally, la nahi pada, there was no option because we needed those funds. So, economy and polity are closely linked. Anyways, 2008 mein what happened? Recession happened. Which kind of policy did government follow? Expansionary or contractionary after recession? Expansionary, full on expansionary. Again, banks also required more funds. 2011 mein, MSF was also introduced in 2011. Marginal standing facility, it is at a rate little bit more than repo rate because you have already taken money at repo rate. Abhi or money you require, to thoda penalty to lagega. You will incur a penalty. So that is a penal rate. Repo plus hai, this is at repo. This is repo plus. Bear in mind, these are for short term requirements. Earlier, there was a rate for long term lending, RBI giving money to banks on a long term, which, which involved higher risk because when bank will repay and all. This two days, one day, one month, two months, three months, bank will repay. So that rate was called as bank rate. Again, if it is risky for the RBI or risky for RBI, it will charge higher interest. So that is long term rate, these are short term. Hai. There was, there existed a rate called as bank rate, which is also repo plus because it was a panel rate. Okay. Then RBI saw that long term funds lending to long, long term funds to banks is like very protect, being protective of banks. Banks should learn to, rec, to you know, manage their funds. Ha, emergency may if you require short term funds, I will give, but long term may I will not give you funds. You should self sustain. So bank rate as a, as a concept was removed. And this rate was linked to MSF, matlab, same as MSF. Long term lending was stopped, just bank rate published, ho jata hai. Pub it is published by RBI, but it is not used. And it is the same as MSF. So if MSF is, let's say 5%, bank rate will also be 5%. Okay. Now I will explain a very important concept. Whenever there is excess liquidity in the economy, what will RBI do? Push more liquidity or suck out that liquidity? Suck out that liquidity. Does it come at a cost or do you think ki wo uska koi cost nahi hai? What is the cost? See, when, whenever you are taking away money, you have to give them something. Jisse bhi le rahe ho. Whenever you are taking away money, either it can be bonds, or either it can be some instruments or it can be interest or something like that. The cost of sucking away excessive money, I will give you an example of demonetization. When demonetization happened, many people deposited their old notes in the banks. Their bank accounts were credited with that amount. See, everyone did not take new notes. Now, old notes you deposit, bank may put You can use it on your card or you can use it when you swipe. So, imagine your bank, like your country's bank accounts are holding 10,000 crores as average balance. After demonetization, it becomes 20,000 crores because people have deposited the money. Okay, that's a different thing. How much of it is black and tax and all that's a different tangent. 
Now bank is flooded with excess liquidity, don't you think? Because of demonetization, too much of liquidity has come in. Now should RBI intervene or should RBI not intervene? RBI should intervene. Nah, nah. So banks will lend this money out again. And then lending will lead to demand, will lead to less supply because of not catching up, will lead to inflation. So what RBI did was, RBI told, RBI did two things. Second thing I will tell later. RBI, RBI told, RBI had an agreement with the government. Ki, hai. Government will issue bonds to banks. Government will issue bonds to banks. I hope you know how bonds function. I am an issuer of bond. I will write on a paper. I need money. So I come to you people and I write on a paper. I have borrowed 100 rupees from you. I will repay it with 5% interest in one year. And I will sign. I will take your sign. You give me 100 rupees. I give you the paper. That paper is called as bond. Which means you have taken a loan from me. Who is the lender here? People are the lender here. I am the borrower, right? Similarly, now banks are having excess money with them. What to do? Who will suck out the excess liquidity? See, banks will give loan to those people where it will find maximum profit. Government will give money for social purposes. Government will give money for capital revenue expenditure, etc. Okay? So, what RBI and government did is, uh, they reached an agreement that to open a new window wherein banks can park their money or lend their money in favor of some bonds, some instruments, some interest rates. This window was called as market stability, sorry, standing deposit facility scheme, SDF. This was launched in 2018 after demonetization. SDF, standing deposit facility. Standing deposit facility, SDF. SDF, Standing Deposit Facility, is where banks can park their excess liquidity with RBI or government and in this case, they get bonds, interest rate and whatever they earn. This was to discourage banks from lending away that extra liquidity that has come. Okay, just Standing Deposit Facility, what is it? Similar, ek, ek very, very similar facility was introduced in 2004. After lot of export earnings, 98, 99, 2000, boom years for Indian software industries. Lot of foreign exchange came, lot of money came in bank. Again, bank accounts were swollen. To prevent excess liquidity reaching the economy, which results in inflation, RBI introduced another window, 2004, mein, which is MSS, Market Stabilization Scheme. The name says Market Stabilization Scheme. Market Stabilization scheme. These are different windows that uh, RBI, not tomorrow, RBI might introduce a new window for some new problem. Till date, till date, RBI was actively discouraging long-term lending. Okay. RBI has started long-term lending since COVID. RBI ne, to support MSMEs, to support small entrepreneurs, long-term lending RBI has started. So RBI told banks give loans to MSMEs. Banks said, sir, but they are not able to repay loans because of COVID. RBI said, don't worry, I will give you long-term loan. You give him long-term loan and uh, let them get the money and liquidity. This is called as long-term repo operations. 2020 may they introduced long-term repo operations. Now, out of that also, government prioritized. Government prioritized which sector should get maximum benefit of this. Okay, MSMEs, farmers, which sector should get maximum benefit of this? They introduced another window called as targeted long-term repo operations, TLTRO, targeted only for specific sector. So if you want to borrow money at long term from uh, long term window, if you are that specific sector, you can borrow from this. Uh, definitely, its benefits would be higher, rates are lower because RBI government, they both want to actively encourage uh, these targeted sectors. Got it? 
what is reverse repo rate very quickly what is reverse repo rate commercial banks give money to rbi what rate reverse repo rate theek how is that rate decided sir monetary policy ha definitely monetary policy is the rate see as convention the reverse repo rate is some percentage minus repo rate matlab repo rate is 4 to minus 1 if it is there reverse repo would be 2% first of all do you know why reverse repo rate is lesser than repo rate what is the logic behind it rbi will not give more interest rather than rbi is also sort of doing business only the if it is borrowing money from commercial banks it will definitely pay less interest but if commercial banks want more money from rbi it will charge higher interest simple so repo rate is always higher reverse repo rate is lower what is where is msf higher lower higher bank rate is higher now ye this rate is decided conventionally it was decided as a minus something of repo rate but there have been instances where repo rate and reverse repo rate have both been moved differently so repo rate increase hoga lekin reverse rate might not increase or it might reduce etc so this is also possible now very important rbi does not know how much liquidity to suck out dhyan se this is a new concept rbi does not know how much liquidity to suck out rough range hai 10000 20000 crores rbi will ask banks at what rate are you willing to keep money with me rbi will ask banks theek hai axis bank says i will keep 2000 crores at 2% i am willing hdfc bank says sir i will keep 3000 theek hai different different rates hai whenever rbi feels ki yes this is the amount that we want to suck out so ek option hoga boli hoga so you will say first obviously banks will start 4% sir rbi will say i am not keeping i am not keeping money with me at 4% 3% 2% then rbi says 2% pe who all are ready let's say few people few banks raise hands okay ready chalo deal done theek hai so that rate is called as a variable reverse repo rate variable hai na it, it keeps on changing variable reverse repo rate vrr rbi conducted massive vrr operations one year ago variable reverse repo rate this was the story of this to this now we'll start the story of this to this ye to reverse repo repo msa we don't we don't have anything to do with that we common people business houses we don't care we care is about the rate of interest nay fayda is it gets the best possible price for rbi if rbi tells 4% pe i will give so it will try to find out na auction ka purpose kya hota to try to find out the best possible price and rbi is also not sure of the quantum so if rbi says ki 2% but nobody is ready so rbi will also reduce 1.5% so then people will be ready waisa imagine sbi you go to sbi sbi hai your parents are very influential members of the society very rich you go to sbi sir you need education loan manager says sir come red carpet chai coffee cold drink whiskey theek hai whatever you want we'll give uh, you talk about the terms of rate of interest and the education loan they say ki sir policy to 10% hai interest rate you say sir i am not taking loan from you are they saying sir sir where are you going i will give you 8% i will give you 7% यहाँ वेरिएबल चल रहा है ठीक है दिस वॉज दिस वॉज द केस बैक देन वेर देर वॉज डिस्क्रिप्शन विद बैंक्स टू गिव लोन्स टू टू डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ कस्टमर्स डिस्क्रिप्शन था सो दिस वॉज द अर्लियर रेजिम ठीक है ये फर्स्ट रेजिम था सेकेंड रेजिम सेकेंड रेजिम केम वेर आर बी आई टोल्ड कि दिस इज नॉट अलाउड इसका इसका नुकसान क्या है वॉट इज द नुकसान मैनेजर्स बैंक मैनेजर्स will try to increase their loan books by giving loans at very cheap rate of interest they will not see whether that loan will be repaid or not by the time acha managers bank managers especially in psus are old people 50 around 50 they know that 5 years mein i will retire whether that loan will be repaid or not i don't care 
because my commission is based on how much loans I am giving. Now tomorrow if that loan is not repaid, I am not in service. I have earned my commission, I am living happily. Okay, do you understand? Plus, market price nahi, you know, this is not market price, this is discretionary. Some influential people will take loans at low rate of interest. Now, if influential people take loans at low rate of interest, what will happen with the remaining people? Crowding out, high rate pe dena padega because money supply is limited. Okay, to stop this, RBI said ki, this does not work. RBI told bank, simple hai. take your cost. What is your cost? What is RBI's cost of funds? Repo rate, because it is borrowing money from RBI at that rate, plus deposit interest rate. Okay, that is your cost. Uspe add your expenses and profit, whatever you want to add, add kar do. And then charge, charge the rate. This is called as a base rate. This is the base rate. Don't go below this. RBI said don't go below this and its calculations you have to give to me. I will check whether these calculations are right or not. Okay. Now tell me, let us say this is repo rate, 2%, expense profit karke, base rate aya 4%, suppose. If RBI is following a expansionary policy, what will happen to repo rate? If RBI is following expansionary policy, what will happen to repo rate? Reduce. RBI reduced this slash this to 1.5%. So technically this should also be 3.5%. No? But banks are losing out. What did banks do? Banks saw that our customers are ready to take at 4%. Why would I give at 3.5%? Ye increase kar diya. Profit increase kar ke. Rate remained 4%. Is monetary policy transmission happening or not happening? Weak or strong? Weak. RBI said forget this. Achha, isme bhi na. Now, repo operations, you know, they happen at very frequent intervals, lot of money is taken. So, let's say in the past 10 days, banks borrowed from RBI at different rates, uh, repo rates, repo 1, 2, 3, Aisa karke, repo 10, 10 times purchase. But in the past 10 days or past 10 times, repo rate was same. Let's say 4% repo rate. So, what will be the average repo rate at which banks have purchased money from RBI? Bank have purchased money from RBI 10 times. Her bar 4-4%. Every time 4%. What will be the average? 4%. RBI reduces rate to 2%. R11 is 2%. Average 3.8 something hoga. Because this is 10, na? average will be little bit less. This is the problem with base rate. They were taking average rates of a particular period. RBI said, whenever I reduce rates, next loan that you give should be priced on reduced rate. Direct, don't take average. Confusing? Complicated? If I tell you, your average performance, your performance in tests, you will tell me the average. Sir, average we get 90 marks. If I tell you latest test ka marks, patao, then you will tell sir 45 marks. Yeah, na? Similarly, so RBI saw that banks were pricing their loans. Banks were pricing their loans on average basis. Abhi wo average mein higher rate will also come, which has, which was there since two months, let's say. Two months tak high rate ta. Now, even if you add one more repo of lower rate, still average would be higher. Theke? So, what RBI said is, ki, next loan, once I reduce the repo rate, next loan that you give, please price it at the reduced rate and not the average rate. Samjai nahi? Yes or no, everyone? Don't take average of past rates because past May rates was high. Even if you take average now, it will be high. Take only this. Take only marginal rate. Marginal? next and this is called as NCLR regime. This is the third regime. First regime was discretionary, second regime was base rate, third regime is MCLR. Sir, what is MCLR? The full form itself explains the concept
marginal cost of funds based lending rate can anyone explain the full form question i 2015 mclr Vishav, did you understand this after I explained again? RBI is saying, please price your loan on marginal cost. Don't take it on average cost. Ye math, little bit of maths is here. See, I will explain. Again, simple terms may. In the last 10 days, repo rate was 4%. Commercial banks have taken lot of loan, lot of amount, lot many times at 4%. Okay, average 4% over. Let's say 10 times. 4%. Now, repo rate is reduced to 3%. So, average kya hoga? 10 into 4% plus 1 into 3 percent average nikal de, divide by 11. Okay, this is how you remove simple average mean. RBI says average mat. Take only this. Take only marginal cost of funds. Because average karo ge to still it will be lesser than 4. But 3 se to it will be higher only. Because average it is average. So don't take average rate, take marginal rate. With this, RBI is trying to go for more real-time transmission of monetary policy. Wow, kya bola hai, sir? Now, this is what RBI is trying to do. More real-time. RBI wants to eliminate banks. Ka wo. This also does not work sometimes. Sometimes they increase profit. Sometimes, kuch na kuch hoke nahi hota hai. So, RBI said ki, bas, now enough. Fourth regime aa gaya hai. Directly link it to repo rate. So, aapka cost hi repo rate. Don't do any calculations, just link it to repo rate. So, 91 days repo rate or 182 days repo rate or any other treasury bill rate uh, approved by some approved organization, FBIL, Financial Benchmarks India Limited, FIMDA, direct linker. That is called as the fourth regime, which is the external benchmarking. What was the first regime? Second, third, Fourth, external benchmarking. Khatam karo. There are four, four permissible or you can say four recommended this. Ya to you link it with repo rate or you link it with 91 days treasury bill rate or you link it with 182 days treasury bill rate or you link it with any other benchmark approved by financial benchmark india limited it is an official benchmarking uh, company and it is nothing but all the banks ka association iba plus foreign exchange dealers association of india ka combined organization is SBI. Not all loans are under fourth regime. Many loans are under third regime, but housing loans and all, which are very, uh, uh, customers who are very price sensitive, housing loans, ho gaya to uske liye, and they are not luxury, small housing loans and all. So they are limited to external benchmark. So which means what tomorrow if RBI decides to reduce the rates, rates should reduce to the customer, for the customer. Yeah, average calculation, profits and all, we don't want to go into that. Of course, this may be profit add karega bank, definitely. But this is a much more simple calculation than taking marginal cost or taking average cost or uh, discretion to theke hai nahi. 2019 mad, fourth regime. 14 or 15 may third regime was introduced. Base rate regime was there to since long time.
समझा डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस चलो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट विल कम फॉर सम टाइम वी विल गो टू अ कमर्शियल बैंक एंगल नाउ फॉर सम टाइम नाउ टिल नाउ वी आर लर्निंग अबाउट आरबीआई मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी सम टाइम विल गो टू कमर्शियल बैंक आरबीआई गिव्स मनी टू कमर्शियल बैंक कमर्शियल बैंक इज न्यूली स्टार्टेड आरबीआई गेव हंड्रेड रुपीज स्टार्ट डू यू थिंक दिस एंटायर हंड्रेड रुपीज विल बी गिवन बाय अ बैंक टू एज लोन वाई own expenses own salary and all plus some withdrawal requirements of the customers plus some reserve kuch to for some untoward conditions 10 is kept as reserve kitna lend hoga 90 i have taken this 90 what will i do of this 90 it is in my hands now i have taken i am a borrower what will i do i will buy something I will use it for anything. When I buy something, I will give this ninety to someone else. बराबर है. That someone else, what will he do with the money? He will keep it with his in bank account. This ninety will reach bank account. I'm I'm taking a very simple example here. We'll complicate this in money supply chapter after banking. This ninety will reach banks. Now banks क्या करेगा नाइन रुपीज इट विल कीप एज रिजर्व एटी वन रुपीज इट विल गिव एज लोन सेम थिंग एट पॉइंट वन विल एंड सेम थिंग वुड कंटिन्यू बैंक स्टार्टेड विथ हंड्रेड रुपीज बट बैंक हैज गिवन और क्रिएटेड मनी सप्लाई और क्रेडिट वर्क हंड्रेड नाइनटी एटी वन सेवेंटी टू पॉइंट एट वट एवर दिस इज द मेन फंक्शन ऑफ कमर्शियल बैंक विच इज क्रेडिट क्रिएशन आरबीआई का मेन फंक्शन वॉज क्रेडिट कंट्रोल आरबीआई डज नॉट वॉट यू से क्रिएट क्रेडिट आरबीआई कंट्रोल क्रेडिट बैंक क्रिएट क्रेडिट सी एम नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट मनी प्रिंटिंग मनी नहीं हो रहा है बट क्रेडिट इज क्रिएटेड नाइनटी ही इज यूजिंग ही इज यूजिंग एटी वन एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा इफ रिजर्व नहीं होते तो तो पूरा हंड्रेड वॉज मल्टीप्लाइड सो मेनी टाइम्स दिस इज आवर बैंक क्रिएट क्रेडिट Do you agree? Some fraction has to be kept as reserve by the banks to meet so many things. For so many things, we are going to see now. This concept, ah, uh, this concept, this is an economic term. This concept of keeping some money aside and then lending it out is known as fractional reserve banking. Fractional reserve banking, FRB, fractional reserve banking. You keep some fraction. you keep some fraction as a reserve fractional reserve banking most of the central banks around the world follow fractional reserve banking first tool of fractional reserve banking is crr cash reserve ratio What is cash reserve ratio? Nothing. RBI is telling banks keep some part of hard cash, rokda with me. With me is very important. Sir, can I keep as gold? No, cash. Sir, can I keep it with myself? No. You have to keep it with me. Sir, can I get interest? No. You have to keep it aside. Forget about it. Move on. Break up with your money. ठीक है सम पोर्शन ऑफ इट इंटरेस्ट नहीं विथ आरबीआई कैश सियारा समझा व्हाट डू बैंक्स डू टू स्टे इन बिजनेस दे गिव आउट मनी किसको देते to whom do banks give money corporates individuals so many things risk hai thoda they might not repay 
ये तो दिस इज फॉर डे टू डे ऑपरेशन दिस वेरी स्मॉल अमाउंट गवर्नमेंट कॉल्स अब आर बी आई गवर्नमेंट सेज मेरे को पैसा चाहिए आई नीड सम मनी टेल बैंक ना टू गिव मी मनी बैंक आर अंडर योर कंट्रोल प्लीज टेल ना आर बी आई सेज की हाँ आई वॉज ऑल्सो थिंकिंग ऑफ आस्किंग देम टू इन्वेस्ट इन सम सेफ सिक्योरिटीज टू इन्वेस्ट इन सम टू कीप सम मनी असाइड एज इन्वेस्टमेंट तो ठीक है आई टेल बैंक की इन्वेस्ट इन गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज तो ना वॉट इज एपनिंग दिस इज आर बी आई दिस इज गवर्नमेंट आर बी आई banks banks have got deposit of 100 rupees 100 rupees means crr 5 rupees bank has kept with rbi truck mein bhej bhej diya go with rbi theek hai now remaining money mein rbi and government both are telling that you have to buy some bonds of government when i say banks are buying bonds of government who is the lender bank who is the borrower who is paying interest to whom government is paying interest to banks so when banks purchase bonds of government banks will get interest on that but doesn't that reduce the loanable funds 95 bacha tha 5 rupees gone with rbi 10 rupees i am investing in government bonds 85 is left theek hai this is also one more tool of fractional reserve banking this is for both purposes government gets money here and banks ka some money is kept aside as investment with the banks with banks themselves sir i don't want to invest in government securities theek hai gold rakh do sir can i keep cash best keep cash rbi is saying rbi is telling government i can't force them to buy your t bills i will give them option keep cash keep gold invest in government approved t bill or government approved securities keep it with yourself enjoy now tell me will banks earn interest on this money if they if they invest in t bills they will earn interest if they keep in cash they will not earn interest theek okay. hai now that cash also it doesn't have to be with themselves it can be as a deposit in another bank and earn interest ha huh? oh cash mein they have kept it with themselves these are called as slr securities statutory liquidity ratio this was cash reserve ratio this is statutory liquidity ratio see the name says it is statutory but why is statutory for liquidity purposes so this is mainly for ensuring ki banks have enough liquidity chalo simple question what are your liquid assets pani mat bolna what are your liquid assets what is liquid easily convertible to cash that is known as liquid assets what do you have that is easily convertible to cash first and foremost cash itself second what do you think gold you can sell थर्ड क्या है पर्सनल वेल्थ में यू कैन सेल मोबाइल ऑन ओ एल एक्स इट विल टेक टाइम बट यू कैन स्टिल सेल ठीक है लिक्विडिटी गोज ऑन रिड्यूसिंग बट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सेल योर हाउस और लैंड इट विल टेक टाइम रजिस्ट्रेशन टू फाइंड द राइट बायर सेट द राइट प्राइस कैलकुलेट टैक्सेस सिमिलरली दीज आर ऑल लिक्विड एसेट्स विच द बैंक आर इन्वेस्टिंग इन दीज आर लिक्विड इट कैन सेल एनी टाइम वन मोर थिंग government is giving bonds of 6 months banks do not have to hold it for 6 months they can sell it to other banks buy some other bonds also who oh, game chalta rehta hai statutory liquidity ratio theek hai it has to be kept with the banks themselves it can either be in cash or gold or other slr or slr securities did you understand this this percentage let's say crr is 3% slr is 6% kiska what is nddtl why it is called as net demand and time liabilities chal nddtl very quickly what is l liabilities why it is called liabilities bank ka balance sheet hai bank will list all its assets bank will list all its liabilities banking chapter mix kar raha hu main with monetary policy because it will go hand in hand what is asset right to earn income right of ownership right to gain benefit what is liability obligation theek hai what is the biggest asset of bank 
why loans will come in asset because interest cost is going to come that is the main business that is giving benefit to bank loans will always come on asset side what are any other assets of bank investment cash investments corporate securities sub investments cash now this can be government non government corporate sab kuch aa gaya isme what about liability side kya hai liability mein why are deposits liability because they have to repay it to the customers banks have to repay it to the customers us pe interest interest is also to be given deposits one more thing what is the liability of banks loans taken might come here but for simplicity i am not writing but you are right loans taken will come here now let me introduce you to an accounting concept for just 30 seconds it is called a separate legal entity concept kya bolta hai what does it say owner is different from organization whose accounts are these owners or organization organization imagine owner is a separate person uh, organization is a separate person owner has given funds to organization for the organization aren't those funds borrowing interest is not to be given to the owner dividend is not to be given to the owner what is to be given to the owner profits sometimes yes sometimes no that is the nature of investment theek hai so usko hum bolenge capital we'll come back to this slide that is i'm writing it here capital is nothing but investment by the owners if it is a psb government has invested capital if it is privately owned bank private uh, owners have invested capital theek hai so liabilities ka part whatever sorry liabilities ka part whatever deposits you are getting some portion you have to keep it aside why it is called demand and time on demand so there are different kinds of accounts you know savings account current account to uh, वैसे so similarly fixed deposits so those liabilities which mature after a time let's say one year fd so for that bank it is a time deposit and others on demand current account savings account etc savings account up to a certain point is a time uh, sorry is a demand liability because minimum balance and all has to be maintained so demand and time liabilities why net bank also has kept deposit with some other bank that is to be reduced so net 100 rupees bank got as deposits bank has also kept some money 5 rupees as deposit with some other bank so 95 pe you maintain crr slr because 5 is already safe hai na that 5 is already safe so hence net demand and time liabilities ka percentage is fractional reserve banking crr and slr theek hai is gold allowed in crr sure is cash allowed in slr theek hai is pe to hum aayenge this is to just uh, this is just the beginning see why re reason of keeping SL, slr crr is what safe rehna chahiye mane 100 rupees deposit aaya 5 rupees before crr slr sbi kept money with hdfc deposit rakh diya different banks have say they are accounts with different banks also sbi will have an account with hdfc ha correct unless it has also kept with some other theek hai to rbi says agar net nahi hota so rbi would have told ki crr 100 pe rakho 3% but you are saying sir but i have already kept my money safe with other bank wo mera safety hai net wo yahan dikhega investment mein fd तो आरबीआई से इसकी ठीक है 100 माइनस फाइव नाइनटी पे यू कीप 3 परसेंट चलेगा दैट इज नेट नेट डिमांड एंड टाइम लाइबिलिटीज माय लाइबिलिटी माइनस माय एसेट व्हिच आई हैव केप्ट विथ अदर बैंक एज डिपॉजिट तो वो मेरे लिए डिपॉजिट इन द सेंस मेरे लिए वो इन्वेस्टमेंट हो गया फॉर द अदर अदर बैंक इट इज अ डिपॉजिट हाँ बट वो नहीं नहीं आई एम आस्किंग 
देखते हैं कि ये परसेंटेज होता है हाउ मच टू बी केप्ट ना दिस इज चॉइस ऑफ बैंक ठीक है इसका ऑब्जेक्टिव इज लिक्विडिटी लिक्विड इज योर इफ यू कीप योर मनी विद अदर बैंक इज इट लिक्विड यस यू कैन विदड्रॉ एट एनी टाइम इंटरेस्ट अर्न कर रहा होगा ना तो वो तो गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज में भी अर्न कर रहा है नहीं विद देम सेल्स इन द सेंस नॉट विद आरबीआई बिकॉज विद आरबीआई तो इंटरेस्ट गॉन एवरीथिंग गॉन विद देम सेल्स मींस दे हैव कंट्रोल ओवर इट सीआरआर मनी पे दे डोंट हैव कंट्रोल ना इट इज गॉन फॉरगेट एसएलआर में यू हैव कंट्रोल ओवर इट इतना मिनिमम मेंटेन करना है व्हाटएवर यू डू विद दैट मनी यू हैव टू मेंटेन दिस मच If you want to tomorrow remove that deposit, invest in some other government securities, you can do it very well. So far as your liquidity is maintained, we are not concerned. If your liquidity goes down, then problem. Remember, uh, lap window me kya hota hai? Repo rate me who borrows from whom? Banks borrows. Is collateral required? दैट कोलेट्रल हैज टू बी ओवर एंड अबाउ एस एल आर सिक्योरिटीज यही देखे नहीं बोल सकते सर डू दिस यू हैव टू कीप समथिंग एल्स एस दिस इज जस्ट अ कंसेप्चुअल थिंग ठीक है द ओनली रेयर रेयर इंस्टेंस वेर आर बी आई डील्स डायरेक्टली विद द पब्लिक रेयर इंस्टेंस वेर आर बी आई डील्स डायरेक्टली विद द पब्लिक इज वेर आर बी आई एक्ट एज एन एजेंट ऑफ गवर्नमेंट फॉर बाइंग एंड सेलिंग सिक्योरिटीज सी गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज In government securities, who is lending money to whom? Bank, me people. If I buy government security, I am lending money. So if I tomorrow purchase a treasury bill, I am giving money to government. I am lending money to government. What am I getting? Interest and security. Yeah, government hai. It will pay re repay the money. Government when it wants to raise money. Now remember fiscal deficit chapter. Fiscal deficit aaya. what is the option it can borrow from the bank it can borrow as loans or it can borrow from people i told how does it borrow from people kuch to receipt hoga that receipt is called as a bond or a bill or whatever you want to call it government securities bolte hai gsec theek hai government securities now those the procedure of issuing these government securities kitna rate hona chahiye what should be the rate of interest and how it should be done that is managed by rbi rbi is the debt manager of government rbi acts as an agent of the government in issuing these notes and in between rbi can also take government securities khud bhi le sakta hai that is fine when you own your sweet shop you can also eat some sweets on your own theek hai so when rbi acts as a as an agent of government government says rbi don't only approach the banks approach the public also they also have money they might also be interested so rbi then comes to you and approaches you for buying or selling government securities now tell me rbi will approach you for buying government securities when it is following an expansionary policy or a contractionary policy rbi is approaching you chalo uh, rbi is telling you ki buy government securities rbi aapko bol raha hai ki you buy rbi is telling you you buy which means you will buy you will give me money which means money will suck out of your pocket it will come to my pocket it will go to government samjha so whenever rbi is following an expansionary policy rbi wants more money with the people so rbi will go and buy securities and give money and whenever rbi is following a contractionary policy reduce karna hai rbi will sell securities and take away the money samjha these these activities are called as omos open market operations open market operations omo one of the rare instances where acha you can go to rbi and change your currency note also i have done that many times directly bhi you can go theek hai normally when we come to markets chapter normally individual investors were limited to capital markets markets mein i will tell you in detail but individual investors were limited to capital markets money market mein there are big institutions rbi is playing government is playing big financial institutions are playing big investment banks are playing so money market mein 
the operations were limited to big institutional investors. Now, last year what RBI did was RBI announced facilitation of individual investors to participate in government securities. Okay? So, the account that you maintain is called as a GILT account, G-I-L-T, government securities ko GILT edge securities bhi bolte. Do you know that? Why? GILT, G-I-L-T, not G-U-I-L-T. Wo to exam ke baad lagega tumko, but GILT. GILT edged matlab बॉर्डर गोल्डन कलर का होता था उसका गिल्ट एज एज उसका गिल्ट एज बोलते थे दिस वाज अ क्वेश्चन आस्क इन इंटरव्यू अगेन व्हाई इट इज कॉल्ड गिल्ट एज सिक्योरिटीज बिकॉज़ गोल्डन बॉर्डर है सो हां तो नाउ इंडिविजुअल इन्वेस्टर्स आर आल्सो अलाउड टू ओपन गिल्ट एज अकाउंट्स गिल्ट अकाउंट्स एंड पार्टिसिपेट इन मनी मार्केट डायरेक्टली ठीक है सेम क्वेश्चन वाज आल्सो आस्क इन 2021 अभी तक इज एवरीथिंग क्लियर नहीं अभी तक इज एवरीथिंग क्लियर व्हाट इज एमएसएस व्हाट इज डू व्हाट आर वी डूइंग आर वी पंपिंग लिक्विडिटी और सकिंग एक्सेस लिक्विडिटी सकिंग एक्सेस लिक्विडिटी डू वी इनकर अ कॉस्ट फॉर इट यस वी इनकर अ कॉस्ट कुछ तो देना पड़ेगा ठीक है दिस प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड एज स्टेरिलाइजेशन sterilization of money what is normally sterilization you boil something was sterile ho jata hai sterilization sterilization of money means lot of money is coming in you sterilize it which means you suck it out give interest uske samne this is known as sterilization so when in exam if it comes which of the following will help in sterilization or what do you mean by sterilization don't say ki option to hai nahi garam pani karne ka to do hot water and sterilize thing it is talking about sucking out excess liquidity from the economy and giving certain sterilization cost so when i say sterilization costs are high which means that the cost of sucking liquidity is higher sterilization omo happens in both nikhil majorly primary secondary mein bhi hota hai बट अभी तो डायरेक्ट हो गया सो यू कैन डायरेक्टली लॉग इन एंड बाय द सिक्योरिटीज अभी आरबीआई इज रोल एज एन एजेंट हैज रिड्यूस्ड ठीक है ओके फिजिकल डेफिसिट रन किया है वी विल गो टू मार्केट वी विल गो टू गवर्नमेंट विल गो टू मार्केट और गवर्नमेंट विल गो टू आरबीआई और गवर्नमेंट हैज द ऑप्शन ऑफ बोथ RBI मतलब आई एम से गवर्नमेंट विल गो टू आर बी आई फॉर प्लान बोरोइंग फिजिकल डेफिसिट हुआ है टू थाउजेंड क्रोर्स रिक्वायरमेंट है वेर विल द गवर्नमेंट गो फर्स्ट सेकेंड गवर्नमेंट विल गो टू आर बी आई ऑल्सो राइट इफ गवर्नमेंट इज गोइंग टू मार्केट हाउ विल इट रेज मनी बाय गिविंग समथिंग बाय गिविंग गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज नाउ दैट गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज कैन बी शॉर्ट टर्म और लॉन्ग टर्म short term less than 1 year long term more than 1 year 1 year or more theek hai so they can be short term or they can be long term acha government are also multiple central hai state hai state government ka bhi budgeting and everything is same right similar when central government when central government issues short term securities in the market they are called as dash treasury bills did you notice there are 91 day treasury bills 182 day treasury bills 364 days 364 q less than one year short term hai treasury bills market ha huh? market can government central government issue long term securities yes bonds bolte usko bonds bonds dsex anything long term what about state government can state government also issue treasury bills no 
can state government issue short term no only long term they are called as state development loans sdl state development loans chalo this also didn't fulfill our requirement now we go to rbi rbi can also borrow sorry lend money to the government obviously government will give some security to rbi some instrument some security to rbi rbi has two windows windows hai bahut rbi ke paas this window is called as wma what is wma ways and means advances there are two types of ways and means advances one is normal and one is special normal means you come first time normal aapko mil jayega special means over and above normal if you require you come to us central government is eligible for normal borrowing state governments are eligible for normal and special borrowings स्पेशल क्यों बोलते हैं इसको बिकॉज इसमें कोलेट्रल की रिक्वायरमेंट है इज ओवर एंड अबाउ द कैन सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट टेक फ्रॉम स्पेशल डब्ल्यू एम ए विंडो सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट कैन नॉट टेक फ्रॉम स्पेशल डब्ल्यू एम ए विंडो दिस हैज द रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ सिक्योरिटी but that facility is only available to state governments because वैसे भी यहाँ यार they have reduced accessibility of funds only long term they can issue this is also called as clean WMA clean means no security no no झंझट nothing clean WMA yes yes फ्री कुछ भी नहीं है नॉर्मली इट इज रेपो रेट इट डिपेंड्स ऑन वॉट इज द ड्यूरेशन ओवर एंड अबाउ अगर चाहिए तो यू विल हैव टू बी हायर इंटरेस्ट रेट this is planned limits are set windows pe amount amount ha huh. this is planned that was ad hoc that is a problem we are issuing bills take it aisa nahi hai we will take only up to 10000 crores uske baad we are not whatever we have discussed na whatever we have discussed crr slr uh, tools repo rate etc these are called as quantitative tools of credit control quantitative means you are changing the quantity less more less more there are some qualitative tools also qualitative means you change the direction of money you don't reduce the control uh, you don't reduce the credit or increase the credit you control the direction simple example i'll give you rbi mandates banks to lend 40% to priority sector credit is not reducing or increasing wo utna hi hai sirf direction is changing instead of going to profitable companies it is going to priority sector companies or uh, profitable psl theek hai another example rbi says ki banks have to maintain at least 10% collateral to rakhna hai now that collateral increases to 15% credit utna hi hai you just take more collateral so that increases the direction so those sectors wherein more collateral is available wahan paisa zyada jayega aur safe डायरेक्शन में मनी जाएगा दीज आर क्वालिटेटिव टूल्स ऑफ क्रेडिट कंट्रोल ठीक है दिस वॉज मेजर मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी वी आर गोइंग टूवर्ड्स न्यू कॉन्सेप्ट वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग कॉन्सेप्ट ये इंटरेस्ट रेट है वी आर एट इंटरेस्ट रेट हियर लेट से देर इज वेरी हाई इंफ्लेशन वॉट विल आरबीआई डू टू इंटरेस्ट रेट इंक्रीज ठीक है इंटरेस्ट रेट बढ़ेगा आफ्टर अ फ्यू इयर्स व्हाट हैपन वी आर कोविड लॉट ऑफ रिसेशन व्हाट विल गवर्नमेंट आरबीआई डू 
reduced still not satisfied what will rbi do still not satisfied what will after a point of time rbi will say bas theek this is near near 0% let's say 0.5% suppose still consumption is not happening people are not buying people are not using that money people are not taking loans theek hai ho hi nahi raha this is called as a liquidity trap there is no liquidity despite being very low interest rate one reason why this happens chalo <laughs> answer is human psychology people anticipate ki aur sasta ho you see amazon great indian sale are next month it is coming aur sasta ho this is also called as zero lower bound scenario zlb zero lower bound this is a stage where monetary policy becomes ineffective humse itna hi hoga ab nahi ho payega then fiscal policy will have to take charge coming back to fiscal policy what happens is fiscal policy may be if you reduce tax rates and similar situation happens in fiscal policy sab kuch try kiya but we didn't uh achieve it so what will government do is government will try to uh like we did in covid government will aggressively try to support uh government will try to reduce the prices government will try so many things so there is one more word which i want you to know that government follows when it follows an expansionary or stimulus policy that is called as pump priming pump priming p u m p pump government is pumping benefits or easing the restrictions over money use pump priming p r i m i n g pump priming in this scenario a similar thing to pump priming happens desperate hai RB, rbi is desperate now RBI will go for a desperate steps. Those desperate steps are two majorly lot of steps. एक दो याद रखेंगे two steps. One is RBI will start accepting lower grade treasury bills or lower grade securities. RBI normally will not buy securities which are of lower grade. ठीक है but now RBI will start accepting lower grade securities. RBI will say कि fine whatever you have give it to me take money from me. I will buy lower grade securities at high price. take it. and last stage is printing of currency desperate step printing of currency these two three or these set of steps are known as quantitative easing qe when qe measures qe measures are very often used in usa wahan pe zlb situation is very common once in every 15 20 years it happens QE was suggested by an economist and he said ki it is like you have to drop money from helicopters hence it is also called as helicopter money when he suggested the article me he said ki it is it is akin to money low helicopters and just give it to people because nothing is working here kuch nahi ho raha so just helicopter se leke jao just rain money print karo and rain money so that is also called as helicopter money it is nothing but quantitative easing printing of currency my question to you one simple question what is monetary policy corridor what is monetary policy corridor
gap between the highest rate and the lowest rate is the monetary policy corridor. What is the highest rate? Bank rate or MSF rate? Lowest rate is reverse repo. I hope you know this. Re repo will come here. MSF or bank rate will come here and reverse repo will come here. This is the monetary policy corridor. Don't say 4 plus minus 2 percent. That is not a monetary policy corridor. Monetary policy corridor is nothing but repo, sorry, uh, reverse repo rate se leke MSF rate. The difference between reverse repo rate and MSF rate is monetary policy corridor. In inflationary conditions, what will fiscal policy do? Increase tax rates or reduce tax rates? Increase tax rates. What will RBI do? Increase interest rates or reduce interest rates? What will happen if both go in opposite direction? What will happen if fiscal policy and monetary policy are not going in the same direction? Hmm? Balance? Nee, they will not balance off. The equal nahi hai. Uh, Nikhil is asking, no, Nikhil, RBI will not do that. States konsa le sakta hai? States can take both special and normal. Can you please explain liquidity trap again? Liquidity trap is when despite lowering interest rates, people are not consuming, people are not borrowing more, people are not consuming more, people are not demanding more. So, there is no liquidity in the economy despite being lower rates. Now, why it is a trap? Because you cannot go beyond this. You can go in negative rates, that is a different thing, NIRP, negative interest rate regime. But, it is zero, again, zero lower bound. So, that is a trap. So, we are stuck in a trap of liquidity. Ha, my question to you was, what will happen if they do not listen to each other? One word answer, when fiscal policy and monetary policy go in opposite directions, stagflation happens. Stagflation. Stagflation is a combination of words, stagnation plus inflation, stagflation. Stagnation in what terms? In terms of employment generation majorly. So basically, one of them is trying to increase the demand which results in inflation, but one of them is pulling it down so that inflation happens, but the commensurate supply increase and labor employment increase and growth does not happen. So it is a stagflation, checkmate, stalemate, sorry. And this happens. So it's just that we don't see it because hum tak ye nahi effect hai, but this happens very frequently. FSDC we have already covered in the question, na, Financial Stability Development Council. It was established in 2010 after the aftermath of 2008-9 economic crisis where we thought ki everyone should meet, uh, all heads of regulators should meet and they should discuss and obviously finance committee, uh, sorry, finance minister is the chairperson. Then there is a similar organization that you should know, so the question can come, FSB, Financial Stability Board. So this is at an India level, a similar organization exists at a global level, which is Financial Stability Board. This was, all, this was in 2010, this was in 2009, both reactions to the global economic crisis. So India sends SEBI chief, India sends deputy governor of RBI, secretary economic affairs to these meetings and say, ki jao dekh kya. What, the, what are they saying? G20. What is your view on 
रशिया यूक्रेन कॉन्फ्लिक्ट जीतेगा रशिया यूक्रेन विल रशिया बी सक्सेसफुल इन एनेक्सिंग सम एटलीस्ट सम कंसिडरेबल पार्ट ऑफ यूक्रेन स्मॉल मतलब वन एरिया इट हैज चेंज इट स्ट्रैटेजी ना रशिया विड्रॉन फोर्सेस आर्टिकल आया था ना एक रशिया इज विड्रॉइंग फोर्सेस फ्रॉम नॉर्दर्न रीजन एंड फोकसिंग ऑन साउथ ईस्ट रीजन बिकॉज सब जगह से नहीं हो पाया रशिया लॉस लॉट ऑफ इट सोल्जर्स लॉट्स ऑफ इट सोल्जर्स एंड सीनियर लेवल सोल्जर्स जोश में गए थे लाइक एटी थ्री वर्ल्ड कप टीम फाइनेंशियल स्टेबिलिटी डेवलपमेंट काउंसिल टू थाउजेंड टेन में देर वॉज अ बॉडी फॉर्म इन इंडिया इन इंडिया वेर ऑल हेड्स ऑफ रेगुलेटर मीट से बी आई आर डी ए चीफ एंड फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर इज द चेयरपर्सन दैट्स इट ग्रुप है सिमिलर ग्रुप एग्जिस्ट एट द ग्लोबल लेवल जी ट्वेंटी ग्रुप ऑफ कंट्रीज का दैट टू थाउजेंड नाइन में इट वॉज एस्टेब्लिश एंड इंडिया ऑल्सो सेंड से बी चीफ डेप्यूटी गवर्नर आर बी आई सेक्रेटरी इकोनॉमिक अफेयर्स और सम ऑफ देम टू द मीटिंग द एजेंडा ऑफ बोथ इज टू सी हाउ फाइनेंशियल स्टेबिलिटी कैन बी अचीव इन इंडिया लेवल एंड एट ग्लोबल लेवल टू स्मॉल ग्रुपिंग है How many of you know what is taper tantrum? Happening currently, ah, huh? happening currently. Since last two weeks, it is happening. Lot of investment is flowing outside, and Fed rates are also increasing. Fed rates. Okay. If I give you five options to invest, fixed deposit, gold. market etc you will compare the risks and returns and you will invest similarly at the global level each country is a market to invest theek okay? hai now tesla if it comes to india it will earn profits from indians and it will take it outside to its own home country so that is like it is making an investment in india making profits and taking it back simple hai every country is a market for global investors so there are various countries now india hai china hai Vietnam, Bangladesh, UK, so many countries are there. These are markets for inv global investors. Now, don't think that global investors are sitting in America. They are global investors, right? Now, let us assume, for simplicity purpose, that in India, me fixed deposit rates or in India, me average rate of return that you get, average, is eight percent. India, me average rate. Whenever global investors invest in India, average rate you will get it as eight percent. Chalo, very good. USA me average rate of return is seven percent. USA me average rate. Tomorrow in USA lot of recession happens. In USA lot of uh, consumption is slowed down. Everything. What will USA do to this rate? Increase or reduce? Increase or reduce? reduce it reduce it to 5% see bear in mind whenever we are talking about interest rates we are talking about loan deposit rate or borrowing rate we are talking about both because when one reduces other has to reduce that is monetary policy transmission theek hai 7% se 5% earlier for global investors it was not attractive to come to india for 1% rate of interest now has it become attractive so money will flow from usa to india when it goes for 5% money will flow from usa to india because are here they are getting extra rate of interest i am very i am simplifying it huh? just to understand the concept now usa economy is back on track what will happen to this it will go towards 6% sorry 7% gap will reduce what will happen to india we are used to this money na but we were enjoying this money our monetary policy our fiscal policy our money supply was based on this now money is outflowing is it good or bad for india it is very bad because money is not there in india so when this gap earlier the gap 5 7 se 5 tha 2% gap tha 
now this gap is slowly reducing to 1.5%, 1%, 0.5% and ultimately it reaches 7%. When this gap is reducing, people in developing countries like India, RBI especially, they start crying. They say Ki this is affecting our economy and basically a lot of adjustments have to be made to the monetary policy and they throw tantrums. They throw tantrums, why? Because of tapering of the gap between average rate and current rate by USA Federal Reserve. Okay? So, because USA Federal Reserve is reducing the gap, it's tapering the gap. Tapering means reducing. We are, we and other developing countries are throwing tantrums and hence this phenomena is called as taper tantrum. In very simple terms, it's taper tantrum. So, whenever we read in newspaper, Federal Reserve hikes rates by 50 basis points. So, we will cry. Because when it hikes rates, this becomes more attractive, this becomes more safe. Because we know how safe is India. Ease of doing business is very low, laws keep on changing. There is uncertainty in doing business here. So, for 1% they are not going to come. They came because there was a gap, 5 and 8, 3% gap. But now that gap is reducing, so now they will go again and save. This is called as taper time. Samja, did you understand this? As a concept, it is very important. You can see questions are simple. I'm not saying questions are tough. Interview questions might be difficult because then and there you have to think about all these things. But Baki questions are very, very, very simple. Mm -hmm. Nee, paas nahi, abhi ho jayega break. 15 minutes ka break lehen. What is LAF? Did you understand what is LAF? What is REPO, Reverse REPO, MSF, SDF? Okay. If RBI wants to follow a contractionary policy, what will it do with Reverse REPO? Contractionary. Increase, decrease. Sure, no? practice thinking in this manner. Questions aise aate. Ki how will you, uh, how will tax rates be increased or decreased, interest rates will be increased or decreased. So, that that concludes the monetary policy chapter, but half is in banking. So, Satme, it goes together and after banking, we will directly jump to questions. Lot of questions are there, lot of previous year MCQs are there. Okay, so, Abhi, it is 3.20, 3.35, we'll meet at 3.35. So, Manjot, we are not talking about uh, borrowing here, we are talking about deposits. So, if you are getting 5% in USA, so when you, if you invest in India, you will get 8%. So, deposit ki baat chal rahi hai. Sir, uh, may you please explain taper tantrums once again? No audio? Hello? Am I audible? Yes, okay. Okay. Uh, taper tantrum once again, I'll just explain quickly, very, uh, very quickly I'll explain. So, you are an investor, you have let's say 100 crore rupees worth of funds. You see that in USA, if you keep your money invested in USA, you will get 5%. If you keep your money invested in India, you will get 8%. Now, you will obviously, you are a global investor. You don't care which, which country you are investing in. You will invest in a country which gives you highest returns with a fairly stable regime. So, you come to India and you invest 8%. Now, like you, hundreds and thousands of people come and invest in India. Okay. Now, this is 8%. Now, when this 8% is, why this 8% is attractive? Because this is only 5%. So, attract, attraction is that increased or greater, 3% uh, greater you are getting return. But when let's say USA also hikes its interest rates and USA tells that I will give 7%. So, global investors, especially those from USA will say, ki, why am I going through all the loops and hurdles to go to 8% where I'm, whereas am I am getting 7% already in my country. 
So the money is pulled out from India and it goes back to USA, which is bad for India because money is being pulled out. That is why Indians throw a lot of tantrums, which is called as taper tantrums. And plus, uh, pe the rate is tapering from 5 to 7 percent. The gap is reducing and that is why we call it as tapering. So, this is taper tantrums, the phenomena where money outflow happens from developed econo developing economies and it goes back to their home country because of actions by the central banks in the home country is called as taper tantrum. So, USA may federal reserve hai and uh, when it hikes the interest rates, money flows back to India. OMO may normally dono hota hai involved whenever new securities are carried out, but uh, dono hota hai primary and secondary. Over and above SLR. Haan, wo side mein to hai, wo to you have to keep maintaining it. Uske upar whatever security you want to keep, you can keep over and above SLR. Haan, but aisa nahi ki you cannot keep SLR securities. SLR maintenance 3 percent, you have 5 percent maintained, so extra 2 percent count hoga. that is not an issue. We will start banking, see banking mein na, lot of gyan is there, history of banking, nationalization hua, lot of gyan is there, so let us briefly cover that and then we will go to a very interesting part of NPAs and very interesting part of uh, basal norms and all of that which is you know prelims, uh, relevant to uh, prelims. Okay. So, banks, earlier banks, commercial banks, we know the function of banks is to give money, take money, give interest, take interest, difference in the interest is the profit. Yes, very good. Then, uh, if we go to the history of banks, banks were under private control, big money lenders, money lending families had controlled banks. Then, after government came in, government thought ki these banks are operating only for profits. So, we need to nationalize them. Nationalize means we need to bring them under government control, right? So, lot of nationalization waves, uh, waves happened, 69 may nationalization hua, 80 may nationalization hua, there were two nationalizations which happened, 14 and 6 banks were nationalized. Why, which were, why they were nationalized? To reach every nook and corner of the country, to, to protect the poor from money lenders, scrupulous money lenders, to make institutional credit available in the rural area, this is a main scan, this is all main scan. Then very important part is to note that uh, by 90s we realized that we were in a balance of payment crisis sort of, that we will do in BOP chapter. But we also realized that our banks are partially to blame, our banks have not met the objectives of efficiency and profitability per se, nationalized banks. So then two committees were set up, I mean one committee was set up twice. Narsimum Committee 1, 91 and Narsimum Committee 2, 1998. This name you should remember, Narsimum Committee, very important. One and two, two committees, eh? I mean two times. Nineteen ninety one and nineteen ninety eight. Some recommendations are very important of Narsimum Committee. No more nationalization. No more nationalization. Bus. Second, please create a level playing field for all the banks. Level playing field means equal regulations. Don't keep, don't restrict other banks. Level playing field. I am talking about 1 and 2 both, no need to differentiate between 1 and 2, 91 and 98, both recommendations combined. Third, make global bank. We are yet to achieve that dream, make a global bank, which means make a bank so huge that it appears in top 100, top 50, top 10, kahi to appear kar. Largest bank is SBI in India. Make global bank. Reduce SLR and CRR. Reduce SLR, CRR. 
So basically, they are trying for deregulation or easing the regulations of banks. Then, rationalize priority sector lending norms. Rationalize PSL. What is priority sector lending? There are various sectors which require money. Some of them have priority. For example, agriculture, renewable energy, etc., etc., housing. These are known as priority sectors. Okay, so see if we tell banks to lend, they will not differentiate between sectors. Wherever they are getting the maximum amount of business, they will lend. But we know that funds have to flow to certain sectors for Indian economy to grow as a whole. That is why there are some sectors which are classified as priority sectors. So, priority sector norms ko rationalize karo, which means ki reduce some priority sectors which have already grown. Ki today, if a sector is in PSL norms, tomorrow it might come out of it also because that sector no longer needs special support of the government. Deregulate interest rates. Don't control lot of interest rates. Deregulate interest rates. Interest rate means money interest rate, market based demand supply pay. It should be there. Deregulate interest rates. Okay. Then it said implement prudential norms. I will explain this later. Implement prudential norms. And fourth is bring in asset reconstruction companies. Establish asset reconstruction companies, ARC. Asset reconstruction companies. You should know these by heart. It's standard, eh? just like Urjit Patel committee. Those four were standard. This is also standard. If you go to RBI's website now, on the left hand side, there will be a column of rates. Just open that. Usme base rate, CR, MCLR, bank rate. MSF rate, bank, uh, repo, reverse repo, all these would be there. We have covered all the rates. Okay. Now we come back to the balance sheet of bank. Now pay attention. This is a very important concept for you to uh, know. We spoke about deposits and we spoke about NDTL and we spoke about CRR, SLR which was dependent on NDTL, correct? Now we will speak about loans. Are loans assets for the bank? Yes, loans and advances, bolte, they are assets for the bank. This is called a balance sheet. Okay, This is list of liabilities, list of assets. Let us make one more document. We will call it as a income statement. Chalo. Income statement. Ya kya hoga? You will list all your expenses. Bank will list all its income. What is the expense of bank? Number one expense. Interest cost on deposits. Banking operations related. Bolro. Interest cost on deposits. Loans pay interest will come in income. Do you agree with this? This is fairly easy. So this is fueling your income side. And this is keeping like draining away your expenses or draining away your money in the form of expenses. Chalo, this is okay. Now, what will happen if this interest does not come or this loan is not repaid? This asset does not perform and hence it is called as a NPA, non-performing asset. Why it is called as a non-performing asset? Because it is an asset. It is supposed to perform. It is supposed to fetch me interest and repayment, EMI. But it is not doing that. Hence, it has become a NPA, non-performing asset. Itna samjha? I am directly taking you deep inside now. This is a non-performing asset. Now, you tell me, is it good or bad for the balance sheet and why? Why bad? 
yes see this money is given out from this money बराबर मेजरली एंड दिस मनी इज गिवन आउट इफ दिस इज नॉट रिपेड यू कैन नॉट रिपेड डिपॉजिट होल्डर करेक्ट हु आर डिपॉजिट होल्डर कॉमन पीपल लाइक अस मेजरली हु आर बैड बैड लोन्स इधर फार्मर्स मेजरली और स्टेट ट्रांसमिशन कंपनीज डिस्कॉम्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कंपनीज फार्मर्स बिकॉज इट इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन रेनफॉल डिस्कॉम्स बिकॉज दे आर लॉट ऑफ सब्सिडीज आर देयर for electricity cross subsidization hai then there are other infrastructure companies which are facing regulatory hurdles and clearances so they default but they are big companies these are small investors so ye nahi ho pa right depositors are in danger so what what globally body suggested that ki ठीक है लेट एस डू वन थिंग जस्ट लाइक वी केप्ट सम मनी असाइड फ्रॉम डिपॉजिट नॉट टू गिव आउट एज लोन लेट एस कीप सम परसेंटेज ऑफ लोन ऑल्सो एज अ रिजर्व थोड़ा सा एज अ रिजर्व रखो आई एल एक्सप्लेन इन डिटेल ध्यान देना वी आर गोइंग स्लो नाउ इफ दिस इज नॉट रिपेड दिस इज अ प्रॉब्लम ठीक है हु इज मनी इज कैपिटल ओनर देर आर टू पार्टीज यर वन इज एन ओनर वन इज अ डिपॉजिट होल्डर हु इज मोर वलनरेबल डिपॉजिट होल्डर सी दे हैव लॉट्स ऑफ मनी इवन इफ वन बैंक फेल्स बट डिपॉजिटर्स दे हैव देर लाइफ सेविंग्स विद द बैंक इफ दिस फेल्स एंड वी हैव ऑल हर्ड लास्ट टू थ्री ईयर्स थ्री फोर ईयर्स में तो लॉट ऑफ बैंक हैव फेस्ड प्रॉब्लम ठीक है डिपॉजिट होल्डर्स आर फेसिंग अ क्रंच हु विल गेट द प्रॉफिट इफ बैंक do very well owners always remember banks are not judged on the base of their profitability banks are not judged on the basis of their profitability they are judged on the basis of their loan size jitna zyada loan whatever the quantum of loan jitna higher bank is bigger and bank will get more funding and bank is more prosperous theek okay? hai so tell me cap to tell me the owner will try to focus on increasing loans or the owner will try very diligently ki if loan can be repaid then only give otherwise don't give owner will try to increase loans why because when the bank becomes bigger even if some percentage of them become bad still many of them are giving income and that income results in profits to the owner they are they are being reckless now now they are being reckless here when loans are increasing they are being reckless here if losses happen they say we do it is okay separate entity hai bank is separate entity i am owner loss hai theek hai nobody is holding me personally responsible nobody can hold me personally responsible in this process who suffers depositors when this becomes npa who suffers depositors so globally what we told is ki to keep owners invested in the game to keep their skin in the game to keep investors to be uh, what we say actually interested in giving out good quality loans let us do one thing if your loans increase you have to invest more money in capital you have to keep more money in the bank see if capital if uh, banks need more capital what will they do they'll call their owners theek okay? hai we brought a regulation which says that if you want to increase your loans we are telling owners uh, if you want to increase your loans a certain percentage of it invest in the business itna samjha did you understand this we are telling them ki don't rely only on money of depositors see a bank can increase ye depositors badhega loan bhi badhega very simple deposit will increase loan will increase but capital is less we are telling why are you only using their money use capital money also we are telling you if you want to increase loans if you want to grow please bring in more capital sir so now there more more and more wealth is being invested in the bank which means they are more interested in the affairs of the bank which means they will not recklessly increase uh, the loans tomorrow if bank fails or sorry npas happen tomorrow if loans go bad if npas happen lot of money is there already with the bank so 
from which they can repay deposit holders. Did you understand this? We are asking owners to bring in more money if you want to increase it. So we are telling them ki if you are if you want to increase your loans by 100 crore rupees, 10 percent, 10 crore rupees of capital mein, you just bring it. Okay? This is because the company or the banking company has to be very well funded. And hence this So this ratio is called as a capital adequacy ratio. What is capital adequacy ratio? Capital as a percentage of your total loans. So if capital adequacy ratio is 12 percent, which means loans agar aapka 100 hai, 12 rupees has to be there in capital. If tomorrow loans increase to 200, more 12 rupees has to come here. You are telling owners, please take ownership of your bank. This is capital adequacy ratio, also known as CRAR, capital to risk weighted asset ratio. Capital adequacy ratio or capital to same, eh? both are same. Capital to risk weighted assets ratio, CRAR. It is dash percentage upon dash percentage. Matlab what percent of what? What is CAR, capital adequacy ratio? Capital to assets. You know why assets? Assets are because of loans, capital adequacy ratio. Why risk weighted asset? Thoda, it's a bit technical. In loans also there are different kinds of loans. Some are secured loans, some are unsecured loans. Secured loans have low risk or high risk? Low risk. Security hai. You have collateral for it. So no need to maintain 12% on those loans. You can maintain 8%. Unsecured hai. Maintain 15% on. So wo weighted, weighted average leke. You calculate capital to risk weighted asset ratio, CRAR and CAR. Did you understand this? Yes or no? Did you understand the logic behind capital adequacy ratio? Why do we need capital adequacy? We need owners to be invested in business. Don't run your business on depositors money. Keep your own money also inside. Owner's money, it is three types of tier 1 capital, tier 2 capital, tier 3. Anyone who has funded the bank, be it shareholders, be it bondholders, loan givers, they will come under capital. Capital is nothing but funds invested in the business by anyone. So these are, this is owner's money. I am not telling, teaching you tier 1, tier 2, tier 3. Thoda technical ho jata and it is less necessary. Okay, done. Chalo. Now tell me, if I tell you 100 loans may say, 52 loans are bad. What should the bank do? Out of 100 loans, we find out 52 loans are bad. What should bank do? Bank should remove those 52 loans from the book because they are not your loan anymore. You are showing it as loan, but it's okay. in the sense, it's, it's not being served. So, your actual portfolio is only 48 loans, but you are showing 100 loans. 52 are bad. You should reduce. Don't you think bank should stop writing interest income here of those 52 loans also? Because nahi aara hai. Are you understanding this? So, as soon as a loan turns bad, first step you should do, stop recognizing income. Do you agree with me? As soon as the loan turns bad, classify it as a bad loan. Barabar hai? Yes or no? As soon as the loan turns bad, if you feel more capital is required, please call for more capital. 
जैसे आपको वॉट एवर यू फील लाइक इफ यू फील लाइक लोन इज गोइंग टू टर्न बैड इफ यू फील दैट कंपनी बैंक इज नॉट मेंटेनिंग इनफ कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी रेशियो कॉल फॉर मोर कैपिटल बिकॉज इट इज एन इंडिकेटर की देयर मनी इज इन डेंजर सो टू प्रोटेक्ट देयर मनी यू हैव टू ब्रिंग इन मोर मनी इन कैपिटल ठीक है इन अकाउंट ना इन अकाउंट वेन एवर यू रिड्यूस योर एसेट ये समझना वेन एवर यू रिड्यूस वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन हैविंग वन समोसा पाव एंड बाइंग वन मोबाइल वॉट इज द डिफरेंस इन बोथ द एक्सपेंसिस वन इज अ कैपिटल एक्सपेंस एंड वन इज अ रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर बेनिफिट विल लास्ट यू फॉर फाइव ईयर सपोज रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर विल लास्ट यू फॉर फाइव मिनट्स ठीक है सो इफ इफ आई टेल यू टेक्निकली इफ आई टेल यू कि तुम्हारा साल का खर्चा कितना हुआ वॉट विल यू टेल फोन इज वॉट ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड लाइफ इज फाइव ईयर्स फोन का साल का खर्चा Divide by the life, correct? You cannot say twenty thousand is the entire खर्चा this year. Why? Because benefit you are getting next year, next year, next year. So four thousand खर्चा हुआ. If I tell you, phone गया, डूब गया. How much is your खर्चा? Entire खर्चा this year only because twenty thousand you purchase next week phone gone, benefit gone next year no benefit twenty thousand gone. Same logic. Loan is given for twenty years. Interest is coming every year. लोन गया एंटायर लोन अमाउंट यू विल रिड्यूस फ्रॉम यूर एंड वेर विल यू राइट खर्चा एक्सपेंस इट बिकेम एन एक्सपेंस फ्रॉम एन एसेट इट टर्न टू एन एक्सपेंस इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस यू विल अंडरस्टैंड द एंटायर लॉजिक बिहाइंड बेसिल नॉर्म्स डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड द मोबाइल वाला कंसेप्ट मोबाइल में यू रोट ओनली फोर थाउजेंड एज एक्सपेंस बिकॉज ऑफ द लाइफ एंड दैट टू द लाइफ वॉज Five years. If I tell you the life is infinite, you will not write as expense at all because you are going to get the benefit. Yah pe you are telling ki gaya loan gone, which means it is not your asset anymore. Which means you will remove from your asset. Which means that you gave money thirty lakh rupees to that person. He is not repaying. It is your kharcha done. So the entire thirty lakh rupees will come here as your expenditure. Iska total and iska total ka net effect is profit. do you agree total of income minus total of expenses profit by the bank so will removing this loan from here result in a higher profit or lower profit how because you are writing it here this will increase your expense and your profit is reducing so first step whenever a loan turns bad stop this classify this or remove this do this if more money is required please make more money प्लीज आस्क फॉर मोर मनी बराबर है दीज फोर थिंग्स यू शुड डू एंड दीज आर नोन एज मैक्रो प्रोडेंशियल नॉर्म्स नहीं नहीं इट इज रिमूव फ्रॉम एसेट इट इज नॉट अ लाइबिलिटी एट ऑल खर्चा हो गया हो हाँ बट सी आर आर एस एल आर इज एनी वेज अ डिपॉजिट का पोर्शन इट इज नॉट रिलेटेड टू लोन तो ओवरऑल 100 लोन्स था अभी 52 ही बचा तो नाउ द बैलेंस शीट इज क्लीन बट व्हेन इट इज क्लीन बिकॉज 48 एट यू रोट हियर तो वो खर्चा हो गया सो दैट इयर्स द बैंक्स प्रॉफिट विल रिड्यूस ड्रास्टिकली बहुत लाइक बिग हिट इट विल टेक एंड दिस इज द रीजन व्हाई बैंक्स आर हेजिटेंट टू राइट ऑफ लोन Once you write something here, your obligation or asset जो भी है finishes off in one year only. Means I didn't understand. Yes, yes. The loss amount will go to liability. The net loss will go to liability. हाँ, huh. the loan amount will not go. The net loss will go. उसके सामने let's say forty eight are earning very high interest, so impact would be very low. है ना? And it will eat up this amount. हाँ, जो profit and loss होता है, वो इससे add less होता है every year. Owners है ना? Owners profit, owners loss. Owners money में add होगा, owners money से less. 
see no need to understand it so much complicated simple hai whenever a bad loan happens first thing you should do is stop recognizing your income do everyone ag agree with this second step you should do is recognize it as an npa classify it as an npa do not write it as a performing asset does everyone agree with this third step is please expand if you think that it is not recoverable at all please write it in your expense side because now it is your kharcha it has gone okay third step fourth step is if required if required see what will this have this result in this will result in a huge loss now that loss will erode away the capital because owner will bear that capital will reduce then you have to maintain car again for those remaining loans to ask for more capital these four steps are called as macro prudential norms or macro prudential regulations very very important to understand this too much for one day na too much for one day where where does this word derive its meaning from मैक्रो तो आपको पता है मैक्रो प्रूडेंट प्रूडेंट इज एन इंग्लिश वर्ड विच मीन सेफ और कंजर्वेटिव प्लेइंग सेफ इट इज कॉल्ड एज प्रूडेंट प्रूडेंट बोलते हैं सो दिस वर्ड इज कमिंग फ्रॉम मैक्रो प्रूडेंशियल नॉर्म्स और रेगुलेशन सी ए आर एंड सी आर आर सी ए आर आर एंड सी आर ए आर for us there is no difference it is same there is no difference between both i was just telling why it is call also called as crar theek hai chalo now tell me four steps first step stop recognizing income income ko stop kar do second क्लासीफाई इट एज एन एन पी ए तो करेक्टली क्लासीफाई कर दो थर्ड थर्ड स्टेप वॉट वॉज द थर्ड स्टेप उसको उसको देर आर टू टर्म्स यूर देर आर टू टर्म्स इफ यू आर राइटिंग हंड्रेड रुपीज एज लोन Entire hundred might not be bad. You have to. I will teach you that in some time. So, if you are entire hundred, if you are calling it as bad, then it is called as write off. Write off. Write off means rub kar dena. Yahan se hata ke just keep it here. Write off. If you are writing off, or you have, or if you feel that only twenty is bad, it is good. So you are. It is called as writing down. You write down from hundred to eighty, and you write off twenty. ठीक है तो थर्ड इज योर फर्स्ट इज इनकम सेकंड इज क्लासिफाई थर्ड इज गेट योर कैपिटल इफ इट रिक्वायर्ड कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी रेशियो मेंटेन करना है एंड फोर्थ इज योर ये तो मैंने पढ़ा है नहीं हाँ तो दिस दिस दैट यू डू द फोर्थ स्टेप यू जस्ट राइट इट ऑफ योर फॉर दैट विल रिक्वायर Hundred assets, expenditure, income. Now we go to the story of how bad loans are recognized. When does a loan become bad? When interest or and installment is not paid for more than ninety days. ठीक है? More than ninety days. अगर service नहीं हो रहा है, if the loan is not serviced. For more than ninety days, then it becomes a bad debt. There are stages also of bad debts. Some are bad, some are very bad, some are very very bad, some are worst, and some are hopeless. Now this, let us say, this is only one loan, hundred rupees loan. In this, there is a security. We have taken, let's say, forty rupees as security. Forty security, like we have given hundred as loan. So forty becomes my secured portion. Sixty becomes my unsecured portion. loan turns bad 
आई एम श्योर की फोर्टी तो आई कैन सेल टू मोर ऑल्सो इज फोर्टी बैड नो फोर्टी इज नॉट बैड माई मेन रिस्क इज विथ सिक्सटी इसमें स्टेजेस है इफ इट इज फॉर अप टू ट्वेल्व मंथ्स सॉरी मोर देन ट्वेल्व मंथ्स मोर देन थर्टी सिक्स मंथ्स थ्री ईयर्स एंड आफ्टर थ्री ईयर्स डिफरेंट डिफरेंट नेम्स आर गिवन स्पेशल मैंशन अकाउंट डाउटफुल एसेट वन डाउटफुल एसेट टू डाउटफुल एसेट थ्री दीज आर द नेम्स स्टेजेस वाइज होता है एंड लास्ट में आफ्टर थ्री ईयर्स इफ इट रिमेन्स अनसर्विस आफ्टर थ्री ईयर्स इट बिकम्स अ लॉस एसेट नाउ कम्स वन पार्ट After 90 days, just bad है कि it is an old bad, just bad. The probability of him repaying you is higher or lower? Higher, ठीक है So some part you will write down and you will take it to expenditure. Some part. समझ में आ रहा है Only 10% परसेंट यू विल राइट डाउन फिक्स नो नीड टू रिमेंबर दिस टेन परसेंट लॉजिक दिट सो नाउ दिस विल बिकम फिफ्टी फोर it becomes more bad you are more worried so now isme se you write down 30 ye next year ho raha hai because 12 months then you write down entire whatever is remaining you write down 20 24 rupees you entire write theek hai after it turns 12 36 dheere dheere ye bhi you start selling or you write off so this is these are the stages so as and when bad debts happen immediately sab kuch nahi dalna hai expenditure mein it all depends on the timing Now there is a possibility कि ये स्टेज में ही स्टार्ट सर्विंग ही स्टार्ट गिविंग यू इंटरेस्ट इट अगेन बिकम्स गुड लोन है ना बट ऑब्वियसली ही हैज टू गिव ऑल पास ड्यूज विथ एक्स्ट्रा इंटरेस्ट बट इट बिकम्स अ गुड लोन ठीक है वॉट आर यू डूइंग हेयर सिक्सटी का सम पोर्शन यू आर टेकिंग एज एक्सपेंस करेक्ट कैन आई से यू आर प्रिपेरिंग फॉर द वर्स्ट धीरे धीरे You are preparing for the worst. This, in economics and accounts term, is known as provisioning. You are providing safety. के लिए you are preparing. You are providing. So why? What are you doing? See, अगर ये six नहीं होता, so your profit, income, expense, other expense, profit was suppose five hundred. Due to this six, your profit is reduced to four ninety four, right? So you are providing some money out of your profit every year. as and when the loans go bad confusing this is called as provisioning very important this is known as provisioning you are providing some portion of your bad debt in your expense out of your profits so that ek sath you don't have to take a hit one second it is not yet fully bad it is just just started so we come back to our yeah okay fourth step provisioning these are macro prudential norms first top income recognition second classify it rightly classified rightly means call it as a special mention account call it a doubtful asset call it call it a doubtful asset to whatever is the category third is if it is taking a hit on your capital adequacy ratio please call them up and increase the capital requirement or uh, capital and fourth is provision provision term these are macro prudential norms स्विट्जरलैंड के एक गांव में विच इज कॉल्ड एज बेसिल देर इज अ गांव इन स्विट्जरलैंड बेसिल है देर पीपल गो फॉर मीटिंग एंड एंजॉय स्नो माउंटेन्स एंड कम बैक्स बैंक ऑफ इंटरनेशनल सेटलमेंट्स का एक कमिटी है बी सी बी एस बेसिल कमिटी फॉर बैंकिंग सुपरविजन दे ब्रॉड दीज नॉर्म्स दैट एवरी that every central bank has the responsibility to implement in their own country it is not compulsory bear in mind not compulsory but every central bank has the responsibility of implementing this in their own country those are called as basel norms and they are based on these principles basel norms
चलो समथिंग फन आई टेल यू समथिंग फन लेट एस से देर इज अ बैंक थोड़ा ब्रेक फॉर फन फ्रॉम टफ कंसेप्ट If capital adequacy ratio is not maintained, what will the bank have to do? Call its owners, ask for money. Sir, please maintain capital adequacy. What if it is a public sector bank? Call government. What if government doesn't have money? How does recapitalization bonds work? Bank hai. Bank calls government. Sir, C R. Sir, please give money. Sir, we are growing very fast. we need more money sir bad loans we have taken a hit that is more likely na give more money theek hai <laughs> government says i don't have money i have nfsa i have manrega i have so many things theek hai this bank has cash this bank has cash theek hai government says chal ek kaam kar let us do one thing i will issue you bonds ठीक है यू गिव मी कैश वो कैश का वॉट विल आई डू आई विल गिव इट टू यू एस कैपिटल ऐसा करते मैजिक कैश गोज टू गवर्नमेंट गवर्नमेंट गिव्स बॉन्ड्स कॉल्ड एज री कैप बॉन्ड और रिकैपिटलाइजेशन बॉन्ड नाउ दीज अपियर इन द इन्वेस्टमेंट साइड ऑफ बैलेंस शीट कैश रिड्यूसेस एंड ये रिकैपिटलाइजेशन ऐसे होते मैजिक डायरेक्टली यहां से यहां शिफ्ट नहीं होता यू कैंट शिफ्ट फ्रॉम कैश टू कैपिटल बिकॉज दैट कैश इज नॉट ऑफ गवर्नमेंट दैट कैश इज ऑफ बैंक सो वॉट गवर्नमेंट इज गिव आई विल गिव यू बैंक री कैपिटलाइजेशन सस्टेनेबल इकोनॉमिक्स घूमता रहेगा नहीं दे कैन ऑल्सो डू दैट गवर्नमेंट कैन ऑल्सो री can also issue recap bonds to private sectors also but mostly private sector banks maintain capital adequacy ratio yeah. bank ka cash hai owner ka nahi that is a different that is a different yes sometimes they do sometimes they don't in 2006 when they had launched recap bonds no interest then they said ki bhai bank said ki sir kuch to do we are investing against our will but we are investing so they yes some tranches give interest some tranches don't give interest latest wala jo tha it was interest carrying two years ago 2018 19 mein hua tha it was interest carrying and this does not happen frequently yeah? this happens 3 4 years mein ek baar recapitalization this was magic coming back to hardcore serious stuff income classification capital adequacy provisioning basel norms say you have to maintain something one of that something is capital adequacy ratio we know capital adequacy ratio what are the four macro prudential norms please tell me four kya the first इनकम रिकॉग्निशन सेकेंड क्लासिफाइड एज एनपीए थर्ड मेंटेन कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी रेशियो फोर्थ प्रोविजनिंग बेसल नॉर्म्स में देर आर अ फ्यू रेशियोज दैट वी शुड नो वन इज कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी रेशियो वी नो कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी रेशियो इट इज कैपिटल अपॉन रिस्कवेटेड एसेट्स सेकेंड इज लिक्विडिटी कवरेज रेशियो basel norms not only protect your bank from npas or from bad loans but also from any other kind of problems or any other kind of instable instable unstable situations for example basel norms say ki let us assume let us assume ki your business stops working let us assume bank stops working today today if bank stops working what will happen pura pura everything is closed bank will have to repay its investors banks will have to repay its deposit holders loan takers will have to repay the money to bank sab kuch everything should happen but 
this will take time so basel norms say that you should maintain a certain level of liquid assets which will allow you to continue your operations despite there being nothing uh, no revenue activity basically banks basel wants banks to maintain liquidity banks ko kitna regulation hai crr slr then this car so many ratios and all so liquidity coverage ratio bolte ho usko it it measures how much of liquid assets banks have compared to uska cash outflow whatever would be the cash outflow so see this formula high quality liquid assets what do you mean by high quality liquid assets cash gold other marketable securities jo readily which, which can be sold divided by cash outflow in a stress scenario which means if nothing everything stops what is the cash outflow you should just know the ratio you should just know acha higher ratio is good or lower is good for the bank higher is good because it is maintaining high quality liquid assets from liquidity point of view from business point of view it's a business call because if more and more money is kept in liquid assets doge kya aap what will you give as loans and you can achieve 300% liquidity coverage also but how will you do business then then that is stress scenario altogether first car second lcr liquidity coverage ratio but the rbi ne ek window chalu ki thi fal lcr rbi has a window fal lcr just for information facility to avail liquidity for maintaining liquidity coverage ratio कि तुमसे ना हो पाएगा आई एम द लेंडर ऑफ लास्ट रिजोर्ट पॉल सी आर एफ एल एल सी आर हाँ एंड वन मोर इज यू हैव टू नो दीज थ्री रेशियोज थर्ड इज नेट स्टेबल फंडिंग रेशियो stable funding means funds which are not unstable for example long term funds not working capital and not short term borrowings by the bank net stable funding ratio is nothing but simple hai available stable funds upon required stable funds ये सब बेसल इज प्रिस्क्राइबिंग वी डोंट हैव टू गो इन टू डेथ हायर इज बेटर लोअर इज बेटर हायर इज बेटर बेसल से इज दैट इट शुड बी एटलीस्ट हंड्रेड परसेंट दिस रेशियो शुड बी एटलीस्ट हंड्रेड परसेंट कि जितना स्टेबल फंडिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड एटलीस्ट दैट मच यू हैव टू मेंटेन ओवर एंड अबाउट दैट यू कैन मेंटेन हाई फंडिंग नो प्रॉब्लम so much data so many concepts rbi and banking i am telling you upsc is favorite test topic so okay i think this is the only technical thing i don't think so anything else is it's not technical balance of payment is fairly simple inflation is very simple aur kya bachta hai after this tax jitna you can go deep you can go but upsc is not asking questions on tax so basic concepts is simple markets basics again how stock market works how money market works what are the instruments of money market and stock market three four things next markets i think we'll do tomorrow inflation i told na inflation simple inflation to zyada kuch nahi factual inflation is purely factual 
what is there in wpi what is there in cpi who gives wpi who gives cpi what is the frequency what is the frequency what is the difference and uh, what is the base here oh get an inflation chapter or okay prelims angle what is your status of other subject not classes your own studies ho gaya history ka kya status i love history history culture hai na i am so happy mere ko nahi padhna hai culture was my least favorite random questions aate na wo problem hai ठीक है सो दीज आर बेसल नॉर्म्स बट बेसल के बारे में इफ आई टेल यू बेसल नॉर्म्स स्टार्टेड इन 1998, बेसल वन केम इन 1998 नाइन्टी एट एंड उसके बाद बेसल टू केम सॉरी 1988, देन बेसल टू केम एंड नाउ बेसल थ्री बेसल थ्री इज इम्प्लीमेंटेड इन वेरियस फेजेस सो बेसल वन एज यू कैन गेस द स्कोप वॉज वेरी रिस्ट्रिक्टेड कि हाँ थोड़ा बहुत कर लो बेसल थ्री इज वेरी कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव ऑल दिस फॉर्मुले आर गिवन अंडर बेसल थ्री liquidity coverage ratio net stable funding ratio these are given under basel 3 and uh, basel 3 mein uh, basel 2 came in 2004 basel 3 started from 2006 7 implementation are basel compulsory no every central bank has to implement them ideal hai and why will they not हाँ मतलब इफ योर कंट्री स्टेबल देन यू विल ट्राई टू इम्प्लीमेंट दैट तो बेसल नॉर्म्स क्या बोलते हैं बेसल नॉर्म्स बोलते हैं दैट योर कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी रेशियो शुड बी 8.5 पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट डोंट डोंट रिमेंबर दिस परसेंटेज योर कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी रेशियो शुड बी 8.5 पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट आर बी आई हैज मैंडेटेड बैंक टू मेंटेन सी आई आर ऑफ नाइन परसेंट ठीक है स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड है आर बी आई स्टोर की बेसल वेसल सब छोड़ो नाइन परसेंट इज रिक्वायर्ड इन आर कंट्री नहीं तो भाग जाते लोग ठीक है Plus, there is another component of 2.5 percent, which brings the total ratio to 11.5 percent. इसके बाद तो आप क्लास ही छोड़ दोगे या तो मुझे मारोगे. This 2.5 percent, this is capital adequacy ratio. We know this CAR है. This is counter cyclical capital buffer. Sir, बस मार डालोगे. counter cyclical capital buffer how many of you feel that by doing upsc you are doing injustice to your profession your field whatever is your qualification this was a question asked to me in interview do you feel you are doing injustice to ca profession and i said yes ca profession ko to injustice hai na wo पर्सनल इंजस्टिस नहीं है बट टू द प्रोफेशन यस द प्रोफेशन विल लूज आउट ऑन अ गुड सी अ गुड हार्ड वर्किंग सी एंड द प्रोफेशन हैज गॉट अ सी ए बैक अभी में गुड हार्ड वर्किंग सी ए सी वॉट एवर आंसर्स यू गिव इन इंटरव्यू ना गिव ऑनेस्ट आई गॉट वेरी गुड मार्क्स इन इंटरव्यू सो गिव ऑनेस्ट आंसर्स माई मेन्स वर्स्ट मेन्स मेरा एथिक्स जी एस फोर I feel GS. There is a joke, you know, that if you are very ethical, your marks in ethics are very low. You have to show that you are ethical. You don't have to be ethical. Just show it, huh? So when I first studied ethics first exam initially, I thought that paper ka purpose kya hai? Isn't being ethical natural or normal? Why do I have to have a whole paper on that? Initially, I thought that. Unko show it that you are ethical. Whatever you do is okay. ऐसे ऐसे मार्क्स मिले ना एथिक्स में जी एस थ्री वन ट्वेंटी ठीक है वेरी गुड मार्क्स जी एस फोर टू डिजिट माई एंटायर यू पी एस सी स्कोर वॉज लो बिकॉज ऑफ ऑप्शनल पेपर टू एंड जी एस फोर बस बाकी सब में अच्छा था माई ऑप्शनल वॉज नॉट कॉमर्स वॉज नॉट इक्व इट वॉज कॉमर्स एंड अकाउंटेंसी तो सीए वाला पार्ट वॉज इन पेपर वन वो वेरी हाई मार्क्स 
तो पेपर टू कुछ भी था इट वॉज टू ईयर्स ऑफ एम बी ए सिलेबस मैनेजमेंट ठीक है एनी वेज बेसिल थ्री ये है बेसिल थ्री हैज थ्री पिलर्स थ्री पिलर्स है बेसिल थ्री के थ्री पिलर्स है फर्स्ट पिलर इज रिस्क दैट बैंक शुड टेक केयर ऑफ दर रिस्क बैंक शुड टेक केयर और बैंक शुड मैनेज रिस्क बैंक शुड मैनेज रिस्क विथ रिस्क क्रेडिट रिस्क ऑपरेशन रिस्क एक और है लिख के लाए में मार्केट रिस्क आई एम नॉट प्रिपेरिंग ना आई डोंट है क्रेडिट रिस्क ऑपरेशन रिस्क मार्केट रिस्क क्रेडिट रिस्क इज रिस्क दैट योर कस्टमर विल नॉट पे यू बैक ऑपरेशन रिस्क इज डे टू डे ऑपरेशनल रिस्क मार्केट रिस्क इज रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट माइट गो अप डाउन ड्यू टू मार्केट पीपल विल नॉट बोरो फंड एक्सेट्रा मार्केट रिस्क पिलर टू इज यू शुड हैव एडिक्वेट बैंकिंग सुपरवाइजर्स सुपरवाइज होने के ऑफिसर्स हु ट्राई टू एनफोर्स दिस बेसल नॉर्म्स pillar 3 is you should increase your standards of disclosure on the balance sheet on the accounts bring more transparency in disclosure increase standards of disclosure disclosure in terms of asset classification pura dikhao how much is bad how in what stage it is bad just don't tell ki ha ye loan se asset classification and secondly aur kya tha capital adequacy this is all basel 3 in one slide or one chart counter cyclical capital buffer cccb What is counter cyclical fiscal policy? When going up, go down. When going down, go up. Similarly, this is kept as a buffer for going up. This percentage is of what? Its ka percentage? Nee, first nine percent of what? Loans and advances, right? Hundred rupees. If you are increasing your loan, you should increase your capital and this also. So this TRR SLR is a percentage of net demand time liabilities. Capital adequacy ratio is a percentage of loans and advances. Sir, loans and advances is a very desi term. Give fancy term. Aggregate net bank advances. Fancy terms. Net bank. Aggregate means total, net means net, bank means bank, advances means advances, loans and advances. Aggregate net bank advances. अब ये net क्यों है? Because if we have borrowed something, वो minus करके what is the net advances? A and B है. So this nine percent is of A and B. Now the question is what is counter cyclical capital buffer? Counter cyclical capital buffer is बहुत उड़ रहे हो. You are flying very high. Please come down little bit. Which means if your net bank advances, loans and advances are increasing very high, then a certain percentage has to be kept aside for counter cyclical to keep it down keep it aside don't grow too much otherwise you will uh, you know more proportion of bad loans might happen that is the reason behind counter cyclical capital buffer is to go against the cycle loans and advances advances means loan given it is a fancy term again for loans advances loans and advances is the correct term so loan and advance i have advanced money to you matlab maine loan diya economics is english english padho khatam csat mein english kaam nahi aayega aaj tak nowadays csat english is very tough advances na theek hai basel 3 interesting not interesting boring 
सब कुछ है बट करना पड़ेगा इज नो ऑप्शन नाउ कमिंग टू इंटरेस्टिंग पार्ट वी कम टू बैड लोन्स चलो एनपीए हाउ इट इज क्लासिफाइड हाउ इट शुड बी दैट वी नो एक्चुअल में ऐसा नहीं होता एक्चुअल में बैंक हाइड देर बैड लोन बैंक डोंट क्लासीफाई दे क्लासीफाइड लेट आरबीआई ऑडिट स्टेटरी ऑडिट में ये पकड़ा जाता है आरबीआई फाइन्स बैंक आरबीआई बैंक से सर नेक्स्ट टाइम विल टेक केयर नेक्स्ट टाइम अगेन सेम सर्कल है बिकॉज द लॉस ऑफ प्रॉफिट बाय क्लासीफाइंग द बैंक करेक्ट लोन एज बैड करेक्टली इज मच मोर देन द पेनल्टी इम्पोज बाय आर बी आई तो बोलते हैं पेनल्टी खा लेंगे वाई बिकॉज इफ द बैंक इज गेटिंग अ लॉट ऑफ हिट ऑन प्रॉफिट शेयर होल्डर वैल्यू विल रिड्यूस money will not pour in the bank and ultimately it's all about business why see why these banks are uh, uh, you must not have study started your preparation in 2015 16 npa problem was very high i mean it was in news almost every day npa is npa is why because in 2015 rbi had conducted an asset quality review aqr which means thorough thorough audit of all books All classifications, calculation, and found out that jitna banks have shown bad, bad loans, actual number is very high. Now, why only 15, 16, 17, 18? Bad loans are rising. One reason is after 2008 financial crisis, expansionary policy, pump priming, quantitative easing, everything was on. Banks were told give loans. We have to revive the economy. Large percentage of those loans are becoming bad. because proper documentation was not followed proper diligence was not done and plus managers who were to retire in next 5 years they also gave loans these are major problems then there are sector specific problems discoms distribution companies faced a lot of losses steel sector was faced a lot of pressure from imported steel so that is why they could not give loans yes environmental clearances to many projects were not given so many restrictions were there that is why when they cannot function properly bank cannot function properly so tell me one thing where do i write loan ye bank balance sheet hai where do i write loan loans and advances this is tata steel where will it write loans liabilities borrowing Tata Steel faces major competition from London and Australian steel companies plus environmental regulations have become very strict Tata Steel is rapidly loss making company and is not able to serve the loan because of so many factors we discussed its balance sheet has become bad matlab balance sheet has, is suffering because of his balance sheet suffering this bank's balance sheet is also suffer proof this is called as twin balance sheet problem tbs twin balance sheet borrowers balance sheet becoming bad which causes lenders borrow, lenders balance sheet to become bad twin balance sheet twin balance sheet problem now coming back to bad loans bad loans are here what to do of bad loans that is a question i think this is the last leg of the chapter but nahi bahut baki hai abhi bahut scroll kiya maine sir break 2 hours nahi hue जब तक है जान <laughs> जान चली गई हाँ एक लेक्चर तो होगा अरे आई वॉज सपोज टू टेक टू टू लेक्चर नॉर्मल पेस पे नहीं बट वीकेंड का तो फोर लेक्चर्स का ही प्लान था बट आई हैव टू बी बैक इन मुंबई अर्जेंटली वेरी अर्जेंटली सो दैट इज वाई जब तक है जान But anyways, four lectures I had planned for Saturday and Sunday. Hmm. What to do after loans become bad? What to do? 
वन इज वी सॉ दैट आर बी आई कंडक्ट एसेट क्वालिटी रिव्यू आर बी आई ऑडिट्स होते हैं सेकेंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इज टू प्रिवेंट नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इंडिया स्पेसिफिकली टू प्रिवेंट बैंक फ्रॉम रेकलेस लेंडिंग टू प्रिवेंट बैंक फ्रॉम गिविंग आउट लोन्स टू एनी वन एंड एवरी वन बैंक हैज सर्टन आर बी आई हैज सर्टन कंट्रोल्स इन प्लेस आर बी आई सेज की इफ यूर प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी रिड्यूसेज इफ यूर बैड लोन्स इंक्रीज है ना इफ योर परफॉर्मेंस गोज डाउन देन वी विल पुट यू अंडर सम रिस्ट्रिक्शन यू कैनॉट ओपन अ न्यू ब्रांच यू कैनॉट गिव मोर लोन्स यू कैनॉट गिव लोन्स टू एक्स वाई जेड सेक्टर दिस सेट ऑफ रिस्ट्रिक्शन इज कॉल्ड एज पी सी ए फ्रेमवर्क प्रॉम टाइम करेक्टिव एक्शन पी सी एव यू हर्ड ऑफ इट सी नाम नहीं है प्रॉम्ट इमीजिएट करेक्टिव एक्शन Prompt and Corrective Action Framework (PCA Framework). Prompt and Corrective Action. Question solve करने में बोर नहीं होगा ना आपको. Questions are very interesting. So we'll do questions after this. And inflation chapter तो starting शुरू होते ही खत्म हो जाता है. Inflation chapter is gets over in two slides. Who gives what? What is the base year? What is rising? What is falling? What is covered in what? Finish. Inflation. Hmm. Prompt and corrective action PCA बोलते तो what is this PCA? Whenever banks have low profitability, whenever banks have high bad bad loans, non-performing assets, some restrictions are placed on banks by RBI कि don't you are going on the wrong way, don't go there. We will put some restrictions like branch open, don't open branch or etc. Now earlier urban cooperative banks were exempt from this framework. For urban cooperative banks, a similar framework was introduced. It is called as SAF, Supervisory Action Framework. It's very similar to PCA, Supervisory Action Framework. SAF. PCA sees three things. PCA is more important. SAF तो ठीक है. PCA sees three things: asset quality. बैड डेट हुआ या नहीं हुआ और वॉट इज द ओवरऑल एसेट क्वालिटी ऑफ योर लोन्स टोटल लोन्स प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी सॉरी प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी एंड कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी नाउ दीज वर्ड आर नो मोर फॉरन टू यू एसेट क्वालिटी प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी कैप Capital adequacy. These three are seen. If bank is not performing well on these three fronts, PCA lag jata hai. Example, IDBI Bank was under PCA for a very long time. Our NBFC is under PCA framework. Our NBFC is under PCA framework. You know what is NBFC? Non-banking financial company. Dikta bank jaisa hai, behave bank jaisa karta hai, but bank nahi. You know, they are not under the framework, and RBI has recommended bank-like regulations to NBFCs. Still in talks. By the way, Basel III norms are they effective in India fully? They were supposed to be effective from 1st April 2022. RBI is increasingly implementing it in staggered manner. Some banks have implemented it, some banks have not. Plus, very important, October 2021 current affairs. RBI has made applicable PCA sorry Basel III norms to all India financial institutions also. What are all India financial institutions? Exim Bank, NABARD, NHB, etc. They also have to follow now Basel norms. July se hai with effect from 1st July 2022. So staggered manner me. Acha uh, Basel III was to be made effective with effect. फर्स्ट अप्रैल 2017 से आरबीआई कैप पुशिंग इट टू 19 देन 21 देन फाइनली 22 एंड अभी धीरे धीरे इंप्लीमेंट हो रहा है एंड ऑब्वियसली बिकॉज ऑफ कोविड यू कैन नॉट इंप्लीमेंट सच स्ट्रिंजेंट नॉर्म्स नहीं RBI has told that bank like regulations, bank like PCA and all has to be there to NBFC. So, abhi it is going to come. Aaj kal you see ads, five minutes mein loan, credit card, 
fintech companies lot of them are there so these are all acting like banks but they don't have regulations like banks so wo ek issue hai theek hai chalo now loan became bad chale अरे टू आवर्स यू हैव टू सर्वाइव इन दैट कंडीशन वो स्ट्रेस हंड्रेड क्वेश्चन टू आवर्स दो मिनट वॉट आर यू डूइंग फॉर कल्चर बाय जस्ट आउट ऑफ क्यूरियोसिटी मेरे को ये हमेशा पूछता हूँ What are you doing for culture? Not doing culture. <laughs> नहीं no, which source generally you refer? N C R T Nitin Singh Anya. Nikhil sir, Nikhil sir is best. Nikhil sir will teach so much. कि आपको आ ही जाएगा सब. हाँ और वो याद नहीं रहता ना एग्जाम में कौन सी कौन सी माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स है ना वो वो सी यू कैन रीड द चैप्टर एंड यू कैन गेट द आंसर वेरी इजीली बट कॉस्ट बेनिफिट रेशियो इज वेरी लो सप्लाई इलास्टिसिटी डिमांड इलास्ट But these are not UPSC questions. These are other exam questions. Uh, then don't go there. UPSC, abhi tak to I have not asked elasticity. But how puch sakta hai? See if microeconomics questions come and if they are tough, if you don't know the concept, just leave them. Kitna karenge? Just look at history. I love history. Arey. उसका एक एक बुक ही इतना बड़ा होता है नॉट इवन वन बुक इज इनफ रंगदे बसंती तक ठीक था हिस्ट्री यूपीएससी में आके सर बेसिल थ्री आर्ट एंड कल्चर प्लीज फॉर गिव मी आई सरेंडर वेरी गुड बेसिल थ्री नॉर्म्स आर एप्लीकेबल नाउ और नॉट बेसिल थ्री नॉर्म्स आर पार्शली मेड एप्लीकेबल सो नो नीड टू वरी अबाउट येस और नो वो एक प्रोसेस है बेसिल थ्री एप्लीकेबल फॉर नाबार्ड एंड ऑल फ्रॉम वेन फर्स्ट जुलाई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू दैट इज द प्रपोजल ऑफ आर बी आई नो नीड टू रिमेंबर द डेट अगेन वो ही नहीं है ना आरबीआई है सेड कि वी हैव टू इंप्लीमेंट बट वो डेफर हो जाता है मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम नहीं एनवायरमेंट के लिए व्हाट आर यू डूइंग सर का ना हाँ दूसरा कुछ नहीं ना स्कोप ही नहीं है देर इज नो स्कोप सब लोग इतना पढ़ाते हैं ना मैं ही हूँ बीस पेज में सब खत्म ये है मतलब नहीं नहीं बोर्ड वाला है आई हैव पीडीएफ ऑफ दिस इन डिटेल आई विल आई विल शेयर शॉर्ट फॉर्म्स है उसमें तो समझ लेना चलो लोन्स नाउ व्हाट टू डू ऑफ लोन्स लोन्स का क्या करे व्हाट टू डू ऑफ लोन्स Whenever loans turn bad, always remember. Whenever loans turn bad, there are few options with bank. Bank can either write it off. ठीक है. You have an old monitor, PC monitor, पुराना है. चलता है नहीं चलता है. Bad. अच्छा one more thing. The loans which are not yet bad debts, but which are on road to become bad debts. मतलब Not no repayment from zero to ninety days. Ninety days के बाद bad होता है ना? 
what if 70 days no no repayment they are on road to become bad debts they are called as stressed assets stressed bolte this is very important stressed assets wo hai potential hai usme bad banne ka ho jayega waqt ke sath sab ho jata hai stressed assets se leke bad ho jayega so they have to monitor uh, how to manage history and art and culture yes very good <laughs> full history culture i told of my preparation and is asking he is she manjur so mai bola i don't i don't know how to prepare history and culture what i did was i did spectrum finished uh, and i did uh, this themes themes 1 themes 2 themes 3 and r past 1 2 3 6, 7, 8. Because I come from commerce background. मुझे तो पता ही नहीं था एंड कल्चर के लिए आई डिट नितिन सिंह आनिया सिलेक्टिवली वो ही इज ऑल्सो सी ए आई एम ऑल्सो सी ए तो भाईचारे में आई रेड इज बुक थोड़ा गलत क्या बट आई रेड बट ठीक है मोर और लेस थिंग्स आर कवर्ड एटलीस्ट आई गॉट द कम्फर्ट की बेसिक आता है लिस्ट ऑफ इंटेंजिबल हेरिटेज लिस्ट ऑफ टेंजिबल हेरिटेज डांसेस सॉन्ग्स वो पोट्री वो सब तो एनीवेज आउट ऑफ आर स्कोप बस सी इन इन हिस्ट्री नहीं इन आर्ट एंड कल्चर यू हैव टू डू अप टू अ सर्टेन लेवल देन लीव इट बिकॉज कॉस्ट बेनिफिट रेशियो इज वेरी लेस हाँ एग्जैक्टली एंड इट इज प्योरली फैक्चुअल वेरी लेस यू विल रिक्वायर एटलीस्ट सिक्स मंथ्स ऑफ स्टडी प्रॉपर टू गेट दैट कम्फर्ट इन आर्ट एंड कल्चर एंड स्टिल यूपीएससी माइट कम अप विद क्वेश्चन विच इज नॉट देर एवरी एनी वे टी सी आर टी कहाँ से वो निकालेगा we read new ncert we read old, old ncert we read ccrt still a question comes from somewhere else so benefit nahi but in terms of quality if you see lakshmikan 80% 85% questions are covered from lakshmikan so cost benefit ratio is much more manage ho jayega manage ke liye bola hai maine ye manage kya bolu culture ke liye main kya bolu but i did nitin singhani i made short notes out of every chapter and if a question or an option came from it then good but in 2017 when i gave my first attempt i was lucky ki current affairs based question tha so culture ka so i read my strength was current affairs I'll, my biggest mistake was to focus only on current affairs my core was so weak especially history ki whenever i used to see static history question easy bhi i was like leave it Yes, sir. But next attempt, I studied both current and year. Uh, core is very important. Prelims may and even nowadays in mains also they are asking very core questions. Current you have to put in, but uh, core definitions. What is potential GDP? In one line you have to write what is potential GDP. So, very important. Anyways, loans. What is the option with banks? So you have an old monitor. It, sometimes it works it does not work what will you do is you can throw it e waste you can throw it normal waste or you can give it to a scrap dealer what will that scrap dealer do he will dismantle and he will try to sell the parts or recycle or something okay there are scrap dealers for bad loans also they are called as asset reconstruction company they are kabadi wale asset reconstruction companies are scrap dealers of bad loans what will they do they buy this loan from the bank what is the benefit to banks in this their balance sheet is cleaned they get some money in return they can focus on fresh loans what is the business model of arcs asset reconstruction companies what benefit do they get from this they buy the loans at very cheap rates theek okay? hai now we come to arc arc ke paas loan hai 100 crore rupees loan they try to collect maximum possible if even 10 crores is possible and they pay 1 crore to the bank 9 crore ka profit ho right plus arc chalo let us assume ki 100 crores mein se this much is manageable this much is managed but still for 60 crores one buyer arc cannot find one buyer what it will do is cut cut kare in small pieces and then it will sell these pieces to individuals getting it one big loan 
is divided into small pieces and then sold. So 60 crores one buyer very difficult for ARC to find. Now we are in ARC's books, but two crores, three crores, there are buyers available who will buy and who will. And note that these three crores is not its value. Huh? Its value to very high, but these are cheap prices. This process of dividing a big asset. This is an asset, loans and advances. This process of dividing a big asset into small parts. Into small parts. So, what will he do? Paper, leke, he will write 2 crores on every paper and he will give the paper. Yes, you are eligible to buy this loan or you can buy this loan for this much. This process is called as securitization. Have you heard the word securitization? Securitization. Nikhil sir's lectures are over. Finished. Unko bolna, I love culture. He is my very good and very old friend. Securitization. Securitization is just nothing but dividing a big asset into transactionable chunks. That is securitization. So you make securities out of it. What do you mean by securities? Share security. Securities are instruments. Okay, bonds, T bills, share securities, etc. These are instruments. So that securitization is one big asset. You have securitized it into small securities, and then you go and sell. This is how ARCs, asset reconstruction companies, function. Now, has government recommended introduction of ARCs? Yes. Formal name kya hai uska? National Asset Reconstruction Company Limited, also known as Bad Bank. You must know. Okay, NARCL, National Asset Reconstruction Companies, also known as Bad Banks. So, what they do is they take loans from banks at cheap prices, try to sell them and recover as much as they possibly can. Benefit of this is banks' balance sheet get cleaned. Criticism of this is that you are just shifting bad loan from one to another. Bad loan remains bad in the economy. Say, that bank to ARC shift, hai, but that loan is still in the economy. But again, the counter to that is ARCs will hire specialists in restructuring, specialists in insolvency, specialists in recovery of loans, and they will focus. Bank cannot do all of that in one shot. So, that means a little part. Hai. Where do we write assets? Here, loans. Where do we write deposits? Please tell me the types of deposits very fast. Kya kya hota hai? Savings, current, FD, RD. Types of loans? Education, housing, personal. Home, major, okay? Average maturity of savings, very less. You withdraw from your savings account regularly. So, I will write 0 0.5 years. On an average, if you withdraw, so 6 monthly, 0 0.5 years, sorry. Current account maturity, there is no maturity because it is current, 0. Fixed deposit average maturity, can I write it as 2 to 5 years? Recurring deposit also same, 2 to 5 years. Maximum we go to 5 years. Average I am telling you. 10 be also hai, definitely. Education loan maturity. 10 years. Easily. Big, big loans. Housing loan definitely more than 10 years. Personal loans are small, 1 to 5 years. Home loans are also big. Achha, housing are again, home loans. Average maturity. 10 years. Average maturity, 4 years. Okay? In 4 years, you have to repay the money to the depositors, but you will get the money back after 10 years. Average. Problem? Okay? This is called as an asset liability mismatch problem. ALM. Asset liability mismatch.
एसेट लाइबिलिटी मिसमैच सोल्यूशन सोल्यूशन डीएफआई डेवलपमेंट फाइनेंस इंस्टीट्यूशन होलसेल लेंडिंग लॉन्ग टर्म लेंडिंग के लिए फॉर होलसेल लेंडिंग और लॉन्ग टर्म लेंडिंग डेवलपमेंट फाइनेंस इंस्टीट्यूशन आर बींग प्रमोटेड बाई बैंक दे हेल्प टू सॉल्व द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ एसेट लाइबिलिटी मिसमैच दे विल बी एक्सक्लूसिवली डीलिंग विथ लॉन्ग लोन एक्सक्लूसिवली नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम वेर विल दे गेट देयर डिपोजिट बिकॉज वो भी बैंक है so they will get exclusive long term capital from investors those who are interested in playing the long game their balance sheet would be filled with long term source of funds and their asset side would be filled with long term loans asset liability mismatch as a concept you should know that's it baki sir it's okay if you, even if you don't know बैड लोन क्यों हुआ टाटा स्टील का बिकॉज इट वॉज नॉट प्रॉफिटेबल बिकॉज इट वॉज नॉट मेकिंग मनी इन आर एग्जाम्पल बिकॉज इट वॉज नॉट हैविंग मनी वेन अ कंपनी गोज थ्रू अ बैड फेस हु सफर्स कंपनी शेयर होल्डर सफर वेन कंपनी शेयर होल्डर सफर बिफोर बिकमिंग वर्स अ कंपनी कैन अप्रोच आई बी सी इंसॉल्वेंसी एंड बैंक ट्रिब्यूनल आई बी बी आई ठीक है हैव यू हर्ड ऑफ इंसॉल्वेंसी एंड बैंक कोड आईबीसी हिस्टोरिकल हिस्टोरिकल लेजिस्लेशन पीस ऑफ लेजिस्लेशन डू यू नोटिस इट इज कॉल्ड अ कोड नॉट एन एक्ट वाई ओ कोड हैज कोड हैज लॉट ऑफ एक्ट लॉट ऑफ प्रोविजन लॉट ऑफ सेक्शन अ कोड इज अ वेरी बिग अम्ब्रेला थिंग under it there are lot of acts ka provisions lot of different institutions so one act is just a small act many acts combined together to form a code insolvency and bankruptcy code what is the difference between insolvency and bankruptcy insolvency is where you don't have money bankruptcy is where you approach the court to declare yourself bankrupt theek hai that is bankruptcy insolvency and bankruptcy code in our drama there are various players this is a house this is a company which are tata ko main insolvent kar raha hu this is a company tata steel tata steel who has lent money to tata steel to run the business banks majorly banks have run there are owners of tata steel who have provided capital and there are vendors who provide raw material to tata steel so basically tata steel ka liability i am listing tata steel owes money towards the owners because remember separate concept tata steel has to earn profits for the owners on them tata steel has to give interest to banks tata steel has to make their payments vendor payments raw material leta hai so raw material ka jo bhi supplier hai they have to make the payments very good now these are collectively called these two are collectively called as creditors sir why vendor is a creditor because normally day to day business mein payment does not happen immediately it happens after two months every monthly billing hota hai every two months so for two months tata steel is enjoying the money because they have to repay after two months theek hai so this is also a creditor because he is giving the facility of using the money for 2 months to tata these are called as financial creditors these are called as operational creditors bank uh, sorry tata steel is in a very bad situation owners are saying nahi nahi it is good owners are saying tata steel is in a very good 
if tata steel goes more downhill more and more losses less and less money their stake is in danger theek hai earlier what used to happen is under the earlier act unless owners approach for insolvency you cannot do you couldn't have gone for insolvency or unless you go to court directly that's a different thing from insolvency and bankruptcy court the power to go for insolvency the power to complain against tata steel has shifted from the owners to the creditors so now banks or vendors can approach this house and tell them tata steel is not giving my money go for insolvency what is insolvency jitna asset se they will sell it off jo bhi money will come it will be paid off to these people jitna bhi hai whatever is there do you know this insolvency and bankruptcy code how it functions if itna hi it is required only terms you should know there will be banks not one bank there will be different financial creditors so they are called as committee of creditors coc operational creditors committee of creditors this is nclt national company law tribunal basically company law ka court what when they approach nclt what they will do is they will remove the owners of tata steel from the management and they will nclt will institute one person to manage the affairs of the company why because tomorrow owners can hide the assets sell off the assets run away with the money jaise company goes for insolvency owners are replaced with this person this person is called as insolvency professional or resolution professional insolvency professional he is mostly a ca or a valuation expert who has trained in insolvency qualified hai 10 20 50 15 years ka experience hai he not one person he will have his team entire team he and his team will manage tata steel they will see tata steel as how many assets whether they can be sold not sold if they are sold and then the claims of these creditors would be fulfilled now claim hai 100 crore ka do you think tata steel has assets worth 100 crore hota to he would have paid directly na nahi hai tata steel has assets only worth 30 crores so wo 30 crores will be paid to different people in different hierarchy this is the more or less logic behind insolvency and bankruptcy code itna samjha or should i explain in detail ek ek cheez ki main samjha sakta hai mere par likha hua hai i have written it down आज तो आग भी लग गई टाटा स्टील में अच्छा रियली क्या बात ठीक है अच्छा अभी बताओ फर्स्ट पैसा किसको मिलेगा हु विल गेट द फर्स्ट मनी हिज सैलरी थोड़ा इसको भी दो इज वर्किंग हार्ड परिवार से दूर है ना सेकेंड इज वेजेस अप टू ट्वेंटी फोर मंथ वेजेस है नॉट सैलरीज वेजेस लेबरर्स फैक्ट्री वर्कर्स के वेजेस होते हैं उनको थर्ड इज थर्ड इज सिक्योर्ड क्रेडिटर्स देन अनसिक्योर्ड क्रेडिटर्स प्लस बाकी के वेजेस देन कम्स गवर्नमेंट ड्यूज टैक्स गवर्नमेंट इज ऑल्सो ड्यू लास्ट में हु विल गेट द मनी इफ रिमेनिंग ओनर्स ओनर्स शेयर होल्डर्स ओनर Yeah, this is more or less the waterfall. Another area, favorite area of UPSC is to ask about banks, new types of banks, payments banks and small finance banks. ये तो नया नया लाया था. Nachiket Moore Committee had uh, given a report called a hundred small steps, small small banks, payment bank and uh, small finance bank. please read about payments bank and small finance bank the difference between them who has lot of what restrictions it's very static it's very very factual it is no conceptual for example payments bank can open savings account payments bank cannot give credit card payments bank cannot give loan the restrictions are so in brief if i have to tell you 
पेमेंट पेमेंट्स बैंक की अगर हम बात करें तो पेमेंट्स बैंक इज टू प्रमोट पेमेंट्स इन द कंट्री इज टू प्रमोट लो कॉस्ट पेमेंट्स इन द कंट्री यूपीआई हो गया और अदर प्लेटफॉर्म है टू प्रमोट पेमेंट्स इन द कंट्री सो दे आर नॉट अलाउड टू गिव लोन्स माई क्वेश्चन इज इज क्रेडिट कार्ड अ लोन इज डेबिट कार्ड अ लोन सी हाउ डेबिट कार्ड फंक्शन फॉर दोज यू डोंट नो इज यू हैव मनी इन योर अकाउंट यूर स्वाइप मनी गेट्स डिडक्टेड क्रेडिट कार्ड इज यू नीड नॉट हैव मनी इन योर अकाउंट बिल आएगा इट इज लाइक पोस्ट पेड यू स्वाइप योर कार्ड आफ्टर द वन मंथ यू विल गेट अ बिल एंड वो बिल यू हैव टू पे विद इन नेक्स्ट फाइव डेज सेवन डेज टेन डेज ठीक है सो दैट इज लाइक अ लोन यू आर टेकिंग डू क्रेडिट कार्ड चार्ज इंटरेस्ट ऑलवेज इन द क्रेडिट पीरियड दे डोंट चार्ज इंटरेस्ट सो दिस इज अ बिग मिसकनसेप्शन की क्रेडिट कार्ड में इंटरेस्ट लगता ही है नहीं है I do all my expenditures on credit card. Each and every single rupee I do on credit card. But I pay the bills on time and I don't have to pay any interest. हाँ, credit का credit card का bill credit पे भरोगे ना? But it's useless now. पहले it was good, अभी it is useless. हाँ लोन की तरह होगा बट वॉट दे डू इज दे टाई अप विथ अनदर बैंक इवन पेटीएम पेटीएम का क्रेडिट कार्ड भी आता है दे टाई दे हैव टाइड अप विथ सिटी बैंक पहले सिटी था अभी अभी भी सिटी है गेस्ट एच डी नहीं एच डी एफ सी नहीं है अच्छा सो दे टाई अप एंड चलाते हैं उनका इंडियन सर एक्सपर्ट इन फाइंडिंग ऐसा झोल हम्म एसेट लाइबिलिटी मिसमैच हाँ देन वन मोर फेवरेट एरिया इज द पेमेंट मैकेनिज्म मतलब पेमेंट्स कैसे होते हैं एनी एफ टी आर टी जी एस आई एम पी एस भीम यू पी आई दिस इज द फेवरेट एरिया ऑफ यू पी एस सी सो देर आर टू थ्री पेमेंट मैकेनिज्म एन ई एफ टी आर टी जी एस आपने और क्या यूज किया है एनीथिंग एल्स डेट यू हैव यूज ठीक है दीज आर डिफरेंट पेमेंट मेथड्स नेट इलेक्ट्रॉनिक फंड ट्रांसफर रियल टाइम ग्रॉस सेटलमेंट इमीजिएट पेमेंट एंड सेटलमेंट सिस्टम एंड यूनिफाइड पेमेंट इंटरफेस ठीक है यू हैव टू नो द डिफरेंस थोड़ा ब्रीफ में आई विल टेल यू एनी एफ टी इज सी आई टेल यू इन ब्रीफ आर बी आई है आर बी आई हैज लॉट ऑफ किड्स दे आर बैंक I have a bank account in Axis Bank. You have a bank account in HDFC. I make a transfer to you through NFT. Okay. What will happen is money from my account will be deducted. Okay. Axis Bank will deduct money from my account. Will send instructions to RBI to tell HDFC to credit the money in your account. Okay. This is one transaction. Second transaction. You are paying money to SBI. your bank third transaction that person the sbi is paying money to pnb etc theek okay? hai now this one to one transaction karne se acha hai what rbi does is net kar deta so net net axis bank ko full day mein how much it has to get net net hdfc mein how much it has to pay or it has to get and it processes the transaction every half an hour ye half an hour pe hota hai not every day every half an hour hence net electronic fund transfer add less add less so if you transfer by nft now it it will get credited after some time not immediately debit ho jayega it will be deducted depends on when the cycle is being run if just 1 minute before the cycle if you transfer through nft next 1 minute mein it will be done but agar starting mein ho gaya then you have to wait for half an hour or 40 minutes cycles run hote hain earlier this used to happen from 8 to 5 or 8 to 6 now it is 24 hours bear in mind these are lot of transactions for small amount 500 100 150 10000 15000 1 lakh lot of transaction for small amount rtgs see this what is this real time instant this is not net this is gross minimum transaction value is 2 lakh rupees for you to do rtgs for sending rtgs money 2 lakh rupees so this is like a fast track 
है ना दिस इज स्लो ट्रैक दिस इज अ फास्ट ट्रैक डायरेक्ट जाएगा वन टू वन ट्रांजेक्शन डायरेक्टली दिस इज द डिफरेंस बिकॉज यूर लॉट ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शन विल है कितना डायरेक्टली विल डू सो नेट कर दो हाफ एन आवर आई एम पी एस अप टू अटन लिमिट इमीजिएटली हो जाता है एंड यू पी आई वी ऑल नो ठीक है सो वॉट इज यू पी आई वर्चुअल पेमेंट एड्रेस यू पी आई यू पी एस सी आस्क दिस क्वेश्चन प्रैक्टिकली कि भी मैप में ऐसा होता है यू पी आई में ऐसा है टू फैक्टर ऑथेंटिकेशन आई होप यू हैव हर्ड दिस आर बी आई हैज टू फैक्टर ऑथेंटिकेशन इफ यू ट्राई टू मेक अ पेमेंट आउटसाइड इंडिया यू विल नॉट गेट ओ टी पी पता है ट्राई करो ट्राई टू मेक अ पेमेंट ऑनलाइन टू एन लेट से अमेरिकन वेबसाइट डॉलर्स में जो हो जिसका पेमेंट सर्वर इज ऑल्सो इज इन यू एस ए यू एंटर योर कार्ड डिटेल्स नंबर एंड ऑल डायरेक्ट डेबिट नो ओ टी पी बिकॉज ओ टी पी इज अ पार्ट ऑफ टू फैक्टर ऑथेंटिकेशन अपार्ट फ्रॉम सी वी वी योर ओ टी पी इज ऑल्सो रिक्वायर्ड विच इज अ मैंडेट ऑफ आर बी आई फॉर पेमेंट प्रोसेसिंग विच इज हैपनिंग इन इंडिया उसका पेमेंट प्रोसेसिंग नॉट हैपनिंग इन इंडिया एंड योर कार्ड इज इशूड बाई होम वीजा और मास्टर कार्ड उसका सर्वस तो ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड है सो दैट प्रोसेसिंग इज नॉट हैपनिंग इन इंडिया डायरेक्ट डेबिट कभी कभी हाँ पेपाल आई हैव नॉट ट्राइड सो आई डोंट नो वेबसाइट आई हैव ट्राइड सो इट वर्क बट इफ द पेपा बट इफ यू आर पेइंग टू पेपाल सर्वर इन इंडिया देन इट विल आस्क फॉर ओ टी पी सर्वर हैज टू बी इन इंडिया बट मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स बाहर के वेबसाइट का सर्वर इज नॉट इन इंडिया सो आई वॉज पेइंग सम इंटरनेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट का सम फीस तो उसका तो इंडिया में कहा ही होगा सर्वर तो डायरेक्ट डेबिट ना आई डोंट नो फॉर डेबिट कार्ड बट ये डेबिट कार्ड का भी होता है सेम थिंग दो ऑप्शन नहीं होंगे यूपीएससी विल नॉट गिव यू सच टू ऑप्शन की विच आर कंफ्लिक्टिंग इन नेचर इफ इट गिव देन यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर सबका मालिक एक एंड मार्क समथिंग ठीक है चलो लास्ट टू कंसेप्ट यू आर अ बैंक आई हैव नॉट बोर्ड यू विद द डिटेल्स ऑफ पेमेंट बैंक एंड ऑल वो आप देख लेना यू आर सेल्फ सफिशियंट टू डू दैट यूपीएससी कर रहे हो ठीक है लास्ट टू यू आर अ बैंक आई कम टू यू फॉर होम लोन यू आस्क हाउ मच होम लोन डू यू वॉन्ट आई से आई रिक्वायर होम लोन ऑफ वन क्रोर एक्स वाई जेड नंबर ऑफ एयर ई एम आई आता है आई होप यू नो ई एम आई में दो पार्ट होते हैं प्रिंसिपल एंड इंटरेस्ट बेसिक्स ई एम आई आता है पर मंथ था पर मंथ ई एम आई आता है सिक्सटी थाउजेंड रुपीज यू आस्क फॉर माई सैलरी स्टेटमेंट सर आप सैलरी हो वेदर यू विल बी एबल टू रीपे और नॉट वो तो चेक करें आई गिव माई सैलरी स्टेटमेंट पर मंथ सैलरी फिफ्टी टू थाउजेंड रुपीज विल यू गिव मी लोन विल यू गिव मी लोन येस और नो नो बिकॉज यू नो कि मैं फिफ्टी टू थाउजेंड आई लोन अच्छा इफ इट इज सिक्सटी टू विल यू गिव मी लोन स्टिल नो एटी आई थिंक इज द कंफर्टेबल जोन एट्टी एटी फाइव से कंफर्ट जोन चालू होता है ठीक है यू डिवाइड दिस इंटू टू पार्ट वन इज प्रिंसिपल वन इज इंटरेस्ट ठीक है वॉट यू सो इज इसका सिक्सटी टू थाउजेंड खर्चा है मंथली डिवाइडेड बाय हिज इंस्टॉलमेंट वॉज सिक्सटी थाउजेंड सो वॉट यू डिड वॉज यू डिवाइडेड माई सैलरी डिवाइड बाय द ई एम आई और द इंटरेस्ट पार्ट ऑफ इट एंड यू केम टू अ रेशियो कि हाँ ये रेशियो है आई विल नॉट बी एबल टू वर्क विद दिस द हायर द रेशियो बेटर और द लोअर द रेशियो बेटर Hi Anna, this is my salary. If I earn one lakh sixty two thousand, and if I'm asking only for an EMI of fifty thousand, you will give me. So this is a metric that banks follow. ठीक है? अभी sometimes denominator में they take only interest part of it. Sometimes they take interest plus principal part of it. So what did I do? I took my earnings divided by interest, or I took my earnings. 
डिवाइडेड बाय माय इंटरेस्ट प्लस प्रिंसिपल ठीक है दिस इज माय इंटरेस्ट कवरेज रेशियो इंटरेस्ट कवरेज रेशियो व्हाट इज दिस डेट कवरेज रेशियो डेट मींस टोटल डेट अगेन डेट कवरेज रेशियो एंड इंटरेस्ट कवरेज रेशियो टू रेशियो बैंक यूज सर डेबिट कार्ड ऑफर अरे यार मेरा फोन तो क्वेश्चन इज डेबिट कार्ड ऑल्सो ऑफर ई एम आई फैसिलिटी तो इज इट नॉट अ लोन क्या होगा इसका आंसर इट इज ऑफकोर्स अ लोन एम्बेडेड इन अ डेबिट कार्ड डेबिट कार्ड इज जस्ट एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट आपको लोग लोन बेच रहे हैं उसके हिसाब से You are talking about credit score. अच्छा. हम्म. हाँ, slab wise वो. हाँ, every bank or organisation will have different policy उसी हिसाब से. ठीक है? So this was all majorly about banking. खुशी देखो घर नहीं जा रहे हो दस वन मोर लेक्चर आफ्टर दिस अरे एमसीक्यूज करने कुछ नहीं करना है एंड आई एम नॉट जोकिंग अरे आज सर सर ने बोला कि नौ बजे तक क्लास आपकी है आप ले लीजिए मैं तो बोला सर को सर नाइन नहीं सेवन थर्टी तो हो जाएगा अरे एग्जाम है शर्म भगवान का वो रखो खौफ रखो खौफ ठीक है सो विल मीट एट फाइव फोर्टी फाइव यस अरे फाइव फाइव ट्वेंटी टू हो रहा है विल बी कवरिंग ए डी आर जी डी आर मार्केट चैप्टर मंजूर सी टुमारो आई एम नॉट देयर आफ्टर इलेवन ओ क्लॉक इफ यू वॉन्ट मी टूडे आई एम देयर फॉर योर सर्विस अभी आप देख लो है ना ठीक है सो so, अभी 523 हो रहा है 35 को मिलते हैं विल स्टार्ट विद एम सी क्यूज डायरेक्टली मजा आएगा एम सी क्यूज तो फन है ओके एम आई ऑडिबल एवरीथिंग इज वर्किंग एम आई विजिबल प्लीज टेल वी आर बैक यस चलो लेट एस बिगिन विद एमसीक्यूज वेरी लाइट हार्टेड मजा आएगा टू सॉल्व एमसीक्यूज लेट एस स्टार्ट मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी एंड बैंकिंग आई हैव कंबाइंड बोथ ऑफ देम मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी एंड बैंकिंग लेट एस स्टार्ट विद फर्स्ट विद रेफरेंस टू द इंडियन इकोनॉमी कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग विच ऑफ द अबाउ इज आर कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी public debt and public revenue are components of fiscal policy simple next 2019 deposits why because it is a liability simple next all next see purchase and sale of government securities by the rbi it is easy na
इट इज बी लॉन्ग टर्म स्टार्टअप कैपिटल प्रोवाइडेड टू न्यू ऑन्टरप्रनर शार्क टैंक देख के तो दिस क्वेश्चन बिकम्स वेरी इजी ये क्या है मिलिट्री स्ट्रेटेजीज स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड है ना See, because if there is transparency, it is fair also to both. It's very simple. Increase in bank rate, tight money policy. If the interest rate is decreased in an economy, it will what? Anyone thinks other than C? Please get your doubt clarified. Very important. Either it clear or not. Interest rate is decreased, which means that more and more money is going to flow to the economy. Flow okay? क्या होगा? It will result in increased expenditure. I would say overall expenditure will increase. Hoga. Not only it will increase the investment expenditure, but also increase the consumption expenditure. ठीक है. But here decrease in consumption बोला है, so that is not an option. Increase in investment बोला है. Remember C plus I plus G plus X minus M. So C will also increase, I will also increase. So here I is increase is the option. That is the right. Same repeat, similar question. Drastically, fifty basis points. If India's GDP growth rate increases drastically, we would have, क्या बोलते हैं, reduced by five hundred basis points. Drastically करना है. Drastically, drastically. The foreign institutional investors are not there in the picture at all. Scheduled commercial banks may cut their lending rates because their cost is now reduced because SSR, SLR is reduced. More funds are available, so they might give it at a lower cost. Next, why a six-member body and chairmanship of and bear in mind this is new 2016 mein mpc was formed 17 mein question came 21 c or d idhar tak to pahunch gaye c or d tak we reach theek hai This is actually this was in news in 2017-18 where autonomy of RBI was in danger, especially after demonetization. Okay, so there there was a reference and it is given in standard books also that section seven of RBI Act gives uh, the autonomy and central government can give directions to the RBI under section seven of RBI Act, not the constitution. So, us pe this question is there. It is RBI Act. This is a tough one if you don't know it, but I would say ki. Every standard textbook has this, so it is not something very new or very current. Certain provisions in the Constitution, nay, in RBI Act, Section Seven of RBI Act. So answer is C. Next, I have. Ulta. Not do. सोचो
I hope you read the word not. Exam me, this is where we lose mark. See, if RBI decides to follow an expansionist policy, तो क्या नहीं करना है? ठीक है, which means if RBI has to follow a contractionary policy, तो क्या करना है? क्या करना है contractionary में? Cut cut तो नहीं होगा, increase होगा, answer is B. Everyone clear? Not do. है ना? Exam में, exam pressure में, just after culture question, if you see this question. After cultural shock. This is a bookish question actually. This statement is will be there in markets chapter we'll cover. So Abita Kuwani. RBI manages and services government of India securities, but not any state government securities. ऐसा है आरबीआई है वो सब मैनेज करता है गवर्नमेंट है ना वी विल टॉक अबाउट एजेंट ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट ठीक है वन गया क्या बचा थ्री कॉमन सो इवन इफ यू डोंट नो थ्री इट इज ओके ट्रेजरी बिल्स आर इशूड बाय गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड देर आर नो ट्रेजरी बिल्स इशूड बाय स्टेट गवर्नमेंट वी जस्ट डेट दैट एस डी एल्स आर इशूड लॉन्ग टर्म है शॉर्ट टर्म नहीं है How many of you feel it is C? Anyone C? Chalo. First is correct. Do you agree with this? To enable the central bank to control the amount of advances. Credit control is the main function of RBI. No, pura basis hai. Three is a very rash statement. See, if commercial banks are following all practices, they can make any profit they want. They have to be transparent. They have to be very diligent in giving their loans. So to prevent the commercial banks from making excessive profits, as such, there is no provision of requirement, statutory requirements, key to prevent excessive profits. So three is not there. So when three goes, one, so we know it is correct. Now this question becomes a tough one. That whether it is one or one and two. What do you think? What do you think? Answer is A. Why? Don't ask. Genuinely. Logic बहुत सारे है. One can defend A, one can defend B, one and two only. They are asking the primary purpose of this and ये secondary purpose type हो गया. So that is why they are saying A, one and two. But, sorry, A, one only. But there is no problem if you mark one and two and lose mark. It is okay. वो कंसेप्चुअल क्लैरिटी लिटिल बिट इन टर्म्स ऑफ क्वेश्चन फ्रेमिंग और सम कंटेक्सचुअल थिंग इज हियर सो वी हैव सीन थर्ड सच क्वेश्चन इन 20 25 क्वेश्चंस वी हैव सीन 30 क्वेश्चंस वी हैव सीन थर्ड सच क्वेश्चन दिस वाज इन न्यूज़ आ 2015 में दिस वाज इन न्यूज़ दिस इज़ अ करंट अफेयर क्वेश्चन कोर बैंकिंग डू यू नो कोर बैंकिंग सीबीएस इट लिंक्स ऑल द बैंक्स ऑल द ब्रांचेस through computer so earlier you had to go to your home branch and get services now you can go to any branch and then you will get your uh, work done this is not there this is just three nahi hai khatam game over again what are they testing here have you heard about this? Have you read two lines about this? Two lines have you read about core banking solution? Two may you can say कि ऐसा नहीं कर सकता ना through computerization RBI is increasing control over commercial bank. This again is a very rational rash statement. This is done. This will be done in money supply chapter. So that is why you might not be aware of this. 
चलो कर ही लेते ना इसमें पे अटेंशन यर आई कवर वन दिस इज अ पार्ट ऑफ मनी सप्लाई बट वील कवर इट हियर देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ मनी दैट यू शुड नो वन इज फी एट मनी वन इज लीगल टेंडर मनी ठीक है यू शुड नो क्रिस्टल क्लियर द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दम लीगल टेंडर मनी इज द मनी विच द रिसीवर कैनॉट रिफ्यूज लीगल टेंडर मनी इज द मनी विच द रिसीवर कैनॉट रिफ्यूज फ्रॉम यू ठीक है इज अ टेन रुपी नोट लीगल टेंडर इन इंडिया इज अ टोन टेन रुपी नोट लीगल टेंडर इन इंडिया पटा हुआ ही कैन रिफ्यूज ना सर प्लीज गिव अनदर नोट राइट इज डॉलर लीगल टेंडर इन इंडिया नो इज बिटकॉइन लीगल टेंडर इन इंडिया ठीक है ही कैन रिफ्यूज If you pay one lakh rupees in coins, can he refuse? Yes. There is a limit. कितना है? Thousand rupees in coins. वो भी less than five rupee coins ऐसा है उसका some denomination. There is some rule. So up to thousand rupees legal tender. He cannot refuse. More than thousand rupees option. See, I am not saying he will refuse. I am saying he can refuse. Option. I read in newspaper some days ago that one person from northeast bought Activa or scooty just by paying coins. So the initially the dealership refused, but then he and then one and half days it took for counting the coins, ninety two, no, sixty five thousand, sixty eight thousand something. So he he could have refused legally, but he didn't refuse. That's a different thing. What is fiat money? Money which is not backed by reserves is fiat money. Not backed by reserves and issued by the monetary authority. What? हमारे India में how many? What is the value of currency notes in India? Let's say thirty thousand crores total. Do you think so much of reserves are there with RBI to print those notes? No, RBI has hundred and twenty crores of load uh, gold. With it, so fiat money is that money which does not have a legal, sorry, which does not have a uh, security backing, which does not have security, which only runs on the trust of the monetary policy authority. Why do you accept hundred rupees note? Because you know that you will give it to someone else, and that person will accept. You know, on the note it is written, I promise to pay the bearer. That is the trust of monetary policy authority. Fiat money is not backed by reserves. i can say that 99% of money is fiat money 1% is not because it is backed by reserves thoda reserve hai little bit of reserve is with rbi i had gone to gold verification also of rbi during our audit thoda gold to hai i have also seen theek hai so please don't get confused between these two concepts fiat money legal tender very separate concept legal tender is something which the receiver cannot refuse to accept fiat money is something or money which is not backed by reserve some money can be fiat money but not legal tender is us dollar fiat money yes is it legal tender no theek hai coming back nahi not in nahi nahi so fiat money you don't see from in india fiat hai ya nahi hai it is fiat money because there is no reserve for that dollar anywhere in the world so it is fiat money all currencies are fiat currencies In India, it is not legal tender. In USA or other countries, it is legal tender. क्या है ये? What is the answer? B ना the money which a creditor is under compulsion to accept in settlement of his claim. He cannot refuse. See, if someone refuses to take money and you know it is legal tender within limits or the note is not torn or something proper है, then you can take him to court. He is not accepting my money. वो होगा दस रुपए के लिए, but you can do that. This was again a current affairs question. Service area approach was implemented under the purview of lead bank scheme. Lead bank scheme means for increasing rural penetration of banks. Some banks were identified as lead banks or sponsor banks, and then small banks, rural banks were mapped to those banks, and then ये scheme पूरा चलाया था. so in that particular service area one bank will be responsible and it will have smaller uh, rural banks next 
आया क्या क्या लगता है एनी वन ए नहीं नहीं दैट इज द मेन डेफिनेशन ऑफ पी आर्ट मनी देन इट इज इशूड बाय मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी अथॉरिटीज एंड देर आर फोर फाइव मोर क्राइटेरिया गिवन फॉर पी आर्ट मनी बट मेन वन डेफिनेशन यू कैन से इज दैट इट इज नॉट बैक बाय रिजर्व सॉरी What intrinsic value? हाँ you can go हाँ you can think of it that way. But वही है one concept is that legal tender sorry reserve से back नहीं है hmm. क्या है इसका A who how many of you think it is A B, C, C है कोई D, this is just normal ना demand supply है ये We saw crowding out. What happens is when there is increase in demand for money, if so many people are borrowing, banks will obviously see a business opportunity and increase the rate of interest. The answer is B. वो क्या है Now this is your normal reading हाँ this is not की book से prepare करो See, if bitcoins were tracked by central banks of the countries, it wouldn't have been Bitcoin. मतलब, the whole purpose is anonymity. Anyone can send and receive. Yes, online payments can be sent without either side knowing the identity of the other. है ना? The whole purpose is anonymity. Again, 2016. 16 में नहीं था ये, I think. The year is wrong, I think. It was in 18 or. पेमेंट बैंक पे क्वेश्चन है पेमेंट बैंक कैन इशू बोट क्रेडिट कार्ड्स एंड डेबिट कार्ड्स आंसर इज रॉन्ग क्रेडिट कार्ड इज अ लोन पेमेंट बैंक कैन नॉट गिव लोन्स टू गॉन टू गॉन टू गॉन टू गॉन आंसर वन एंड थ्री अगेन विच स्टेटमेंट वॉज द मेक और ब्रेक इन दिस क्वेश्चन द वेरी फैक्ट और द वेरी नेचर ऑफ पेमेंट बैंक इट कैन नॉट गिव लोन कंसेप्ट ये सिक्सटीन में पूछा ये सेवनटीन में पूछा स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक ठीक है आई एम जस्ट गोइंग अ बिट फास्ट पी एस एल रीजनल रूरल बैंक तो आर मेन्ट फॉर सर्विंग पीपल लैंड डेवलपमेंट बैंक ऑल्सो गिव लॉन्ग टर्म क्रेडिट लैंड डेवलपमेंट सेकेंड इज नाबार्ड इट्स अ रीफाइनेंसिंग एजेंसी इट रीफाइनेंस अदर एजेंसी सो वेरी नाइस क्वेश्चन इंक्रीजिंग है डिक्रीजिंग है डिक्रीजिंग फोर वन थ्री टू आई होप एवरी वन एग्रीज विद दिस करेंसी इज ऑब्वियसली द मोस्ट लिक्विड डिमांड डिपॉजिट इज यूर करेंट अकाउंट यू कैन Uh, remove money money or withdraw money anytime. Then out of these two क्या होगा Savings because fixed नहीं है वो time deposit is fixed. So least liquid is time deposit. So फोर वन थ्री टू ठीक है ये ये इसमें भी कवर हो जाएगा इन योर आई एम एफ चैप्टर इंडिया फॉरन एक्सचेंज रिजर्व बैंक आती ठीक है इंटर क्रेडिटर एग्रीमेंट दिस वॉज ऑल्सो कोर करेंट अफेयर फ्टी करोड़ से ज्यादा एम डी आर इज ऑल्सो करंट अफेयर इन टर्म्स ऑफ डिमोनिटाइजेशन एम डी आर इज द रेट दैट वो पेमेंट प्रोसेसिंग के टाइम चार्ज होता है विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग लिंक ऑल ए टी एम्स इन इंडिया एन पी सी आई ठीक है ठीक है कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी रेशन
वन तो है अच्छा लग रहा है ना पढ़ के डिसाइडेड बाय ईच इंडिविजुअल बैंक आई विल डिसाइड माय कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी हाँ तो टू परसेंट एवरी बैंक विल देन वन परसेंट टू परसेंट वेर इज बेसेल वेर इज दैट गाव इन स्विट्जरलैंड क्यों मिले थे सब लोग वहां नो कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी सर ऑल गुड ये ठीक है फैक्चुअल क्वेश्चन ये अगेन दिस इज मनी मल्टीप्लायर मनी मल्टीप्लायर ये किया नहीं हमने तो आई विल स्किप थ्रू इट विल डू दिस अगेन ये भी मनी मल्टीप्लायर का है ये तो बहुत ही रैंडम क्वेश्चन है दिस इज स्टिल ओके इंटरेस्ट कवरेज रेशियो देख लो वॉट इज इंटरेस्ट कवरेज रेशियो सबसे पहले यू हैव टू एलिमिनेट समथिंग थर्ड ना यू विल एलिमिनेट थर्ड करेक्ट उल्टा है तो थ्री गॉन थ्री गॉन टू बाय डिफॉल्ट बिकम्स करेक्ट नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज वन इट हेल्प्स इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग द प्रेजेंट रिस्क ऑफ अ फॉर्म दैट अ बैंक इज गोइंग टू गिव लोन टू हाँ इट शोज ना कि रिस्की है कम रिस्की है वेदर योर सैलरी इज लो सैलरी इज हाई ठीक है ठीक है ये 2021 का क्वेश्चन सी द वन सैंड स्किपिंग आर वेरी स्टैटिक क्वेश्चन या करंट अफेयर्स क्वेश्चन सो एनी वेज संतोष सर इज गोइंग टू टेक करंट अफेयर्स सिंपल क्वेश्चन पूछा ना कि वी ऑल नो लैंडर ऑफ लास्ट रिजॉर्ट है बट उसका मीनिंग क्या है व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ लैंडर ऑफ लास्ट रिजॉर्ट वॉट इज द आंसर ठीक है सर घर जाए लेट एस स्टार्ट विद अनदर चैप्टर यू गाइज आर फिनिशिंग इकोनॉमिक्स इन वन डे मेजर पार्ट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स और क्या चाहिए टुमारो संतोष सर विल टेक लेक्चर 11:30 थर्टी ऑनवर्ड्स इट्स ऑलवेज ऑनवर्ड्स तो यू विल रीड अबाउट IMF, World Bank, WTO, so that also overlaps with economy a lot. Taxation. Prelims oriented. I am teaching. Why do we need taxes? To uh, government is a redistributive agency. It takes money from the people who are who have money and it gives money to the people who don't have money. This is a redistributive function. Direct tax and indirect tax. who will tell the difference what is the difference between direct and indirect tax very good hmm. there are two words that you should know one is incidence and one is burden one is incidence and one is burden okay incidence means kis pe tax laga government pin pointed which person to pay the tax is incidence government is telling you to pay the tax incidence now you took money from me and paid the tax so who is ultimately facing the burden me theek okay? hai incidence cannot be shifted government ki ungli you cannot rotate incidence cannot be shifted but burden can be shifted so the taxes in which you can shift the burden are called as indirect taxes shift 
see why they are called as indirect taxes is because the incidence and burden are on different people so indirectly who is paying that is the question simple example you go to dominos to eat a pizza you get a bill bill pay gst hai 600 rupees pizza 40 rupees let's say gst that 40 rupees is paid by whom us who was supposed to pay dominos was supposed to pay it added it to our bill and now we are paying indirectly we are paying incidence is on whom incidence is on whom dominos burden is on whom us same thing cannot be done in direct taxes if incidence is on me i will have to pay tax and that's a different thing if i borrow money from someone and pay tax but here legally officially you can shift the burden you can shift the burden in indirect taxes not you will have to shift the burden you can tomorrow if dominoes wants to pay its own taxes it can pay bills hata dega but it will not do so because it will eat up the profit margins of the restaurant okay you need to know this main difference between direct and indirect taxes direct taxes ka example can you tell me income tax corporation tax how is corporation tax different from income tax so ideally speaking income tax has two types individual tax and corporation tax but in government parlance we use income tax and corporation tax both are income tax only because corporation tax be income pay lagta hai of the corporate so i will write it as i will write as income tax corporation tax also if wealth tax jo abhi nahi hai it was there wealth tax was there it is not uh, now it is not there it was on wealth ghar gaadi bangla aur kya chahiye wealth tax tha now it is not there income tax corporation tax what are the examples of indirect taxes gst customs key concept here our tax system is designed when i come to income tax income tax is a tax on income major direct tax wahi hai income tax is the major direct tax in india when i speak about income tax i try to uh, tax the person directly uske income pe indirect and all why why i don't want to go i am government i am trying to tax the income directly theek hai so that is a tax on income now tell me one thing is it a tax on suppose you are running a company you earned or you sold goods worth rupees 50000 crores and your expense was 5000 crores so income tax kitne pe lagega 50000 crores or 45000 crores what is your income net income jo hai us pe lagta hai always remember this 50000 crores pe tax nahi lag raha hai income tax is on what profit you are making if you are making a loss there is no tax okay if you have made a loss there is no tax some key terms related to income tax or direct tax you should know because i feel upsc is again going towards the practicality of topic so this you should know i'll tell you in brief the process of how income tax works you earn your income from 1st april of a year to 31st march of another year you earn your income whatever income you have earned you make a list ki chalo i earned this rent i earned i earned interest i earned my salary i sold my car so i earned a profit etc etc theek hai first april to 31st march car ka was just an example ha uh, i earned all these things i won a lottery some some extra winnings i did so income hai what you will do is you will make a list of all your incomes earned in 1st april this is the financial year 1st april to 31st march you will give it to the government you will calculate tax on it as per the applicable rate of tax calculate you karoge you will give it to the government government will check your correction is right or uh, your calculation is right or wrong government will correct it theek hai 
After that, what the government will do is, after that, the government will tell you, ki, sir, it is right, sir, it is wrong. If it is wrong, please pay excess. If you have already paid excess, please take the refund. Itna samjha? Straight hai? Some terms you should know. Bas. The terms I want you to know. The year in which income is earned is called as previous year. I know it is very counterintuitive, but previous year bolte isko. The year in which income is earned. Iska checking kab hoga? Next year, na? Because after 31st March, you will sit and you will file. Iska assessment would happen 1st April, next year 1st April se. This is called as an assessment year. The year in which your income is assessed. Which income? Earned in the previous year. That is what is called previous year, 1st April. This form is called as income tax return, ITR. The IRS officer or the person sitting in the government office who is checking your return will be called as an assessing officer, AO. You are the assessee because it is your income which is being assessed. You are the assessee, he is the assessing officer, previous year, sorry, assessment year. These are some key terms that you should know. There are five categories of income which you can divide your income into. Whatever you have earned, you have to divide it into five categories and show an income tax return. First category is income from salaries. Whatever salary you are earning, even if you change jobs and all, salary. Second, so this makes it easier for them to assess. Second category is income from house property. House property means rent and all. Income from house property. Third is income from business. Because remember, salary is not business. Business means profit and all. Milta hai. Business or profession. Fourth category is income from capital gains. I will explain what is capital gains. Fifth category is whatever is not uh, fitting in all these four other sources. For example, winnings, gifts. It is not a salary or rent or business or capital income or something. Capital gain is when you sell a big asset. So, it is profit. Hota hai. I bought a flat at 2 lakh rupees in 1960s. Today, I am going to sell it at let's say 2 crore rupees. Okay, so profit will be taxed. profit will be taxed. That profit will be taxed when I, sell the, when I sell my property under capital gain. So, these are the five heads. These are called as heads of income. Zyada, nothing much to go uh, beyond this. This is called as an income tax return. These are, there are different types of ITR for different categories of individuals. Previous year, assessment year, assessing officer, assessee and assessment. Assessment is him checking your income. Who files income tax returns? The taxpayer. You know, nobody does it for him. Obviously, CS do. Hum usi ke liye hai. Rent, rent. Huh. Gifts may certain criteria hai ki X, Y, Z chhod ke sare gifts taxable. So, gift criteria, 50,000 ke upar gift mila, then it is taxable. So, there are some criteria, monetary criteria. Movable property hai, immovable hai, cash gift hai, ke hisab se alag alag rules. But gifts receive on marriage is not taxable. So, whatever gift you want to take, abhi se sabko bol do, us ek din dena hai. That one day you give me all the gifts of life and it is not taxable. Thikhe, there are certain 7 to 8 categories jaha pe gifts are not taxable. Marriage is one of them. Uh, inheritance is one of them. Abhi wo log gift chhod ke gaye, poor words toh thodi na. I will be liable to pay tax. So, it's alag alag. Okay. Coming to 
GS tax point of view, the key relevant thing that we should know is tax to GDP ratio. Now, currently we are talking about direct tax to GDP ratio, but overall tax to GDP ratio is both direct and indirect taxes. What is the current tax to GDP ratio? Any idea? Kitna ho? It is 10 to 11 percent of central government alone, 16 percent with state governments combined. Out of that, out of that 10 percent, direct taxes ka ratio is 5 to 6 percent, indirect tax ka 5 to 6 percent, neck, neck to neck. There was a time when direct taxes were much higher than indirect taxes. There was a time when indirect taxes were much higher than direct taxes. Now they are neck to neck. Kabhi thoda zada kam, that is the way uh, it goes. Okay. One key term that you should know is when GDP increases, do you think tax should also increase? I'm not talking about percentage here. I'm talking about the the amount here. GDP but which means production is happening, economic activity is happening, which means people are earning money, which means people have to pay tax. Correct? If GDP increases by 10%, tax might increase by 10% or tax might increase by 8% or tax might increase by 12%. Okay, correct? It depends on which sector are we taxing more, etc. etc. It's very complicated. This is an English word buoyant. Buoyant means in proportion to, in, in terms of tax to GDP ratio. When I say tax buoyancy is very high, which means that tax is rising at a rate faster than GDP increase. GDP is increasing at 10%, tax is increasing at a rate of 12%. Tax buoyancy is high. When I say there is less tax buoyancy or there is no tax buoyancy or tax buoyancy may problem, hai, which means that GDP is rising but tax is not rising commensurate. Itna samjha, what is tax buoyancy? India has one of the low tax buoyancies in the world. Why? GDP increase hota hai, but tax does not increase. Why? Informal sector, but wo to GDP may be nahi aega. One, one reason. Wo to hai, one reason. Agriculture income. It is counted in GDP, but agricultural income is exempt from tax. Single reason. Agricultural income is exempt from tax under section 10.1 of Income Tax Act. It is counted in GDP. Three sectors are gay. Usme. Counted in GDP. Agriculture, services, tertiary and manufacturing. But tax, no collection. The time, the idea to tax agricultural income has come. As a question means me aata hai. Discuss or something. So, this is one major reason that you should know. See, abhi tax chapter mein na, going forward, at least in direct tax, na, there are key terms. Main term bataunga, meaning bataunga. Just keep it in your brain or write it down. Move ahead. Okay? Cost to benefit ratio is very less. Hardly three questions have come in the past eight years. Tax ka. So, some basic concepts you should know. Now, did we see the slabs of income? Less than 250, 0%, 250 to 5, 10%. If I tell you that there is Pay attention, if I tell you there is flat 10% tax on whatever income you earn, flat 10%. As your income, now pay attention, as your income increases, will the burden increase, yes or no? Flat 10%, burden bad raga. Burden is same, 10%. You are earning 20,000, 2,000 going as tax. You are earning 20 lakhs, 2 lakhs going as tax. Absolute tax is increasing 100%. Is the burden increasing? Are you feeling more pinch? No. That time also you are feeling a pinch of 10%. Now also you are feeling a pinch of 10% only. Okay, I am telling flat tax 10%. Did you get this? Okay. This is known as proportional taxation. Simple, a key percentage, just 1% proportional taxation. Only 1% one flat 10%, whatever you want, pay tax. But do we follow pro proportional tax system in India? Yes or no? No. What do we follow? Again, please, buoyancy part. Uh, buoyancy is nothing but 
how your taxes are increasing comparison to increase in GDP. See, technically GDP is nothing but your economic activity, increase in uh, final value of goods and services. So, if GDP is rising, which means people are producing, which means people are earning factor income, which means they have to pay tax. But if tax is not rising, commensurate with increase in GDP, we say that tax is not buoyant. If tax is rising more than very fast it is rising commensurate with GDP, then we say that tax is high, highly buoyant or tax is not buoyant if it is not happening. Tax buoyancy is the proportion in which tax is increasing compared to increase in GDP. Right? Now, we have slab system. We saw 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. As the income increases, are we feeling higher punch, uh, pinch? Is the burden increasing? Yes. Because today you are paying 5% tax. Tomorrow you are earning more, you are paying 15% tax. More proportion is kept aside. That is called as a progressive system of taxation. Direct taxes in India are progressive in nature. True or false? True. It taxes the more capable and it leaves out the less capable. Progressively, your burden is increasing as your income is also increasing. Absolute tax amount, I am not even talking. Absolute tax amount will increase even in pro proportional. You are earning 2 crores, 10% will go to extra amount here. But now you are earning 2 crores in progressive. Earlier you were paying 5%, now you have to pay 30%. Suppose. Okay, this is progressive. Direct taxes are progressive in nature. Indirect taxes are regressive in nature. I will show you how. Indirect taxes are regressive in nature. Domino's pizza you went to eat. You are earning monthly salary 25,000 rupees. You went to eat a pizza. Burden hai? Little bit. One bill of 2,000 rupees. So, you manually calculate. Mind, 2,000 rupees gone. Burden. Hai. Take a 2 upon 25,000. Burden. Some person who is economically poorer than you. They come to celebrate their daughter's birthday party to Domino's. You see. And they also order the same pizza. 2,000 rupees ka bill aata hai. But you notice that their monthly income is 6,000 rupees. Who is facing a higher burden? The second person. Okay? Which means, as your income is rising, your burden is reducing. Yes or no? Regressive. Indirect taxes are regressive in nature. Which, because they are fixed. They don't vary with income. Direct taxes are progressive in nature. Indirect taxes are regressive in nature. Simple hai. Easy to understand. Proportional system, regressive system and progressive system. Okay? So, now one one term I will teach. surcharge and cess. Ye dono hi, both of them are levied over and above tax. Surcharge is nothing but an extension of tax. Surcharge is penalizing the ultra rich, super rich. Extra income tax for them. That is known as surcharge. Cess is levied on all the people. It is in proportion of tax only. So, agar tax aapka, let's say 200 rupees are hai, plus 1% would be your cess. If tax is your 200 crore, plus 1% would be your cess. Cess and surcharge ka main difference is cess is levied for a specific purpose only. Okay, for example, health and education cess, agricultural infrastructure development cess. Surcharge is nothing but extra income tax. You can use it anyhow. This is the difference between surcharge and cess. Do you know what is tax haven? H A V E N. What is tax haven? Chalo. India, Cayman Island, Cayman Island, okay? we have Tata Steel in our example, we have Tata Steel, 
टाटा इंडिया में टैक्स रेट इज ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट केमन आईलैंड में टैक्स रेट इज लेट से फाइव परसेंट ठीक है टाटा स्टील हैज ऑपरेशन इन केमन आईलैंड ऑल्सो लेट से इफ टाटा स्टील इज मेकिंग हायर प्रॉफिट विल इट हैव टू पे हायर टैक्स येस इट विल हैव टू पे हायर टैक्स वॉट इट विल डू इज it will show that majority of my profits majority of my sales are done in cayman islands so dikhayega and this is done by apple and other tech companies they show maximum sales in ireland where there is low tax hey itta sa ireland theek hai tata what it will do is it will show that it has earned maximum profits in cayman islands it will pay 5% tax on that yahan pe bach gaya Did you understand what is happening? Profit is being shifted from India to Cayman Islands. One important term you need to know is tax base. What is tax base? Can anyone tell me? Tax base is who is liable to pay tax in terms of people, in terms of things. So GST me. People earning less than twenty lakh rupees are not liable to pay tax. Okay, so tax base or tax net, you can say, is the scope of people or things liable to pay tax. So if I tell you, currently less than two lakh fifty thousand income earning people have zero percent tax. Tomorrow, if government changes that to one lakh, is the tax base increasing or reducing? So what can you tell me? Two lakh fifty thousand. Tak there is no tax today. Tomorrow this limit is reduced to one lakh rupees. So tax base is reducing or increasing? Tax base is increasing because now more more people have fallen in the net. Samjha? This is tax base. Similarly, if government is giving subsidies or exemptions and वो reduce हो जाता है, so that is the meaning. Of, that उसका meaning is that tax base is increasing. ठीक है? Now Tata has Shown profits here. Tata has shifted profits here, and those profits are not liable to be taxed in India because those profits are already taxed there. Which country's tax base has increased and which country's tax base has reduced? India's tax base has reduced because now Tata is being assessed here, and its tax base increase हो गया. ठीक है? This phenomena is called as BPS base erosion and profit shifting. Whose base is getting eroded? Profit is shifted from where to where? India to Cayman Islands. Now this is bad for countries with a higher tax regime or lower tax regime. Higher tax regime, है ना? Income which is taxed here is at a very low rate. So this is a problem for countries like India because we are losing tax revenue. ठीक है तो ओ ई सी डी आई होप यू नो इंटरनेशनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ इकोनॉमिक कोऑपरेशन एंड डेवलपमेंट ओ ई सी डी ओ ई सी डी कंट्रीज केम टूगेदर एंड दे सेट की लेटेस्ट मेक एन एग्रीमेंट कि इसका कुछ करना पड़ेगा सो दे मेड द बी पी एस एग्रीमेंट बेस इरोजन एंड प्रॉफिट शिफ्टिंग एंड रिसेंटली लास्ट ईयर वी हैव कम अप विद समथिंग कॉल्ड एज जी एम सी टी आर वॉट इज जी एम सी टी आर Have you heard about this global minimum corporate tax rate? कि एक एक रेट तो minimum होगा ही. ठीक है. This is to tackle the problem of BPS, base erosion and profit shifting. Is it logical to tax one income twice? it is not logical to tax one income twice hence india has signed a lot of agreements with other countries if you are taxing that income i will not tax if i am taxing that income you should not tax because money is transferred from one country to another 
यूएसए में योर ब्रदर अर्न मनी इफ ही पेज इनकम टैक्स इन यूएसए एंड इफ ही सेंडिंग दैट मनी टू यू डू यू थिंक इंडियन गवर्नमेंट शुड टैक्स दैट मनी अगेन नहीं उस पर एक बार हो गया टैक्स ठीक है सो दिस एग्रीमेंट आर नोन एज डी टी डबल एस डबल टैक्स अवॉइडेंस एग्रीमेंट सी जस्ट नो वन वर्ड में एंड वन लाइन में क्या है नो नीड टू गो इन डेप्थ और हाउ इट वर्क अभी टाइम नहीं है वी डोंट हैव टाइम फॉर दैट मतलब नॉट टूडे बट ओवरऑल ही टाइम नहीं है टूडे इज सेवन डबल टैक्सेशन अवॉइडेंस एग्रीमेंट आर एग्रीमेंट साइन बिटवीन कंट्रीज वेर इफ द इनकम इज टैक्स वंस इट इज नॉट टैक्स इट विल नॉट बी टैक्स अगेन इन अनदर कंट्री नॉट द पीपल हुर एंगेज इन बी पी एस वॉट दे डू इज दे सी कि इंडिया का कौन से कौन से कंट्री के साथ डी टी डबल ए है दे सी अरे दिस कंट्री लेट एस फाइंड आउट वेदर वी कैन शो इनकम इन दिस कंट्री लेट एस फाइंड आउट वेदर वी कैन पे लो टैक्स देर दिस इज कॉल्ड एज ट्रीटी शॉपिंग दे शॉप ट्रीटीज कि कौन सा है क्या है दिस इज नोन एज ट्रीटी शॉपिंग ठीक है दिस इज इंडिया This is Mauritius. Let's say Mauritius is a low tax regime. What they will, what they will show is, they will send the money from India to Mauritius. Mauritius pe low tax will be paid. Money will again flow to India officially. Arey sir, Mauritius me tax has been paid. Right? This is also called as round tripping. Round tripping of money hota hai. They send it across. ठीक है इतना I'm I'm just telling one one line because इतना important नहीं है. Now one important thing which I feel की it can come in uh, news नहीं question is की this term is often appearing in news in context of what direct tax indirect tax ऐसा आ सकता है so please pay attention to this term and the logic behind it taxes are based on take an example of MNC multinational corporation multinational company तो so, taxes कब base होते हैं when are taxes How are taxes based? How do you decide that India will pay? India will collect tax or not? USA. You will see that where that company is doing business majorly. If the company is majorly doing business in India, Indian government has the right to collect taxes. If the income is earned from USA, USA will collect the taxes. Now see what happens in terms of digital companies. Where are they located? Where are they doing business? It is very difficult. Right? So. By default, taxation in India happens on the on your residential status. कि आप अगर N R I हो, if you are an N R I, then you will be liable to pay tax only on income earned in India. बाकी भूल जाओ. If you are an Indian, then you will be liable to pay tax on all world income unless it is taxed elsewhere. So ये companies का find करना is very difficult. That is why government has came up with some rules or some standards or some criteria. Which are called as poems. Place of effective management. Now this simple question will come: that place of effective management is seen in news in what context? Place of effective management. Poem. Okay. What is place of effective management? Rules which helps to determine where is the place of effective management of that company, so that we can tax the income accordingly. समझा सिर्फ इतना ही ध्यान रखो कि it is to determine company कहाँ located है, where is the company located. That is place of effective management.
टाटा स्टील सेंड्स रॉ मटेरियल टू टाटा मोटर्स कार में इंजिन में यूज करने के लिए दिस इज अ ग्रुप कंपनी है ये पूरा एक ग्रुप है दिस इज एन एंटायर ग्रुप टाटा सन्स इज द होल्डर ऑफ मेजोरिटी शेयर इन टाटा स्टील एंड टाटा मोटर्स सो दीज पीपल नॉर्मली ट्रांजेक्ट टाटा स्टील गिव्स रॉ मटेरियल टू टाटा मोटर्स टाटा मोटर्स सॉरी गिव्स मनी टू टाटा स्टील फेयरली सिंपल है अभी तक नथिंग डिफिकल्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड आप टाटा सन्स देखता है टाटा सन सी इज दैट टाटा स्टील का प्रॉफिट टाटा सन सी इज दैट टाटा स्टील का प्रॉफिट इज टू हाई एंड टाटा मोटर्स का लॉस इज हाई सो ओनली इफेक्टिवली टाटा स्टील इज पेइंग हाई टैक्स टाटा मोटर्स इज पेइंग वेरी लो टैक्स और नो टैक्स वॉट इज टाटा स्टील डूइंग टू टाटा मोटर्स सेलिंग रॉ मटेरियल विच मीन्स फॉर एवरी यूनिट ऑफ रॉ मटेरियल टाटा स्टील इज अर्निंग मनी बराबर है विच मीन्स ये रेवेन्यू है विच मीन्स इट इज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग टू प्रॉफिट फॉर एवरी यूनिट टाटा मोटर्स इज लूजिंग मनी बिकॉज इट इज पेइंग सो अभी टाटा सन्स बोलते हैं कि एक काम करते लेट एस डू वन थिंग इसका प्रॉफिट ज्यादा है विच मीन्स ही हैज टू पे हाई टैक्स सो नाउ वॉट वील डू इज वील ट्राई टू लोअर इज प्रॉफिट नाउ थिंग उल्टा to lower the profit tata steel has to earn lower to earn lower tata steel tata sun says ki price kam kar do so earlier if one steel rod was sold at 80 rupees let's say now they say that sell it at only 50 rupees what will happen what will happen profitability of tata steel will go down tax will go down this is already a loss making so even if it makes some profit because its profit will increase इसका रॉ मटेरियल कॉस्ट हैज नाउ गॉन डाउन इवन इफ इट इज मेकिंग सम प्रॉफिट इट इज ओके ओवरऑल ग्रुप में टैक्स इज बीइंग सेव्ड डू यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस ठीक है ये जो प्राइस पे द ट्रांसफर इज हैपनिंग इन इन टैक्स टर्म्स इट इज कॉल्ड एज ट्रांसफर प्राइसिंग नाउ इज एटी अ मार्केट प्राइस और फिफ्टी द मार्केट प्राइस मार्केट प्राइस इज एटी ठीक है दिस एटी मार्केट प्राइस इज कॉल्ड एज एन आर्म्स लेंथ प्राइस आर्म्स लेंथ प्राइस मीन दूर दूर से नॉट क्लोजली आर्म्स लेंथ प्राइस मार्केट प्राइस दिस फिफ्टी इज कॉल्ड एज द स्वीट हार्ट प्राइस स्वीट हार्ट प्राइस मीन्स आर्टिफिशियली इन्फ्लेटेड और डिफ्लेटेड इन आर एग्जाम्पल इट वॉज डिफ्लेटेड उल्टा हो सकता है इट कैन बी इन्फ्लेटेड ऑल्सो Now this is one more method of tax evasion. ये market पे नहीं हो रहा है So what government and you know initially what happened was government used to uh, put rates on these companies and disallow the calculations of 80 and 50 and बहुत होता था Now there are two things. One is half of them were genuine कि हाँ they are rigging the prices. Half of them were uh, half of the companies का calculation was genuine कि sir this 50 is because we are giving a lower quality of steel. and that is why uska 50 hai price market mein this steel is not available so you will not know what is the market price but genuinely high quality 80 hai low quality 50 hai but still tax authorities used to harass ki nahi nahi we will not allow this we will not allow that etc so then we came up with a concept long concept called as advance pricing agreement apa apa advance pricing agreement whatever will be the transfer price uska calculation would be Send to the government tax authorities in advance. कि सर देखिए, we are planning to sell this at eighty rupees, this at fifty rupees. This is our calculation. If you have any problem, please tell us. If not, then this same agreement would be binding for two years, one, one, two, three years, etc. So this, in this manner, we saved a lot of litigation. So those are advance pricing agreements. ठीक है दो हजार एडवांस प्राइजिंग एग्रीमेंट नाउ वन अगेन लाइक पोएम वन मोर इंपॉर्टेंट टर्मिनोलॉजी दैट यू शुड नो वन मोर इंपॉर्टेंट कंसेप्ट दैट यू शुड नो इज दैट इफ इफ एनी ट्रांजेक्शन इज डन विथ अ व्यू टू इवेट टैक्सेस क्या बोला 
if any transaction is done with a view to evade taxes the transaction lacks commercial substance which means it is not happening at arm's length price any transaction then a lot of powers are given to income tax authorities to disallow that transaction to cancel that transaction cancel transaction matlab us pe they have to pay taxes theek hai there are certain rules for this which give power and these rules are called as general anti avoidance regulation or rules gar very important again g a a r gar general anti avoidance rules general anti avoidance regulations ya rules yes but they are meant to be anti avoidance in nature general anti avoidance avoiding tax ke liye jo transaction kiya hai those transactions which are entered into for avoiding taxes solely with the purpose of avoiding taxes unka anti rules hai ye have you heard this term before gar general anti avoidance rules the logic is that there was a lot of uh, opposition also to gar because they gave lot of powers to income tax officers harassment powers to income tax officers okay i think direct tax me this is enough one last thing again this was in news hence i am teaching you this income tax is tax on profits बराबर है इनकम पे है हाउ विल योर प्रॉफिट बी कैलकुलेटेड यू विल मेंटेन अकाउंट्स बराबर है अब प्रॉब्लम ये है कि अकाउंट्स मेंटेन अंडर अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स लॉज एंड रेगुलेशंस इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम अकाउंट्स मेंटेन अंडर इनकम टैक्स एक्ट इनकम टैक्स एक्ट में यू मेक अकाउंट्स इनकम एंड एक्सपेंस राइट देन यू मेक अनदर सेट ऑफ अकाउंट अंडर accounting standards income and expense there are some differences please don't ask what are they not required dono ka profit alag aata hai simple reason is both like reason is some of the items which are there in income here are not supposed to appear in income here and vice versa and expense also so your profit as per let us call it income tax and your profit as per let us call it accounting standards is different income tax will authority will charge tax on which profits this profit or this profit income tax is not concerned with accounting standards income tax says ki hamare hisab se itna profit hai this is the profit as per our calculation theek hai now comes a twist as per income tax act you are facing a loss which means you don't have to pay any income tax but as per accounting standards you have a profit अभी क्या टेक्निकली लीगली तो दे डोंट हैव टू पे टैक्स ना बिकॉज एज पर इनकम टैक्स देर इज नो प्रॉफिट सो द लॉस इज अच्छा ठीक है बट सिंस यू आर मेकिंग प्रॉफिट अंडर अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड पे अ मिनिमम टैक्स इतना भर दो बस पे अ मिनिमम टैक्स ऐसे मजे में ठीक है दैट इज कॉल्ड एज मिनिमम ऑल्टरनेट टैक्स हैव यू रेड अबाउट इट दिस इज द लॉजिक मिनिमम ऑल्टरनेट टैक्स मैट अगेन दिस वॉज इन न्यूज टू ईयर्स बैक तो आजकल यूपीएससी में फैशन है ना थ्री ईयर्स फोर ईयर्स बैक दे आस्क मिनिमम ऑल्टरनेट टैक्स द नेम इज मिनिमम थोड़ा सा एटीन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट ऑफ प्रॉफिट मिनिमम थोड़ा सा मतलब एटीन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट देन रिड्यूस टू फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑल्टरनेट टैक्स ऑल्टरनेट मीन्स की नॉर्मल टैक्स रेजिम में नहीं बैठ रहा है थोड़ा ऑल्टरनेटिवली जस्ट पे मिनिमम टैक्स मैं दर इज वन मोर वर्ड विच इफ इट अपियर्स इन पेपर एवरी वन विल गेट कंफ्यूज called as alternate minimum tax what is the difference can you tell aapko pata hoga this one is for corporates this one is for non corporates bas individuals cooperative societies non corporates partnership firms bas simple minimum alternate tax alternate minimum tax Pratibha, I will explain what is APA, Advance Pricing Agreement. In this case, I hope you know that this AT के जगह we 
made it 50 ठीक है वी मेड एटी के जगह वी मेड इट फिफ्टी एंड सो अर्लियर वॉट यूज टू हैपन इज इनकम टैक्स अथॉरिटीज यूज टू क्वेश्चन दिस फिफ्टी का कैलकुलेशन दिस एटी का कैलकुलेशन सम ऑफ दैम सम ऑफ द कंपनीज वर डेफिनेटली स्कैमिंग बट सम वर जेन्युन सो दिस लेड टू अ लॉट ऑफ टसल बिटवीन इनकम टैक्स अथॉरिटीज एंड कंपनी सो देन वी केम अप विद कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ एडवांस प्राइजिंग एग्रीमेंट कि द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ दिस एटी एंड कैलकुलेशन ऑफ दिस फिफ्टी विल बी फ्री अप्रूव्ड बाय द इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट कंपनीज विल सबमिट एक एग्रीमेंट होगा कि सर सी दिस इतने प्राइस पे एटी पे बिकने वाला है दिस क्वांटिटी आई एम सेलिंग इट एट फिफ्टी प्लीज अप्रूव नाउ दैट विल बी अ बाइंडिंग एग्रीमेंट फॉर लेट्स से वन टू थ्री इयर्स दैट इज कॉल्ड एट एडवांस प्राइजिंग एग्रीमेंट इट इज टू सेव ऑल दिस ट्रबल ऑफ प्रोसिक्यूटिंग और ऑफ गोइंग बिहाइंड सच कंपनीज विच डू ट्रांसफर प्राइजिंग में चेंजेस ठीक है दैट इज एडवांस प्राइजिंग एग्रीमेंट वॉट इज पोएम why it is used to determine the residential status or to determine the location of the company for tax purposes okay then what did we see what is amt va wow. for what for non corporates when the profit as per dash is more and profit as per dash is less as per accounting standards or accounting books or companies act whatever you want to call it इज देयर पॉजिटिव है बट बाकी लॉस है एज पर इनकम टैक्स एक्ट देर इज अ लॉस ठीक है ना देर आर टू न्यू और यू कैन सी टू न्यू अनाउंसमेंट इन लास्ट टू लास्ट इंड लास्ट इयर्स बजट फर्स्ट वॉज फेसलेस असेसमेंट योर आई टी आर विल गो टूवर्ड्स विच असेसिंग ऑफिसर यू डोंट नो बिकॉज इफ यू नो ही विल कॉल यू सर गिव मी पेटी एंड आई विल पास योर रिफंड ठीक है राइट यू हैड अ रिफंड ऑफ थ्री करोड़ रुपीज assessing officer calls you see you have a refund i have a power to disallow it give me 5% of it i will allow it simple assessment was face to face and then we cas used to go to income tax office sir please give refund no sir my client is killing me so so then client says ki uh, then officer says i have already spoken with the client aa jayega refund aapka you go theek hai नहीं देर आर सम सेवन टू एट सेवन टू एट ट्रांजेक्शन जो अनइक्वल होते हैं बट दीज आर ओनली द कंसर्न ऑफ बिग कॉर्पोरेट बिकॉज दे एंगेज इन सच ट्रांजेक्शन दे आर कॉम्प्लीकेटेड नेचर छोटा छोटा में नहीं होता है इतना बट कैलकुलेशन तो हमेशा इनकम टैक्स के एक्ट के हिसाब से होता है बट कंपनीज एक्ट रिक्वायर अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स टू बी फॉलोड तो वो दोनों करना है दोनों को ऑडिट होता है दीज आर ऑडिटेड सेपरेटली दीज आर ऑडिटेड सेपरेटली एंड देन पेमेंट इज और टैक्स इज पेड हाँ सो यू डोंट नो ना मैनिपुलेशन है या नहीं है सो सबको मिनिमम पे करना है खत्म सिंपल सो फेसलेस असेसमेंट वी इंट्रोड्यूस लास्ट टू लास्ट ईयर लास्ट ईयर वी इंट्रोड्यूस फेसलेस अपील ऑल्सो अपील मीन्स वॉट यू कैन अपील अगेंस्ट द डिसीजन ऑफ द असेसिंग ऑफिसर अभी वो फेसलेस नहीं हुआ तो appellate authority will call you yeah you are appealing i know who you are i will pass your refund don't worry give me 8% wo bhi abhi faceless kar de so you don't know who is your assessing officer you don't know who is the appellate authority theek okay? hai so that is a very good way of you can say avoiding evasion of taxes direct tax mein to itna hi tha kuch aur yaad hai aapko direct tax mein jo hota hai a very important concept last direct tax tell me one thing if you earn salary of 60000 rupees and you pay 10000 rupees towards lic premium tax kis pe lagna chahiye 50 ya 60 50000 so certain kharche which are standardized certain expenses which everyone has to pay they are allowed as deductions they are allowed as deductions theek okay? hai there are two key words in income tax one is deduction another is exemption exemption means that tax is not tax that that income is not taxable at all agricultural income not taxable that is exempt 
deduction means you will get some deduction from that income for example lic premium you will get that deduction from your income and net pay you have to pay tax okay now tell me is this deduction and exemption a revenue for the government or revenue foregone for the government revenue foregone hence these deductions exemptions or other kinds of discounts or whatever they are given it is called as tax expenditure by the government 2013 mains question what do you mean by tax expenditure so tax expenditure is not expenditure incurred in collection of taxes it is not as a good tax expenditure is the exemptions or the deductions which are given by the government to the taxpayers difference between mat and amt uh, viplav mat is for corporate entities companies and amt is for non corporate entities partnership firms individuals cooperative societies tomorrow we'll go more faster huh, in the lecture key key concepts we'll cover and we'll try to finish because we have to do balance of payments inflation markets three key things are to be done so to band hi kar diya mast tomorrow bolte hi band kar diya abhi hai bahut baki इनडायरेक्ट टैक्स तो फास्ट होगा यू ऑल आर एक्सपर्ट इन इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस है ना डायरेक्ट बोला ना कैपिटल गेन्स फाइव हेड्स में था ना कैपिटल गेन्स फाइव हेड्स में कैपिटल गेन्स इज बेसिकली व्हेन यू सेल योर एसेट एंड यू मेक अ प्रॉफिट आई गिव ना एग्जांपल फ्लैट खरीदा टू लैक्स में यू सोल्ड इट एट टू क्रोर्स प्रॉफिट हुआ तो दैट इज योर कैपिटल गेन it does not happen frequently it happens very rarely so wo ho gaya capital gain sweetheart price sweetheart ha ha nahi lagta kyun nahi lagta sab pe lagta so how it works is capital gains mein 1990 में मैंने फ्लैट खरीदा था टू लैक्स में टुडे आई एम सेलिंग इट फॉर टू क्रोर तो प्रॉफिट विल नॉट बी टू क्रोर माइनस टू लैक्स हाँ पे टैक्स लगा हुआ ऐसा नहीं होगा दैट टू लैक्स विल बी ब्रॉड टू टूडे वैल्यू बेस्ड ऑन सम इंडेक्स कि वो टू लैक्स का आज का बढ़ के कितना हुआ है तो वो आता है लेट से वन पॉइंट टू सी आर वो टैक्स में कैलकुलेशन होता है नो नीड टू वरी अबाउट दैट एंड देन टू माइनस वन पॉइंट टू एटी लैक्स पे यू हैव प्रॉफिट यू हैव टैक्स ऐसा होता है ऐसा इतना भी करेंगे तो हो गया फिर है ना एटी लैक्स पे यू हैव टैक्स दैट इज कॉल्ड एज कैपिटल गेन्स टैक्स एंड उसमें भी लॉट ऑफ कंडीशन की इफ यू यूज दिस एटी लैक्स टू बाय वन मोर हाउस तो देर इज नो टैक्स बिकॉज खर्चा हो गया ना सामने दैट इज नॉट योर इनकम वैसा टू कॉम्प्लिकेटेड एंड दैट इज वाई वी ऑन हम लोग पैसा कैसा कमाते हैं बिकॉज इनकम टैक्स इज कॉम्प्लिकेटेड इफ इट वॉज सिंपल देन तो आउट ऑफ बिजनेस हो गया ना ठीक है सो वील कंटिन्यू टूमोरो सेवन थर्टी बोल के सेवन को छोड़ दिए ऐसे ही होता है यूपीएससी ऑल्सो से सी साइड इजी आएगा नहीं आता ठीक है एवरी वन सिटिंग एट होम डिड यू थोड़ा फायदा हुआ आज का वॉज इट हेल्पफुल थोड़ा रिविजन कोर कॉन्सेप्ट तो वी हैव डन छोटे चैप्टर्स है आई कैन इवन टेल यू कि वो एकदम ही बेसिक है एवरी वन सिटिंग एट होम अब तो मस्त है सो के राउंड मार के साइकिलिंग करके खा के यू हैव कम कंसेप्टली यू डू फिजिकल पॉलिसी मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी बैंकिंग एंड यू आर सॉर्टेड एटलीस्ट फॉर इकोनॉमिक पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू टुमारो क्लास विल बी एट एट थर्टी ए एम टू टेन थर्टी ए एम ठीक है आई वॉज टेलिंग समन आस्क मी फ्रॉम द स्टाफ कि सर कल क्लास कितने बजे तक हो गया ऐसे टेन थर्टी इज आस्किंग सर सुबह के ना 
ठीक है रेस्ट ऑफ द टॉपिक्स आफ्टर टुमारो रेस्ट ऑफ द टॉपिक्स विल बी कवर्ड बाय संतोष सर इन हिज क्लासेस सो आई होप बेसिक्स आर स्ट्रॉन्ग नाउ वी नो व्हाट आर रेशियोज व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट कंसेप्ट ठीक है एंड इफ यू डोंट अंडरस्टैंड अ क्वेश्चन प्लीज ट्राई टू गो बैक टू बेसिक्स ट्राई टू ब्रेक इट डाउन इन इंग्लिश वर्ड दैट इज द की टू सॉल्विंग क्वेश्चन एंड हमने देखा एट्टी परसेंट क्वेश्चन सिंपल इन इकोनॉमिक्स ठीक है सो प्लीज रिवाइज दिस फ्रॉम वॉट एवर बुक है इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आज याद है tomorrow you will not remember this tomorrow if i ask you what is liquidity coverage ratio denominator you will forget please revise this regularly very few days are left for the exam focus on culture theek <laughs> hai okay. and solve multiple mcqs from multiple classes and please focus on previous year question for all subjects very important thank you so good morning everyone we have a very big lecture today of 2 hours compared to yesterday it was kitna tha yesterday 8 hours 8 8 and a half hours so we revised a lot of things yesterday we read or we uh, discussed a lot of things yesterday especially with respect to monetary policy banking fiscal policy the basic concepts and some of the concepts of other chapters also were mixed with that majority i would say that this covers your Uh, 80 to 90 percent of the prelims MCQ uh, based syllabus, you can say. Now we'll we have we have started with direct taxes and we have finished with direct taxes also. We have seen concepts like AMT, MAT, GAR. Then we have so we have seen POM, place of effective management. Then we have seen what are the basic terminologies associated with direct taxation, especially income taxation like ITR assessment, previous year uh, assessment year, SAC assessing officer. we have seen faceless assessment faceless appeal now we'll move on to indirect taxes see indirect taxes may you know a lot of things because gst is now actually it has become old so one of the main things that you need to know about indirect taxes is that in indirect taxes the burden can be shifted i'm not saying the burden is shifted the burden can be shifted so incidence uh, is on one person and the burden can be shifted so just like we buy anything we do a mobile recharge also that includes a component of your gst and we are ultimately paying that so if you do 100 rupees recharge you will get talk time of let's say 88 rupees so in that service tax uh, service charges other charges and taxes are also included so ultimately burden is on us but incidence is on vodafone or jio or whatever company you are using to pay those taxes so they will collect taxes from us and they will pay to the government one one quick question have you heard of the word tds tax deducted at source is it a direct tax or indirect tax TDS is nothing but income tax. I'll tell you what is TDS. Very simple. I'll give you an example of salary. You have, so look, you started your new job. Ah, uh, you became an officer. You started your new job, and uh, you your joining is from first April. For simplicity, we'll do it first April. Now, for some categories of people, for some categories of transactions, Income Tax Act says that it is the duty of the employer. to deduct taxes on behalf of the employee and pay so your burden is also on you incidence is also on you it is just that for convenience purpose see if you don't pay tax there are so many salaried individuals in india income tax department cannot go behind chasing each and every one of them ki sir please pay tax pay tax so what they do is they put the onus on the employer so what will employer do employer will estimate your entire year salary what is your entire year salary sir 12 lakh rupees okay 12 lakh rupees is your entire year salary and then what he will do is he will calculate tax on that so let's say tax is 10% 1 lakh 20000 is your yearly tax what he will do he will divide by 12 months theek hai 1 lakh 20000 divide by 12 months 10000 aaya 10000 every month he will deduct from your salary and pay to the government he is not filing your income tax return he is not doing anything he is just deducting the tax at source what is the source he is the source he is the employer he is giving you salary he is the source he is deducting tax at source and he is giving you baki ka 1 uh, lakh 10000 he is giving you and 10000 he is deducting and paying to the government every month now comes march okay march mein after 31 so 10 sorry 12 times he has paid he has deducted tax at source and paid to the government now comes march march me you do your own assessment he during the year how much salary did i earn during the year how much expense did i do during the year did i earn something else some more salary or did i earn less salary 
ठीक है सो ट्वेल्व टाइम्स टी डी एस ऑलरेडी वन लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड हैज बीन डिपोजिटेड विद द गवर्नमेंट नाउ इफ एज पर योर असेसमेंट यू फील दैट टैक्स शुड हैव बीन वन लैख फोर्टी थाउजेंड देन ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड एक्स्ट्रा यू विल हैव टू पे आफ्टर मार्च इफ इट इज लेस यू फील दैट नाइन्टी थाउजेंड नहीं होना चाहिए था वन लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड इज पेड ड्यू टू एनी थिंग ठीक है लेट से यू डेंट वर्क फॉर टू मंथ्स यू टूक अ लॉन्ग वेकेशन एंड एम्प्लॉयर डेंट पे योर सैलरी इट वॉज यू नो योर सैलरी गॉट डिडक्टेड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट लॉन्ग लीव सो लेस टैक्स नाइन्टी थाउजेंड सो देन यू कैन क्लेम अ रिफंड फ्रॉम इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट नाउ फॉर क्लेमिंग दिस रिफंड और फॉर पेइंग एक्स्ट्रा टैक्स और फॉर डूइंग नथिंग यू नीड टू फाइल इनकम टैक्स रिटर्न विथ योर असेसमेंट लाइक वी डिस्कस सो टी डी एस इज नथिंग बट इनकम टैक्स विच इज डिडक्टेड इन एडवांस दैट्स इट सो वेदर अ सिंपल क्वेश्चन कैन कम इज टी डी एस अ डायरेक्ट और इनडायरेक्ट टैक्स इट्स अ डायरेक्ट टैक्स इट इज नथिंग बट इनकम टैक्स ठीक है क्लियर वॉट इज टी डी एस टैक्स डिडक्ट सी दीज आर वेरी सिंपल बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट वी शुड बी अवेयर ऑफ एंड क्वेश्चन विल नॉट बी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड इफ दे आस्क ऑन दिस क्वेश्चन विल बी वेरी वेरी सिंपल स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड बट जस्ट वी शुड नो वॉट इज द कॉन्सेप्ट वी आर गोइंग टू सी मार्केट चैप्टर ऑल्सो सेम थिंग यू शुड नो द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ जी डी आर आई डी आर ए डी आर नो नीड टू नो द रेगुलेशन नो नीड टू नो हु कैन डू वॉट और यू नो विच करेंसी में इट इज देर जस्ट यू नीड टू नो द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट एंड दैट इज इनफ because because we have other subjects to study like history and culture theek hai chalo now coming to indirect tax indirect tax mein kya hota hai what is uh, what is the concept of indirect tax the incidence and burden uh, are on different people most often are on different people not always burden can be shifted not always but yes it can be shifted tomorrow if you start your own business you would want your customers to pay tax na you you will not pay on your behalf so that is why burden can be shifted and incidence is on the same person incidence can never be shifted that is indirect tax can you give me examples of indirect tax can you give me examples of indirect tax before gst two main three main examples you should know service tax vat excise duty central excise huh? specifically central excise state also used to or state also levies excise duty on alcohol production you know that is why it is not under gst we are going to discuss what is service tax tax on provision of services before 1994 there was no tax on services why because our service economy was very very low okay yeah, after we opened up our service economy boomed and now our service sector contributes majority to the gdp so now i would say tax base was widened by including services barabar hai simple entire gamut of services were taxed okay then also some services were not taxed we were then we started increasing taxing services now this was under the exclusive purview of central government so service tax was collected by levied collected everything by central government theek okay? hai when i was doing my ca there was service tax there was no gst what is vat value added tax this word these three words are the most important words in any taxation concept any country you go anywhere you study not only india these three words are very very important theek okay? hai so vat for now just understand that it is a tax on sale of goods services to yahan ho gaya so this is sale of goods and this was under the purview of state government some there was some senvat also for central which was under the purview of central government no need to go in details वैसे भी abhi it is not applicable but to understand gst we need to know the problems of earlier regime then we'll understand gst excise we discussed yesterday what is excise a tax on production simple you make sale and all we don't care you just make why what is the logic behind excise because you are using state resources to produce and to earn money at all stages we will tax you फर्स्ट स्टेज सेकेंड स्टेज सर्विस है तो सर्विस प्रोड्यूस तो नहीं होगा बट प्रोविजन होगा देन सर्विस टैक्स ठीक है सो दिस इज अ टैक्स ऑन प्रोडक्शन नाउ दिस इज बोथ सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एंड स्टेट गवर्नमेंट सेंट्रल एक्साइज एंड स्टेट एक्साइज सो दीज आर द प्रिंसिपल और दीज वर द प्रिंसिपल सोर्सेज ऑफ रेवेन्यू फॉर सेंट्रल एंड स्टेट गवर्नमेंट वेन इट कम्स टू टैक्स रेवेन्यू राइट वॉट इज द टैक्स टू जी डी पी रेशियो अप्रॉक्स सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट टेन टू इलेवन परसेंट सेंट्रल प्लस स्टेट सिक्सटीन परसेंट वो टेन टू इलेवन परसेंट में कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ डायरेक्ट एंड इनडायरेक्ट इज फाइव सिक्स फाइव सिक्स बैलेंस येस दैट इज वाई एम टेलिंग यू की इट इज द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट दीज आर द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट वर्ड विच आई एल एक्सप्लेन
देर वर अदर इनडायरेक्ट एक्सेस ऑल्सो वन मेजर इनडायरेक्ट एक्स जो बाहर आई विल राइट विच इज कस्टम्स वॉट इज कस्टम्स नथिंग टू डू इन इंडिया वेन एवर यू आर ब्रिंगिंग समथिंग वेन एवर यू गो टू दुबई एंड यू फील लाइक ब्रिंगिंग समथिंग एंड वो एक्सेस क्वान्टिटी में हो जाता है यू विल हैव टू पे कस्टम बेसिकली इट्स अ टैक्स ऑन इम्पोर्ट वॉट इज द लॉजिक बिहाइंड कस्टम यू शुड नो दैट ऑल्सो वाई आर वी टैक्सिंग इम्पोर्ट वन इज टू डिस्करेज इम्पोर्ट डेफिनेटली सेकेंड इज इफ यू मेक द सेम थिंग इन इंडिया एक्साइज लगेगा वैट लगेगा एंड इफ यू ब्रिंग द सेम थिंग आउटसाइड इंडिया देर इज नथिंग ऐसा नहीं होता to bring a level playing field between both we have customs theek okay? hai there are various types of duties anti dumping duty you must have heard countervailing duty you must have heard they are covered in wto when you read wto international organizations wto usme ye cover hota hai so far it is very clear so far it is very simple now see there are a few problems with this earlier regime Let us take an example. In normal classes, so I take one hour to explain that one numerical example. It's pure numbers. Hota hai. But now, just concept is important. Prelims is very near. Hundred rupees is my production cost. What first tax? क्या लगेगा? What is the first tax that will be levied? Excise, correct? Service tax. So now definitely नहीं है because this is a production. Ten rupees excise. Hundred and ten. ठीक है आई एम इन फैक्ट्री आई विल सेल माई गुड्स टू होम होल सेलर इट्स अ चेन फैक्ट्री होल सेलर रिटेलर कंज्यूमर ठीक है आई विल गिव दिस बिल टू द होल सेलर की हंड्रेड एंड टेन माई प्रॉफिट एंड ऑल इज ऑल इंक्लूडेड ना इन दिस हंड्रेड एंड टेन का ही विल टेक द बिल ही विल डू नाइस packaging he will provide nice transport from factory to warehouse he will have his own expenses he will have his own profit correct let's say he has a profit of 50 rupees and all his own expense and all everything 160 right now let's say there is no retailer one simple rakhte there is consumer when he gives it to consumer what will be levied vat because it's a sale of goods How much is the consumer paying? One eighty. But did you notice something? This is ten. This is twenty. जो tax लग रहा है. Isn't this ten included in this one sixty? Ideally, tax should have been on hundred. Tax should have been on fifty, and then total pay tax. But this hundred and ten includes this ten rupees. Which is flowing to 160, which is flowing to here, and then tax is levied on this 160. See, tax is always a percentage of the value, right? So, abhi consumer is saying, or we are saying, is our government collected 10 rupees already, and again they are collecting 20 on 10 rupees. 10 is already included. So, this is called as cascading effect of taxes, tax on tax. This is wrong. But earlier, why this was acceptable is there are two reasons. This is collected by whom? central government this is collected by whom they never talk to each other in terms of giving credit and all they never talk to each other okay this is one problem second problem if you are giving a mix of goods and services okay if you are giving a mix warranty plus phone phone plus warranty it's a mix of goods and services warranty pay service tax and phone pay uh, vat again central government state government don't talk to each other this is a problem plus plus there were some goods on which excise was levied and some goods on which uh, vat was levied let us say this is also state excise let us say this is also state vat then also sometimes state government did not talk to each other in terms of excise department and vat department so this was a problem so now with gst what has been done is very simple in short i'll explain in gst If now you are paying twenty rupees tax, you pay us twenty rupees. Ten rupees already paid. See, ultimately burden is falling on consumer only. He is taking from him. He is taking from him. Nobody is paying out of their own pocket. Okay. So now government is telling, okay, you have paid ten rupees. Pehle you have paid. Ultimately one sixty. If value is the twenty rupees should be the tax. Ten rupees ka I will give you a credit minus ten rupees. So net tax I will collect is ten rupees. Here what is happening? 
because of gst it is one nation one market one tax whatever central government state governments are talking to each other state governments are talking to each other within departments also so now we have made a one one market and one tax ki anywhere you pay you pay central government tax state government will give you credit you pay state government tax central government will give you credit how that happens in the back end just ignore how their accounts are settled and all theek okay? hai so first first and foremost the biggest benefit that you are getting from gst is to avoid double taxation or avoid cascading effect of taxes now is maybe there are some exceptions and all but forget that so this is the key word here is cascading effect of taxes or double taxation that is one second we are making a mobile phone we we do, we don't manufacture screens i hope you know that phone manufacturers don't make their own screens there are exceptions so apple ka iphone ka screens are made by samsung and lg high end phone samsung low wala phones lg so so let us say we are apple we are making we are importing or we are buying screens from samsung so samsung if he is giving 100 rupees ka screen he will put 10 rupees as excise or he, if he is selling it to us he will put 10 rupees as gst here 110 hoga when we are making our phone when we are making our phone we are including our own profit margin and everything 80 rupees but here na here what is happening is here instead of 110 ideally i should take only 100 because this is a tax to the government and my value addition is only here but theek okay, hai i am taking 110 ye kitna ho gaya 190 theek hai now on this this is my value addition when i sell this this becomes pay attention here this becomes my input tax why it is my input tax because it is a tax ultimately i have paid i am making this i will recover it from my customer no problem i have paid and this is my input tax theek okay? hai now when i sell it to the customer let's say 10% hai agar 10% we are assuming so 19 rupees i will have to add on my bill theek okay? hai and then kitna iska bill i will give customer will pay me 19 rupees right this is my output tax samjha now what the government does is 19 rupees collected 10 rupees already collected so credit deta hai minus 10 rupees net is 9 rupees this is a simple simple explanation of gst that it gives very important keyword input tax credit idc did it give us a credit of input tax yes this is called as input tax credit after the exam meet me i will explain in detail how these figures flow comparing earlier regime and gst likha hai mere paas sab and i have made those figures myself so that is very apparent here the figures were very small so difference ek ek do do rupaye ka tha yes nahi so how it is calculated is ki what is your output tax minus what you have already paid input tax माइनस करके वॉट एवर इज रिमेनिंग इज देर नहीं बर्डन इज ओनली रिड्यूस्ड वो टैक्स क्रेडिट के बाद बर्डन इज पास टू द कंज्यूमर नेट बर्डन इज पास नेट बर्डन इज पास ठीक है अब प्रॉब्लम ये होता है कि वेन देर इज नो आउटपुट टैक्स लाइबिलिटी इमेजिन करो दिस फोन इज एग्जेम फ्रॉम जीएसटी फ्रॉम सेल क्रीन इज नॉट एग्जेम समझ रहे हो we paid input tax 10 rupees there is no output tax there is that transaction on sale of phone is not liable to tax kya kare input tax credit ka input tax credit gets accumulated samjha this is a problem practically which is faced there are some categories where there is no tax on output but there is tax on input so credit accumulate karke kya kare wo see that credit is ultimately your money which is going correct that is working capital being stuck and this is a problem which government is trying to address through every year's budget if you see the uh, part b of the budget gst means lot of changes are being made rate is reduced this is not exempt etc so this is a part of correction see any tax regime will require at least 8 to 10 years to become perfect because it is india and plus overhauling the entire tax regime is difficult so 2016 mein gst aaya 25 26 tak we can expect ki problems will minimize and hence Uh, we are not bringing in a direct tax code 
do you know direct tax code have you heard about it there are so many income tax laws income tax act income tax rules income tax regulations it's it's very complicated other direct taxes so we were planning in 2008 in 2008 akhilesh ranjan committee was set up and we were planning to simplify direct taxes and bring it in one uniform code which is very easy to understand but touching direct taxes is a very is a very uh, difficult step one is definitely people like me hamara kuch our revenue is from complexity of tax laws that is one secondly people find loopholes very easily so once they find loopholes once they start finding loopholes in a new code then it is very difficult fir every year hundreds of amendments will come and then government will be criticized ki kya hai hence we are taking a lot of time to do that but we are simplifying other things like income tax return simplify kar diya process of filing is simplified so awareness is increased those all things we are doing but to touch income tax laws is very difficult theek okay? hai now see this let us say there is no tax for for now just tell me if you want to levy tax and i tell you there is no tax on tax which amounts you will levy tax on isme se kaun se kaun se amounts pe you will levy tax on first tax you will levy on 100 theek hai what is the what what is the logic behind indirect tax is that you are using state resources to produce and that is why you pay as tax or you are using state resources to earn your profit and you pay as tax where are in which figures are people actually contributing to the economy 10 100 pay they are contributing to the economy is 10 a part of gdp no this is tax na so forget this 80 is a contribution of us our value addition our profits see profits are also on factors of production profits gdp theek okay? hai so ideally 100 pe tax plus 80 pe tax lagta hai ideally the tax should be how much 100 plus 80 180 into whatever is the tax rate theek okay? hai can i say can i say the tax should be on only value added to the economy value can be anything even if you are entering 20% profit margin not doing anything just buying 20% my profit and selling still you are adding to the economy na because when people will come to ask you what is your factor factor income you will say my profit is 20% that is included in gdp do you understand so ideally tax should be on 100 plus 80 but now what is happening 110 pay tax so this is an extra tax which you have to eliminate and this tax ka credit is given by the government currently so net effect is that tax is getting added only on value addition hence the statement gst is a value added tax this came in cds 2017 cds 2 2017 which of the following are true gst is a value added tax people blindly marked wrong because gst to vat nahi hai vat is gone subsumed under gst but they are talking about the nature of the tax and not the name of the tax upsc asked only concepts in economics at least history mein to kya hai concept hai my favorite history gst is a value added tax it taxes only value additions to the economy and that should be the way it is we were very late to implement gst gst countries have implemented a lot now theek hai what is input tax credit what is input tax credit tax that we pay on inputs on our inputs uska jo credit milta hai when we are paying output tax is called as input tax credit input tax is set off against output tax liability my liability of output tax is 200 but already 120 i have paid so net output tax liability is 80 120 ka input tax credit has been given theek okay? hai very important gst is a value added tax do not if this statement appears again in your exam there is a high possibility cds questions ka some part appears in upsc questions and vice versa in upsc papers mein i have done phd i have read so many upsc prelims papers that i know which paper uh, uh, there was one paper i don't remember cds or C cds 2016 or something very beautiful paper when it comes to economics many questions when i said question papers for classes and test series i used from that paper very nice paper but it was tough uh, not cds level definitely theek hai chal now who will tell me uh you have heard this 
हु विल टेल मी अच्छा यू नो दीज आर मेन इशूज ना दो जी एस टी कम्पनसेशन सेस का इशू दीज आर ऑल मेन स्पेसिफिक इशूज सो आई जस्ट टेल यू इन ब्रीफ क्या क्या होता है सो वेन एवर वेन जी एस टी वॉज बिंग इम्प्लीमेंटेड मैन्युफैक्चर सो जी एस टी इज अ डेस्टिनेशन बेस्ड टैक्स डू यू नो दैट बिकॉज द फाइनल पॉइंट ऑफ टैक्सेशन इज द कंज्यूमर स्टेट सी एक्साइज नहीं है इफ इट वॉज एक्साइज दैन फैक्ट्री में ही टैक्स था द टैक्स वॉज इन द फैक्ट्री सो मैन्युफैक्चर स्टेट वॉज गेटिंग दैट टैक्स But now GST, so if Maharashtra produces and sells it to Karnataka, GST last GST will be levied in Karnataka. Okay, how they are set off and all, forget that. So many manufacturing states, especially Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, these all states, they uh, protested against GST that we will lose out on revenue. So government said that you give me last few years projections that what if GST was not there next few years may based on last few years what would have been your collection. Chalo bata. then they said this would have been my collection average liya gaya and then they said that whatever is your collection whatever is your collection we will assume that your collection will grow at 14% per annum 14 14% per annum have you heard this number 14% per annum if shortfall hai we will give you if you earn more well and good for you theek okay? hai so this rate is called dash revenue neutral rate why it is called as revenue neutral rate because it was assumed that the state's revenue will grow at this percentage revenue neutral rate do you remember that question planning commission is replaced by a question dekha tha waisa type ka question can come rnr is seen in the news or rnr is related to what direct tax indirect tax This was supposed to be for five years from 16 to 22. Five years tak tha. 14 percent we will compensate you. Shortfall hoga we will give you over and above if you get you enjoy. After that, uh, GST council, uh, which article? 279A. Hai na GST council. Monetary policy committee and GST council ka composition just by heart the composition. Questions come very fairly, uh, very frequently on that. It is a favorite of CD, CDS, yeah, CISF. Three years per two two questions on MPC and GST council. Ah, revenue neutral rate fourteen percent for five years. We will give you this was guaranteed. From where will this compensation come? Zero percent, twelve percent, eighteen percent, twenty eight percent. These are the GST rates. Do you agree? Okay. Cess was levied on. 28 percent sin goods, demerit goods, expensive goods. Not only sin and demerit goods, ah. मतलब Mercedes car you are not harming your liver by consuming that or driving that. ऐसा नहीं. Luxury goods you can say sin goods, demerit goods, luxury goods which are taxed at the highest bracket. That will be uh, us pe excess more excess will be levied and through this excess this compensation would be given to the states. Now this is further extended to. More five years, and ah uh, every two months the government or the central government, ah uh, five is also there. Sorry, every two months the government will ah uh, pay this shortfall to the states, but that doesn't happen. So states complain. So there is a lot of politics also involved there. Ah uh, no, Bhargavi, it is not. Uh, it is no customer is not paying more bhargavi actually customer is paying less uh, you can contact me personally i will explain in detail uh, how it works but like i told na ki net credit is only passed on to the uh, customer suraj can you just elaborate on your point five percent can you please uh, input and output tax uh prancho it is reduced and then the burden is passed on ayush i'll explain so whatever tax we pay on our so chalo let's say we are making pizza we are starting our own pizza company what ingredients will require will require main ingredient is cheese and sauce and all now when we buy that cheese and sauce us pe gst hoga on that gst and ultimately from whom we are purchasing he will recover it from us bill pe to In our bill only, he will add GST and give. 
so that that becomes my input tax that I have paid a uh, input tax that I have paid because cheese and sauce is my input. Now when we make pizza, we add our own profit, add our own ingredients, packing and all fancy. करके we sell it for seven hundred rupees. Now on that seven hundred rupees again there is a sale that is happening. Incidence is on me. Burden I'll shift to my customer, but incidence is on me. I will add GST on that seven hundred in my bill. That GST becomes my output tax liability. Input tax I have already paid. Output tax liability I am yet to pay. I am yet to collect from the customer. But I know that I will be getting a credit, uh, or I know that I will be getting an input tax credit from that. So the tax paid on inputs is called as input tax, and the credit which I am getting setting off against output tax is called as uh, this input tax credit. ठीक है so these are the gst slabs is pe cess laga ke and who who takes all these decisions gst council okay gst council which has representation of central government state government two third state hai na two third state one third center half is quorum three fourth is voting theek hai rakta theek hai Uh, paras it is actually calculated on market price and factor cost both what we see is market price is final final uh, final value i would say what is tax bo and c the rate of increase or decrease or rate of change in tax commensurate with gdp are exports liable to gst Exports are not liable. Oh, India के बाहर है. Export पे sometimes to discourage exports we levy export tax sometimes. So if we face a shortage in India, so we levy some export tax. But otherwise, why will exports be liable to GST? Because GST is good sale of goods and services in India. ठीक है. Similarly, imports is not liable for GST, but customs because they are coming from outside India. They are not produced in India. Uh, excise is then excise is now not there na excise is merged with gst central excise is not there nahi nahi it is not liable to gst at all kyunki gst is a consumption tax jahan consume ho raha hai wahan tax lage where is the goods being consumed outside india so point of taxation is outside india and outside india you cannot do anything so 0% matlab no tax now something i don't think you will find this in books i don't know because many latest books nahi padhe but something that you you need to know 0% tax rate zero rated supply theek hai and exempt they are not applicable isko nil rate bhi bolte hain these three are not same huh? these three are different nil rated means for those goods on which tax rate is 0% right but they are under gst regime but tax rate is 0% jagri pe hai i think jagri one example i can think of newspaper bhi hai exempt they are not under gst at all so these two might be very confusing but these two are separate now what is this zero rated supply does anyone know what is zero rated supply do you know the concept of scz what is special economic zone for economic terms it is foreign territory do you know that for all economic terms it is foreign territory foreign land if you are supplying goods to scz okay if you are selling goods but in scz प्रोड्यूस कहीं भी करो बट अल्टीमेट कंजम्पन इज इन एसीजेड दैट बिकम्स अ जीरो रेटेड सप्लाई व्हाई बिकॉज एसीजेड फॉरेन टेरिटरी नॉट द प्रॉब्लम व्हिच आई टोल्ड यू इनिशियली कि इनपुट टैक्स तो भर भर के है बट आउटपुट लायबिलिटी इज नॉट देयर दैट हैपेंस हियर दिस इज वन एग्जांपल ऑफ दैट सी बेयर इन माइंड दैट व्हेनेवर यू आर पेइंग इनपुट टैक्स यू आर एक्चुअली पेइंग कैश ठीक है whenever you are paying output tax you are taking from the customer setting it off against your input tax and then actually paying cash right 
if there is no output tax liability you are already you are paying tax on inputs and that gets accumulated so that is your working capital being stuck with the government so this is an issue which is faced ye interview mains mein kaam aa sakta hai baki to i don't think so prelims mein dela they cannot ask this how will they yes very good question pratibha is asking a very good question sir what if the producer or seller i would say or seller does not pass the reduced tax to consumer and instead increases profit by increasing his cost in the bill that's a very nice question like we saw in banks yesterday in mclr cost is reduced but he did not reduce the loan rate do you remember mclr ka what if tomorrow this gst is reduced or input tax is not passed to the consumer what will happen then so first is that gst audit is done regularly if gst audit may there are some observations then gst number registration number is also liable for cancellation so what is secondly there is an authority which is formed called as national anti profiteering authority naa or napa national anti profiteering authority hai which will exclusively deal with issues like these ki if lower rate benefit input tax credit benefit is not passed on to the consumers then they have very strict penalties including license registration cancellation and etc so this national anti profiteering authority is formed for that purpose no nah, i don't think so it was there for two years then they mandated to ha extend karne ke liye but now i don't know the final status kya hai nahi hua abhi tak i don't think so it is extended what ha but that they can do na i think ha see product pricing is in your hands वो वो एक ग्रे एरिया है कि आप यू कैन से कि मेरा महंगा हो गया आई एम प्रोड्यूसिंग हाई क्वालिटी बीन्स वो एक अलग चीज है दैट इज अ डिफरेंट थिंग बट एटलीस्ट क्या बोलते हैं डायरेक्टली यू कैन नॉट स्कैम पीपल बाय सेइंग कि यू कैन नॉट गिव एन 18 परसेंट जीएसटी का रिसीट वेर एज द रेट इज ट्वेल्व और रेट इज लोअर वैसा नहीं कर सकते हो बट हाँ ये तो होते रहता है कि प्राइस बढ़ा देते but this authority looks into that if they find ki there is a prima facie case that this has happened just because of gst and not because of other factors there can be true reasons also ki prices badh gaye doodh mehanga ho gaya aur fuel crisis has uh, increased transport cost so that is okay hum kam hi de rahe hain नहीं तो वही प्रॉब्लम ये है कि इन आर एग्जांपल वी ओनली टुक वन टैक्स व्हेन देयर वाज एक्साइज प्लस व्हेन देयर वाज वैट एंड अदर हाँ हाँ मैं वही बोल रहा हूँ आई विल सेंड यू द सम उसमें डिटेल में एक एक स्टेप वाइज मैंने लिखा है वो मैं आई विल सेंड इट टू यू है अभी भी है मेरे पास वो बट अभी मेरे पास टाइम नहीं है तो मेरे को जाना है वापस आई विल सेंड दैट अक्रॉस वो एक बार देख लेना इट हैज बोथ कंपेरिजन अर्लियर रेजिम न्यू रेजिम एंड हाउ वी सेव अ लॉट ऑफ मनी विद दैट बेसिकली यू अज्यूम की देर इज नो इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट तो हम क्या करेंगे तो टैक्स पे टैक्स लगता जाएगा एंड ये तो एक स्टेज है ऐसा ना सेवन स्टेजेस होते सो दैट एक्यूमुलेशन गोज ऑन इंक्रीजिंग बाय द टाइम द प्रोडक्ट रीच इज यू ये तो हम एक स्टेज दो स्टेज लेके वी जस्ट ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट ठीक है I hope you know e-way bill. What is e-way bill? Have you heard? Who truck walo ko? They have to for transporting more than fifty thousand worth of goods. They have to uh, take an e-way bill. Why e-way bill? Because earlier trucks were stopped at every check post, and there was a a chance of uh, corruption also. Ki the inspectors would have told ki nahi you cannot pass the truck away. Give us some extra money, and then we'll clear and all. To clear that, pehle hi register kar do. If it is checked once at a check point, you can just show that receipt. and you can move ahead this also saves a lot of logistics cost this helps in ease of doing business all of that the logic is all of that is the logic for uh, e way bill nil rate 0 15 28 cross empowerment is fine what is not under gst pata hai kya why petroleum products that is a that is a debate which is going on since 2013 14 when we will introduce gst will petrol be there or not 
एल्कोहल फॉर ह्यूमन कंजम्पन वाई ये सब स्टेट्स का मोनोपली है ऑन ऑल दीज प्रोडक्ट सो दे चार्ज स्टेट एक्सरसाइज ऑन दिस दे डोंट वॉन्ट टू गिव अप मैनी स्टेट्स में यू सी दैट लोकल स्टेट प्रोड्यूस लिकर इज कंज्यूम तो एल्कोहल तो वो लोग नहीं छोड़ेंगे एंड पेट्रोल भी नहीं छोड़ेंगे इज इलेक्ट्रिसिटी अंडर जी एस टी वाई You can find this out. Why is electricity not under GST? Because most of the discoms are state-owned. Sub state का ही है reason. ठीक है सी taxation MCQs will take it later. दो ही दो या तीन ही है. Specific to taxation, hardly two or three MCQs are there. I will jump to the next uh, chapter, which is very important. Balance of payments chapter. उसमें भी ना balance of payments में for for the purposes of prelims you need to know three or four things only theek hai what is balance of payment in one line mains question what is balance of payments you have to introduce your answer in one or two lines max what will you write अच्छा so जस्ट वन थिंग एवरी वन सेटिंग एट होम ऑल्सो जस्ट टेल मी इन द कमेंट्स ये तो ठीक है प्रीलिम्स हैव यू प्रैक्टिस राइटिंग एनी आंसर्स अभी तक हैव यू रिटर्न फुल लेंथ पेपर्स जैसे थ्री आर्स एक सब्जेक्ट वन जी एस और जी एस टू थ्री फोर जो भी है ठीक है मजा आ जाए दैट इज अ डिफरेंट वॉट यू से फास्ट एंड फ्यूरियस that happens you know in the exam so one small tip i'll give you from my side is at least for gs3 on gs2 also it is applicable use your introduction as concisely as possible minimum words but introduction may just hit the nail hit the hammer on the nail directly we have an habit of beating around the bush because school college mein wohi karte supplement bharne ke liye so fill up supplement and eight mark answer it minimum two page we have to write that's not required here at least introduction mein you should write exactly what is meant i give this example this is my favorite example have you heard of gram sadak yojana pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana if a question comes on that and if you have to write ki why this scheme exists starting with wahi likhoge na this scheme is for road and all one two lines mein you have to write and uh, and this habit you can develop by reading newspaper or by reading government official documents jo bhi aap so gram sadak yojana is a scheme to provide all weather road connectivity <coughs> to under connected and connected areas hamara introduction itna ho theek hai and that impression that initial impression is very uh, you know even if you get half mark extra in 10 questions five marks make a lot of difference Now, how will you introduce balance of payment? What do you know about balance of payment, sir? Pata hai na? I think basics to you know balance of payments, current account, capital account. Yes, good start. It is a statement of country's financial transactions with rest of the world over a specific period. Okay, use this habit when writing answers. It will help you a lot. It will save a lot of time also. बिकॉज पॉइंट्स में तो एनी वेज वी ट्राई टू कंस्ट्रक्टिवली थिंक एंड राइट कि पॉइंट्स कैसे लिखने बट इंट्रोडक्शन एटलीस्ट शुड बी वेरी स्ट्रक्चर्ड आई थिंक डैम यू हैव रिटर्न डैम आंसर्स मेनी ऑफ इकोनॉमी आंसर्स आई थिंक आर रिटर्न बाई मी जो मॉडल आंसर्स है बट आई डोंट नो विच वन बिकॉज आई रिटर्न ट्वेंटी अब वो डैम योर डैम और प्रीवियस डैम और नेक्स्ट डैम पे वो आई डोंट नो बट If you find very crisp starting na two lines me ya one line me it is written by me that is my style of writing no beating around the bush interview me bhi if you are asked something na straight bolo kya answer hai don't say sir we started with vat and service tax but there were problems aise nahi gst helps to improve the problem of cascading avoiding cascading effect by giving input tax credit simple finish ha so what is balance of payment statement of 
फाइनेंशियल ट्रांजेक्शन विद रेस्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड सो नाउ विद इन इंडिया सब देख लिया वी हैव सीन सो मेनी थिंग्स विद इन इंडिया नाउ रेस्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड में सो एनी थिंग क्रॉसिंग इंडियन बॉर्डर एंड एनी थिंग कमिंग इन एंड गोइंग आउट विल फॉल अंडर बी ओ पी ठीक है एक्सेप्ट इलीगल माइग्रेंट्स वो अलग चीज है सिक्योरिटी ना जी एस टी इंटरनल सिक्योरिटी दैट इज ऑल्सो वेरी फनी टॉपिक मेरा फेवरेट है वो भी स्टेटमेंट ऑफ कंट्रीज फाइनेंशियल ट्रांजेक्शन विद रेस्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इन ए स्पेसिफिक पीरियड सो नथिंग वी मेक अ स्टेटमेंट राइटेड ऑन नेक्स्ट स्लाइड वी मेक अ स्टेटमेंट वी डिवाइड दैट इंटू टू पार्ट वन इज कॉल्ड करंट वन इज कॉल्ड कैपिटल इट इज वेरी सिमिलर टू कैपिटल एंड रेवेन्यू दैट वी सो इन द फिजिकल पॉलिसी वन इज कॉल्ड करंट वन इज कॉल्ड कैपिटल ठीक है Now, where will money come from? Why will money come from? Bahar se one, you sell goods, you sell services, you send money, you send money to your brother, sister, mother, father. ठीक है outside India. You uh, you are a company. Some American has purchased your shares. You have to pay dividend to that company. You are HDFC Bank. Someone from Canada has opened a fixed deposit with you. You have to pay him interest. ठीक है money will flow, money will uh, go and come. ठीक है, सो कैन आई से गुड्स सर्विसेस एंड ट्रांसफर मनी और ट्रांसफर इनकम विच इज इनकम एक्सेट्रा ट्रांसफर पेमेंट्स एक्चुअली ट्रांसफर पेमेंट्स कंफ्यूजिंग वर्ड यू राइट रेमिटेंसेस इजी वर्ड गुड्स सर्विसेज रेमिटेंसेस ठीक है अगेन वॉट वॉज द नेचर ऑफ रेवेन्यू दैट वी लर्न रेवेन्यू रिसीट रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर इट हैपन्स वेरी फ्रीक्वेंटली कंपेरेटिवली ऑफ अ लोअर अमाउंट डज नॉट रिजल्ट इन क्रिएशन ऑफ एनी एसेट और लाइबिलिटी सेम थिंग यूर ऑन यू आर ऑल्सो गुड्स यू ट्रेड गुड्स एवरी डे ठीक है सर्विसेज ऑल्सो यू प्रोवाइड सर्विसेज एवरी डे रेमिटेंसेस रेगुलर डिविडेंट रेगुलर इंटरेस्ट ठीक है कमिंग ऑल्सो दिस इज गोइंग एंड कमिंग बोथ you buy goods you import goods so when you import goods money flows out when you export goods money flows in ye to basic hai theek hai now same thing for capital what was the differentiating factor for capital it results in creation of asset liability it is usually of a higher amount and it does not happen that frequently theek hai isme do word aapko yaad rakhna hai in capital investment and borrowings वन इज इन्वेस्टमेंट सेकेंड इज बोरस ठीक है इनका क्वांटम इज ह्यूज द अमाउंट इज कंपेरेटिवली ह्यूज लेट एस कॉल दिस एज ट्रेड अकाउंट लेट एस कॉल दिस एज इनविजिबल्स अकाउंट वाई इनविजिबल्स बिकॉज यू कैन नॉट सी वॉट इज बींग प्रोवाइडेड ना यहाँ पे गुड्स यू कैन सी यहाँ पे यू कैन नॉट सी सर्विसेस एंड रेमिटेंसेज यू कैन ओनली सी द मनी एंड ये तो कैपिटल है दिस इज कैपिटल अकाउंट सो दिस प्लस दिस मेक करंट अकाउंट दिस प्लस दिस मेक बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट का स्टेटमेंट देर आर ऑल्सो अदर थिंग्स लाइक अकाउंट एडजस्टमेंट्स एंड ऑल बट फगेट दैट इतना समझा दिस इज क्लियर ना वाई इज बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट इंपॉर्टेंट आई टेल यू वी आर इम्पोर्ट डिपेंडेंट ऑन एटलीस्ट अ फ्यू थिंग्स लाइक ऑयल पेट्रोलियम प्रोडक्ट्स एक्सेट्रा वी आर इम्पोर्ट डिपेंडेंट ऑन दैट ठीक है फॉर दैट we need to pay in which currency indian currency or foreign currency foreign currency where will we get foreign currency from when we also provide some goods to the world and get foreign currency it's simple na when you have to spend something you also have to earn so when you have to earn you will have to take care of your balance of payment position now see this if i tell you if i tell you our exports are more than imports <laughs> of goods our exports are more than imports Do you think we are in a favorable position or non-favorable position? Favorable position. Can I say we are in surplus or deficit? Because when we export more, more dollars will come, and less dollars will go. So now, now we are earning more, spending less. Some portion we can keep it side me also. Same goes for services and remittances. If we are providing more services, software services, export. Okay, India is one of the best software service uh, providers of the world. Okay. so we earn a lot of foreign exchange due to this 
एंड रेमिटेंसेस तो इज अ वेरी स्मॉल अमाउंट सो सो यहाँ पे वी नॉर्मली रन अ डेफिसिट नॉर्मली बट बॉर्डर होता है यहाँ पे वी ऑलवेज रन अ सरप्लस विच रिजल्ट इन करंट अकाउंट बींग इन अ डेफिसिट और सरप्लस बीच में दर बीच में इट वॉज इन सरप्लस राइट यूपीएससी वेन यूपीएससी आज द क्वेश्चन पीपल वर कंफ्यूज की सरप्लस लिखो या डेफिसिट बिकॉज इट वॉज ओनली फॉर दिस हैपन्स ऑन अ मंथली बेसिस चेंजेस ठीक है नाउ कमिंग टू कैपिटल अकाउंट कैपिटल अकाउंट इज आर फोकस यूर इन बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट बाकी ये तो इट्स वेरी सिंपल नाउ टेल मी इफ वी आर रनिंग अ डेफिसिट इफ वी आर रनिंग अ डेफिसिट विल वी नीड टू पे मोर डॉलर और विल गेट मोर डॉलर पे मोर डॉलर बिकॉज कहाँ से आएगा वो डॉलर विल जम्प टू सरप्लस यूर विल डेप यूर लेट एस से दिस इज ऑल्सो इन डेफिसिट और ओवरऑल दिस इज ऑल्सो इन डेफिसिट डॉलर और कहाँ से लाए कैपिटल अकाउंट वी हैव डॉलर हेयर यहाँ से लेट लेटेस्ट से दिस इज ऑल्सो नॉट सफिशियंट वॉट विल हैपन वी विल हैव टू बाय डॉलर खुद के पास है नहीं वी डोंट हैव आर ओन डॉलर वील हैव टू बाय डॉलर वेर वील गो वील गो टू आर लोकल मार्केट कॉल्ड एज फॉरन एक्सचेंज मार्केट वहाँ पे वील गो देर आर लॉट ऑफ सेलर्स हु आर सेलिंग ऑल करेंसीज यू विल गो एंड आर बी आई आर बी आई विल गो एंड आर बी आई विल आई एम लुकिंग टू बाय डॉलर ठीक है वॉट डू यू हैव इन रिटर्न What will you pay rupees? ठीक है Now basic demand supply. You are demanding dollars. You are supplying rupees. What will happen to the value of rupees and dollar? Value of dollar will go up because you are demanding, and there are hundred other central banks like you who are demanding. And value of rupee will go down because in the market you are supplying rupees. So market may supply of rupees goes up, demand of dollars goes uh, supply of rupees goes up, demand of dollars goes up. So when supply goes up, its price come down, and when demand goes up, its price goes up. So today, if one dollar is seventy-five rupees, what will happen tomorrow? Same dollar will become seventy-eight. No, value come over. See, as value of dollar is increasing, a value of rupee is not increasing here. Okay. So when you go from year to year, year to year, and year to buying dollars, that is when panic button you have to press. Because that is when rupee का value lose rupee loses its value. इतना समझा, ठीक है? So tell me where it will fall here. Uh, Indians investing in shares of American company. Current account or capital account? Capital account. Uh, software export services. Earning dividend, current account remittances में transfers income etc. छोटा मोटा transactions they all come. ठीक है did you understand this logic on why rupee loses its value because we have we are short of foreign exchange. अच्छा now do you think that we go to buy rupees sorry we go to buy dollars in the market despite having dollars with us? सोचो we go to buy dollars despite having dollars with us yes because we need to maintain reserves why because we have to face shocks hai na ekdam hi let's say tomorrow nobody is willing to supply you dollars at a considerable like normal price you will use your reserves so now we ulta whenever rbi sees that this has become 80 and rbi wants to bring it back to 78 then rbi will what will rbi do RBI will go to the market. RBI will flood, flood means increase the supply of dollar, and RBI will buy rupees. ठीक है तो rupees का demand goes up, rupees का value goes up, and dollars value goes up. This is how foreign exchange market works. This is how balance of payment uh, works. So now there are four terms that you all know, but we will see. What is the difference? What is depreciation? Reduction in the value of your currency. What is devaluation? Reduction in the value of currency. What is appreciation? Increase in the value of currency. 
and this is also increase in the value of your currency. What is the difference but? This is solely because of market forces and this is done by the governments deliberately. Why? There are two people here. One is an importer, one is an exporter. Okay? Importer ke angle se thinking is very easy. Ki if the value of a dollar goes up or which means the value of rupee goes down, things will become cheap or costly. Things will become costlier. So, it is bad for him. So, he would want rupee to remain as uh, normal as possible. He would want rupee to retain as high value as possible. But think from an exporter's angle now. He is exporting in US or he is exporting in the world market. In the world market, there are many sellers from many countries who are selling their goods. Same goods, huh? same quality of rice, everyone is selling. Okay? If the value of rupee goes down, if rupee becomes weak, his product will become cheap or expensive in the market. His product will become cheap. Is it good or bad for him? Good. good. Cheap hoga, so everyone will buy his product. So it is so exporter would want depreciation. Importer would want appreciation of rupee. Samaj mein hai? And we we always say na we need to reduce imports and boost exports. So it is our opposite aim that we have here. So hence many governments what they do is Jan Bujke they devalue their own currency. When they are export dependent, they devalue their own currency. Example, simple both sare countries ne kiya, but China is the only one which is relevant for us. Right? When this is done solely by market forces, it is called as depreciation or appreciation. And when it is done by government deliberately, it is called as devaluation or revaluation. This goes against the market, pre-market concept. You are artificially setting your own uh, currency and all. One more thing. You donated 50,000 rupees to a person, to a hospital in Australia. Where Remittances, charities, any payment, transfer payment will go there. Do you, do you know about the 1991 crisis? Suna hai, padha hai, Story hai, prelims mein to, I don't think, I don't think it is relevant anywhere now. Just good to know. There are various types of exchange rates. A fixed exchange rate is one which is set by the government. Fixed exchange rate. If we say one dollar is ten rupee, fixed exchange rate. We are saying that. Okay. This is just concept. Uh, just I see. Floating exchange rate means what? It varies. It varies by market and all. Half fixed, half floating ko bolte, dirty float. Half fixed, half floating means what? If rupee goes from 75 to 76 to 77 to 78, RBI will not intervene. If rupee goes to 85, RBI will intervene. Matlab artificially RBI is trying to push, na? market mein ja ke it will sell dollars. Correct? Are you getting it? So that is called a dirty float. Almost all countries follow dirty float. Because they have to, their monetary policy objective is to achieve price stability and growth. Right, so uske liye dirty float hi hota hai. free float very rarely. I mean, USA does not require free float because uska to, uh, it is a global currency, but others we have dirty float only. Why did Sri Lanka face so many problems? Abhi? Kya main reason kya hai? Haan, but debt, why, and Q ho raha hai? That is one reason, tourism, COVID. Sri Lanka got the one of the highest tourists in Asia. So, that is one reason. Second, push towards organic farming is, we took it 15 years, Sikkim me karne ke liye. And they were like two years me organic farming kar do. It is like us, na? Sir, ek mein pura revise ho jayega prelims. Nii hota hai. But, nahi, ho jayega, history nahi hoga. History, culture, wohi. Culture to six months mein bhi nahi hota. 
yes yes shivam theek hai now the most important heart of uh, this this chapter is something called as convertibility you need to understand this concept and bop is done acha if you think that itna hi hai har ek chapter mein that we are covering then you are wrong there is lot to study but that is purely theoretical textual factual there you don't need external aid for someone to teach you you just have to read and aaya to aaya nahi aaya to nahi aaya it it becomes culture then some part of economy becomes culture that worker wala question working uh, worker productivity wala question so some logic you can but again it is very difficult in those two hours to apply logic hundreds of logic come ye bhi ho sakta hai ye bhi ho sakta hai like i told na that uh, that question uh, frbm wala question two very specific options were given 110 1 2 110 and then we say ki specific diya hai to isme se hoga or we say ki nahi but first wala is too general to yahi hoga and upsc gives two general answers also sometimes what is convertibility who will tell better frame karo you are right but try to frame it better not exactly that is one of the application part of convertibility i am asking the concept part how easily is your currency convertible to other currency how easily convertible to another currency so when you say ki jo investments aaye wapas le jayenge so when they come in they get converted to rupees when they go out they get converted to dollar back how easy is that that is an application of convertibility convertibility is nothing but ease of conversion to another currency it is same like liquidity liquidity is ease of conversion to cash convertibility is ease of conversion to another currency theek hai we go back ha you are importing 10000 liters of oil which currency will you repay or which currency will you pay dollars see for simplicity dollars and rupees rakhte there are other currencies also dollars you will repay you are importer and chalo now imagine yourself as an importer where will you get dollars from you have to import import order de diya usne bola pay kar do i will send where will you get dollars from you individually where will you get dollars from which market kaun sa forex kahan hai what is the address of this forex market banks you will go to banks correct you will go to banks banks will give you dollar bank will quote you ha sir today 1 dollar is itna rupees hai na banks will give you dollars where will bank get those dollars from abhi bolo markets theek hai markets or rbi help or whatever now if banks tell you we will imagine if banks tell you we will give you up to 500 dollars only uske upar we will not give you government imposes a regulation ki 500 dollars ke upar you cannot transact at all is it a problem for you your rupee is not convertible to dollar after a point of time correct theek hai whenever that happens for transaction whenever we talk about tra transactions with respect to current account we call it as current account convertibility which means how freely is your currency convertible to another currency while doing current account transactions if you want to send 2000 dollars to your brother in usa can you do that or can you not do that that is a question if there are restrictions which means that con current account convertibility is not full it is partial theek okay? hai after 1991 lpg reforms 1993 mein we made trade account fully convertible what is the meaning of this statement trade account was fully convertible which means no restrictions when it comes to forex dealing when it comes to import and export of goods 1994 when we adopted article 8 of imf full current account was made convertible and when i am saying current uh, convertible fully and freely convertible can i that does not mean ki there are no reasonable restrictions there are reasonable restrictions but substance wise it is fully convertible like i'll tell you 250000 dollars se zyada you cannot make transactions in a year 
unless you have some special license to trade or something like that but you individually without any license and all you cannot make transactions in foreign exchange more than 250000 dollars in a year bahut hota 250000 dollars so this is a restriction on your current account means you cannot remit more than 250000 dollars but that does not mean ki current account is not fully convertible because that's a big amount a reasonable restriction this is to avoid large flow of uh, foreign exchange now coming to so do you think current account convertibility is required it's daily functioning you need you don't want your importers exporters to face problems you don't want uh, service providers and remittance income generating activities to face a problem now coming to capital account what is capital account investment huge investment coming in huge borrowings coming in and going out also let's say today tesla announces ki we will uh, we will invest uh, 50 million dollars in india we are happy yes we are happy employment generation factory creation growth ye wo sab kuch ki we are getting dollars uh, bear in mind dollars are inflowing hai na hamare liye acha hai because we have reserves plus we know ki tomorrow we are going to run a deficit so we will require dollars because we are import dependent ha two days after tesla announces ki we are taking back the money pura fiscal cliff na have you heard the song chhan se jo toote koi sapna that happens here theek hai is it good or bad bad incoming is good or bad good outgoing is good or bad bad so we have restrictions on capital account convertibility capital account of india is not fully convertible in 2014 it was proposed i mean earlier also but in, in 2014 it was proposed by rbi governor to move towards capital account convertibility now pros and cons of capital account convertibility you can imagine if you go to two banks one bank says sir jab bhi paisa nikalna hai nikal lo we will give you 5% interest one bank says sir we will give you 5% but ek saal rakhna where will you go first bank because you know ki you can remove the risk flexibility similarly india is a country if india is saying sir we will you come invest whenever you want to leave you can leave compared to one country which says ki you come but you cannot leave there are restrictions so people will try to come to the first country hence capital account convertibility is desirable it is good ulta karo to bad hoga when you can leave and if you leave to problem hence government has to balance on a tight rope between capital account full convertibility and partial convertibility we have eased relaxations when it comes to capital account convertibility uh, we have eased the restrictions when it comes to capital account convertibility now yahan pe kya aata hai yahan pe you will hear words borrowings so i hope it is very simple you will hear words like foreign direct investment foreign portfolio investment foreign institutional investment do you know the difference between them see ye to hata hi do aap whenever investors in foreign are institutional in nature and not individual in nature it is foreign institutional investment the key difference is between these two who can tell me the difference between these two ha huh, very good ha huh. theek hai everyone is right i will just explain for those of you who don't know foreign direct investment foreign portfolio investment the concept i will explain first foreign direct investment is someone who wants to marry you foreign portfolio investment is someone who has a crush on you and sirf ek fling hai theek hai this is the simple difference real investment is in foreign direct investment so someone like tesla he wants to come here he wants to manufacture cars he wants to earn profit in india and he, and then he will take his own profit bahar that is foreign direct investment foreign in, portfolio investment is someone who is investing in portfolio and this is investing in direct what is a portfolio portfolio means a collection of shares and securities and other bonds etc portfolio photo ka bhi hota hai but this is not that theek hai so now if tesla invests in let's say मारुति तो नहीं बोलूंगा कुछ अच्छा ब्रांड बोला टाटा इफ टेस्ला इन्वेस्ट इन टाटा मारुति इज ऑल्सो वेरी गुड वैसे आई लाइक इफ टेस्ला इन्वेस्ट इन टाटा सो इज इट अ डायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट और अ पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टमेंट इफ टेस्ला बाय शेयर्स ऑफ टाटा सिंपल लॉजिकली इट इज लॉजिकली इट इज पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टमेंट बिकॉज ही इज नॉट ओपनिंग इज ओन शॉप देयर लॉजिकली सो ये डिफ्रेंशिएशन बिकम वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर 
सी बिकॉज टुमोरो इफ ही इफ ही बाईस फिफ्टी वन परसेंट तो क्या हो गया है ना सो टू डिफ्रेंशिएट दिस लॉज वर अमेंडेड एंड लिमिट्स वर ब्रॉट इन एनी इन्वेस्टमेंट मोर देन टेन परसेंट इज कंसिडर्ड एज एफ डी एम टेन परसेंट वॉज द क्राइट अर्लियर वेरी अर्लियर इट वॉज ट्वेंटी फिर इट वॉज ब्रॉट डाउन टू टेन एनी इन्वेस्टमेंट दिस यू शुड रिमेंबर मोर देन टेन परसेंट विल रिजल्ट इन एफ डी आई इट मीन्स दैट यू आर सब्सटैंशियली इन्वेस्टेड इन दैट मैरिज ठीक है यू आर नॉट ओपनिंग योर ओन शॉप एंड ऑल बट टेन परसेंट से ज्यादा है विच मीन्स यू आर सब्सटैंशियली इन्वेस्टेड इन दैट मैरिज टूमोरो इफ इट बिकम फाइव परसेंट तो क्या टूमोरो इफ इट बिकम्स फाइव परसेंट देन वॉट ही सोल्ड द शेयर कम कर दिया देन एफ डी आई एक बार थप्पा लग गया डन वॉट एवर यू वॉन्ट टू डू डू वंस एन एफ डी आई ऑलवेज एन एफ डी आई आर बी आई वेबसाइट एफ ए क्यूज में लिखा है वंस एन एफ डी आई ऑलवेज एन एफ डी आई ऑलवेज रिमेंबर दिस वेरी नाइस एम सी क्यू ना All these restrictions, na, on capital account, current account, they are regulated under Foreign Exchange Management Act, 1999. Foreign Exchange Management Act, FEMA. Foreign Exchange Management Act, 1999. Before this, there was one more act called as Foreign Exchange Regulation Act, FERA. But the regulation word was replaced with management because after 1991, free market regulation was reduced. Now we manage. We don't regulate. That was the intention of the government. Okay. A factual MCQ can come. I told you in current account you cannot remit or you cannot transact more than two lakh fifty thousand in a year. So that restriction or that uh, particular. Uh, provision it is called as liberalized remittance scheme this is very important a small mcq can come liberalized remittance scheme why it is called remittance because if you are in the business of import export you will anyways get a license so you don't have to fall in this bracket this is just for people like us Who, who want to remit money? Liberalized remittance scheme, two lakh fifty thousand dollars is the current limit. It might be revised. There were talks of revising it to five. Abhi tak hua nahi hai. So currently we have a fully convertible trade account. Yes or no? We have a fully convertible current account. Yes or no? We have a fully convertible capital account. Yes or no? No. What are the restrictions? क्या restriction है इसमें? In capital account. Example, I am asking example of restrictions. One is that you cannot invest more than X Y Z percentage in certain sectors. वो एक restriction हो गया. Second restriction is that if you if you want to go back, तो आपको मतलब there are restrictions in laws. If you want to go back, तो आपको minimum इतना इतना ये ये condition satisfy करनी पड़ेगी. Which means it is not free. it is not uh, what we say it is not easy and at the same time itna complicated it is so complicated ki due to lack of ease of exit companies are not coming in so rather than ease of doing business we should also focus on ease of exiting the business so ease of doing business ka one of the indicator was na ki uh, solving cross border insolvency ho gaya fir winding up wo sab so us sab mein bahut time hai we want to reduce the time to incorporate a company also and to dissolve a company also that is the objective here once an fdi always an fdi ye to maine bata diya fdi 10% ah now fdi can come through two routes you know this automatic route and approval route automatic route means you just submit the documents whatever is required thoda preliminary inquiry ya kuch hoga if required hoga otherwise you can start your business you can get your license directly there are some some sectors for example defense and all where approval route is there where you will have to apply to the government government will review then approve your application and then only you can start your own business theek okay? hai who who in government approves this or kon karta hai dpiit uska ek cell hai foreign investment facilitation board theek okay? hai 
फॉरेन इन्वेस्टमेंट फैसिलिटेशन पोर्टल सॉरी नॉट पोर्टल विच मिनिस्ट्री डीपीआईटी मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्री फुल कन्वर्टेबिलिटी शुड बी देयर और नॉट देयर यू शुड थिंक ऑन दोज लाइन्स फॉर मेन्स वट आर द बेनिफिट ऑफ फुल कन्वर्टेबिलिटी नेगेटिव इफेक्ट ऑफ फुल कन्वर्टेबिलिटी हैव यू हर्ड ऑफ डच डिजीज बुक में है सो वॉट हैपन्स इन नैदरलैंड वॉट हैपन इन नैदरलैंड इज दे वर वेरी ओपन टू एफ डी आई एंड दे वर वेरी क्लोज टू आउट फ्लो ना इमेजिन ओपन तो है बट दे वर वेरी क्लोज टू आउट फ्लो विच मीन्स कन्वर्टेबल नहीं था तो नैदरलैंड्स में नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज पर डिस्कवर्ड ऑयल कंपनीज केम इन टूरिज्म बूम्ड लॉट ऑफ फॉरन एक्सचेंज केम इन लॉट एंड लॉट ऑफ फॉरन एक्सचेंज केम इन बिकॉज ऑफ दैट लॉट ऑफ कंपनीज सेट अप देयर शॉप इन नैदरलैंड्स बिकॉज ऑफ दैट डोमेस्टिक इंडस्ट्रीज कुड नॉट कम्पीट एवरी थिंग वॉज गोइंग गुड डोमेस्टिक इंडस्ट्रीज कुड नॉट कम्पीट दे स्टार्टेड टू लूज देयर बिजनेस एंड वंस समथिंग हैपेंड एंड वंस दे नैदरलैंड लॉस्ट इट सीन everyone pulled away their money after restrictions fulfilling those restrictions everyone pulled away their money what remained was just ruins of domestic industry so hence aana is good jana sometimes is also good and uh, too much of restriction will result in domestic industry being uh, that results in too much dependence on foreign trade foreign direct investment and foreign companies so that is also bad you come you go but we want to uh, ma- help make indian companies the best at what they do that should be the ideal objective read about it but not relevant again and ye wikipedia and us pe investopedia pe padhna not in your books because in our books very selective is uh, given dutch dutch there was one committee you need to remember that tarapur committee one and tarapur committee two you have to remember the names these are some highlight कमिटीज तो, तो बहुत होते तारापुर कमिटी वन तारापुर कमिटी टू दे वर सेटअप टू एग्जामिन द फिजिबिलिटी ऑफ फुल कैपिटल अकाउंट कन्वर्टेबिलिटी ऐसा नहीं कि पहले बात नहीं हुई हैव यू सीन तनु वेड्स मनु रिटर्न उसमें बोलते हैं ना ये बातें पहले भी हुई है वन एंड टू तारापुर कमिटी वन एंड टू ये बातें पहले भी हुई है 1997 में तारापुर कमिटी गेव इट्स रेकमेंडेशन फॉर थ्री रेकमेंडेशन वन इज फॉर फुल कैपिटल अकाउंट कन्वर्टेबिलिटी यू शुड रिड्यूस योर फिजिकल डेफिसिट ये तो सब में कमिटी में है ना सेकेंड इन्फ्लेशन शुड बी इन द रेंज ऑफ थ्री टू फाइव परसेंट तभी उन्होंने बता दिया था इन्फ्लेशन शुड बी इन द रेंज ऑफ थ्री टू फाइव परसेंट and reduce npas then what happened in 1997 east asian financial crisis happened read about that also east asian financial crisis good there you will read a word something called as a contagion effect c o n t a g i o n we we don't have time we barely have 40 minutes but anyways it's not relevant for prelims East Asian financial crisis happened, and that was a result of capital account convertibility. So we thought, "Ki nahi, we should not touch this." Then Tarapur Committee two came in two thousand seven, two thousand six, and what happened in two thousand eight? Financial crisis. Luck kharaab hai. Two thousand six me the committee came. They said that very very unique. reduce fiscal deficit second capital account convertibility phased karna don't go for full instantly do it in a phased manner phased capital account convertibility third is very 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 important recommendation establish a monetary policy committee ye ye baatein pehle bhi hui hai establish a monetary policy committee fourth is ease your restrictions on external commercial borrowings ease ecb 
again it's a part of this phased capital account convertibility only is acb and fifth is ban promissory notes ban promissory notes sorry participatory notes ban participatory notes not promissory do you know what is participatory note yes or no do you know ban participatory notes participatory notes kya hota hai this is india india company hai theek hai india ki ek company hai this is another country let's say usa usa has investors usa has investors there is one company or one uh, institutional investor which will buy shares of indian company and they will issue promissory notes to usa investors un shares ke against they will is use uh, issue promissory notes the problem in, is with this is only one word anonymity indian company or indian government does not know who these investors are if they know no problem if they know there is no no issue in fact we are going to see in adr gdr ki this is the same concept that works in adr gdr also but that is completely legal and legal or that is completely transparent this anonymity these notes are called as participatory notes you participate with us in the profits made by the indian company so the problem is many people try to channel their black money through these notes because we don't know na who has bought kon hai who is the owner then sebi came up with lot of regulations ki first identify these if they are transferring from one person to another then also we need to know so at that time tarapur committee in 2006 had said that ban promissory notes because this results in an ill informed uh, decision making when it comes to investment and borrowing we don't know ki kon hai kya hai kaise hai theek hai this is done convertibility is done debt spread is okay two concepts that you need to know uh, so we trade with how many countries more than 80 100 countries we must be trading do we trade in equal amounts with everyone no weight alag hai volume alag hai do we trade in same currency with everyone no currencies are also different some we trade in in inr also theek hai very good so what we do is we take a weight weighted average of these exchange rates so if we are trading let's say 40% of our trade with usa in dollar so dollar exchange rate into multiplied by the quantity 40% as we do for all countries and we come and we arrive at one one single exchange rate and we arrive at a composite exchange rate solely for decision making and economic purposes and that rate is called as an effective exchange rate that rate is called wo basket ka weighted average lete it is just statistic it is called as an effective exchange rate if if that exchange rate is inflation if that exchange rate includes the inflation then it is called as a nominal exchange rate if it does not then it is called as a real exchange rate real and nominal so these two are called as nominal effective exchange rate and real effective exchange rate bas end of story nominal effective exchange rate real effective exchange rate what we do is 1 dollar 75 rupees as a lot of currencies are there with different countries that we trade sabka volume is different with usa we trade 30% china ke sath 35% etc so what we do is multiplied by the quantity or multiplied by the quantum we determine a weighted average exchange rate in crude terms it is a weighted average exchange rate and we come to know ki rupee ka kitna strength hai compared to all those currencies with respect to their weights 
ठीक है सो देर माइट बी की वन रुपी इज रुपी इज स्ट्रॉगर देन सम करेंसी बट विद दैट कंट्री वी ट्रेड हार्डली वन परसेंट सो दैट डजेंट मेक अ डिफरेंस इन द वर्ल्ड वैसा सो वी कैलकुलेट वन इफेक्टिव एक्सचेंज रेट जस्ट फॉर आर डिसीजन मेकिंग आर पॉलिसी मेकिंग पर्पजेज एंड इफ दैट इज इन्फ्लेशन एडजस्टेड देन इट इज रियल इफ नॉट देन इट इज नॉमिनल इफेक्टिव एक्सचेंज रेट ठीक है हु विल टेल मी द डिफरेंस बिटवीन अकोमोडेटिंग ट्रांजेक्शन एंड ऑटोनॉमस ट्रांजेक्शन बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट टर्म्स है ये ऑटोनॉमस अकोमोडेटिंग ऑटोनॉमस ट्रांजेक्शन अकोमोडेटिंग ट्रांजेक्शन आई थिंक ये बुक्स में है नहीं आई डोंट नो नहीं है ना इसीलिए नहीं पता ऑटोनॉमस ट्रांजेक्शन एंड अकोमोडेटिंग ट्रांजेक्शन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एक वन लाइनर भी अगर आ जाता है यू विल गेट बोनस मार्क्स अकोमोडेटिंग ट्रांजेक्शन एंड ऑटोनॉमस ट्रांजेक्शन वॉट एवर हैपन्स ड्यू टू मार्केट फोर्सेज इन द बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट ऑटोमेटिकली इनफ्लो आउटफ्लो सरप्लस डेफिसिट वॉट एवर इज हैपनिंग ड्यू टू मार्केट फोर्सेज दोज आर कॉल्ड एज ऑटोनॉमस ट्रांजेक्शन नेम इज ऑटोनॉमस ऑटोमेटिकली वॉट एवर हैपन्स बिकॉज ऑफ आर बी आई इंटरवेंशन टू करेक्ट बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट इज कॉल्ड अकोमोडेटिंग ट्रांजेक्शन सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल यूर वी हैव अ लॉट ऑफ डेफिसिट बहुत सारा डेफिसिट है आर बी आई विल इंटरवीन टू रिड्यूस दिस डेफिसिट एंड ऑल्सो दोज ट्रांजेक्शन आर सेट टू अकोमोडेट दिस डेफिसिट विल बी कॉल्ड एज अकोमोडेटिंग ट्रांजेक्शन दीज आर ऑटोनॉमस दीज हैपन डे टू डे मार्केट फोर्सेज बट दिस इज डेलीबरेट एक्शन बाय द सेंट्रल बैंक टू अकोमोडेट द डेफिसिट्स और डिफरेंसेस इन बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट दैट विल बी कॉल्ड एज अकोमोडेटिंग ट्रांजेक्शन तो अगेन आएगा तो एक वन लाइनर इट विल कम वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन अकोमोडेटिंग टू स्टेटमेंट विल कम विच ऑफ देम आर करेक्ट वन ओनली टू ओनली बोथ नीदर सो ऑटोनॉमस एज द नेम सजेस्ट ऑटोनॉमस है ऑटोमेटिक है अकोमोडेटिंग इज जान बुझ के अकोमोडेट वी आर ट्राइंग टू अकोमोडेट दैट इज कॉल्ड एज अकोमोडेटिंग ट्रांजेक्शन सिंपल डू यू नोट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ट्विन डेफिसिट ट्विन डेफिसिट ट्विन डेफिसिट इज नथिंग बट करंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट resulting in fiscal deficit resulting in current account deficit resulting in fiscal deficit ye pura circle hai current account deficit fiscal deficit it is called as it don't confuse it with twin balance sheet problem that is a completely different concept this is twin deficit देखो हाउ इट वर्क करंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट है हमारे पास वी नो दैट वन करंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट है इफ यू डोंट हैव मनी फॉरन एक्सचेंज रिजल्ट विल गो डाउन बराबर बिकॉज वी ये डेफिसिट है मतलब सी वी फिजिकल डेफिसिट में तो वी बोरो फ्रॉम यूर बट यहाँ पे तो पेमेंट करना है वी हैव टू पे इन डॉलर सो वी हैव टू डू समथिंग अबाउट इट ठीक है फॉरन एक्सचेंज लेट से फॉरन एक्सचेंज रिजर्व आर ऑल्सो नॉट इनफ वॉट विल हैपन देन रुपी वैल्यू विल गो डाउन बराबर है ना रुपी वैल्यू विल गो डाउन वॉट विल बिकम कॉस्टलियर एक्सपोर्ट्स और इम्पोर्ट्स इम्पोर्ट्स विल बिकम कॉस्टलियर दैट विल रिजल्ट इन वॉट इन द इकोनॉमी इन्फ्लेशन होगा बिकॉज इम्पोर्ट्स हैव बिकम कॉस्टली प्राइजेज आर राइजिंग को इम्पोर्टेड इन्फ्लेशन बोलते हैं इन्फ्लेशन होगा पीपल विल बी पीपल विल नॉट बी एबल टू अफोर्ड गुड्स एस्पेशली पुअर पीपल अभी ऑयल तो बेसिक है बट इफ ऑयल इज वेरी कॉस्टली दे विल नॉट बी एबल टू अफोर्ड दीज गुड्स वॉट विल गवर्नमेंट डू फॉर अफोर्डेबिलिटी सब्सिडीज देंगे सब्सिडीज विल इंक्रीज अब सब्सिडीज कहाँ से देंगे पैसे when subsidies are increasing will fiscal deficit reduce or increase now when fiscal deficit increases will investors come in your country or not come in your country not come which will result in a deficit okay investors would will not trust you both in capital account and current account investors will not trust you 
इन्वेस्टर्स ट्रेडर सब लोग विच विल अल्टीमेटली कॉज डेफिसिट ऑन बैलेंस ऑफ ये साइकिल है इट्स अ ट्विन डेफिसिट If a balance of payment question comes in mains, and if you draw this, examiner will start crying. क्या लिख दिया ये? मुझे भी नहीं पता था ये. Examiners also don't know everything. Huh? They know a lot of things, more than we know, but they don't know everything. If you have a friend. who is starting preparation or who requires economics ka start to end and he or she has time on their hand try to tell ki my foundation lectures dekh lena mere ko paisa nahi mil raha hai uska i am not getting any money out of that but i am genuinely saying foundation lectures my foundation lectures i consider to be them to be very comprehensive now you might be thinking ki this is very rushed and i am skipping a few things and all because you don't have time but uh, someone who has time someone who needs to have a very good grasp of economics please suggest the foundation lectures mera ho gaya i have earned that money from that so i am not getting anything out of it but they are good 104 105 to 108 hours hai 54 lectures 52 to 54 lectures each lecture 2 to 2 and 1/2 hours acche se but they cover literally everything agriculture bhi hai infrastructure is also there and basic economics so out of those 54 lectures 35 is basic economics all these concepts and rest is infra and because agri infra is not conceptual you just need to know kya hai you don't need to understand the concept of subsidy wo to everyone knows but here the exchange rate and this this is where you require help so i have i have spent good 32 uh, 32 lectures on that for around 65 hours hai koi to just tell them to try to see that who likes devaluation importer or exporter net effect abhi hum log net effect likhte hain net effect net effect kiska imports minus exports net effect matlab imports and export actually i should write net exports net exports exports minus import net exports. will devaluation result in exports increasing more than imports the problem is not in the short term it will happen in the long term and that too not beyond a certain point of time beyond a certain point of time what matters is your goods quality the packaging and uh, the utility of your goods etc the currency doesn't matter after a point of time theek okay? hai so initially acha when let's say tomorrow indian government announces devaluation of ye do you think kal hi ho jayega exports will increase tomorrow nahi na but imports will negatively affect your position tomorrow because we are import dependent simple hai theek okay? hai so can i say initially if india goes for devaluation our net position will go down first and then it will slowly slowly rise up up to a point of time theek hai uske baad to it doesn't matter uske baad it will not matter theek hai this is the graph this is called as j curve j curve what does j curve suggest is that when you devalue your currency initially your position will actually worsen because imports are more sensitive to rates than exports because see when you uh, when you devalue your currency you will get more orders export ke liye you will get more orders but wo packaging taiyar karna logistics you you will take time to prepare all those things but imports to already are hai and when they become costlier when you devalue your currency imports become costlier when they become costlier your initial position will worsen net net position will worsen and then slowly slowly it will rise
income tax zero percent income tax government revenue zero tax rate increasing tax collection also increases after a point of time it reaches its peak after a point of time if you increase your tax rate your tax collection would actually go down because very less people are earning that much money very less people will be paying you tax they will start start evading taxes avoiding taxes whatever this is called as laffaire curve this is called as laffaire curve jake there are many curves in uh, economics coming back to our capital account convertibility capital account convertibility or capital account mein money flows from outside india to in india and from india to outside india this happening frequently is good or bad frequently is bad if you are coming then be serious shaadi karni hai to be serious hai na otherwise tomorrow if you will go with someone else then again come then again go with someone else aisa nahi hota theek hai so this money which comes in and goes out how it will come in and go out people will buy and we are talking about capital account huh? people will buy shares of tata sell tomorrow buy shares of reliance sell tomorrow and in huge amounts kya hoga money is coming money is going money is coming money is going this is called as hot money hot money when money goes out na very fast it is also called as flight of capital flight of capital hot money hai hot money is hot money good or hot money bad very bad because we don't know what to make of that see this ruins all our calculations of economics then again tomorrow he is going theek hai this is very bad so one person suggested ki isko how to avoid this is you put a tax here you put a tax here on all inflows and outflow you put a tax james tobin ka naam this is tobin tax to for tobin tax to be successful there is one problem for tobin tax to be successful because there are other countries also which might not implement tobin tax to wo wahan chale jayega we are trying to solve problem on a global level na of hot money you do this you will be suffering then jitna whatever you are getting that also you will not get this is called tobin tax t o b i n james tobin how do we discourage negative goods demerit goods we have extra taxes on that coal pe bhi we have extra cess on every ton of coal mined we have cess theek hai this tax on negative externality was given by ac pigu it is called as pigovian tax the tax ki baat aayi gayi thi so i said ki jitne mujhe aate i'll tell you which are relevant for upsc pigu ac pigu naam tha pigovian tax tax on negative externality negative externality means you are harming your ecosystem negative externalities tobin tax is also called as financial transaction tax financial transaction it's very it's a very generic word financial transaction tax okay then there was one term which was asked in the exam based on newspaper article called as import cover 2016 or 17 mein it was asked import cover is nothing but see if tomorrow if tomorrow you stop earning foreign exchange to kitne mahine ka import you can cover with the existing stock of foreign exchanges import cover now it, they will not ask for newspaper based current affair based term tha exclusively because there was an article in express which had used that term and they had asked in 2016 or something the import cover
if you stop earning foreign exchange then what is the stock you have to cover how many months you can cover tell me one thing a similar concept we saw in banking yesterday ki if tomorrow you stop your business how many months uh, can you go or what is that ratio called no if tomorrow banks do not earn money so kitna how much money you have to survive liquidity coverage ratio high quality liquid assets divided by cash outflow in a stress scenario ठीक है हाउ मच एसेट्स यू हैव एंड हाउ मच कैश आउटफ्लो विल बी रिक्वायर्ड इन अ स्ट्रेस सिनेरियो लिक्विडिटी कवर इट्स वेरी सिमिलर इंपोर्ट कवर ठीक है दिस वाज बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट्स क्रूशियल पार्ट्स ऑफ बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट्स मेन यू हैव टू फोकस इज ऑन करंट अकाउंट कैपिटल अकाउंट ट्रेड अकाउंट ऑल दोस डिफरेंट पार्ट्स main you have to focus on convertibility aspect of it what is convertibility what is convertible not convertible right now we move on to a small chapter which is called as money supply supply of money it's a it's a mix of micro and micro macroeconomics money supply last time matlab i did 2021 mein question had come on money supply again it was a repeat question we had discussed this in our previous lectures in foundation i had told the students ki dekho this can be an option this can be an option and this can be a question and the same thing happened in 2021 i am not saying i know everything i am just saying it's a coincidence theek hai hamari book se aaya aisa i don't claim anything because it is upsc theek hai money supply chalo very simple 10 minutes ka chapter hai money supply also known as aggregate monetary resources total money supply in the economy kitna hai aggregate mon aggregate monetary resources you must have read things like m0 m1 m2 m3 ncert mein hota hai often books miss it out if you buy bulky books then they will have if you buy short books they will not have theek hai most often also called as aggregate monetary resources it's same total english english have total money resource kitna hai right there is a topic i have written here in this in this particular uh, topic which is legal tender versus fiat money we have covered that so i am skipping that theek hai why why is calculating aggregate money supply important you tell me why is calculating aggregate money supply in an economy important to know kya karna hai your entire monetary policy is based on money supply how much to inject how much to remove you should know how much it is there theek hai this is not credit ha huh? by the way this is pure money this is not credit theek hai so money supply mein there are various stages of money supply there are depending on the component i you know all this this is very basic so m1 mein kya aata hai m1 mein you have currency notes and coins currency notes and coins dono aata hai plus demand deposits which is current account demand deposits with banks that is also matters na because baad mein jaake wo change ho jata hai demand deposit with banks plus other deposits with rbi other deposits with rbi anything else isme theek hai what is m2 plus what पोस्ट ऑफिस का सेविंग्स अकाउंट बाय द वे व्हेन वी से दिस डिमांड डिपॉजिट व्हिच अकाउंट डज इट इंक्लूड करंट और सेविंग करंट अकाउंट प्लस सेविंग्स ना बैंकिंग टर्म्स में इसको कासा अकाउंट बोलते हैं सीएसए सीएसए करंट अकाउंट प्लस सेविंग्स अकाउंट एम वन प्लस डिमांड डिपॉजिट्स ऑफ पोस्ट ऑफिस सेविंग्स बैंक ना तो पोस्ट ऑफिस लिख पूरा ही लिख दो What is M three? M one, M one, ah, this is, thoda mistake ho sakta hai idhar. M one plus time deposits of banks. Public kono bola? Acha, of public with banks. 
M4 is cutting M3, which are M2, plus all deposits with post office bank, sub, sub. Okay. Which of these is called as narrow money? What is narrow money? Actually, M1 and M2 both are narrow money. Some books call M1 as narrow money. So, they claim. Actually, it depends on the question. If it asks you specifically M1 or yeah, M2, so write M1. If it gives an option of both, then write both. Because I have read seven sources for this and sub me alag alag hai. And uh, CA Institute ke material me, which is the proper official material, usme M1, M2 dono hai. And plus I had read it one government report, uh, one RBI report also, M1, M2 both are called. So I trust that more. What is broad money? Same, same logic in M3 also. You have this as broad money. Some books mention M3, huh? some books mention M3 as broad money. Okay, this is fairly easy, fairly simple. Now, what we did not write here is M0. M0, Suna? Reserve money, also called as high powered money, also called as monetary base. It is the start of money civilization, human civilization ka pehla jan. That is M0. Okay. M0 is Peleto, it is called as reserve money, high powered money, or monetary base. I hope this is self explanatory. Base Q bolte, it is zero. It, it is the start. Abhi money kiske pass hoga? Who will have this money? What is M0? Currency plus currency plus cash reserves of banks with RBI. CRR hota hai, other reserves plus other deposits with RBI. Currency plus cash reserves plus other deposits with RBI. So M1 borrows from M0 basically, same, do, teen, com, do components same. Hai. Other deposits and currency is same. Sif, is my ye farak hai? currency plus other deposits with RBI plus what currency plus other deposits with RBI plus deposits of banks with RBI did we see the concept of uh, Credit creation yesterday, 100 minus 10, 90, 90 is given. Similarly, notes also flow like that. Everything starts from M0, but ultimately, some is there in currency, some is there in uh, deposit, some ye, ye form alag -alag change. Hote so, for example, you start your M0 as 100. Okay? M0 as 100, hua, wo aage ja ke someone will, someone might uh, keep it as currency, someone might deposit in the bank. Chalo. So, 100 RBI will give to bank. 100 RBI ne bank ko diya. Now, what will that bank do? Again, keep some money side mein. RBI will keep 10 rupees side mein. 90 rupees, RBI will give it out. Abo 90 rupees, you have got it. Let's say bank, you have taken from the bank. That 90 rupees, you will keep it at home in your uh, locker also sometimes, which means that is out of the banking system. Barabar. Let's say you keep 30 rupees out. That is not in the banking system now. So now you are left with only 60 rupees. Barabar hai. Hai. So here, if you see 100 se start, okay, why is money supply reducing? What are the factors reducing money supply? Who is keeping outside? We. Who is keeping outside? Banks. Hai. So first reason for, or first thing that is affecting money supply is high powered money. Yehi kam hai agar. If this is only 40, then it will start. What is the first factor? High powered money. 
Does this have a direct correlation with money supply or inverse correlation with money supply? The more high powered money, the more money supply, the less high powered money, the less money supply. Second factor is reserve ratio. Banks kitna reserve rakti hai? How much do banks keep as reserve? Does this have a direct correlation with money supply or inverse correlation with money supply? Inverse. The higher the reserves, the lesser the money supply. So this is direct. Second is reserve ratio. This is inverse or indirect. Third, banking habits of people, saving habits of people, whether they save in banks or at home in hard currency. Does it have a direct relation or inverse relation? Direct relation with money supply or inverse? If they save, if they keep more at home, money supply will reduce in the economy. So, inverse relation. Saving or banking habit of people. So, everyone is affecting money supply. Inverse or yeah, indirect. If they keep more at home, they are taking away money. Na? It is just like what banks are doing. Okay. Plus, plus, there is a mix of, abhi ye to lend kiya hai, which is okay, this is flown in the money supply, but there is a mix, which, which account do you think results in more money supply, current account or fixed deposit, fixed deposit or current account. I don't think you will ask this, but I don't think you will ask this, but I am asking money supply, not credit. If they have fixed deposit, they can lend more, which will result in more money supply. Current account may paisa goes out, might not come in, will come in, might not go out. Fixed deposit always gives a more opportunity of banks to create more money. That is why banks give you interest. Na? They are using your money. Current account may banks don't give you interest. Hame kya hai? Banks say. Okay? The mix of portfolio of bank also affects money supply. Some banks are very aggressive. Some banks are very conservative. This is just extra gyan I am telling you. So now, if I take the total of, let's say, I take the total of all money supply, we start start 100 se kiye the, and we reach money supply of 100 plus 90 plus 60. Okay? So that is the aggregate measure of money supply and we use a multiplier for calculating ki how much we started, we start 100 se kiya, and let's say currently money supply is 300. So what is the multiplier? 3. We start from 100, we reach the money supply level of 300. What is the multiplier? 3. So, what did we do? Money supply divided by high powered money or monetary base. Okay, so what did we do? Money supply divided by monetary base. So, here is a multiplier, hota, it is called as money multiplier. M. Money supply divided by monetary base is called as money multiplier, and its correlation is direct, indirect, indirect. So, if your money multiplier is high, which means your money supply is high or low? High. If your money multiplier is 30, so 1 rupee RBI will inject, it will result in 30 rupees of money supply. If it is very low, 2, so 1 ka 2 yoga. Just for your knowledge, or just for your knowledge, M1, M2, M3, M4 are not the only aggregates. There are some other aggregates also called NM1, NM2, NM3. Just, just keep this in mind. New monetary aggregates 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? They also include your deposits and your uh, other accounts by NBFCs. N for NBFC, NM1, NM2. There are other indicators also called L1, L2, L3, L4. They are liquidity indicators. They are liquidity calculations. Yeah, money supply, money, credit, liquidity, NBFC, AIFI. Ka alag se. These are all different indicators. We only know M1, M2, M3, M4. Keep this in mind that there are various other indicators. NM1 is new monetary aggregate. Uska jo concept hai, it is called as new monetary aggregate.
ठीक है चलो लेट एस स्टार्ट विथ इन्फ्लेशन वॉट इज इन्फ्लेशन अगेन वन लाइन बताओ थिंक इन वन लाइन वन वर्ड इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन इन्फ्लेशन सी इंक्रीज तो आज भी हो रहा है सो यू कैन नॉट से टूडे इज इन्फ्लेशन थोड़ा कंटिन्यूस होता है देन इन्फ्लेशन देन इट हैपन्स इन्फ्लेशन द वर्ड इज परसिस्टेंट परसिस्टेंट राइज इन एवरेज प्राइज इज इज नोन एज इन्फ्लेशन ठीक है दैट इज थोड़ा मेन्स का अभी से आई हैव स्टार्टेड तैयारी Persistent rise in average prices is called as inflation. Do you know the types of inflation? Creeping, trotting, वो सब books में दिए हुए होते हैं. So I'll not cover those. Do you know growth versus inflation dilemma? Because if you want growth, you need high prices, but too high prices will cause inflation. So that is a big, big, big dilemma. Which uh, what is hyperinflation? हाँ डोंट थिंक अबाउट मनी टर्म्स मतलब परसेंटेज टर्म्स टू हाई इन्फ्लेशन हाइपर इन्फ्लेशन इज नॉट इफ आई गिव यू मनी टर्म्स तो इट इज ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी परसेंट पर मंथ तो इन टू ट्वेल्व करो टू हंड्रेड थ्री हंड्रेड परसेंट पर एन एम इन्फ्लेशन टूडे वी आर वी मतलब नॉट इंडिया द वर्ल्ड इज इन अ वेरी इन्फ्लेशनरी फेस ऑल कंट्रीज आर ऑल मेजर इकोनॉमीज आर फेसिंग इन्फ्लेशन इंक्लूडिंग इंडिया राइट कौन से कंट्री में इन्फ्लेशन है बहुत टर्की में ना टर्की एज अ लॉट ऑफ वेनेजुला तो क्लासिक है वो तो ओल्ड ऑल टाइम क्लासिक है वेनेजुला जिम्बाब्वे हंगरी ये तीन ऑल टाइम क्लासिक है विच इज द हाईएस्ट रिकॉर्ड ऑफ हाइपर इन्फ्लेशन इन हिस्ट्री ऑफ द वर्ल्ड जर्मनी ड्यूरिंग वर्ल्ड वॉर टाइम्स मतलब जीरो तो ऐसे एड हुए ना करेंसी के पीछे उसके वन डॉलर टेन रहेगा तो उसके पीछे ऐसे जीरो एड होते गए ना रीड अबाउट जर्मनी and hyperinflation hyper single most serious documented case of hyperinflation war karenge war in fact uh, british journalist had also written a big article on it adam ferguson karke he was there he had written an article on it when money dies ki itna zyada बाकी ऑल टाइम क्लासिक्स तो यू नो जिम्बाब्वे हंगरी एंड वेनेजुला की थिंग्स यर फॉर प्रिलिम्स पर्पजेज यू शुड नो द डिफरेंस बिटवीन डिस इन्फ्लेशन एंड डिफ्लेशन डू यू नो द डिफरेंस बताओ डिस इन्फ्लेशन इज Inflation is your speed is increasing. This inflation is you are still going ahead, but speed thoda kam hai. So tomorrow, if inflation reduces from ten percent to eight percent, that is death inflation, but still inflation. Deflation is actually you are going reverse. Prices are falling compared to base year, not last year. Last year ke comparison to this inflation hoga. Actually, negative inflation is deflation. Do you know GDP deflator? Do you remember? we had discussed that that is all goods and services but it comes with a time lag so we can't use that then we use a basket of goods now that basket of goods can be divided into three people categories one those goods which are used by producers second those goods which are used by wholesalers third those goods which are used by retailers or consumers not retailers consumers producers ka basket ka when you calculate the inflation similar to that we discussed in the first lecture it is called as ppi producers price index wholesalers price index consumers price index ppi is officially not used yet there is a recommendation to start calculating ppi and using but officially not used yet wpi and cpi we have heard we have used also wpi is given by whom cso to manpur Office of Economic Advisor, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. What is the base here? Eleven, twelve, four, five. Tha eleven, twelve. Who are now? There are talks of bringing it to nineteen, twenty again. 
बट वो मत याद रखना सीपीआई हैज डिफरेंट टाइप्स क्या है अर्बन रूरल कंबाइंड एग्रीकल्चरल लेबर रूरल लेबर एंड इंडस्ट्रियल वर्कर करेक्ट सिक्स टाइप्स हु गिव दीज थ्री एन एस ओ नेशनल स्टैटिस्टिकल ऑफिस अंडर मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ स्टैटिस्टिक्स एंड प्रोग्राम इंप्लीमेंटेशन बेस इयर Who gives this Ministry of Labour and Employment? Whatever, na? Base year sixteen. Change hua. Last year change. Who gives this? Agriculture to nahi deta hai. Labour base year. बहुत पुराना है इसका बेस यार 86 वो बेस कोई भाव ही नहीं देते नो बडी केयर्स अबाउट द बास्केट ऑफ गुड्स 86 87 यस वेरी गुड इट सिंपल बेसिक फैक्ट्स है यू जस्ट नीड टू रिमेम्बर देम देर इज नो लॉजिक लॉजिक इज व्हेन यू सी द डिफरेंस बिटवीन डब्ल्यू एंड सी What are the four or three four major differences between WP and CPI? Services are included in CPI but not in WPI. What is what is included in CPI not in WPI? One more thing. Indirect taxes. बराबर ना. Earlier WPI also had indirect taxes. In new series, indirect taxes were removed, which made it closer to PPI. One of the debate is we are already removed WPI means indirect taxes. Why do we need a separate PPI? ये discussion paper में था एक difference क्या है? CPI has services next indirect taxes next the basket is different. Here you will find more industrial level goods, transport, fuel and all. यहाँ पे you will find more food products and all those kind of things. Second very major difference is electricity. Here you will find uh, industrial tariffs of electricity. Here you will find the retailer tariff of electricity. Plus here you will find that taste preferences of consumers affect this more because एक side wholesaler will be in one state. He will be supplying ten different states. So वो ten different states का price will be affected in case of CPI. ठीक है? Wholesaler वाला हाँ तो wholesaler का प्राइस वी आर सीइंग तो ही इज लोकेटेड इन वन स्टेट तो उसका प्राइस तो उसी स्टेट में अफेक्ट होगा ही विल से मेरी महंगाई इज टू परसेंट बट बाय द टाइम द गुड्स रीच अदर स्टेट्स अदर स्टेट्स में डिमांड्स वुड बी डिफरेंट अदर स्टेट्स में प्रेफरेंसेस वुड बी डिफरेंट अदर स्टेट्स में ट्रांसपोर्ट कॉस्ट वुड बी डिफरेंट सो दैट विल अफेक्ट द सीपीआई ऑफ स्टेट्स डिफरेंटली बट डब्ल्यू तो एक ही रहेगा ऑफ दैट स्टेट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट देर आर थ्री थिंग्स जिसपे हमारा कोई कंट्रोल नहीं है Three things on which, oh my God, Bhagwan is fuel, food, and food products. Food is the primary thing. Food products is the manufacturing secondary thing. Fuel, food, and food products. Fuel, food, food products. We don't have control. Who has control over fuel? दूसरी कंट्री सप्लायर कंट्री सो दिस इज इंपोर्टेड दिस इज वेदर रेनफॉल एंड दिस इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन दिस करेक्ट दीज आर कॉल्ड एज सप्लाई साइड फैक्टर्स सप्लाई अफेक्ट होता है डिमांड इज नॉट फ्लक्चुएटिंग सप्लाई इज फ्लक्चुएटिंग विच इज कॉजिंग इन्फ्लेशन यू नो डिमांड फुल इन्फ्लेशन Inflation happens because high demand. What is the opposite? Cost push inflation. ठीक है. What is stagflation? We have done that. Stagnation plus inflation. Unemployment is high. Inflation is high. Simple. When it? When does it happen? 
when monetary policy and fiscal policy don't go in the same direction then stagflation happens what is imported inflation inflation because of imported goods unhone price bada di that is imported inflation what is open inflation inflation which is not controlled market forces pe khelne do that is open inflation what is suppressed inflation tightly controlled inflation जब वो फटेगा ना सप्रेस्ड इन्फ्लेशन अब पता चलेगा वॉट इज रिफ्लेशन टैक्फ्लेशन शिवम इट इज मेनली ड्यू टू फिजिकल पॉलिसी एंड मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी नॉट गोइंग इन सेम डायरेक्शन एंड इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ हाई अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट लेवल ऑल्सो कॉजेज टैक्फ्लेशन हाँ रिफ्लेशन इज ऑपोजिट ऑफ डिफ्लेशन न्यू इन्फ्लेशन इज रिफ्लेशन माइनस से प्लस when you go from plus to minus it is deflation when you go from minus to plus it is reflation okay these are called as supply side factors because here cost push inflation is more than demand pull aisa nahi hai ki tomorrow you will start demanding more food but aisa ho sakta hai ki this might be possible ki one year there is no rainfall and there is less supply of food products which is causing inflation so these are supply side factors okay what government tries to do is government says ki these are very transitory this change every day and we know fuel price to kya hai these change every day so government tries to intervene by saying ki we want to see how much there is inflation how much is the inflation without these products actual batao inflation ye to kya hai this is every day is coming is going we want to find the inflation without these products so inflation which does not include these products is called as is called as core inflation very important core inflation core inflation does not have these products core inflation it is core so core inflation see the statement core inflation helps the government to address demand side factors because supply side to hata diya aapne hai na core inflation helps aisa interview mein answer dena must must milenge core inflation helps the government to address demand side factors and core in, does core inflation include these products or exclude तो सिर्फ ये प्रोडक्ट्स का इन्फ्लेशन नहीं होता है इधर देर इज इन्फ्लेशन कैलकुलेशन ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन विद दीज प्रोडक्ट्स और देर इज कैलकुलेशन ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन विदाउट दीज प्रोडक्ट्स इफ यू से कि इट इज विद दीज प्रोडक्ट विदाउट दीज प्रोडक्ट्स इट इज कोर इन्फ्लेशन इफ यू से इट इज विद दीज प्रोडक्ट्स टोटल देन इट इज कॉल्ड एज हेडलाइन इन्फ्लेशन हेडलाइन हेडलाइन इंक्लूड दीज प्रोडक्ट और डज नॉट इंक्लूड इंक्लूड core includes or excludes excludes only these products ka inflation you cannot calculate road change hota hai it's very difficult when you will have to do it on a individual commodity level you cannot use it as a deflator you cannot use it in your annual statistics or annual accounts cpi al and rl which year That will happen in one year. It will go to 1920. So, वो कब से चल रहा है? But अभी serious हो गया लगता है. Because recently I saw uh, a report which said that within next one or two years they plan to bring everyone to close by to 1920. What is the uh, disadvantage of using old base year? सब change हो जाता है. taste preferences also change earlier acs were considered luxury there was less demand of acs the product mix changes so you need as latest as possible but statistically it is not possible to have real time basis so 2 3 years pehle ka it is okay and definitely you cannot use the base year as 2020 21 why it will result in dash effect बेस इफेक्ट अब नॉर्मल यार है बेस इफेक्ट होगा सो दैट इज वाई थिंक इन्होंने डिले किया है ठीक है देन अदर फूड प्राइस इंडेक्स ये सब तो ऑलवेज रिमेंबर फ्रॉम प्रिलिम्स परस्पेक्टिव डब्ल्यू एन एस ओ नेशनल स्टेटिस्टिकल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन गिव्स थ्री थिंग्स क्या देता है एनएसओ पहले तो सीपीआई देता है देन GDP डी पी कैलकुलेशन इज डन देन इंडेक्स ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल प्रोडक्शन आई आई पी 
given by NSO. NSO is under Well, it was CSO and NSSO, then it was combined and made NSO. Index of industrial, what is IIT? What is IIT? Not value, quantity. It shows your volume of production, not the value. Okay, so if IIP is increasing, which means your volume, your real output is actually increasing. Okay, what is the base year of IIP? 2011-12. It categorizes the goods into three parts. Mining. Manufacturing, electricity. You know, when I started preparation, in newspaper, mein this used to come, and books did not have this IIP especially. I spent two hours just to learn what is IIP, and I thought, let question come, I will write all about IIP. Then I thought, ki, this is just one drop ka drop in the entire syllabus. Mining, manufacturing, electricity. What is the weightage? Weightage, you should remember. I hardly uh, think anyone knows it. Overall, but you should definitely remember this. Manufacturing has the highest weightage of 78%. Okay. Mining has a weightage of 14%. Remaining is electricity. So please remember this weightage, very important. They can say ki mining has higher weightage than electricity, true or false. So it is true. Does it show long term changes in production or short term? Question. Always does it show value change or volume change? Volume, always remember this. Office of Economic Advisor, Ministry of Commerce and Industry gives two things. What one we saw? Second, Iska sub part, eight core industries is given by that guy. You know, eight core industries question has come in 2015 highest weightage, lowest weightage. You know, eight core industries refinery products, coal, kya kya hai usme? crude oil, cement, fertilizer. What is the highest weightage? Earlier it was different, it was renewed in 2018. Change the refinery products has the highest weightage, it forms 40.27 percent of your IAP. Because it is a subset of IIP, 40.27% of IIP is 8 core industries. It's got 40.27% weightage. Those 8 industries basically form 40.27%. Before changing, it was less. In 2018, it was changed. 40.27%. Highest is refinery products. Okay. Now inflation. What is inflation exactly? What is inflation exactly? What is how does it affect you? It causes you to lose your purchasing power. See, there are two things. One is I have a hundred rupees note in my pocket. The value is hundred. But can I really buy goods worth rupees hundred or not? That is purchasing power. Okay. Today you can buy two items worth rupees 50, let's say, in that 100 rupees note. Tomorrow, if the price changes to 80 rupees, you will be able to buy only one and some portion of that. 100 ka denomination abhi bhi 100 hai. After one year also, it is 100. But you are losing out on your purchasing power. Theek hai? To chalo. If I give you a loan, if I give you a loan, let's say you have to pay me 8% every year. Hai na? And inflation is rising. So, kiska nuksan hai, your or mine? 
हु एम आई द लेंडर और द बोर लेंडर क्यों नुकसान है हुई एक्सप्लेन यू हैव टू गिव मी एट परसेंट बट आई एम नॉट गेटिंग एट परसेंट वर्थ ऑफ परचेजिंग पावर दिस इज द की डिफरेंस यर ऑलवेज रिमेंबर इन इंफ्लेशनरी कंडीशन फिक्स इनकम अर्नर आर द लूजर्स सिंपल एग्जाम्पल एफ डी खोल दो ओपन एन एफ डी एफ डी इज गिविंग यू फाइव परसेंट इन्फ्लेशन इज सेवन परसेंट एवरी ईयर यू आर लूजिंग टू परसेंट ऑफ परचेजिंग पावर बट वी थिंक माई मनी इज ग्रोइंग आर यू गेटिंग इट दो चीजें योर मनी इज ग्रोइंग बट वॉट यू आर बाइंग विद दैट मनी उसका प्राइस इज ग्रोइंग मच मोर Do you get it? FD is the worst possible form of investment, the safest, no doubt, but the worst in terms of returns. It is giving a real, it is giving actually in reality, it is giving a return of minus two percent currently. Seven percent is CPI, six point nine five percent, and FDI is giving five percent. What is your return? Minus two. You are actually spend abhi kar lo, khatra kar lo, khatam karo baat, rather than keeping in FD. Are you getting it? So that is why. You should invest in. Abhi to you will learn and all. You should invest in such a manner that your returns beat inflation. Net positive one. Stock market gives a return of average return of fourteen to eighteen percent average long term. So, वो तो inflation से ऊपर ही रहता. But it is also the most risky. है ना? You can lose out your money. वो बोलते हैं ना लगे रहो मना भाई मैं. पापा मैंने shares में डुबा दिया आपके पैसे. and wealth is wiped out in seconds mere sath hua hai but i am a long term investor so wo wealth wapas aa jayega but those who are looking for short term unko problem so so who loses at uh, who loses in inflationary conditions people who have fixed income for example pension earners Fifty thousand pension, very good. Fifty thousand pension is today. You can buy so much in fifty thousand. Tomorrow you'll be able to buy little less, little less. Your pension is fifty thousand only. You are losing your purchasing power. Fixed income earners are always the losers in purchasing uh, in inflationary conditions. Okay, that concludes the important part of inflation. I think. Baki to ye inflation is a hidden tax. Ye sab to I don't need to tell you, right? Hidden tax hi hai wo. Right now. थोड़ा दस मिनट में मार्केट्स यूपीएससी इज न्यू हॉट फेवरेट टॉपिक बेसिक्स ऑफ मार्केट्स फॉर दोज ऑफ यू हु डोंट नो देर इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन लोन एंड कैपिटल बोरोइंग एंड कैपिटल इफ आई हैव अ कंपनी इफ आई टेल यू आई नीड मनी i will give you two options or you have two options one you can give me money and earn a fixed rate of interest which means i have taken a loan from you or i tell you ki interest to i will not give you but i will make you part owner of my company whatever profits we have you will get a share of that profit share to the extent of the money you have invested so then you become the owner i will take money from you you become the owner i will go to bank and take money from them they will not become the owner because i have to pay them interest इतना समझा दिस इज द मेन डिफरेंस बिटवीन बिकमिंग एन ओनर एंड बिकमिंग अ क्रेडिटर और सप्लायर ऑफ फंड्स ठीक है वॉट डू क्रेडिटर्स गेट इन रिटर्न इंटरेस्ट वॉट डू ओनर्स गेट डिविडेंड डिविडेंड पीरियडिक प्रॉफिट से ही निकाल के देते हैं कि हाँ भाई खुश रहो इतना भौंकने आ जाते हो तो कंपनी से इसकी बार बार आ जाते हो लेकिन खुश रहो डिविडेंड समटाइम्स ज्यादा भोगते तो इंटरिम डिविडेंड साल के बीच में दे देते ले लो ठीक है बट वेन द कंपनी इज मेकिंग प्रॉफिट तो ये डिफरेंस यू शुड नो वॉट वॉट इज अ शेयर अ शेयर इज एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट ऑफ ओनरशिप और क्रेडिटरशिप ओनरशिप वॉट इज अ बॉन्ड क्रेडिटरशिप बॉन्ड इज दैट डॉक्यूमेंट ऑन विच इट इज रिटर्न यू हैव पेड मी दिस मच मनी आई विल रीपे यू विद इन टेन ईयर्स आई विल गिव यू फाइव परसेंट इंटरेस्ट ऑन अ शेयर इट इज नॉट रिटर्न आई विल रीपे यू On a share, it is written until dissolution. आपका money हमारे पास रहेगा and we will मतलब obviously when you are an owner, you are entitled to a part of profit. ठीक है Shares are of two types: equity shares and preference shares. Preference shares get preference with respect to two things: one, repayment of 
कैपिटल वेन एवर कंपनी क्लोज डाउन याद है वी सॉ आई बी सी इंसॉल्वेंसी लास्ट में ओनर्स गेट मनी वो ओनर्स में भी प्रेफरेंस शेयर ओनर्स गेट फर्स्ट एंड देन इक्विटी शेयर ओनर ठीक है सेकेंड उनका दे कैरी अ रेट ऑफ डिविडेंड विच इज फिक्स तो उनका प्रेफरेंस हो गया इन टर्म्स ऑफ डिविडेंड एंड उनका प्रेफरेंस हो गया इन टर्म्स ऑफ रीपेमेंट सर देन वॉट अबाउट अदर शेयर होल्डर्स वॉट डू दे गेट इफ द कंपनी इज मेकिंग हंड्रेड क्रोर प्रॉफिट शेयर ऑफ प्रेफरेंस डिविडेंट इज फिक्स उनको तो उतना ही देना है रेस्ट ऑल इज आर्स है ना बट उल्टा इफ वी डोंट मेक प्रॉफिट उनको तो उतना देना है सो मोर रिस्क इज बॉर्न बाय इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर्स बट मोर प्रॉफिट इज ऑल्सो गिवन टू इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर्स प्रेफरेंस शेयर होल्डर्स आर ऑफकोर्स कॉस्टलीयर देन इक्विटी शेयर बिकॉज उनको प्रेफरेंस नहीं इन इन इन्वेस्टिंग इन फाइनेंस इट इज ऑल अबाउट रिस्क वर्सेज रिटर्न द मोर कंफर्टेबल यू वॉन्ट टू बी द लेस रिटर्न यू विल गेट एंड दैट इज इन लाइफ ऑल्सो वो जितना कंफर्टेबल होना यू कैन लिव कंफर्टेबली बट यू गेट लेस मनी सी वी विल ऑल अर्न सैलरी ऑफ फोर्टी एंड ट्वेंटी थर्टी फोर्टी लैक रुपीज दो आर ओपनिंग देर बिजनेस दो आर लिविंग देर जॉब्स एंड टेकिंग रिस्क दे माइंड गो टू वन सी आर टू सी आर But they are also taking a risk because that one person who is creating hundred crore business, there are ten people who did not or who failed, so they had to return to their jobs. So everything in finance, at least risk reward, have a very positive relationship. Okay. Now very quickly I'll tell you markets are divided into two types: capital markets, money markets. Capital markets are where people come for investing in shares, securities. Money markets is where lending and borrowing of money is done. मनी मार्केट है वो मनी दिस इज इन्वेस्टिंग एक्चुअली कैपिटल मार्केट में दो होते हैं प्राइमरी एंड सेकेंडरी वॉट इज प्राइमरी मार्केट प्राइमरी मार्केट इज वेन चिल्ड्रन आर वेन फर्स्ट चाइल्ड इज बॉर्न ठीक है अब वो चाइल्ड के साथ तुम खेलो नेबर के पास रखो कहीं भी करो दैट इज सेकेंडरी मार्केट तो प्राइमरी मार्केट इज वेन शेयर आर बॉर्न इज वेन शेयर आर बॉर्न ना वेन आई विल इशू हंड्रेड शेयर I am a company. I am LIC. I will issue hundred shares. People will buy hundred shares. Those hundred shares would be then open to trading by yourself. Okay. So when I will issue the issue hundred shares, they will be at issue price. They will be at issue price. Now, abhi, when you will buy and sell those shares, they will be based on demand and supply of shares. If everyone feels that Tata Motors' share should be bought, so Tata Motors' demand would rise. Obviously, share price would rise. Okay, that is called as market value of shares. What do you say about it? Market value. The number of shares that a company has into the existing market value. Number of shares the company has into the existing market value is called as. मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन एम कैप वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन एम कैप नंबर ऑफ शेयर इन टू मार्केट वैल्यू नॉट द फेस वैल्यू नॉट द इशू प्राइस अच्छा ये शेयर जो है इशू करने के लिए ना यू नीड टू डू अलॉट ऑफ फॉर्मेलिटी यू नीड टू अप्लाई टू सेवी यू नीड टू अप्लाई टू If we are a small company, if we are known people, I can issue you shares. You can buy shares. No need to go to SEBI. If we have to buy, or oh sorry, if we have to issue shares to the general public, general public, who if we have to issue the shares, then we have to get ourselves listed. Listed means list me na mana. It's as simple as that. Listed means to have your name in the list. Now listed. so there are some companies which are listed companies there are some companies which are unlisted there are some companies which are public companies and there are some companies which are private not all public companies are listed theek okay. hai private companies so i told you only whenever you have to issue shares to public at large you have to get yourself a list you have to get yourself listed abhi list kahan karoge market mein ja ke it's like amazon if you want to sell your goods to people you will get You are still registered on Amazon or Flipkart. Similarly, companies have to get themselves registered on stock exchanges. Stock exchanges. How many stock exchanges are there in India? Seven. We know only two: BSE and NSE. है ना? Bombay Stock Exchange and National Stock Exchange. ठीक है? National बड़ा है, 
एंड बॉम्बे छोटा है ऐसा नहीं है द वॉल्यूम इज मोर इन बॉम्बे वेरी ऑफन बॉम्बे स्टॉक एक्सचेंज इज द ओल्डेस्ट स्टॉक एक्सचेंज इन एशिया ठीक है एनी वेज ये लिस्ट हो गया नाउ वेन यू लिस्ट ये मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन सॉरी मार्केट वैल्यू मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन का लिस्ट के हिसाब से होता है सो द कंपनी विच इज हैविंग हाइएस्ट मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन विल बी फर्स्ट ऑन द लिस्ट ऐसा लोग अभी लिस्टेड कंपनीज तो बहुत है आठ हजार दस हजार कंपनीज है डू द रिलीज अ लिस्ट ऑफ ऑल दिस कंपनीज रिलीज तो करते हैं सबका बट वॉट दे डू इज एक इंडेक्स बनाते हैं ऑफ टॉप फिफ्टी कंपनीज टॉप थर्टी कंपनीज बिकॉज दे आर ड्राइविंग द मार्केट अगेन लाइक जी डी पी डिफ्रेटर सबका नहीं कैलकुलेट कर सकते सो दे आर ड्राइविंग द मार्केट सो दीज इंडेक्सेज आर नोन बाई डिफरेंट नेम्स ठीक है एन ए सी नेशनल स्टॉक एक्सचेंज का इंडेक्स हैज फिफ्टी हाइएस्ट कंपनीज बाय मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन फिफ्टी ये सिंपल क्वेश्चन आ सकता है कि इन बी एस सी एंड एन ए सी इंडेक्स हाउ आर दे लिस्टेड फेस वैल्यू इशू प्राइज मार्केट वैल्यू या मार्केट मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन सो वॉट दे डू इज एन ए सी विल मेक अ लिस्ट ऑफ फिफ्टी हाइएस्ट कंपनीज बाय मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन and it is called as nifty n i f t y nifty 50 50 companies ha huh. face value is often 10 rupees or 100 rupees face value ka relevance is what dividend usse milta hai so 10% of face value 10 rupees milega bhale hi wo share 1 lakh ka ha इनिशियली तो इशू प्राइस पे फेस वैल्यू विल बी प्रिंटेड ऑन दैट कि हाँ दस रुपए का शेयर है एंड इशू प्राइस पे दे विल गेट द मनी द एंटायर मनी दे विल गेट एंड दैट मनी फॉर द कंपनी बिकम्स प्रीमियम उसको शेयर प्रीमियम बोलते हैं सो इफ इट इज इशूड एट टू हंड्रेड फेस वैल्यू इज ओनली टेन सो टेन रुपीज विल गो एज कैपिटल एंड द रेस्ट वन नाइनटी विल गो एज प्रीमियम टू द कंपनी ओनली कंपनी कैन यूज दैट मनी हाँ दिस इज दिस दिस फेस वैल्यू या इशू प्राइस फेस वैल्यू इज स्टैंडर्ड विच इज डिसाइडेड बाय द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द कंपनी एंड इशू प्राइस इज डिसाइडेड विद द हेल्प ऑफ मर्चेंट बैंकर्स मार्केट में असेसमेंट करते कितना देने को रेडी होंगे इफ यू सेट द इशू प्राइस इज टू थाउजेंड पीपल आर नॉट रेडी तो पूरा आई पी ओ फेल हो जाएगा है ना इफ यू सेट इट टू लो देन यू आर अंडर रियलाइजिंग यूर वैल्यू टू दिस द एंटायर प्रोसेस ऑफ इशूइंग शेयर फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम टू द पब्लिक इज कॉल्ड एज इनिशियल पब्लिक ऑफरिंग आई पी ओ कंपनी अच्छा आई पी ओ के बाद दस कंपनी डील विथ द एग्जिस्टिंग शेयर वो आपस में खेलते है ना वेन द कंपनी वॉन्ट्स टू इशू मोर शेयर देन कंपनी कम्स अप विथ समथिंग कॉल्ड एज एफ पी ओ फॉलो ऑन पब्लिक ऑफर या फ्यूचर पब्लिक ऑफर सेकेंड डिलीवरी ऑफ चाइल्ड इन हॉस्पिटल वो तो फर्स्ट चाइल्ड था उसके साथ खेल रहे थे सब लोग अभी एक और चाइल्ड आ गया न्यू शेयर न्यू शेयर न्यू इशू प्राइस दो शेयर विल बी ऑफर्ड एट ए डिस्काउंट टू एग्जिस्टिंग शेयर होल्डर्स वो सब होता है उसमें लॉयल्टी बेनिफिट लॉयल्टी बोनस नहीं दीज आर न्यू शेयर द शेयर कैपिटल इज एक्चुअली इंक्रीज दीज आर न्यू शेयर एफ पी ओ फॉलो ऑन पब्लिक ऑफ ठीक है ना वन टू टर्म्स विच आर इंपॉर्टेंट Uh, आपको एक नया प्रोडक्ट लॉन्च करना है लेट्स वी सी एड्स ऑन यूट्यूब एंड ऑल ना स्टार्टअप एड्स वॉट विल यू डू इफ यू वॉन्ट योर प्रोडक्ट टू रीच द मासेस इफ यू वॉन्ट अदर्स टू बिलीव दैट योर प्रोडक्ट इज गुड वॉट डू यू डू एडवर्टाइजमेंट में किसी को ले लेते ना यू टेक अक्षय कुमार इन विमल एंड देन यू टेल सी आर प्रोडक्ट ठीक है दीज गाइज ऑल्सो डू द सेम चलो क्या करते हैं वॉट दे डू इज दे आस्क बिग इन्वेस्टर्स टू बाय शेयर सो अदर इन्वेस्टर्स सी देम अरे हाँ इफ ही इज बाइंग then this share must be good those big people are called as anchor investors they anchor the issue anchor means wo ship ko leke aate wo log they anchor the issue they are called as anchor investors simple question are what do you mean by anchor investors so they are actually and they are not just telling ki we will subscribe they do subscribe huh? subscribe means they do buy the shares it is called subscription to the shares उनको वन इज दे आर गेटिंग गारंटीड अलॉटमेंट ऑफ शेयर्स बाकी सबको शेयर लॉटरी बेसिस पे मिलता है बिकॉज अभी यू मस्ट हैव सीन कि ओवर सब्सक्राइब हो गया है इफ हंड्रेड पीपल अप्लाई फॉर ट्वेंटी शेयर्स फिर तो लॉटरी बेसिस पे मिलेगा शेयर्स सो दे गेट गारंटीड शेयर्स प्लस दे गेट इट एट अ वेरी स्पेशल प्राइस तो वो लोग जैसे लिस्ट हो जाते हैं भाग जाते हैं बेच के 
ان کا کام ہی ہے اینکر انویسٹر اینڈ سیبی میں تو اتنے رولس ہے دیر آر سو مینی رولس اینڈ ریگولیشن کی پریشان ہو جاؤ ٹھیک ہے ناؤ ون پرٹیکولر کانسیپٹ وچ از امپورٹینٹ از اے ڈی آر جی ڈی آر آئی ڈی آر امیرکن ڈپازٹری ریسیٹ گلوبل ڈپازٹری ریسیٹ انڈین ڈپازٹری ریسیٹ انڈیا یو ایس اے انڈیا میں کون ہے ٹاٹا اسٹیل ہے سی ناؤ دا کانسیپٹ آف اے ڈی آر جی ڈی آر آئی ڈی آر ہیز لٹل بٹ ریڈیوسڈ بیکاز ناؤ یو کین انویسٹ ڈائریکٹلی ان ادر کمپنی جیسے بہت سارے بٹ ایز اے کانسیپٹ یو شوڈ نو انڈیا ہیز ٹاٹا اسٹیل ٹاٹا اسٹیل از پرفارمنگ ویری گڈ گیونگ ویری گڈ ریٹرنس ٹو شیئر ہولڈرس پیپل ان یو ایس اے آلسو وانٹ ٹو انویسٹ ان ٹاٹا اسٹیل ون دے کین ڈو از دے کین کم ٹو انڈیا گیٹ دیم سیلس رجسٹرڈ وتھ ڈپازٹریز اینڈ وہ سب کر کے کر سکتے اور واٹ ہیپنس از یہاں پہ جو ڈپازٹری ہے ڈپازٹری ہو اسٹورس شیئرس ان الیکٹرانک فارمیٹ یو کین سی اٹ از اے بینک آف شیئرس اٹ از نون ایز اے ڈپازٹری انڈیا ہیز ٹو ڈپازٹریز این ایس ڈی ایل اینڈ سی ڈی ایس ایل کوشچن آیا تھا ٹو تھاؤزینڈ ٹوینٹی ون میں سی ڈی ایس ایل تو شیئرس بفور دیٹ شیئرس کیسے ہوتے وین یو بائی اے شیئر یو اوپن یور ڈی میٹ اکاؤنٹ وتھ اے بروکر ہیو یو ہرڈ آف پے ٹی ایم منی زیرو دھا شیر خان دیز آر آل بروکر یو اوپن یور ڈی میٹ اکاؤنٹ واٹ از ڈی میٹ ڈی مٹیریلائزیشن ڈی مٹیریلائزیشن واٹ از دا لاجک بیہائنڈ دیٹ ارلیئر شیئرس ور فزیکل پہلے فزیکل میں تھے دین آفٹر ورڈ شیئرز ور کنورٹیڈ ٹو الیکٹرانک فارمیٹ تو مٹیریلائزیشن نہیں ہوا ڈی مٹیریلائزیشن ہو گیا دیٹ مٹیریل واز کنورٹیڈ ٹو الیکٹرانک فارمیٹ تو ڈی میٹ ڈی مٹیریلائزیشن ٹھیک ہے یو اوپن یور اکاؤنٹ وتھ بروکر دیر آر ٹو اکاؤنٹس انوالوڈ ان ٹریڈنگ ون از یور بینک اکاؤنٹ ون از یور ڈی میٹ اکاؤنٹ بینک اکاؤنٹ میں واٹ کمس ان اینڈ گوز آؤٹ منی ڈی میٹ اکاؤنٹ میں واٹ کمس ان اینڈ گوز آؤٹ شیئرس وین یو بائی شیئرس بینک اکاؤنٹ میں منی ول ریڈیوس and demat account mein money uh, sorry shares will increase theek hai now bank account is with banks demat account is with depositories demat account is with depositories but you don't deal with depositories directly you deal with brokers they deal with depositories there are two depositories in india one is nsdl and cdsl ha so what happens in this is yahan pe there is nsdl what they will do is they will tell ki chalo yahan pe there is a bank depository they will make a deal with them ki uh, you hold the share will you hold the shares yahan pe shares aa gaye theek hai and you issue receipts to the people in usa so people in usa only have to register with this depository they don't have to comply with indian laws same like participatory notes the difference is this is absolutely transparent and pura data details everything is known theek okay? hai now this depository will issue see this depository in america will issue receipts the underlying of which are shares of indian company samjha normally the ratio is 1 is to 1 one share one receipt normally it can also happen ki one receipt will have 10 shares on it so bundle mein milta hai یہ سمجھا کانسیپٹ ڈپازٹ ہینس اٹ از کالڈ ایز ڈپازٹری ریسیٹ اٹ از کالڈ ایز ڈپازٹری ریسیٹ ناؤ ایف اٹ از ایشوڈ اور ایف یو وانٹ ٹو ٹریڈ آؤٹ سائڈ انڈیا ایف آپ کو ٹریڈ کرنا ہے آؤٹ سائڈ انڈیا تو امیرکن ڈپازٹری ریسیٹ ریپرزینٹ امیرکن کمپنیز گلوبل ڈپازٹری ریسیٹس ریپرزینٹ گلوبل کمپنیز انڈین ڈپازٹری ریسیٹس انڈین کمپنی انڈین ڈپازٹری الٹا بھی ہو سکتا ہے نا پیپل ان انڈیا وانٹ ٹو ٹریڈ ان یو ایس اے یہ اس کو بھیجے گا یہ ہمیں ایشو کرے گا سو وی ول گیٹ ڈپازٹری ریسیٹس فرام انڈیا ایک سیکنڈ جا رہا کچھ
ठीक है और आई थिंक एक डाउट भी था टू कैलकुलेट एम कैप द शेयर आर द फ्री फ्लोट और टोटल शेयर विद ऑल इन्वेस्टर्स इंक्लूडिंग माई फोन फ्री फ्लोट मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन इज फ्री फ्लोट मतलब जो फ्रीली फ्लोट कर रहे हैं देर आर शेयर विद प्रोमोटर्स ऑल्सो वो सब भी होल्ड करते हैं इट इज फ्री फ्लोट मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन ठीक है बाकी देर आर टर्म्स विच यू विल रीड वन थिंग आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू टू रीड ये एक फैक्चुअल क्वेश्चन आ सकता है मैच द फॉलोइंग टाइप मैच द इंडाइसिस ऑफ द वर्ल्ड विथ देयर कंट्रीज आई एक्सपेक्ट कि ये आ सकता है सो वी नो इंडियन इंडाइसिस बट बाहर का वी डोंट नो सो जस्ट राइट इट डाउन जापान हैज निकी देन यू हैव नैसडैक इज यू एस ए USA is Nasdaq then Dow Jones is also USA Dow Jones Dow Jones theory hota hai finance mein then Standard and Poor 500 is also USA S&P theek hai then British is FTSE UK इससे तो कोई ना कोई एमसीक्यू तो हो ही जाएगा इससे इफ यू नो दिस थ्री तो आजकल सस्टेनेबल स्टॉक एक्सचेंज भी आ गया है द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सस्टेनेबल स्टॉक एक्सचेंज वेर इन ही द सोशल एंटरप्राइजेस सोशल कंपनीज आर नॉट बिग इनफ टू अट्रैक्ट लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स एंड दे कैन नॉट लिस्ट दम वेरी इजिली so what they do what sebi has come up with is sustainable stock exchange so social stock exchange where these small companies will get a platform to list their shares and uh, interested individuals can apply and then get their shares allotted this is all about capital market mein to i think itna hi hai venture capital and angel investor ka difference do you know what is angel investor and what is venture capital Angel investor will take care of you from your birth till two three years of age. After that, your your child requires different care. Nursery was all like that proper. Then venture capital comes in. Then after your child goes off to college, venture capital will sell off his shares when you list your shares, and he will go. So if, whenever there is a small very small startup, often angel investors will invest. They are individual investors with high net worth. They will invest in you, and unka utna capacity hai to invest. They will help you grow. what the, what are they getting they are definitely then they will sell that shares to venture capitalists ki now it is beyond my capacity now you guys come same thing venture capitalists will take that and take it to the next level now when the company is big enough to get listed on ipo the venture capitalists will sell their shares and they will exit sell their shares at a very high price and they will exit and they will make a profit venture capitalists are more institutionalized organized and uh, what to say proper उसका फंक्शनिंग है देर आर लॉट ऑफ रेगुलेशन एंजल इन्वेस्टर्स आर मोर इनफॉर्मल इन नेचर है तो रतन टाटा इन्वेस्टिंग इन सम कंपनीज लाइक एन एंजल इन्वेस्टर बट आफ्टर अ पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम सम वेंचर कैपिटलिस्ट फर्म्स प्राइवेट इक्विटी फर्म्स हेज फंड विल हैव टू कम इन टू मैनेज द स्केल दैट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन एंजल इन्वेस्टर्स एंड वेंचर कैपिटलिस्ट ठीक है मार्केट्स में जस्ट नो द बेसिक कंसेप्ट बाकी सिंपल फिनिश हो जाएगा मनी मार्केट में क्या पढ़ना है आई जस्ट टेल यू रीड अबाउट इट मनी मार्केट में यू हैव टू रीड अबाउट द इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स ऑफ मनी मार्केट व्हाट आर द इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स कॉल मनी मार्केट सर्टिफिकेट ऑफ डिपॉजिट कमर्शियल पेपर द मोस्ट बोरिंग पार्ट ऑफ द बुक एनी बुक यू रीड द मोस्ट बोरिंग पार्ट इज मनी मार्केट मनी मार्केट में आई डोंट थिंक देयर इज एनीथिंग अपार्ट फ्रॉम इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स दैट यू नीड टू लर्न वन स्मॉल one small thing is uh just know this do you know how mutual fund works kuch nahi karta hai beech mein hai yahan pe there is shares of companies these are different shares of companies and these are individuals 
ठीक है ना वन शेयर इज कॉस्टिंग यू लेट से टू थाउजेंड रुपीज यू कैन नॉट इन्वेस्ट इन मेनी शेयर ऑफ दैट कंपनी प्लस यू आर बींग डिपेंडेंट ऑन दैट वन कंपनी का परफॉर्मेंस सो वॉट दे डू इज वी टेक अ बुफे आला कार्ड नहीं लेते वी टेक अ बुफे बुफे मतलब यू गेट स्मॉल स्मॉल पोर्सन ऑफ एवरीथिंग सो वॉट दे डू इज दे पुल मनी म्यूचुअल फंड पुल मनी अब अब बड़ा हो गया अमाउंट नाउ दे विल इन्वेस्ट सम पार्ट इन दिस सम पार्ट इन दिस सम पार्ट इन दिस सो इन डायरेक्टली Indirectly, you are also participating in some part of the share, not the entire share. Okay? This is called a pooling mechanism. This is how mutual fund works. Have you heard of REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust? Have you heard of Invits Infrastructure? Same model, exact same model. Difference being, ये लोग real estate के होते हैं in REIT, and these are infrastructure companies in REIT, in Invits. Exact same model. so when you buy a unit of mutual fund you get a unit that unit might represent small small in, uh, investments in various shares of the company theek okay? hai so don't be confused in these these are fairly easy and the thing is ki ye sab likha hua hai books mein ya newspaper mein current affairs someone was asking me in previous batches sir what is credit default and currency swap maine bola upsc ko nahi pata hoga ye bhi credit default and currency swap so don't go point is don't go too deep in that read the basics revise it you have other subjects like history to do wahan pe bhi dhyan do theek hai so we'll end here mcqs i will send the ppt across you just try to solve it and past papers to i hope you have by now अभी तक तो होना कुछ तो होगा पास पेपर्स का अगेन डू नॉट पे अटेंशन टू सो मेनी सोर्सेस सो मेनी टेस्ट सीरीज बेसिक तीन चार टेस्ट सीरीज यूपीएससी पेपर्स टेक प्रायोरिटी नंबर वन सॉल्व इट अभी वेरी लेस डेज आर रिमेनिंग आज का एट सर याद मत दिलाओ तो याद रहेगा तो थोड़ा पढ़ाई होगा लिटिल बिट इन्फ्लेशन इज नेसेसरी फॉर ग्रोथ ना ओवर नहीं होना चाहिए बट लिटिल बिट इन्फ्लेशन तो जरूरी है ग्रोथ के लिए अदरवाइज ग्रोथ विल नॉट है वी आर यूज टू डिफ्लेशनरी फेजेस ठीक है हो गया सर नहीं मैं बता रहा हूँ मैं सिर्फ इनको थोड़ा डरा रहा था कि एग्जाम आ गई है हाँ थोड़ा डर होना चाहिए सर हाँ बस अरे हाँ लेवन थर्टी ऑनवर्ड है ना <laughs> ठीक है पास्ट ईयर पेपर्स पे ज्यादा ध्यान देना दैट इज द ओनली टेक अवे यू कैन टेक फ्रॉम मी मतलब मैंने तो इतना कंफर्ट लिया आई टेकन सो मच कंफर्ट फ्रॉम पास्ट ईयर पेपर्स कि यू शुड नो देम बाय हार्ट नाउ बताओ आफ्टर इकोनॉमी विद सब्जेक्ट्स केयर्स यू द मोस्ट एक्सेप्ट हिस्ट्री आर्ट एंड कल्चर साइंस एंड टेक टेक्निकल है फैक्चुअल है ना ठीक है सो विल स्टॉप यर थैंक यू वेरी मच I hope one day one day one lecture was helpful for you na no?